Could you stand a little taller, just a tad? Like this? Yes, yes. The chin a tiny bit lower. Gaze a little more to the right. There, now, hold the pose. Just a few more minutes. You have such an incredibly singular face. That's a compliment, my lord, out of my mouth. <laughs> Your particularity gives you character. You're still here? We've nearly finished. Have you any more need of me, master? You haven't forgotten that we're setting sail today, have you? Of course not. Your cousin is nowhere to be found. I've searched the palace from cellars to attics. Your uncle is beside himself. He was of a mind to paint the town last night. Don't worry, I shall track him down. Make care to your own preparations without wrinkling another frown. We'll meet you on the boat. It's about time your cousin took account of the responsibilities awaiting him. He should go and inform the ambassadors of Telemi and the Bridge Alliance of his departure. Have no fear, Master. I will go and see them in his name. I beg your pardon, but urgent matters call me away. Might we finish all this later? Impossible, my lord. You are leaving with the tide, if what I've been told is correct. I am sorry, sir. Truly, I must be going. Uh, my lord, please, I beg you! Her Highness has personally requested I finish! Oh, thank you, cousin, for getting me out of that. And so the day has finally come. My royal fledglings are leaving the nest. Accompanied by their most loyal and tenacious master of arms. As loyal as your goal. Oh, enough with the cold mercenary. I know you like us. Hmm. Still hiding your men in the unsuspecting shadows of the greats of this world, I see. Hey, our blades are the only thing keeping you dainties alive. Ha! <laughs> Kurt! I'm not in need of your protection. I'm no longer a child, you know. Is that so? Well, let's see. Fight with honor! Yeah! 
defend yourself well, Greenblood. One might think you had a proper master of arms. The best. Are you already training for your new post of Legate? Don't tire yourself. Flattery will get you nowhere. But for the fight, you have remembered your basics. Your performance just got you out of a final lesson. Unless you want to go through the paces again before we depart. I would be up for that. A little last-minute training couldn't hurt. In that case, Otto here is gonna be your training partner. Go! Fight with honor! It appears we've brushed up on the basics. It does, and I'd like to be on my way. I've quite the list of things to do before we depart. Indeed. Remember that you can always train in our barracks on the island if you're feeling rusty. Are your bags packed for the great departure? Yes, you know I get by with very little. You're not angry that I'm coming with you, I hope. On the contrary, I'm thrilled that both you and Sir de Corsillon are joining our party. A few friends at your side in unknown territory is a boon. Ah, so the old goat is coming too. And there I was thinking I would die of boredom on the trip. By the way, where is our future governor hiding? I was hoping to put his skills to the test as well. I have no idea. He had plans to celebrate his departure last night and we haven't seen him since. You know Constantine, I should have gone with him but my heart wasn't in the mood for celebration. The thought of bidding my mother farewell. It is never easy to say goodbye. But you should be going to see her now. She must be waiting for you. I'll meet you in front of the palace. Then we'll go and find Constantine together. Very well. I'll meet you as soon as I've said my goodbyes. What is this? Have you not been taught to knock? I've asked a thousand times. Oh, it's you, my dear child. Mother, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble getting used to your condition. Come now, let's speak of more pleasant things. I'm so very happy to hear your voice. You remind me so much of your father. I do miss him so. Today is the big day, isn't it? Ready to set sail for that island everyone's talking about. Yes, but the idea of leaving you behind, alone and ill. Dying, my child. Alas, there is nothing you can do by staying that would ease my suffering. One thing brings me cheer. They say the island is full of miracles and we might find a cure. Even if I were to find it, I would never be able to return in time to- I know. But it brings me comfort that to know my son has left on a mission to heal his people. Come now. It is time for you to take leave. 
Here. Take this with you. What is it? A family heirloom. Something that... Take it and keep it with you. May it bring you good luck. All my blessings go with you, my child. Now, be off. Sorry, Greenblood. Look, we can see the masts of the ship that'll be taking us. This is one sacred adventure we're embarking on. I hope this island will keep its promises. In order to know that, we'll need to find Constantine first. You're right. Maybe he's already at the port. He was so eager to leave. This will be quite the chore to finish before our departure. The commander wants to recover some merchandise from our supplier, but the transporter doesn't want to deliver. I did all I could to persuade. Nothing came of it. All the parliamenting fatigues me. But this is your domain. I wouldn't say no to a little help. Of course. Where is the supplier? In the lower boroughs, near the port. Right then. We'll put it on our list of visits. Would you like to begin? I've been asked to pay visits to the ambassadors of Teleme and the Bridge Alliance before our departure. Their dwellings are not far from here. We could go there first. Very well. Do you think Constantine will be waiting for us next to the ship? I don't know, but it's certainly worthy of inspection. Good day, Excellency. Sir de Sade, to what do I owe the pleasure? I have come to inform you that my cousin Constantine and I are departing for Tierfordy on the hour. Ah, yes. I did indeed hear talk that you had both received callings of greater stature. Allow me to congratulate you. Were you not named Legate of the Congregation? You are correct, Excellency. I thank you. 
It is a station of great honor that I am sure you will fill with brio and panache. The Mother Cardinal Cornelia will be enchanted to work with you, and your cousin in the future. I only regret that your departure is so sudden. Really? To be entirely honest with you, I was hoping to solicit your help in a rather delicate matter. Tell me more about it. And perhaps I can take care of your problem before my departure. Very well. A small group of dangerous heretics has found refuge in Serene. We know that your uncle tolerates the presence of all pagans within the city walls. But these particular non-believers threaten the fragile harmony of this place. We would consider it a tremendous favor if you would arrest them and deliver them to our guard. Heresy is not a crime in Serene. You do know that. But I'm sure my uncle would hear your arguments. Why call on my intervention? The prince would indeed give us his blessing. But it would take time. Far too much time. For according to our sources, these fugitives have already made contact with a smuggler to take them who knows where. I see. You're hoping that I'll be able to do something before they make it to an enemy city. If your heretics are planning on boarding a ship, then they must be in the dockyards. I'll look into this and see what I can do. I must be going. Farewell, Excellency. May the light guide you, Dasade. Your Excellency. Lord de Sade. I have been told that you were named Legate. Congratulations. Those are great responsibilities for someone as young as yourself. But you will bring honor upon your family and the congregation. Of that, I'm certain. I thank you, Excellency. I've come here to inform you of our departure for Tierfredi. My cousin Constantine is about to take up office as governor of New Serene, and I'm accompanying him. I had no idea you would be leaving so quickly. What a shame. I had thought... Uh, well, then, that is a pity. Have a pleasant voyage. A brilliant future awaits you. They say that it is a marvelous island. Please convey to your cousin my congratulations and sincere wishes for success. You seem slightly hesitant. Please, tell me what troubles you. A rather unscrupulous individual has been sowing trouble in Serene. A charlatan passing himself off as an alchemist. Do people actually give credence to these lies? Alas, yes. They snatch up his celebrated panacea. Remedies worse than the ill, believe me. As you can well imagine, alchemists are our pride. This vulgar trickster casts dirt upon their reputation and our own at the same time. In any city of the Bridge Alliance, we would have arrested him. But here, we respect your laws. I shall see what I can do, but make no promises. My departure is imminent. I thank you, Excellency. And I am pleased to see you have taken so well to your new functions of diplomacy. The man operates in the city center. He is said to be clever and mean. Be careful. I need to be going. Goodbye, Excellency. Goodbye, Lord de Sade.
rain blood. Do you need something? I wondered if you ever felt lonely. I always do. Why, do you want to rectify this? I hope to have kept you good company for all these years. After all, we were always together. And I valued your friendship. But I thought you were referring to another kind of company. And to be honest, you and Constantine aren't exactly my type. Anything else? I must leave you. Lively there, lads and lasses! I promised the merchants and their prince we'd be off before the tide. You, man, carry that properly. That porcelain is worth more than your life. Though some children we'd be best to refuse. Captain Vasco. And you are? I'm de Sade, the prince's nephew. If all is in order, we will soon be embarking on your boat. It's a ship. Not a boat. Apologies. Apologies for my asking, but the young governor isn't with you. He didn't come home this morning. I need to find him before departure. I hope nothing's happened to him or he hasn't changed his mind. The tide does not wait. <laughs> Perhaps he simply celebrated his imminent departure with a little too much enthusiasm. Is everything ready? We're short a crew member. The cabin boy is missing. But have no fear, we will leave without him if he does not present himself before the tide. Is he an important member of the crew? We don't need him for sailing or navigation. He's only a cabin boy. He must have simply had a bit too much to drink in celebrating his departure. Like another I know. I doubt that. Jonas was never one to fancy drink. And it's been two days since last he was seen. No, I fear something bad has happened to him. Might I ask you, if you hear anything, could you report it to me? I would like to set sail with a clear mind. When did you see your cabin boy for the last time? It's been two days since I've had any news at all. It wasn't out of the ordinary until this morning. My men have free shore leave when we're at dock. But the day of departure, every able-bodied sailor must be present on the ship. Does the boy know anyone in Serene? Other than fellow Norts, you mean? I don't think so, but it's difficult to be sure. This Jonas, does he have any close friends amongst the crew? In tradition, we are all members of the same family. But yes, there would be Flavio and Lauro. Might I have a word with them? As you wish. You'll find them over there, in port. Have you seen anyone wandering about? Suspicious looking. Maybe clandestine passengers. Take a look around. There are far too many comings and goings to spot possible stowaways. As long as they don't try and get on my ship, I pay no attention to them. That said, we did catch ourselves a smuggler just a while ago. A smuggler? Maybe he could be of some use. Where could I find him? In the port jails. Not far from the warehouses. Why I ask you? Why the sudden interest in smugglers and the odd stowaway? Nothing to bother yourself about. I'm just curious. You wouldn't, by the sheerest of coincidences, be on the trail of a couple of heretics, Your Excellency. The same a couple of the ambassadors of Teleme's men have been looking for nigh on two days. And so you know about that? Of course. The Cardinal's henchmen are hard to miss, even in a crowd. And they were making quite a fuss hoping we would cave in and help them in their hunt. 
Feel free to carry out your own investigation, but you'll end up with the same answers. The port brigs, just like the warehouses, are property of the Norths. No one else may enter. You haven't heard anything about my cousin, by chance, have you? To be honest, we were hoping to find him here. Did you say he was intending on celebrating his departure? My men spoke of a rather animated party that went down at the Coin Tavern, but I haven't heard anything else. That isn't the safest place in the city. I hope nothing has happened to him. Let's go and find him. Thank you, Captain. Happy to be of some help. Be back soon, Captain. We need to have a word with that people smuggler the sailor mentioned. He's a captain, Kurt, like yourself. And in order to interrogate the smuggler, we'll need to find a way into his jail. Good day. Someone told me that you're a friend of Jonas's, the young cabin boy who's gone missing. That's right, yeah. Are you looking for him? Yes. Your captain asked me to go and find him. Happy to hear he's taking the disappearance seriously. What can I do for you? When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. We went to have a drink in the tavern. Jonas, Lauro and myself. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Was he troubled? Maybe a tad troubled. Like he was somewhere else. Why would that be? Give me your best guess. Boy, I haven't the faintest idea. What does Jonas do in his free time, when you're on land? He just hangs around here or there. You know the cabin boys don't have half a sailor's wages. And when evening comes, we usually go down the tavern with good old Lauro. Did he ever have one too many? Never. He sips his pint like it was bad medicine. One drink lasts him the whole night. Does he know anyone in Serene? No one, far as I know. Do you think he could have made himself any enemies? I wouldn't think that for a moment. Jonas has a good heart and he steers clear of trouble and troublemakers. I don't know where to start with this. Do you have any idea? No. Lauro won't stop telling anyone who will lend him an ear that the boy was carried off by thugs. And you don't believe him? I like Lauro, don't get me wrong, he's like a brother. But to be honest, he drinks a little more than he should. The itch for a drink gets us all, but to him more than others, and when you drink too much, the imagination wanders. Here, yesterday, it was me who tied one over, and I thought I heard Jonas's voice by the canal. I call back to him. As you guessed, but they're nothing. Drink. It blurs the senses. What do you think about Captain Vasco? He's a damn good navigator, and an excellent leader of men. He knows his craft well, in spite of being so young. How old is he? He's not seen his 25th year yet. If he keeps it up, he'll be an admiral one day. I need to be going. Farewell. Good day, sailor. I've been told that you know the missing cabin boy well. Is that right? 
You talking about Jonas? You bet your stars I know him. But like I've been crying to the nine death winds, he didn't go missing, he was taken. Were you a witness to the event? Yes, I was. Even though I'd had a few tumblers in the belly, I hadn't yet lost my head. The other day, in the tavern, I saw him talking to a well-dressed man, surrounded by some other sly ruffians. And then when we left, him and I, Flavia left a little earlier, you understand? Well, those brutes were there, waiting for him. They just up and took him like that. Grabbed his arms and poof. Gone. Vanished. Why didn't you intervene? <sighs> I tried to, believe me. But my legs betrayed me. Wavering they were, and I fell into the gutter. Did you report this to the captain? Unfortunately not. I know all too well what weight my words carry. Even Flavia treated me like a drunken fool. And the captain? No, not telling him that. I still have some pride left, you get me? Did Jonas seem troubled to you, the night he disappeared? Maybe. For sure he wasn't his usual self. Do you know what was on his mind? No. No idea. Why would anyone want to snatch a mere cabin boy? How would I know? Jonas is a gentle boy who keeps his head down. <sighs> you think my story is nothing but mess too, don't you? It's just that I can't imagine a gang of thugs hoping to get a ransom for a cabin boy. Did anyone else see the kidnapping? There was still a small crowd in the tavern. But outside, I seem to recall that regular being there. We play cards with him from time to time. Kind of fellow who plays from morning to night time to be that skilled. But now and again he comes out. When nature calls, you know. I kind of remember his face being there. Thank you, Lara. I need to be going. Strange story, this is. Something isn't right here, I can feel it. We need to lift a veil on this. Good day, tavern keeper. Good day to you. What is your pleasure? I'm looking for a nought. A young cabin boy who's been missing roll call for two days now. A nought, you say? That's not a lot to go on. There are quite a few that come to my tavern. According to one of his fellows, he would have been taken right here. A kidnapping. In my establishment. You surely jest. At least I hope you do. I would have noticed. That doesn't hold water. Someone told me about one of your faithful clients. A big gambler, it would seem. I see. An able-bodied man. Passes his time lightening the pouches of sailors coming through. Where might I find him at this time? Here. He would never give away his chair at his table. Anything else? I'm looking for my cousin. His name is Constantine. I believe he was intent on celebrating his departure last night. There was indeed a party here last night, but it ended badly. Whatever do you mean? A brawl broke out. My tavern was shattered, and no one's paid for the damages. I'm sorry. Amongst the rebel rousers, did there happen to be a young man? 20 years of age, hair down to his neck, light brown, blue eyes, quite the talker. I don't believe it. Of course he was there. He's the man that started the fight. I hope you've come to reimburse me. Don't count on me to help you if that's not the case. <sighs> what kind of damage are we talking about exactly? A good half of my furniture was broken into firewood. I piled up the lot over there. 
Let me take a look. Perhaps it can be repaired. If you can fix it, I'd be obliged. If not, you'll need to pay. Here you are, to cover your expenses. Excellent. Honest books makes for honest friendships. <laughs> your cousin is either a very bad joker or a right good fool. He went and insulted a band of ruffians from the lower boroughs. Dangerous fellows. They've a storehouse they operate out of a few streets from here. What kind of business do they run? Several, actually, and they're all illegal and profitable. But you didn't hear that from me. In any case, if you were set on recovering your cousin, I would hurry if I were you. They're not the tender salts. Thank you for the information. Off with ya. Get him out of whatever mess he's got himself into. Seemed like a courageous fellow. Who could down his pint? Anything else? I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye. Who are you? I don't recognize you. Am I in your debt? No. Have no fear about that. It's for a different reason that I am here. I'm looking for a nought that disappeared two days ago after visiting this establishment. A young cabin boy. Two members of his crew accompanied him. Yes, that does ring a bell. I've played with the three of them. What can you tell me about the boy? How was he that night? He seemed rather nervous, as if he was worried about something. Didn't feel like playing, that I remember. And he must have been right to be nervous, if he's disappeared. Tell me what happened that evening. A rich merchant came in, with a band of strong arms. The kind of men you can round up for a few coins, if you catch my drift. They exchanged words with the cabin boy. The kid was defensive, not sitting pretty. And then they finally left. And after that? It just so happens that I did go out for a breather. I needed some fresh air. And I think I might well have seen those same men grab him. But that was none of my business. I wouldn't have thought that they were kidnapping him, if that's what it was. They weren't particularly rough with him. Who was the rich merchant, do you think? A jilted lover? A moneylender? No, sir. You are in luck. It so happens that I know the man. It was Sir Fontaine, that merchant. Where can I find him? He has a house in the wealthy boroughs, just off the canal. A stone's throw from the Tulema embassy. Thank you. You've been immensely helpful. This man is completely owned by his love for the game. Do you think we can trust him? What would he gain from lying? I have no idea. But what would any wealthy merchant gain from holding a penniless child? Locked. I don't have the key. Locked.
locked. Citizens, I present to you Panacea, the absolute cure of everything. Toothache, stomach ailment, and even an open wound. This potion heals all of that. And more still, this little phial is the product of years of research and intensive labor. I hear you asking, if this remedy can heal one from the Malachor. Alas, not yet. But your question is legitimate. I am so close to finding the cure. But the Malachor isn't the only ailment causing you to suffer. Not true? Then don't miss out on this chance and give yourself a healthy, and energize life. Rejoice! A file only costs a few coins, and well worth it to make your life shiny and new again. Does it really heal everything, your potion? Everything. Absolutely everything. Except the Malachor, of course. That being said, it is known that those in top health resist the Malachor best of all. Then don't throw away this chance. Think of all the pains that this potion could help you avoid. You are right. It's a deal. I'm gonna take two. There's a man that knows a good deal when he sees one. Hurry now. There won't be enough for everyone. There he is. He's our man, no doubt. His speech is well polished. I even feel like buying some. And if we had a word with him? I wonder if he'll serve us the same routine. Ah, you're finally tempted. In all honesty, I haven't made up my mind yet. I want to be certain that I'm not dealing with a charlatan. In this day and age, I can't blame you. What might I do to convince you? Are there any nasty side effects with this remedy of yours? There are none. You will feel nothing but an intense sense of well-being. Will you drink one of your potions to prove your good faith? Of course. I take a little sip every morning. But, as I am in perfect health, you won't be able to verify the improvement in my condition. But, if it helps you make up your mind, give me just a moment. There now. As you see, I am still in excellent condition. Come on now, I saw you take that vial out of your pocket. Nothing proves that it's the same potion that you sell to your clients. As a man of science, I consider skepticism a remarkable quality. But in your case, it is not skepticism, but blindness. We need to steal one of these potions and force him to drink it. Brilliant idea, Kurt. Let's take a look at his cart. Thank <laughs> you. 
Have you finally made up your mind? I happen to have a vial of your medicine. Would you be willing to drink it in front of us? To prove that there is no risk? This bullying is trying my patience. I'm beginning to suspect that you might be working for a rival. You refuse to taste it. You might have put something in it to cause me harm or further disgrace. No, look. The vial is still sealed. It comes straight from your stock. And you dare challenge me when you have just admitted to being a thief? Come now. You can see for yourself that I'm gladly returning your vial so that you might drink it in front of witnesses. This might help to dissipate my doubts as well as those of these brave folk. Yes, no, I... You don't have the right! Damnation. He got away. He can't have gone far. Find him before his head ends up on a spike. Think back to the note that we found. We need to take a look at the tavern. He won't leave the city without his belongings. You again? What are you doing in my room? I'm not the only one that has found you. Have you seen the mob that is gathering in the street? I'm neither deaf nor blind. <sighs> By the spheres. Why didn't I leave the city while there was still time? The Alliance Ambassador is quite unsettled by your commerce, and he is the one who sent me. Sahin? Him again. Ruining my career wasn't enough for him. He's the very reason I had to leave the Alliance. And here I am, playing the part of the potion maker. Me, who was once a respected member of the Academy of al -Sad. Dr. Sahin warned me that you were an imposter. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, coming from him. I was a master alchemist. I understand if you don't believe me after all that, but I have a number of documents to prove it. I would still be one if Sahin hadn't set up a chain of machinations to disgrace me. Why does Sahin bear you such hatred? I was unfortunate enough to oppose certain great minds of the Academy. To criticize their methodology, I saw them inflicting torture on sick prisoners, making them drink the most vile poisons. To find a remedy to the Malachor, they won't hesitate to kill. I could not keep my silence. It is for an act of courage that you fell from grace and earned Sahin's hatred. Are you not ashamed to have poisoned those poor souls? These potions are not harmful. That is to say that they don't contain any harmful ingredients. But you could just as easily produce real healing potions. So why don't you? You don't understand. I fled. But I haven't put a stop to my own research. This potion is an attempt to create in those who drink it a resistance to the Malachor. So you manipulate people to use this experimental fodder? That is completely unethical. I don't have a choice, but it does not harm them, I assure you. If this potion were inoffensive, then why wouldn't you drink it when I offered it to you? I ran tests on myself for such a long time that I ended up becoming intolerant to it. A small sip of this mixture provokes in me now a violent reaction. I mean, the mob would have been furious in any case, but a normal dose, I assure you, is without risk. Your methods don't seem so different than those of your colleagues. I don't torture people. And this potion only has side effects in high doses. Perhaps, but you're hurting innocents. I cannot let your commerce continue. So, what are you going to do with me, sir? I'm sorry, but I don't trust you. I'm going to deliver you to Dr. Sahin. Sir, I beg you to spare me. I've heard enough. You're under arrest. How unjust. Your Excellency, Lord de Sade. I tracked down your man near the coin guard barracks. Finally. Did you capture him? Let's just say I put an end to his activities. His reputation in Serene is forever tarnished. 
Matters turned out a little more complicated than anticipated. He is hiding in a room in the Coin Guard Tavern. Why didn't you have him arrested? Angry citizens have gathered round the building. They have sworn to avenge themselves after discovering his fraud. I decided it better to avoid the mob. But if you wish to capture him alive, I advise you hurry. Governor Buren will be happy to learn that a legate with great assiduity will soon be joining the island of Tirfredi. Thank you for your help, Excellency, and allow me to offer you this modest present for your voyage. I need to be going. Goodbye, Excellency. Goodbye, Lord de Sade. Might I help you, sir? I would like to have a word with Sir Fontaine. He is absent, but the lady of the house could certainly receive you. Enter, please. Oh, I know you. I've seen you at court. You are Lord de Sade. And to what do I owe the honor of your visit, Excellency? I would like to have a word with your husband. He is not here, but perhaps I could be of help. It concerns a delicate matter. We're looking for a missing cabin boy. According to witnesses, he had an argument with your husband before being taken. I see. I am afraid that you have been misled. You seem to have come to the wrong conclusion. The cabin boy you speak of was not taken. He has simply returned home. Excuse me, but I'm not sure I understand. Don't you see, Your Excellency? We got our son back. I am very surprised. Several witnesses confirmed that your... son had a fight with your husband, and that his men escorted him from the tavern using force. If he had joined your husband willingly... Witnesses? In a tavern? And you choose to believe these drunkards over a respectable family? These witnesses are all in agreement, and it's their testimonies that have led me to your doorstep. My son was probably shocked to have found us. My husband and the other men might have simply had to carry him. A gesture that your drunkards must have misunderstood. What was your son doing on a naught ship? Why would they have taken him? It is what they do. Through pacts and contracts, they steal away young children from their mothers. What are you talking about? I would have thought that a legate would know these things. But it is true that you are young and inexperienced. It seems that you have been protected from the turpitudes of our own nation and their terrible allies. This horrible, constant ransoming that they put us through. But I will not say another word. You will have no trouble verifying the details now that you know what to look for. Where might I find your son now? I cannot say, Excellency. You must understand why. Until the Noughts have set sail, we live in fear they will take him back from us. This pact? It sounds like some fear-inducing story. The Noughts wouldn't be the first to recruit through dubious means.
merchant is there. So, you still haven't found your cousin? As you well know, we cannot leave without him. Have no fear. I will bring him back in time to make our scheduled departure. Is everything ready? I'm still without news of my cabin boy. But we will have to do without. I spoke with a woman who told me she was the mother of the cabin boy. She claims that her son was taken from her. Taken? Her son is sea gifted. His parents were required to give him up, to honor the terms of a contract. A contract? But what kind of contract are we speaking of? A commercial contract. In exchange for services rendered by the Nords, some families seed more than gold. In some cases, nations even trade some of their subjects before they're born. I wouldn't be able to tell you the condition of Jonas's contract. I didn't even know he was originally from Serene. But what I can tell you is the young man hasn't seen his parents since he was a small child. And ever since, he's been a Nord. Our ships are his home, and we are his only family. Be back soon, Captain. You see anyone else who might be able to help us? Anyone who's not a Nord? Sir de Corsillon's a veritable well of scientific knowledge. He could tell us a little more. I still don't see Constantine at your side. I hope he hasn't been the victim of any foul play. Don't worry. We'll find him in time for departure. I certainly hope so. Uh, would you be in need of my help in any way? I've had a word with Lady Fontaine. You must know her. That rich family that lives near the docks. She told me a strange story about her son who was a cabin boy on our ship. She said that he was taken when he was a child due to some contract with the Nords. Who was a cabin boy? Do you mean he's no longer one? They took him back to bring him home. Well, that is very unpleasant news to Sade. We need to do all we can to bring the boy back to his ship. Since time immemorial, there has always been a certain... price to pay for the services of the Nords. Children born on their ships belong to them. It's the rule of the sea. But certain contracts are so important that they also require children to be offered in exchange. From time to time, the congregation has passed such a cord, and certain noble families had to give their children up. Are you telling me that the Fontaines lost their son because of some agreement signed between my uncle and the Nords? Um, no. That pact ended a long time ago. This cabin boy couldn't have been a part of that contract. But Sir Fontaine has made a fortune trading with the Alliance, uh, via ships. Do you mean he would have offered up his own son in exchange for wealth? Well, he probably did it before the birth of the child, and regretted it afterwards. But that is of little importance. What counts most is that you bring the boy back to the Norts as quickly as possible. Breaking a contract with the seafarers has always cost us dearly. Our nation could feel it in its coffers. I will do my best. A father selling his own son for a few boat rides. For ugly, that is ugly. Lady Fontaine didn't seem to have any knowledge of that detail. That could be of use to us. This document mentions another property, a warehouse. That would be a great place to hide. Shall we take a peek? Here we are. 
Be careful. Fontaine won't be alone. He'll have his henchmen with him. Let's just try to remain discreet. Sir so Desade, what are you doing here? I've come looking for your son. The Noughts are worried about his disappearance. Uh, those Noughts took him from us, but now we've got him back, and he'll be staying with us. Would you be so kind as to hear what I have to say, Sir Fontaine? You've taken your son against his will and have him locked up like merchandise in a warehouse. Is that what you call being a good father? If I hadn't taken him back, he would have been hauled off on one of the cursed ships. If that's what he wants, then why would you want to stop him? For his mother. She misses him so. But in the end, you may be right. My boy has changed. He hasn't spoken a word to me since we've been in this precarious predicament. Very well. Take the key and take him away. Cursed be the day I delivered my son unto the noughts. All children leave the nest one day or another, sir. Farewell. My name is de Sade. I am legate of the congregation. Your captain has sent me to find you. And were you able to convince my... my father to allow me to go free? Yes. Even if I had to bend his arm a little. That doesn't surprise me. He seemed to have no intention of changing his mind. I feel more sorry for my mother. She seems so sweet and happy to see me. You don't seem to be all that close to your parents. I hadn't seen them since I was five years old. I barely remember them. They find me, capture me, and lock me up in this warehouse. Hard to grow close after all that. My family is the Noughts. I am sorry for my parents, but that is the way of it now. Can I go home? Yes. You should still go and say farewell to your mother, then find your way to the ship. I'll see you there. So, you still haven't found your cousin? Have no fear. I'll... My cabin boy, Jonas, is back on ship. I have you to thank, I imagine. You do. It's a rather sad affair, and though solved, leaves a broken family behind. All we can do is plot a course. No one tells the wind what to do. I do thank you. I didn't think you'd go to so much trouble for a cabin boy. Your actions bring you honor. <laughs> Be back soon, Captain.
Good day, good sir. How might I be of service? You can start by explaining to me why you refused to honor the orders agreed upon with the guard. <laughs> There's been a misunderstanding, sir. Of course we're ready to honor the orders. In fact, I've already had a word with your master at arms. They're asking that we pay again, despite having already paid. It's just that the price has gone up since. I've nothing to do with it. This is inadmissible. If you agree on a sum, you need to honor that agreement. I'm sorry, sir. I'm just an agent. And I'm only obeying orders. Why don't we go and solicit other suppliers, Kurt? When we've already paid for the merchandise? If these thieves agree to reimburse the original payment, it's what we do immediately. And do know, in the future, we won't be shopping with them. Well, I should think not. Your master has apparently asked you to demand a second payment for this merchandise. That's right. He told me that their attendant seemed to be hiding something when he passed the order. And so he must have thought the guard would end up paying in the end whatever he asked for. I'll be damned. And I'm the one they've sent to settle the affair. Sorry, Captain. It's nothing personal. I'm only following orders. Following orders? Yeah, we hear you. Makes one wonder which one of the two of us is a coin guard. This whole story sounds suspicious and stinks of a scandal. You're demanding a second payment but refuse to reimburse the one that was already made. I'm not the one demanding nor refusing. It's my master. This stubborn fool is pushing me to madness. You understand now why I'm asking for your help? I don't think you understand who you're dealing with. Perhaps I failed to present myself properly. Lord de Sade, nephew of the Prince d'Orsay and legate of the Congregation of Merchants. During our conversation, you explained to me that your master forced you to commit a crime. That's regrettable. Especially as you will be considered his accomplice in extortion, theft. You know as well as I that the Congregation does not tolerate such illegal activities. But I'm only obeying orders. That is a shame. Well, as orders are the only language you seem to understand, I order you to return the guard the merchandise, without delay. Unless you'd rather your master is hung and that you finish your days in prison. I... As you request, my lord. I shall go immediately and ask that these crates be delivered to the attendant. Now that's a wise decision. Thank you. I was beginning to think this would never end. You're certainly honoring your new title. Bravo! The Quartermaster must be expecting us. To my help! And death to the others! Come and take my saber! Move away! Things are about to get dicey! Sir Desade, I presume. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. Captain, you set sail soon. Have you seen to our little business? Yes. We were finally able to recover your merchandise. Excellent news. I'm afraid, though, that your mission isn't completely finished, Kurt. Blast me. I'm a captain, not an errand boy. The commander was quite explicit. Very well. What do I need to do? The merchandise that you obtained needs to be sent to Tier 3D as soon as possible. But the Port Authority formalities for shipping take an eternity to wade through. And we've already lost quite a bit of time with this dishonest merchant. Are you blatantly asking us to smuggle this merchandise and contraband? 
I would never ask you to do such a thing, Your Excellency. Ah, but you don't mind asking that of Kurt? Well, now, uh, if he finds an alternative solution that is less uh, illegal, uh, that would be fine. The method matters not. But this cargo must reach the Isle on the next ship. Marvelous. Well, then, I await your return with utmost impatience. I'm certain you shall do what's required. So, you still haven't found your cousin? As you well know, we cannot leave without him. Have no fear. I will bring him back in time to make our scheduled departure. Is everything ready? I have a favor to ask before we leave. I'm all ears. We would like to load some merchandise into your ship's hold. Impossible. You're too late for that. All merchandise must be registered at the Port Authority. And the formalities are long. So... Unless you're asking me to turn smuggler and hide contraband on my vessel. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> We're only talking about a few crates after all. Well then, they'll have to wait. The next ship for New Serene leaves in a month. Hellfire! If that shipment doesn't leave today, the commander will have my hide. Captain, I understand your position, but isn't there some way we can get these crates on board? <sighs> Listen here. I haven't forgotten what you did for our Jonas. I would gladly do you the favor, but my quartermaster is more stubborn than the tide. He is convinced that thugs want to use our vessel to bring who knows what aboard. And because of that, he's placed guards to watch over the registered merchandise before they're loaded up. All that I can do for you is to write your crates into the ship's manifest. If you manage to get them into the warehouse, they'll find their way into the ship's hold. And with the manifest, the crazy Gustavo won't see nothing but smoke. Please try and avoid roughing up those brave guards. They are my fellow Norts, after all. Be back soon, Captain. and you were able to keep your mark hidden from them, they might let us in, unless we just offered them a drink. These sailors rarely refuse one. I see where this is headed. If we drop a little soporific in their glasses, the way will be clear. I'll just need to find the proper ingredients, but it's doable. Hello? What can I do for you? We're the relay. You're dismissed. Finally! We were starting to grow moss. Courage, me hearties. The path is clear. We should notify the men. They need all the time they can get. Who 
is there? May the Illuminated save us. Did the smuggler send you? The man to which you are referring was arrested and thrown into prison, but revealed to me your hiding place. Oh, the traitor! Have you come to deliver us to the Inquisition then? Please, please, have pity on our souls. We have committed no crime. We are not heretics. We are nothing more than historians. In that case, why is the ambassador of Teleme so concerned about your teachings? Why is the Inquisition looking for you, and why are you hiding? Our only error was wanting to publish our work. It's true. We presented our research, but it didn't please the censor. And here you have the result. We fled all the way to Serene, thinking we would be safe. But the Inquisition wants to silence us so badly that they followed us here. Tell me more about your research. What about it is so horrifying that it would provoke such a fuss? Our work concerned the teachings of St. Lucius. The disciple of St. Matthias. The one who returned to Teleme after traveling with his master. The very same. His writing was carefully preserved, but never seriously studied. With the discovery of Tirfredi, we thought it crucial to take a look at the original text. We wanted to verify if this island could have been the faraway place that he spoke of. The Eden of St. Matthias. And? What did you find? Tirfredi is without any doubt the land that our St. Matthias and his disciples went to. But the text that we discovered was radically different from what we expected to find. In the original text, St. Lucius doesn't speak of an Eden, of the paradise of the Illuminated. He speaks of a voice that came from the depths of the earth, which convinced St. Matthias to stay there. It was written in black and white, and there is no doubt about it. The original was written in Lucius's own hand. I understand now what that text has cost you. This voice from the depth sounds more the power of a demon than a saint. The sacred texts are always difficult to interpret, but what is written is written. Who were you hoping would give you asylum? We were hoping to reach Al Saad. The Inquisition won't chase us into the den of their enemies. Our research won't interest the Bridge Alliance, or at least I doubt it. But at least we'll be safe. By entering Al Saad as clandestines, you risk being taken for spies. That would be better than being burned at the stake. Did you try speaking with the censors? You could forget what you have discovered, perhaps. Oh, we have signed already an abjugation stating that we misunderstood the sacred texts of St. Lucius. We were even ready to say that we had never seen the true text or anything else that would have pleased them. It served no purpose. It's our lives they are after. I see. Well, you have no other choice but to run and seek refuge in enemy territories. I beg of you, please do not deliver us to them. Let us continue on this path. I could have a word with the good Dr. Sahin, the ambassador of the Bridge Alliance. If he can be persuaded to offer you asylum, you would be saved. Your goodness honors you. May the Illuminated forever light your path. If I manage to convince the ambassador, you'll need to refrain from that sort of blessing. Stay here. I'll be back. spoken with the ambassador? Has he accepted to give us refuge?
Captain, sir, we were given orders to wait here with the merchandise. The way is clear. It's time to get going. Do your best to be quick and quiet about it. You won't have much time to move it. Don't you be worrying now. We're off. The warehouse is at the end to the right there. You can't miss it. Move out. Quick steps. Your Excellency. Lord de Sade. I would like to talk to you about a rather delicate matter. I am listening. A couple of historians have made a recent discovery concerning Mateus, the founder of the mythical Teleme. And it seems that this is not to the liking of the Illuminated, or at least his more fervent subjects. These sinister hypocrites are going to want to burn them at the stake. Without a doubt. And that's why these poor people are begging you to offer them asylum. We are willing. Where are they to be found at this time? At the port of Serene. They were hoping to stow away discreetly on a vessel to Al Saad. Very well. I shall send an escort immediately to take them somewhere safe. I need to be going. Goodbye, Excellency. Goodbye, Lord de Sade. We owe you our lives. We are eternally grateful. It was nothing. I hope you won't have too much difficulty adapting to your new country. If you would allow me, I would like to give you this. It's not much, but it is all that we possess. Farewell. You have a kind heart, Greenblood. It'll be the end of you, but that doesn't bother me. I wouldn't have wanted those poor buggers to end up on a burning pyre. It would seem that I'm not the only one with a tender heart. Good day, Excellency. Sir de Sade, to what do I owe the pleasure? It pains me to inform you that the heretics you seek have fled. Curse them! How could that possibly have happened? Alas, these renegades have found protection with the ambassador of the Bridge Alliance. I would not have been able to capture them without risking a diplomatic incident that my uncle would have condemned. The bridge. I thought as much. Those heretics have turned to them. But I had hoped that you might intervene quickly enough to stop them. It is truly regrettable. We have nothing else to do but pray that the Luminous might shield us from their lies. I must be going. Farewell, Excellency. May the light guide you, Dasade.
second there? If you had any idea who I am... Open up, imbeciles! I have a ship to catch! That vulture of a tavern master was right. It is Constantine's voice. It's coming from the floor above. It sounds as if he's locked up. And I have a feeling they're expecting company. Be careful. The slightest itchy word to these brutes will have them drawing blades to scratch it. Negotiation may be the solution. As you say, this breed of brutes won't spit on ransom money. What a waste. I'd rather sneak around them than give half a coin to these seedy fellows. It's blocked. It's not possible just now. Posters we posted, someone with <laughs> to my help and death to the others. <laughs> Move <laughs> away, things are about to get <laughs> dicey. <laughs>
Well, this has been monumentous, gentlemen, but I have more important things to attend to. An island to govern, treaties to sign, riches to expedite, and a demanding father to crush! Constantine, it's me! My dear cousin! <laughs> my lucky star! Always there to pull me out of my fight. I do what I can. We're departing soon. Your father wasn't pleased by your absence this morning. Have you ever seen him happy about anything when it comes to me? You know what he thinks of me. He cares about you. I know that. He appointed you governor, didn't he? He is ridding himself of a source of constant disappointment. <sighs> Enough said. Today, we set sail for adventure. these river scum treated me. Do me a courtesy, good cousin. Now that we stand boldly alongside the brave Kurt, let's give them their money's worth. There's no one left to pay, your highness. The brave Kurt and your cousin have already settled the books. Really now? What a shame. I would have loved to have seen that. We've nothing left to do then than to board our ship. An adventure awaits us at the end of the street. So? Constantine d'Orsay, future governor of Tier Freddy. I'm enchanted, Captain. I am eager to board your ship. Enchanted as well, Your Highness. I hope you enjoy your voyage. Are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. Permission to board the ship. We are ready. Certainly. But keep in mind that we'll be at sea for several months. If you have any farewells to make or any final business to put into order, now is the time. No, my house is in order. We are ready to embark. Perfect. Follow me. I am so eager to discover Tia Fridi. My isle. My new city. You'll need to arm yourself with patience. The voyage will be long. I've been told the trip lasts months. And they say the place is full of gigantic creatures. As big as buildings. That's right. I heard a rumor the Norts even brought one back in one of their ships. I doubt that. The Norts are strange, but they're not idiots. The beast is awoken! Those conniving, piss-distilling, bridge-building liars. The creature was supposed to be out for days. They'll pay for this. What the hell manner of cargo are you transporting? Help! We need ropes! We must contain it! Help! Come now. Let's send them a hand. Watch out! Take us 
How do you fare? Fine, fine. It is dead. Are you wounded? I'm well. Your lessons have proven effective. I've never seen a beast this size. It's quite extraordinary. Cousin, what a fight. You were illustrious. I'm not of the same mind. I had the feeling it was already weakened. I did nothing more than finish it off. Your humility remains a constant. But believe me, that battle was absolutely epic. Gentlemen! <laughs> Your cousin's enthusiasm is most impressive. And this journey is his long-awaited chance to prove his worth. He has a demanding father. More likely, he's just happy to be free of this hornet's nest. I definitely know I am. That's a...
charming welcoming committee. Gentlemen, I am Constantine of House Orsay, your new governor. I have no idea what sort of ceremony you've prepared for my arrival, but I would gladly skip it, so... <laughs> indeed, indeed, these are rather peculiar customs. I, I see, I see, it seems you were quite intent on serving me a drink. Hello? Cat got your tongue, gentlemen? Would it be those annoying beaks? <laughs> I am truly sorry these doctors should have shown a greater measure of courtesy. Thank you, dear doctors. Move along. Go and trouble the noughts. Pay no attention to them. Instead, just drink. The long voyages at sea require the appropriate treatment as soon as we land. According to our scientists, without fortifiers, you might catch your death, and that would be quite regrettable. I should have chosen death. This concoction is liquid torture. I would think that they would have warned you on the ship. Not in the slightest. And you must be Lady Morange, my predecessor. You are correct. There you are! To your health. Aha! You got your dose of bile too. Allow me to present to you Lady Morange, and to you, my dear lady, my most trusted cousin. Where is the captain? He seems to be preoccupied with some sort of admiral. Indeed. Then I will have to thank him later for this most marvelous voyage. Excellency! Lead me to the palace, I beg you. And, whenever possible, go by way of all the intriguing alleyways. I am dying with impatience to discover this new city. My city! Uh, your Excellence! We must wait for our escort! No need. Have no fear, for I am here to defend you, my lady. I've been scullied. How so? My Admiral laid me off. My cousin was nonetheless delighted with your services. I hope there was no misunderstanding. None, I'm sure of it. She just ordered me to give you any assistance you might need. This request doesn't seem to please you. Don't take offense, but it's not pleasant for a captain to abandon his ship. In any case, here I am at your service for a while. Desarde, can I do anything for you? You seem to be mad at me for some reason. Do you still resent the fact that I called your ship a boat? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. Nobility makes me uncomfortable. I'm sorry if I was rude. I can't blame you. Most nobles are tiresome. I hope that I've managed to change this poor first impression of me. You have? I was wrong about you. You are different. I should have realized that sooner. I hope you can forgive my manners. It was foolish of me. Did you want anything else? How did you become a Nort? As you may have guessed, I am sea-given. I was given to the Norts when I was a little child, for a reason I ignore. I think I was originally from the Congregation, but I have no memory of my family. I took my first steps on the deck of a ship. That's all I can remember. Did you want anything else? I must leave you. Green blood. Do you need something? I must leave you.
Excellency. Excellency, welcome back to my modest shop. It is an immense honor for me to be of service to such noble clientele. What might I do for you? Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see Have you seen any... Thank you for your visit. See you soon. Armour that fits you like a glove. We'll make it. Greetings. You look like someone who would know how to use a blade. If you're looking for the best steel, you're in the right place. Weapons, armors, ammunition, I have it all. And if you have a special request, my associates will be glad to make it for you.
Want armor that fits you like a glove? We'll make it for you. It's blocked. Well, I'll be damned, it's Captain Kurt. Manfred! Still a quartermaster? Always, as you can see. What can I do for you? We've come to find you regarding the merchandise that Kurt was taking care of. Ah, the commander's cargo, yes. I was told that had come in. And so he's got you working on this. Lucky Kurt. It helps to have friends in high places. Is everything in order? Alas, no. Our merchandise has been unloaded into one of those dock storehouses. They're well guarded. A little less at night, but in spite of that, we weren't able to get them back. Since these crates are registered in the ship's manifest, make an official request. The modification of the manifest might have fooled a quartermaster, but it won't fool the port authority. We'd have too many details to explain to them, and our commander would not like that. What? Is he waiting for us to bring them to him, then? No, of course not. But Kurt needs to find the right storehouse, as well as a discreet way to get in. And he must also mark the crates that belong to us. Why is that? They're already marked with an inscription. Most of the men are illiterate. A colored mark will stick out for them to find, but they need to be quick about it. They won't have the time to decipher a name. I see. Well, let's see what we're able to do. Is there anything else? No, thank you. ship's being used to move your contraband. Now you want to sneak into one of our warehouses. Kurt was given the order. If we want to help him, we don't have a choice. I don't like this. But, since I've been sacked, let's just say that this will be a little bit of revenge. How are we to know in which warehouse we'll find this damn cargo? I'm afraid we're going to have to take a look at all of them. That won't be necessary. My entire cargo has been placed in the warehouse closest to my ship. And if you wouldn't mind wearing some Nord clothing, we'll be less suspicious. I would like to avoid fighting with my The Nords are my family.
Here are the crates we've been looking for. It appears that one of them has been broken. It's full of weapons. That doesn't seem right. It is our clients that supply us weapons on Tier 3D. You didn't know what was in the crates? No. I don't concern myself with the commander's business. I should take a look into this. I have some friends here that must know what this is all about. Let me know what you discover. Now, let's mark these crates and get going. I need a bit of practice. Sir, good people. Liqueur and wine from the continent. Tier for the alcohol. Hello, Your Excellency. We have found a way into the storehouse and we have marked all of the crates. Perfect. I shall ask my men to follow the same path. One of the crates was damaged. I was quite surprised by what I found in it. Really? To be honest with you, the commander never told me what was in them. I received the order to deliver them as soon as Kurt accomplished his mission without any further instructions. For what it's worth, I thank you for your help. And I hope you can accept this modest token for everything you've done. If you have another moment, Your Excellency, I would like to ask you for your help. We have a serious problem that I did not hear of until recently. A problem that concerns you closely. I'm listening. I was told that some of our soldiers have been extorting large sums of money from the town merchants under the pretext of financing their protection. Are you telling me that the Guard is extorting merchants in our city? Indeed. Some merchants have been assaulted, and one of them has even been found dead. I hope you don't intend to conceal this information. If my cousin learns of this... Oh no, certainly not, Your Excellency. We intend to punish the guilty party with the greatest severity. But the merchants refuse to give us the slightest testimony. The guard frightens them, and rightly so. We won't be able to put a stop to these crimes without outside help. <sighs> Count on me. I'll take care of it. No, thank you.
best forge! Oh, it's a great pleasure to see you again at the forge. What can I do for you? I'm currently investigating an extortion case involving the guard. Are you one of the merchants who has been threatened? <coughs> no, not at all. I've never heard of this business. Someone must have lied to you. Really? Come on. If you want these guards to be arrested, you need to talk to me. I mean no offense, but you won't be able to do anything. And snitching don't end well. I want to hold on to my business. And my life. How about some new armor, Your Excellency? I was told that someone found a merchant's body. Did you know him? Of course. The town isn't that big. We all know each other here. Poor Reno. We found his body on the street by the port. He was beaten to death. One of his associates half-heartedly took over the shop. Have the culprits been found? No. Listen. Nobody wants to talk about this. We don't want any trouble. It's been months since it happened. An investigation's not gonna bring him back. You are obviously a victim of these bandits. One of your people is dead. Yet you refuse to help me. Why? It's precisely because one of our people is dead. Now, you can either buy something or let me get back to work. Because I'm not gonna say one more word about this case. The law of silence is like at work. A glove. Nobody You're saw anything, nobody knows anything. Pleased to welcome you to the best wine and spirit shop in Tierfredi. If you're looking for something to accompany a fine meal, or for a gift for someone, you've come to the right place. Thank you, but I'm not here for that. I'm conducting an investigation. Some merchants are being extorted by members of the guard. Uh, are you sure? It's probably just a nasty rumor. Someone must have misinformed you. Come now. I'm the legate of the congregation. If guards threaten you, I could arrange protection for you. Threats? No. I assure you. I was told a merchant had been found dead. Really? Oh, I didn't know. No one told me about that. What was his name? Come on, don't take me for a fool. You know very well who I'm talking about. I don't? Really? I don't. So, what sort of wine would you like to pair your food with? You need something strong when eating game. You're obviously terrified. Don't you think it's better to tell me everything? Listen, I've no desire to get into trouble. Please leave me. But if you don't help me, you will never be rid of these guards. I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see you again. Have you seen anything to your liking? What might I help you with? I'm conducting an investigation. Apparently, some merchants are being extorted by some members of the Guard. Really? That's... that's terrible, Your Excellency. As Legate, it is my duty to ensure the safety and well-being of the citizens of our town. So please, if you have any information... I... I don't know anything, really. I have only been here for a few months. My partner, who ran the shop before me, had a very bad encounter. And you fear the same thing happening to you? This is what happens around here. So I prefer to hold my tongue and do what is expected of me. If you denounce them, we could end this and charge these men for their crime. I can't take that risk. There are so many of them. Also, I would not be able to name them. Now, I would like to get back to my work. What we need is the money to return. Do you understand? We are very... monitored.
I have a plan to stop the culprits, but I'm going to need your help. The next time one of these guards comes to squeeze money out of you, you must ask for more time. The man will threaten you, of course, and he will certainly bring his accomplices. But when they come back in full force to make you pay for your audacity, we will be there to apprehend them. And if your plan fails, I'll end up like Renault. You don't understand. Are you not tired of giving them your share of the profits? And do you not want to avenge your partner? Poor Renault. He didn't deserve it. Perhaps you're right, and we need to act. I will do what you ask of me. But for God's sake, when they threaten me, intervene right away! Fear not. We will not let them harm you. When should they be returning? It's hard to predict. Given their habits, I would say... in two days, maybe? Perfect. I will not fail you. Thank you for your visit. See you soon. Attention, soldier! Let me pass. I must see the chief of your village. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever could be so funny. Now, who would you be to seek an audience with the governor? I am Siora, daughter of Bladnid. My mother is Amal, the chief of our clan. I am here as an emissary of my people, and I must see your chief, your governor. And so you are a princess, then? A what? Let her pass! Your Majesty, I shall present you to the Governor. Come. Princess, Majesty, you are most confusing. But thank you for your help. Minister. Your Excellency, it is always an honor. How may I serve you? What exactly is your role here? I am tasked with advising Governor Constantine about business matters. And I make sure that all business contracts are established properly and are favorable to us. I am responsible for setting taxes on goods based on their value, among other things. It is an exciting job that requires the utmost care. Would you like anything else? That'll be all. Goodbye, Your Excellency.
Your Excellency, it is an honor. It's blocked. There you are, dear cousin. What is this? Who is this amazing person in your company? I am Siora, daughter of Bladnid, daughter of Meb. My mother is the Maal, the chief of our clan. I am honored to make your acquaintance, Siora. <gasps> this is incredible. You look so much alike, you could be related. If you would allow me, Princess, I would like to confer a mission to my cousin. You need to visit the governors of the bridge and Teleme to give them my formal regards, that sort of thing, but also to discover what they've managed to learn. They've been here much longer than we have. Perhaps they've made some inroads to finding a cure for the Malachor. Forgive me, Mal, but I have a request for you. My people needs your help. I thought we might discuss matters together at leisure, but please, speak your piece. The Lions, the Bridge Alliance and my people are at war. My mother has sent me to you in search of allies. I fear that without your help, our clan will suffer great horrors. We have already lost so many souls. Hmm. This seems a sensible request. You know, though, we cannot go to war with our neighbors. Perhaps there is a way to negotiate a ceasefire, the time to see things more clearly. Excellent idea. I would be completely lost without you. Go and parley with, um, the Queen, dear cousin. Try and put an end to confrontations for the time being. I will come with you. It will take more than one person to convince my mother to lay down our weapons. Perfect. Take Kurt along with you and anyone you feel useful. I've been told that the roads are not safe. Safe travels, dear cousin. And watch out for yourself. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. Cousin! What can I do for you? Any news of your parents? No. With the time it takes to travel to the continent, it's not surprising. But I don't miss them. My father's next letter will certainly be full of his usual disdain. As for my mother, you know her. She's probably too busy planning her next assassination to have noticed my absence. I'm going to leave now. Goodbye, Constantine. Look out for yourself. I don't have the key. Desade, you have a moment. Thank you for coming. I know that you're very busy, but I need your help. I'm listening, sir. This island is vast, and we only know a tiny part of it. As you know, your uncle has asked me to draw maps to facilitate the merchant's travels. Alas, I'm slightly too old to be roaming the paths, setting up camps here and there. So I'd appreciate it if, as you travel, you mark the places you deem to be safe on your map. Very well. I will take care of it, Professor. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Uh, one more thing. Do you remember that gigantic creature that you defeated in Serene? Uh, bringing a specimen to the city was obviously not a good idea. An accident was inevitable. But according to my sources, there are others of them on this island, and your uncle wishes to know more about them. I know that a scholar of the Alliance, Professor Serafedin, has also taken an interest in these creatures. I tried to contact him, but apparently he disappeared during an expedition to study them. 
Naturally, I cannot ask you to rummage through the entire island looking for him, but if you can find any trace of him, his studies on these giant creatures could be immensely useful. Very well. If I find anything out, I'll let you know. The road to knowledge is long and difficult, but this is the price of wisdom, Desade. Good day, Your Excellency. Come closer, good people. The cure is Are your boots worn through? Welcome. It's such a pleasure to see you again. Have you seen anything to your liking? What might I help? So, did they take the bait? Yes, Your Excellency. And I am very happy to see you. One of them came to the shop yesterday. He gave me 24 hours to raise the money required, which means that the entire gang could appear any minute now. Perfect. I'll hide and wait for their arrival. And rest assured, I will not let them go. Thank you for your visit. See you soon. I hope you have what we're looking for, my good friend. Our man with the silver coin is not known for his patience. Well, I, I moved heaven and earth to collect the sum, but alas, I, I ran out of time. More fool you if you think Egon will be satisfied with your sorry excuses. You know what happens to those who refuse to pay. Leave this man alone at once. You're under arrest. We'll see about that. And who will stop us? We are the guard. You certainly don't deserve such a name. Bunch of cowards. Yield without a fuss and you'll have the right to a trial. Really? And then it'll be the gallows. Do you think we're pushovers? 
Your Excellency, you saved my trade and my life. Stay alert. Their leader was obviously not present. I heard about the man with the silver coin, but this is the first time they told me his name. If they let him escape, it's only because they were thinking of killing you. I beg you, find this Egon and stop him. None of us will be safe as long as he's free. Don't worry. I don't intend to let him go. We must find this Egon. At the barracks, perhaps. I doubt our man goes openly by that name. It is the silver coin we must look for. It's blocked. Well, men, how's it going? Everything's fine, Lieutenant. Nothing to report. All our friends are quiet. Perfectly quiet. As soon as they hear about a silver coin, they start trembling. Good. It would be a shame to have to make another example of them, right? Oh, there's no need, Lieutenant. They've been as sweet as lamb since Renault's accident. Accidents happen so quickly. I'm waiting for another delivery today. Have you seen your comrades? No, they must have stopped at the tavern on the way. As soon as we see them, we'll send them your way, Lieutenant. I hope those idiots aren't drinking my dew. No one would dare do that to you, Lieutenant. I hope not. Well, I'll have to remind them that the silver coin can shake everyone, even the guards. Well, I'll lead you. I have urgent business to attend to. Now, don't forget to send me those drunkards. Farewell, Lieutenant. There is no doubt. Here is our man. Let's follow him discreetly. Who are you? You're following me. Indeed. We would like to talk to you about the silver coin, Egon. Egon? <laughs> you must be mistaken. I don't know anyone by that name. Do not take us for fools. We heard you speak with your men. I don't know what you've heard, but you're wrong. I'm not Egon. Regardless, you are implicated in a murder and in the extortion of merchants. You are therefore under arrest. And we will finish by having you tell us who Egon is and where to find him. 
Oh, yes. We'll see about that. Found it, Dana. Remember him, Dan. Oh, finally decided to follow us. So you can torture me. You can do whatever you want. I'll not tell you anything. I don't know who Egon is. I'm just a middleman. You're wasting your time. You must know more than you're willing to say. Come on. I'd rather die. <laughs> Move away. Things are about to get dicey. <laughs> The silver coin, his symbol of recognition. I have to show it to Manfred. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I conducted my investigation on the extortion organized by members of the Guard. I think I've put an end to it, at least temporarily. Unfortunately, I had to kill some of them as they were about to attack a merchant. But there are still some other soldiers involved that I should tell you about. Thank you, Your Excellency. I will have these men arrested immediately. These foolish brutes not only harm your merchants, but the entire reputation of the Guard. But you said you've only put an end to it temporarily. What makes you think this criminality might resume? Their leader is still on the loose. They call him Egon, although I doubt it's his real name. I got hold of one of his lieutenants. He was carrying a silver coin, which seems to be a symbol of recognition between the gang members. But the man preferred to die rather than tell us anything about his leader. Loyalty? Or terror? Terror, I fear. From the merchants to the guards, everyone seems to tremble in front of this Egon. I don't know any guard of that name. But as you said, it's probably a pseudonym. Here, Your Excellency. Take this. On behalf of the guard, to thank you for settling this case. And rest assured that I will conduct a thorough investigation on my side. I'll also make sure that in future the city guard is made up only of men of trust. Thank you. I will return to see how your investigation is going. I don't take this matter lightly. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Blood. There's something I would like to talk to you about. I'm listening. I recruited a young man for the guard a few months ago. Talented. Very talented. And honorable. I've been tracking his progress, and I learned that he's been sent to the barracks in New Serene. I would like you to meet him so that you can give me your opinion. My opinion? On what? 
Ever since our departure from Serene, I've spent nearly every second at your side. But I have clear standing orders to assure the protection of Constantine. And I don't know his guards. Not well, in any case. I see. You've been thinking this recruit might be a suitable personal guard? Precisely. And your opinion has weight. So then, would you like to accompany me to meet him? But of course, let's go. Raina must be with the other recruits in the barracks. I had thought you were lone wolf with only our good friend in your pack. But I was mistaken. I am full of surprises, pretty she-wolf. Good day, soldiers. Your Excellency. Captain. Soldiers, may we be of service. Rank and assignment, soldiers. Recruit, first class, Blue Silver Regiment, 8th Company, Your Excellency. The Blue Silver Regiment is made up of men attributed to serve the Congregation of Merchants. I'm one of them, and the 8th Company was sent to Tier for D, with two other companies. Anything else, Excellency? What is your charge? Maintain order in the city, Excellency. Anything else, Excellency? I'm looking for the soldier, Rayner. Is he in the barracks? I never heard that name before, Captain. Never heard the name, Captain. That's strange. I'm certain he was sent here. Maybe he's been moved since then. When was the last time you'd heard news of him? In Serene, just before our departure. But that's been a couple of months. If I may, Captain, sh should I have a word with the Quartermaster? That's right, Captain. He has a register with the affectations of every recruit in the Blue Silver Regiment. Anything else, Excellency? That will be all. At ease, soldiers. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I've been looking for one of my recruits. Goes by the name of Rayner. I would like for His Excellency to meet him. Rayner? I'm sorry, Kurt. I thought you'd been informed. Informed about what? He is dead. He was found. Drowned in the port harbor day before yesterday. I was told he had too much to drink and fell in. I'm extremely sorry, Kurt. The young men drink more than they can handle when they're on leave. That's bollocks. That lad isn't the sort to sully himself with drink. I don't believe it. People change. When they're far from home, the lads have little else to do. I still don't believe it. Listen, you might as well go and ask the doctor down in the morgue. I might have misunderstood what was reported to me. Those doctors use such long words for simple things. Excellent idea. At least now you'll see it for yourself. You're right. Let's go. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Well now, a visit. Can I help you with something? We are here concerning the matter of Recruit Reyna. Are you family or friends? You could say that. I'm the one who recruited the lad. I see. Well, what I can do is tell you what I can. When was the body brought to you? Day before yesterday, in the early morning. Can you tell me anything about the circumstances? All I know is what I was told by the fellows who brought the body to me. They said they'd spent the evening together at the tavern, that they'd had a great deal to drink. A horrid habit the soldiers all seemed to share. Rayner was not a drinker. Maybe not. All the same, he was drinking that night. He stepped outside for a moment and never came back in. His companions found him drowned in the bay early morn, and they brought him to me. How, then, did he die, in your opinion? He drowned. I'm sorry. It's regrettable. He was 
Quite a young man. Yeah, and his death makes no sense. He didn't drink, and he knew how to swim. All the same, that's what happened. I greatly regret it. Might we take a look at the body? Um, no, I wouldn't recommend that. To see your friend in such a state. I'm a soldier, Doc. I've seen a number of men in pieces. Let me see the young lad. I... I regret, Captain, I cannot allow that. I have as of yet to present myself. I'm Sir Desardé, legate of the Congregation of Merchants on Tiafredi. And as the title infers, I have the power to inspect this barracks and all that it contains. Therefore, I must insist. I see. A thousand pardons, Excellency. I should have recognized you and shown more respect. It's the body in the middle. Examine him if you must. But please be so kind as to not leave a mess after you. This doesn't look like the body of young Rainer. This one is just a boy. His face is still locked in an expression of pain. Kurt, is this your recruit? Yes, that's my Rainer. Poor kid. I should have left him with his family where he was. If you want to learn more, we'll need to examine the body. Is that all right? He's not the first young man I've seen with the lights gone from his eyes. Go on. I'm no doctor, but this boy doesn't seem to have drowned at all. It looks like he's been beaten. Oh, it's suspicious. The boy I knew would never have drunk himself senseless to the point he'd fall into the bay, I'm telling you. I believe you, Kurt. But if we want to prove it, we'll need to find more evidence. Excuse me, Doctor, but you owe us a few explanations. This boy did not die by drowning. It is absolutely the cause of death, I assure you. The science of death is a complex art, and you are certainly not a doctor. That is true, but you are. Do you recognize your own notes? Your writing is hard to read, but the word drowning never appears. Oh, what an idiot. I should have burned those notes. I am truly sorry. I, I swear I have never, ever falsified a report before. But I was given no choice in the matter. How's that? What are you talking about? <laughs> Two men, uh, lieutenants, I believe, brought a body to me telling me the boy had drowned in an accident. I saw immediately this was a lie, but I did not push the matter. I began my examination, planning to submit my report to the quartermaster as per usual. But the men returned. I was told to forget what I'd discovered, and say that he had indeed drowned, or else. Who were they? I have no idea. I had never seen them before at the barracks. I, I guess they're ranked by their uniforms. What colors were they sporting? None. They must have removed the emblems of their regiment. Listen, it's obvious that this boy was beaten repetitively, and that was the cause of death. I have no intention of suffering the same fate. Have no fear, Doctor. We will make no mention of your name. Andivors Tire. That means, may the earth welcome him. I am sorry for you, Kurt. Thank you, Siora. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? We have a situation, Manfred. Rainer didn't drown. The doctor falsified his report. 
He was threatened and feared for his own life. You have to be pulling me leg. Who bullied the crow face? Lieutenants that he didn't recognize, alas. And he wore no regiment emblems. Which regiment was Rayner assigned to? I would like to have a word with his commanding officer. Let me have a look at the register. My memory isn't what it once was. Stab my heart with a rusty blade. His name's been crossed out. Oh, if I catch the bastard that did that. What mess was the boy into, Manfred? What could this be about? Your lad was in the 6th or maybe the 11th. Before being reassigned to who knows where. Just like that? You out of everyone have to know where the recruits are assigned. Not of late. This isn't the first lad who's been reassigned all of a sudden at the drop of a hat. Each time I start complaining about it, I'm told they've changed regiments. And it's not my concern. Something truly bizarre is going on here. I don't like this at all. Let's try and discover which company he was stationed at before this mysterious reassignment. Is there anything else? No, thank you. I need to get to the bottom of this mystery, Greenblood. I don't like being taken for a fool. Even if the lieutenants weren't stationed at these barracks, someone here must know where Rayner was assigned. We should also go and check the tavern. Men on leave will perhaps have looser lips than those within the walls. Good day, soldier. Uh, good day, my lord. De Sarde, legate of the congregation on Tierfredi. Captain Kurt. Oh, I... Excuse me, Excellency. I... I didn't know. Captain, I... I truly am sorry. At your service, my lord. Excellency. Since you know who we are, present yourself, soldier. Ah. Yes, sir. Recruit 2nd Class Alric, Blue Silver Regiment, 11th Company. At your service. Anything else? You don't quite look like you've got the hang of all this. How long have you been in? I... Is it that obvious? It's quite normal for a new recruit. I joined up four months ago. But at the beginning, we were on board ship, you see. I don't know if that really counts. I started exercises when we got to New Serene. But I'm making progress, they say. And do you like it here? I sure do. That's why I joined the Guard. To come here, to leave the continent. Know what I mean? I do. Anything else? Do you know a recruit going by the name of Rayner? Rayner? I... It's just... Excellency, please. The boy is terrified now that he knows who we are. So long as he's in that state, he'll say nothing of worth. You should bring him a bottle to calm his nerves. That will be all, soldier. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. What can I pour for you? I heard there are some... interesting activities down in the basement. Really? Well, that'd be news to me. It was a friend of mine who told me about it. A friend who loves his cards. If you're also a player, then yes, it might be something you'd appreciate. You'll even find pleasant company as well, if you're feeling alone and have some coin to part with. Anything else? Give me a bottle of your best drink. There you go. But be careful, she's got a strong bite. At your service, my lord. Excellency. Here. You seem tired and a little on edge. A drink would do you some good. It's just that... I don't know if I'm allowed. You're on leave, or you wouldn't be at the tavern. Then why not? Yes, but this is His Excellency's own bottle. I don't know if I can. Drink, I tell you. Now then, why don't you tell us what you know about Rayner? Well, I didn't. I didn't serve with him. Well, not really. We just crossed paths. He was leaving the 11th when I joined. Everyone said he was good, strong, and, er, uh, followed orders. And then, poof, Lieutenant got this order, and he wasn't happy. 
and I mean really quite unhappy. And then Rayner, he was gone. We never saw him again. We asked where he'd been sent, but the lieutenant didn't want to tell us. Said that it was none of our business. But you, he won't be able to say no to you. You should go and offer him a drink too. Where can we find your lieutenant? At the barracks. Thank you. And watch yourself when leaving. Wouldn't want you to fall into the bay. That will be all, soldier. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Hello, officer. Excellency, can I do something for you? Could you tell me which company you serve? The 11th, Excellency. Anything else? What's your assignment? The 11th is assigned to road and outpost security for the congregation on the island. As for me, I'm responsible for the training of recruits and the patrol duty roster. Anything else? We are concerned about the death of a young recruit named Rayner. Let's be perfectly straight. We know that Rayner belonged to your company. And as the acting lieutenant instructor, you certainly had him under your command. So just stop with the lies. We've lost enough time here. You know what they say. Guard business is well guarded. And concerns only the guard. Now, unless you've lost your eyesight, you've a captain in front of you. I... I know. But this story is dangerous, Captain. If you have so much as an ounce of respect for the boy, speak to us. Don't you believe he deserves justice? Yes. Of course. Rayner was indeed a member of my company. And an excellent recruit. But you already know that. Continue. One morning, I got a note telling me he'd been transferred from my company. He'd received a new assignment. I was so furious that I did my own little investigation. To see where he'd been sent wasn't easy. No one wanted to give me answers. No one seemed to know anything. But one thing's for certain. Rayner wasn't the only man to have... disappeared. I learned that a good many recruits, all the cream of the crop, had been reassigned. And finally, I learned about the existence of a phantom regiment. What sort of nonsense are you talking about? A sort of secret elite company that were following a special training program where can we find them i've no idea i had to put my investigation to rest things were getting dangerous i began to sense i was being watched this regiment protects its secrets at all costs with few scruples if you want to know more the training officer of the sixths might know something it's been said that he took part in one of their missions alongside them are you certain you've nothing more to tell me about this infamous secret regiment? I've told you everything I know, at the risk of ending up like Rayner, Excellency. Go and see the Officer of the Sixths if you want to learn more. And leave me alone now. Anything else? Are you certain you've nothing more to tell me about this infamous secret- I've told you everything Go I- Go and see the off- Thank you, Lieutenant. Good day, Lieutenant. Excellency. 
What's your pleasure? What company do you serve? The Sixth Excellency. Anything else? To where are you assigned? The Sixth Company is in charge of exploration and expansion of the colony of the Congregation of Merchants on the island. We operate mainly in the wilderness areas, in direct contact with the natives. But don't worry, we respect to the letter, Congregation, directives and standing orders. We avoid all confrontation with them as much as possible. Anything else? Tell me about the Phantom Regiment. About what? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, Your Excellency. Come now, Lieutenant. You do realize that the activities of this regiment are particularly suspicious. Secrets, threats, fabrications, and maybe even an assassination. This resembles more the pursuits of a criminal organization than the Honorable Coin Guard. Am I to conclude that you are involved? No. No. I assure you that isn't the case. So then tell me what you know about the regiment. I've seen the regiment. Even fought beside them on an operation. On that occasion, our marching orders were kept secret until the last minute. We were asked to remove our regiment emblems. And our pay wasn't even recorded. And of course, we were ordered to speak to no one about it under any circumstances. I hope you realize the risk I'm taking, talking to you about all this. Have no fear. We understand. What was this operation? An attack. A lightning strike on a caravan from the Bridge Alliance. Marvelous. A company that behaves like back alley bandits. I know. It really shakes up the honor code. The regiment is made up of young recruits, carefully chosen. Only the best make it through. The training is extremely arduous. And my guess is that Rainer isn't the only one who's died from it. I know that they set up camp just outside the city, where the men live and train. But I'd be at a loss to tell you precisely where it's found. Sorry, Captain. Thank you, Lieutenant. This story is making me sick. Poor Rainer. If I'd have known, I'd never have recruited him. I'm sorry, Kurt. This isn't your doing. But these filthy phantoms, or whatever they are, are gonna have to settle the debt. Believe me. You do realize that your own commander is certainly involved in this on some level. Outright clandestine operations could not have taken place without his approval. That he's aware of the existence of the regiment, there is no doubt. That he approves of what they're doing. It wouldn't be the first head that didn't know what his hands were up to. What do you wish to do now? I'm gonna find the location of this camp. I have a few friends that can certainly help us. And when I know where to smoke out these bastards, I'll go and have a few fiery words. If you were of a mind to accompany me, two of us would not be too many to make sure they settle their debts. Let me know when you discover where they are to be found. You can count on me. Oh, it's a great pleasure. To...
Want armor that fits you like a glove? We'll make it for you. Atuoi! Can you help me? Bertir Tumad on Olmenawi. Why are you dressed like this? Hello. I'm not one of your people. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. A legate? Is that someone important? Indeed. I'm in charge of diplomatic relationships with other nations. So you'll be able to help me? My chief sent me to trade some items with your village, but there are these bod irony who do not want me to set up shop here. These what? Bod irony. The ironbacks. The warriors who protect this village. Every time I come, they take my items without giving me anything in exchange. Please, I don't understand how things work here. Very well. Stay here. I'll try to clear this up. Adloredar on Olmenawi. May the earth always be sturdy under your footsteps. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I met an islander in the streets who was complaining to me about the guard's behavior. Really? It would seem that patrols have confiscated the goods he was hoping to sell several times. Oh, I see. Indeed, I've been told about this man. The problem, Your Excellency, is that our orders are strict. Merchants who do not have a patent ratified by the minister cannot sell their goods in the street. And since your islander doesn't have one, I doubt he even knows what it is, my men have no choice but to confiscate his knickknacks. I see. Thanks for clarifying that. I'll talk to the minister. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Minister. Your Excellency, it is always an honor. How may I serve you? I would like to talk to you about an islander who is trying to set up shop in our city. Since he doesn't have a patent, his wares get confiscated as soon as he receives them. And you want me to provide him with the said patent? I would be delighted to show you the procedure to follow so that we may study his request. You'll understand that we cannot give an authorization without having determined the value of the goods beforehand. We must determine the tax rate according to this value, determine the best emplacement for this business. In short, these things take time. A lot of time. I'm certain that my cousin will be delighted to hear that our relations with the natives are progressing in a significant way. And he will probably be very grateful to the minister who helped their first merchant to set up shop in our city. Indeed. I seem to recall reading a circular on the necessity of establishing good relations with the natives. We could accelerate things by leaving some formalities for later. I would think so too. Very well. In that case... 
Here's the patent that will allow your protege to legally pursue his activity in the city. You should give him this copy, the other one will be kept in the archives. However, one of my representatives will visit his stall for the estimation and to determine the tax rate in accordance with the... Thanks a lot, Minister. Looking forward to seeing you again. Would you like anything else? That'll be all. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Good day, Lady Morange. Do you remember me? Of course. So de Sardé, isn't it? I hope that you and your cousin have grown to like it here. But I have little reason to believe you have paid me a visit to exchange civilities. Can I be of service? What can you tell me about the relations we have with other nations? We play a difficult role, caught between these two enemy nations who are nonetheless our allies. The smallest action could tip the balance and draw us into their conflict. If I may offer some advice, be very careful. We do not want a war to break out here. You seem interested in the Islanders. As a matter of fact, I find their culture fascinating, but I can't say I know much about them. They are quite secretive and protect their cult and traditions from the curiosity of strangers. I know that their sages, they call them Donegada, are the guardians of their rituals as well as of the island. They have very strong links with nature and the creatures that inhabit it. They're also good healers. I could talk about them for hours, but you will learn more from the islanders themselves. My lady, I have to go. Goodbye. Something terrible happened. What is it? I was just bringing you the patent you needed to set up shop. The Bod Irony came back and they took my cousin away. He came to bring us animal pelts and new objects from the village. But the warriors came back. They took everything he was bringing me. And they also took him. Oh, I don't know what they will do with him. Please, bring him back to me. I don't see why they would have arrested your cousin, but I'll try to find out. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I've come to see you again to talk about the Islander merchant. I managed to obtain a license for him, but he informed me that while I was taking care of this, his cousin, who was making a delivery for him, was arrested. I'm sorry, Your Excellency. Especially considering you've managed to obtain an official authorization for him. I'm afraid my men ran out of patience when they saw this hunter making deliveries for the merchant again. 
They wanted to confiscate his cargo, but the lad resisted, and... He was thrown in jail for disorderly conduct. If you want to set him free, that's where you must go. Sorry, again, Your Excellency. I should have known you'd managed to obtain the necessary license for your protégé and told the patrol. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Can I do for you? I'm looking for a prisoner, a native who should have been brought here recently. You're a bit late. He was sent to fight in the arena. In the arena? So this man was judged? Who pronounced the sentence? Whoa there! Do you really think that we would organize a proper trial for a savage? He attacked some guards. He's lucky he won't gun down right there and then. At least in the arena, he has a chance of survival, since apparently, he's a hunter. This man was only defending the goods he was bringing to his cousin, and now he has to fight for his life. I have no hand in this. I'm not the one who made this decision. They brought him here, and then they took him away, that's all. What did you do with the goods he had with him? They got confiscated, put in the storeroom, like all the rest. Anything else? I must leave you. This part of the establishment is reserved for regular customers who paid an entry fee. Sorry, but I can't let you in. In that case, allow me to pay the fee. We're delighted to have you as a regular customer, Your Excellency. Have fun. Interested in making a little wager? Unless you'd rather fight. On what are people betting? On the arena fights, of course. Fortunes are made and unmade here. A combat is so much more exciting when spiced with a wager. What type of fighting goes on here? Ah, there's a bit of everything. Animals, fighters, and even some island beasts go at each other in the pit. If you're tempted, you can even participate. The master of the arena will be glad to enroll you. I'll be going now. Later, then. Good day. And welcome to the arena. Is this your first time? It is. Excellent. The crowd just loves to see new faces. So, are you ready to rise to the challenge? Or would you like a little reminder of the rules before jumping in? Unless, of course, you're just here to go over the basics and get in some practice.
Could you explain the rules again? Certainly. Regular combats take place in groups. Two of your companions will fight at your side. In order to become a champion, you'll need to win the five challenges that become more and more difficult. Each challenge is broken down into three rounds. You can take a breather in between each one. But if you give up on a challenge, you'll need to start all over again from the beginning. Once the challenge has been completed, you can fire any of the rounds you've already won again, just for the fun of it. I wish to fight alongside the island hunter that was captured. Really? You'd have to go in alone. Your friends will need to stay in the stands. Are you sure that this prisoner is worth risking your life for? This man has been the victim of terrible injustice. I cannot stand aside without doing anything. Oh, that's extremely noble of you. But it's just the sort of crazy idea that the crowd loves. <laughs> I have to warn you, though. If you want to fight now, you will lose your bonus in the running challenges. So, what'll it be? Justice cannot wait. I'm ready to fight. Excellent. In that case, the arena awaits you. You've won the affections of the crowd, and when the crowd makes a decision, it gets what it wants. You're free, prisoner. <laughs> I owe you my life on Al Manawi. Blessed be the winds that have blown you to my side. By what name should I address you? My name is the Sade. In fact, it's your cousin the merchant that sent me. Follow me. Let's go and find him. Ready to excite the crowd. I need to get going. Huh. A pity. Well... Ah! An old Menawi! I'm glad to see you again. Oi, Ven! I'm so glad to see you alive! Then you must thank this on old Menawi. He fought to save me. Thank you. May the grass always be soft beneath your feet. Don't mention it. I also brought back your goods. May the trees always bear you fruit. We owe you a lot. You should go see Ulan, the chief of Vignamri, my village. He wants to be friends with the Renaigse. Since you are a legate, you could talk to him. Ready to excite the crowd. Perfect. As soon as you're ready, you can jump right in. My lords and ladies, here is a new team of fighters taking to our proud arena. Give them a hearty welcome! Found it, 
Appreciated it. Now that was a challenge well won. Perfect. As soon as you're ready, you can jump right in. You saw them win the first challenge with audacity, and here they are again for the second. Ladies and lords, applause for this unique team, led by the congregation legate himself. Appreciated it. Now that was a challenge well won.
Greetings! Do you want to travel without tiring yourself out? My caravan goes through all the cities. So, where should I drop you? Thanks, but I'd rather walk. Honor Manawi, do you need something? The first time you saw me, did you really think I was a native? Aside from the way you dress, you resemble a native. I have never seen an Honor Manawi amongst the Renagse before. Is it so surprising that I made this mistake? No, I understand. And I hope that this singular appearance makes me more attractive to you. Perhaps if your difference wasn't merely physical, but your heart is evidently the heart of a Renaixe. Anything else? I've never heard you talk about your father. Who was he? He was the Donegad of our clan. He died many cycles ago, but this memory is still painful. So we usually avoid the subject. What happened to him? He was killed as he tried to escape the lions who wanted to capture him. My mother never really recovered from it. This is one of the reasons why she decided to go to war. Anything else? I must leave you. See you later.
Halt! Entering this camp is strictly forbidden. Very well, soldiers. We're leaving. Can't do that.
are about to get dicey!
I need a bit of practice. I need a bit of practice.
hold on much longer. Move away. Things are about to get dicey. Dear to man. Oi, Renaixe. Are you a hunter? I am skilled, but unable to chase away all of these ten lands alone. Our village barely survives. Hello there. Bear dear to mud. Renaik say the Donegat cannot honor you with a visit. Stay out of our way. We have no interest in speaking with a mind shaker. Mind shaker? That's what you call missionaries, and we aren't missionaries. Never mind. The Donegat will not receive you. All right. We'll leave.
Desarde, I have a favor to ask. Very well, I'm listening. Do you remember the story of Jonah? Of course. Well, I'm like him, a donation to the sea. My family also gave me to the Nords. I don't know anything about my real family, except that they are probably affluent and from the congregation. When I was born, the Nords and the merchant princes had a complex relationship. I must have been used to settle a debt or forge a truce, but that doesn't matter. The mystery of my origins has now become an obsession. I need to know where I come from. If I were patient enough, I'd wait to become a fleet commander, and then I would be told. But since being laid off, such a promotion seems somewhat improbable. And you want me to help you find this information? You understand correctly. The records of all seamen stationed on the island are in their respective ports. Mine must be in the harbor office in New Serene, and it must contain my family name. But if I go there, I'd be spotted right away. Could you go there and bring the file to me? Of course. But you will have to come with me to the port and tell me a little more. Right. Also, I don't want any noughts to be hurt in the process. Despite my desire to know my origins, the noughts are still my family. Don't worry. We'll be discreet.
Here we are. We have a good view from here. The harbor office is well guarded, both outside and inside. Getting through the main entrance is impossible. There must be a blind spot. There's always one. You could dress as a knot and go through the back door, but someone may recognize you inside. I'll need to be much more discreet. A potion could help me. That is an option, yes, but since I'd rather avoid hurting any knots, I made some inquiries. The harbor office has an arrangement with Dieter from the brothel. Girls come every night with wine. I see. You want us to spike the wine so that they sleep during our search. It's a proven technique. And I can assure you, they do not sniff the wine before drinking it. Right. Let's get some sleeping pills. Then we'll go see Dieter. Such a pleasure to see you again. Have you seen it? Thank you for your visit. See you soon. Yes, why? You looking to have a good time? It seems like you're sending girls and wine to the harbor office every night. So? There's no law against that, is there? No. And I'm not here to stop you. Listen, Dieter. We just wanted to add a secret ingredient to your wine tonight. What? Are you joking? Are you trying to slip a laxative in it? We were thinking more of sleeping pills. Nothing bad, you see. Listen, I have nothing against a little prank, but I can't risk losing my best customers. Captain Vasco is very influential among the Nords. Maybe he could help expand your excellent clientele even further. If you accept, I could arrange for your agreement to come to fruition. In San Mateus, for example. San Mateus? Ah, I would have to recruit. But yeah, that would be interesting. So then, we agree? Yes, that's fine. Tonight your friends will receive their delivery seasoned. Now, give me the sleeping potion. Thanks to Dita, you should be able to slip into the Harbor Master's office after dark. But you should still dress as one of us, just to make sure you avoid confrontation. Good idea. I'll see to it. Black. It's the perfect moment. Dieter's girls should be here soon. What do you want to do? 
We will wait for Dieter's girls to do their work as planned. Then we'll enter. Very well. It's definitely the safer option. Dieter's daughter is gone. Your guards should get a good night's sleep now. You should go. I'll wait here as planned. I can't risk getting caught there. Don't worry. I'll make sure not to hurt anyone. Good luck, Disardi. Don't have the key. Locked. I was able to recover your file, Vasco. And nobody saw me. Wonderful. You did everything perfectly. So, let's see what this file can tell us. So I was right. My real name is Leandra, son of the Darcy family from Serene. Nobles, I suppose. Yes. I must admit, I had no idea they'd given a son to the Nords. To think that I spent my childhood polishing ship bridges when I could have been wearing silk. I'm sorry for you, Vasco, but growing up in nobility is not as simple as it sounds. Really? Well, whatever. I've learnt my real name thanks to you, and that's what I wanted. Leandra Darcy. I remember coming across a Darcy at my uncle's court. Your brother, no doubt. My brother? What was he like? It was a long time ago. We were children. I couldn't tell you what he looks like today. A brother? I wonder if we are alike despite our completely different lives. Thank you for sharing this and for telling me about him. You gave me back my identity. This is more important than the Norts care to admit. Great pleasure to see.
One armor that fits you like. Oh. The best fog. Oh, it's a great. The best forge in tier for a day. Blades, armor, locks, custom pieces made to order. Oh, it's a great. The best forge in tier for a day. Blades, armor, locks. Lay the poison on my blade, money. Then let's go. Desarde, can I do anything for you? I must leave you. Greetings. What can I do for you? Why build an outpost here? Well, we do have to watch over the land surrounding the city. With the bandits, the beasts, and the natives. We don't have a lot of time to rest, you know. Anything else?
I don't have the key. Halt! In the name of the Enlightened One, present yourself. Sir de Sardé, emissary of the Congregation of Merchants on Tierfredi. I have come to present my regards to your governor. We have been expecting your visit, Your Excellency. Welcome. May he light your way. Desarde, I'd like to know more about my family. I need to know what became of them. Could you accompany me to see Lady Morange? I'm afraid that without you, she may refuse to give me any information. All right, Vasco. Let's go see Lady Laureen Morange.
day, dear sir. Happy to see you again in such fine health. How can I be of service? We would like to have some information regarding an important family, the Darcys. Well, I could tell you many things about them, but I suppose that you want to know something in particular? Are there any members of this family on the island? Indeed, Bastien Darcy, the son of the family, has been in New Serene for some time. Last I heard about it, he was doing business, but that doesn't help in knowing where he is. The Darcy's first attempt at establishing themselves on this island wasn't very fruitful, but I seem to recall that since then the son has found a competent associate who's been working here for a long time. Perfect. Could you tell us where to find her? Of course. Ask for a Madame Clerk near the warehouses on the port. That's where she normally is. I hope the Darcy's are not in trouble. Don't worry, madam. Their name was simply mentioned in some business discussions. We are thinking about becoming associates. We would like to know more about them to form an opinion. If you ask me, you should forget this idea, Your Excellency. Their son is a poor business partner. Why do you say that? I do not mean to speak ill of him. Perhaps it would be better for you to form your own opinion. Well, thank you for your help, madam. Can I help you with any other matter? My lady, I have to go. Goodbye. Come closer, good people. The cure is You? Are you here to do business? Are you Madam Clerk? We would like to meet with your associate, Mr. Darcy. Bastian? I don't know where he is. I can't say that he often graces us with his presence. You don't have the slightest idea where he is? I am not his caretaker, you know. You don't seem to hold him in high regard. Listen, my relationship with my associate is no one else's concern. And if you didn't come to do business, well... We must find him. This man you can see by my side is his brother. Do not insult my intelligence. I know that the Darcy's only have one son, alas. You can see the Nort tattoos on his face, can't you? And a merchant like you must surely know about the Nort's recruiting process. So it is true. The Darcy's gave away one of their children. I find it hard to believe. He was supposed to go to Hikmet to deal with one of our clients but I didn't receive any news from him after his departure. And given his tendency to get himself into impossible situations, I didn't try to get any. Who is this client? His name is Ferrat. You'll find him in the Alchemist District. Uh, I'll write this down. You think something may have happened to him there? His mission wasn't very complicated. He had to pay for a valuable shipment and take charge of it. But with Bastion, anything is possible. Thank you, madam. Greetings. My caravan goes through all the Siso. Where would you... To Hikmet, please. Halt! What's your destination, my lord? Just into town. I am an emissary of the congregation and I'm here to discuss matters with your governor. Why the checkpoint? We've got orders to verify all comings and goings. The roads are becoming dangerous. Do you have anything particular to report? Nothing out of the ordinary. Well then, good travels, my lord.
Halt! Your names, titles, and business at hand. Sir de Sardé, emissary of the Congregation of Merchants on Tia Fredi. I have come to present my regards to your governor. Your papers seem to be in order. Welcome to Hikmet, Your Excellency. If you come to do business, you should go upstairs. I am but a poor underling. Hello, sir. Is this the house of the man called Farad? It is I. What can I do for you? We're searching for Mr. Darcy. He was supposed to come here to do business. Yes. Yes, he did come here, but I don't know where he is. To be honest, our exchange did not exactly go as planned. And if you are his associate, or a member of his family, know that you owe me a large sum of money. How so? Well, this Darcy fellow came here to take the shipment, and he was supposed to deliver me a promissory note. Which never arrived, I imagine. How could you let him leave with your merchandise without payment? Well, he's the son of a very well-known family. I did not deem it necessary to try and obtain more guarantees. What if something happened to him? Nothing happened. At least I don't think so. Why should that concern me? I'm not his brother. He owes me money, and I do not have the slightest idea of where he might be. I suspect that you're not telling us everything. Oh, come on. If you have not come to repay his debt, leave me alone so I can work in peace. Greetings. If you have come to do business, head upstairs, if there's any business left to do. Why do you say that? They haven't been paying me, and I've had to work with cheap ingredients for weeks. What do you do here, exactly? I create and prepare complex potions. Not simple health potions, but far more subtle things. And if I'm not mistaken, things are not going the way you would want them to. The boss has always been difficult, but ever since he got ripped off, it has been a living hell. I work using leftovers thrown away by all the other alchemists, while listening to him screaming at me and everyone else all day. This is no way to live. Have you heard of a man called Bastian Darcy? <sighs> it would be difficult not to. His name is the only thing my boss talks about. Apparently, he did not pay for one of our shipments and still left with the goods. And now my boss makes me work twice as much to compensate for his losses. With ingredients I wouldn't even feed to a pig. And what did your boss do? Well, he spent every waking hour cursing his name. That's how I learned about it. How can a brilliant, conscientious alchemist keep working here? I am certain that any great laboratory in town would welcome you with open arms. So why continue protecting your employer? Oh, you're right. Anywhere is better than here. My boss did not only curse the name of the man you're looking for, he also hired some thugs to find him and our shipment. Interesting. I think we may need to have a few words with your employer. If you could also tell him that I am resigning, then I won't need to go upstairs. You again. I already told you that I do not know where the man you're searching for is. You may not know where he is, but you did everything you could to find him, didn't you? What do you mean? 
Does this document ring a bell? You hired some debt collectors to find Mr. Darcy. How dare you rummage through my belongings? You could have taken legal action and retrieved what you were owed, but you sent some killers instead. I doubt the governor would approve. Do you want us to tell him about it? No. But please, understand me. The Darcy family is on the continent. It would take months for them to reply to my complaint. What other solution was there? My shop will not survive this. Tell us who these debt collectors are and we'll take care of it. They loiter in an alleyway of ill repute, not far from here, in the science district. That's what I feared. Probably a bunch of cutthroats. If Bastion survives... If he survives, remind him of what he owes me. Essence of alchemy. Greetings. I immediately spotted that you are a real science enthusiast. I have all the potions you could ever dream of. And other things, too. We also sell ingredients, and we even craft on demand. So, what would you like? Hey, you! Leave this man alone! What do you want? No one asked you for your opinion, so get lost! Maybe he's friends with the weakling. Maybe. In any case, it seems like he wants to share his fate. You think I'm afraid? I fought uglier people than you. Vasco, let me try to take care of this. How much money are we talking about? You're here to collect a debt, right? Between what he owes our client and our commission, it's a hefty sum. But if you want to pay any stead, my lord, please do. I don't think you realize who you are dealing with, so let me introduce myself. My name is De Sade. I am the legate of the congregation, and I am here to save the life of one of our citizens. If you do not deliver him to me immediately, I will have no choice but to inform the governor. And you'll end up rotting in jail in no time. Damn it, they look serious. 
Yes, a bit too much. Listen, we don't want to get in trouble with the governor, so take him. Yeah, if our client wants to get repaid, he'll have to make an official request. Come. Thank you for your intervention. I thought these brutes would kill me. Don't mention it. It's only natural. But how did you end up in such a situation? Oh, I'm certain someone like you, who belongs to high society, will understand. There is a game table here that is attended by the best of the aristocracy. I lost the money I owed to that merchant while playing there. And since I got out with a few other debts, I had to leave the merchandise as repayment as well. But that's a mere trifle that my father would have paid for without thinking twice. I never would have thought that someone would send these types of brutes after me. What a lack of tact. In any case, I am extremely grateful to you. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? My name is Captain Vasco. Nought and sea given. It was a pleasure, sir. De Sarde, can I do anything for you? I must leave you. Thank you, De Sarde. My pleasure. But why didn't you tell him who you were? But I did tell him. I was stupid. I resented everyone, and you even more, for the life I didn't get to live. You had it all, everything I thought I was entitled to. But after seeing Bastion, I realized that in the end, I was exactly who I wanted to be. A naught, and a proud one at that. I'm glad to hear it. No more regrets? No more regrets. And I certainly don't regret not being called Leandra Darcy. <laughs> Greenblood, my friend. Do you need something? I must leave you. Your gods! Answer me. Why? Why are you doing this? Behold your so-called gods. Your demons. 
They burn. They are nothing. You shed tears for this creature while your heart should be full of joy. Welcoming the light. Forget your pagan foul teachings. Embrace the true faith. You are mad. Inquisitor? You! Stop where you are! The pagan stink of these soulless natives taints you. You bring demon-spawned barbarians through our gates. <sighs> This man just killed some helpless soul in front of our eyes, and he calls us barbarians. Who are you to address with such familiarity? I am the Inquisitor Aloysius, and you will be going nowhere, lest your answers give me satisfaction. Do you believe that the God of Light is the one and only God? Don't tell me that you are going to humor this crazed assassin. If I want to complete my mission, I believe I have no other choice. Diplomacy may seem to you of little import, but I doubt that your governor will be of a similar opinion. Aggression towards an emissary of another nation is an error that could lead to war. You cannot hide from the divinity behind politics. But very well. I leave you in divine hands. This time. I shall allow you to continue along your path. I am certain ours will cross again, and be aware that wheresoever you wander, you shall be weighed, measured, and judged. I've been given an excuse to put this madman to the sword, but you did well. Congratulations. You are already a great diplomat. <laughs> it seems to me you're being sarcastic. Me? My apologies, my lord. It wasn't my intention. Young man. Pardon me. Are you not part of the new governor's entourage? I'm his cousin, and I'm accompanying him on his mission to Tirfredi. What can I do for you, Father? Bishop Petrus, how divinely fortunate this is. Did you know that I had the honor of meeting you at your uncle's court when you were a child? I would never have imagined that you would grow up to resemble the island natives so closely. The island was yet to be discovered. How could you have known? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't lost your clever little tongue. You were always quite a remarkable young boy. I'm on my way to New Serene as an ambassador to the new governor. Do you think there would be room for me to accompany you? The roads are not truly safe. I must first meet the Mother Cardinal to present my respects on behalf of my cousin. I will accompany you, and then we can take the road together. I'm so happy our paths have crossed once again.
It's blocked. Your Eminence, in the name of the Congregation of Merchants, I present my best regards. May the light bless you and accompany you on these grounds with inspired guidance. I thank you. We truly wish that this visit will strengthen the ties between our two nations. I learned that you crossed paths with that of Inquisitor Aloysius. I beseech you to forgive his zealous nature. His faith is absolute. And I congratulate you to have appeased him. Your faith and your diplomatic skills honor you. Another subject brings me as well. The Malachor. The horrible blood plague decimating our peoples. A terrible matter that worries us all and reveals our imperfections and sinful nature. For he would never have allowed such an evil to spread without a deeper reason, a fault. Our theologians are certain that the Malachor is the work of a curse. And we have discovered that this island is home to a cult that venerates willfully a horrifying demon. A demon? An evil spirit? It's very strange. Oh, I know no planet worships this sort of troubled spirit. We must unearth this cult and tear it out by its sinister, sinful roots. We started to investigate a village not far from here where strange happenings have been reported. I have begun investigations, and I confirm that a demon is certainly active in the area. Alas, the population is very secretive, and we have great difficulty gleaning any useful information. But if the congregation would help us in this matter, in other words, if the Malachor troubles your cousin as much as myself, report to his majesty that the destruction of this pagan cult is the only way to eradicate the plague, and his help in obtaining any information from the natives would be extremely welcomed. Be certain that your message will be transmitted, Mother Cardinal. I look forward to our next encounter. Your Eminence, I salute you. Sir de Sardé, what can I do for you? You seem to know Father Petrus well. What can you tell me about him? Do I frighten you so much that you do not dare question me directly, my child? Come on, Petrus. Our young legate probably wants an outside opinion on the person accompanying him. In response to your questions, Your Excellency, Petrus belongs to the Order of the Missionaries. He spent many years in different countries bringing the light. He is a shrewd diplomat and a devious politician, but I am sure you will appreciate his services. I must leave you. Naturally, Your Excellency.
locked. Please, I come because of a message that was sent to me. Wait, this is the Onol Menawi of the Lugade Blah, the one we wanted to talk to. I came following the instructions you had left the secretary of our embassy, but I wasn't expecting to find you near the corpse of a member of the Ordo Luminous. We were told that there was a man different from the other in Ixe, amongst the Lugade Blah, someone who sometimes helped our people. This is why we talked to the man in the large house. But we don't really know who you are. My name is Desardé. I'm the legate of the congregation. It means that I am in charge of the diplomacy with the other nations. And yes, I have helped your people a few times. A diplomat is someone who talks, right? Not someone who fights. I know how to fend for myself, if that's your question. But will you tell me why you made me come here? Two nights ago, we attacked a group of Red Sons who were taking away some of our people. Many of them fled. But we captured this man, and we made him talk. We wanted to know where they took our brothers. And he talked about a secret camp. Why would the Inquisition take natives to a secret camp? To confuse their minds. They torture them until they renounce the truth and praise the sun. This red sun was mocking us. He said they would burn us like the others. He had killed some of my brothers, so I killed him. If what you say is true, then indeed, we cannot let the Inquisitors continue. But because you killed him, we can only take your word for it. 
Maybe not. The Red Sun had a key on him. And also some words sealed in bark. We do not know how to set them free. But the Renaigse do, don't they? The letter ordered this man to join the escort party of a group of natives. This partly confirms what you told me. Do the words say where the camp is located? No, but the address of the Inquisitor is written. What is an address? This is how we refer to the place we live in. I suppose the key you found is the key to his door. So you can go to his house and look for more words? I suppose so. You must do it. Or the suns will keep burning our people. Very well. I will go visit this man's home. I will come back to you if I learn anything more. Hurry. Our brothers may be dying in the meantime. Go back to town. Come here, they'll burn me. This letter mentions a secret camp. Apparently our man was involved in its creation. It also talks about a chest he would have had in the quarters of the Order, here in San Mateus. We may find clues there that will allow us to discover the location of the camp. If this chest exists, there must be a key. It has to be here. Let's continue searching. It's a key. Most likely the key to a chest, with the emblem of the Ordo Luminous. I don't think we'll find anything else here. Let's leave and see what this chest contains. Hey, you! Who are you? And what are you doing in Father Claudius's home? De Sade. I'm the legate of the congregation. My colleague has been away for the last few days. May I know exactly what it is about your status as a diplomat that gives you the right to enter his home in his absence? My status is the reason why the Mother Cardinal asked me to investigate. She wants to know where Father Claudius might have disappeared to. I offered to go to his home to see if I could find some information, hence why I'm here. Really? Well, I find that very strange. Why would the Mother Cardinal ask that some strangers who do not belong to our order try to find him? How would we know? Perhaps you want us to go find her together. I'm sure she'll be delighted to see how you've been treating the representative of one of her allies. That won't be necessary, but know that I am keeping an eye on you. As you wish. I hope I don't see you again, Father. I doubt this sly, bitter man believed your lies. We'll probably see him again. We should make use of this moment of respite to go visit the quarters of the Order and find the chest there. Let's hope they aren't infested with members of the Inquisition.
Thanks to these documents, we'll be able to show the natives where the conversion camp is, and the times when new prisoner convoys will get there too. The Ordo Luminous is fearsome in a fight. If the natives attack the camp, they risk being slaughtered. But given the methods of the Inquisitors, I almost want to give them a hand. Did you discover anything? I found some information that should allow you to locate the conversion camp. And I also found a note about a prisoner convoy coming soon. Why come and tell us all of this if your intention is just to betray us? Betray you? How so? You're not the ones this so-called legate betrayed. We are. You? I have no commitment to your order. It is with Teleme that we are allied. Your nation that you are prepared to drag into a war against the natives, with the sole purpose of converting a few of them in your torture camp, even if you have to kill all the others. What are you talking about? Are you saying Claudius managed to complete his great conversion camp project? Don't pretend that you did not know. I did not, but now that I do, I will do everything in my power to continue his work. And the first step will be to eliminate those who would denounce us. The Mother Cardinal focuses too much on politics, when she should be following her faith instead. We will fight these monsters by your side, Onol Menawi. <laughs> Thank you. You don't have to thank me. These men were our enemy. The monsters torturing my people. Even though the Ordo Luminous's actions are atrocious, Teleme must not learn of our involvement in this matter. Our alliance could suffer. Do not worry about it. We won't tell them. And we will make these bodies disappear. Nobody will ever know what happened to them. Except for our Mal, of course. Queen Derdra will be grateful to you for helping us. I hope this will help our relations in the future. In any case, do not worry about this camp. 
She will not let our people be imprisoned. She may even ask for your help in destroying it. Perhaps. In the meantime, please give her my regards. Bartir to mad on all Menawi. And thanks again. Greetings! Do you want so? To Hikmet. Let's go! Better go and meet this governor without me. We are at war. I'm not certain that I can remain calm if I see such a man. The little one's not wrong. You came to flatter him. The sailor is less likely to cause an incident. But you are the diplomat.
Your Excellence, it is an honor to meet you. Allow me to present my sincerest regards in the name of the Congregation of Merchants. And allow me to wish you and your cousin a warm welcome to the island, in the hopes that this visit will help prolong the profitable relations between our two nations. Likewise. Nevertheless, another question brings me. The Malachor. The Prince d'Orsay hopes that these new shores will bring us new possibilities. Even a remedy. It is an area that concerns us greatly, but be assured we are studying it acutely. Our doctors and alchemists are particularly interested in the flora of the Isle. It's extremely varied and different from our own. In fact, we have sent a group of explorers into a very promising sector. Alas, we've had no news from them for quite some time now. We are hoping that nothing has happened. We would have sent a patrol to investigate, but we cruelly lack the means to do so. The natives have proven aggressive, even hostile to our studies, and have attacked us regularly. We are obligated to maintain all of our able-bodied men here in order to protect the city, but we would be happy to share with you the results of our research if... Your Excellency, this insolent interruption is untimely and unwelcome. I deeply regret, Excellency, but one of our frontier posts has just suffered a brutal attack. Report, then, and be precise. The natives attacked us by surprise. Our men were massacred. Our frontier post is lost. One more act of barbary. Dismissed, soldier. Where was I? Yes, we would be most pleased to share our discoveries with our allies if your cousin would send us a party to help us find our lost expedition. I could show you to which region they were sent. I thank you for the information and will let him know. If you are of a mind to accord me another request, I would be truly grateful. I'm listening. As you have not failed to observe, our troops as well as our caravans have been suffering incessant attacks. The merchants, including your own, are raided, often killed, and certain goods have become scarce. Captain Rainhild, who commands our outpost in the plains, has communicated his incapacity to protect them. Considering that certain of your own fellow countrymen are involved, you would like me to lend a hand? I will see what I can do, Your Excellency. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? And what of this conflict with Teleme on Tirfredi? Officially, we are at war, but we have never waged war openly here. Of course, we did not rejoice when they set up camp on the Isle, and we expected the worst. But it seems that their only concern is to convert the natives into believing their ridiculous teachings. They represent no true danger to us. At least, not for the time being. And to be frank, we have plenty of other concerns that demand our attention. Could you tell me a little about your city? Hikmet is the oldest city on the island. We began construction of its first buildings 15 years ago, shortly after the discovery of the island. A magnificent city, where the great minds of the time were united in a common goal. Here you could find the best doctors, the greatest engineers, and the most eminent savants. In everyone's eyes, this island has great promise. And Hikmet is the city that allows us to make good on that promise. I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord.
Greetings. Hello. Can I get you anything? What's in the basement? The tavern offers various activities to entertain the guests. If you like betting or are looking for company, this is the place. Although, I see you more as an arena fighter. Am I right? I won't stay. flasks you'll find the quintessence of alchemy the best potions and the most efficient concoctions all of Alsard's talent put into Hello, Captain. Your Excellency, what can I do for you? Governor Burren has asked me to help you fight against the caravan attacks. Could you tell me precisely what's going on? For weeks we have been harassed by the savages. They're waiting for groups of soldiers or caravans to be out of sight of the outpost and attack with incredible violence. They don't just steal goods or equipment. They kill without mercy. Only one man survived their last attack. He's here in a sorry state. Do you think he could answer a few questions? Yes, but take it easy on him. I'll make sure I do, Captain. Hello there. My name is Desarde. I'm the legate of the congregation. I was informed that your caravan was looted and that you were the sole survivor of the attack. It's true, Your Excellency. It was awful. All those deaths. The violence. We followed the recommended precautions to the letter, but it was useless. How did the attack happen? We traveled all day. We were exhausted, and night was approaching. We knew we were not very far from the outpost, but we couldn't go any further. So we camped away from the road, trying to stay out of sight. Alas, it was in vain. That's when they struck, in the middle of the night. Were there several attackers? I counted five, maybe six. But others were hiding in the woods. I'm sure of it. If they only had their usual stone weapons, we may have hoped to escape them. But their weapons were inflamed. I have never been so scared in my life. What were you transporting? 
Mostly food, but also herbs and other ingredients for scientists. Did the attackers take it? Everything was a blur. I don't know if they intended to steal or destroy it. Unfortunately, my companions died while trying to protect our cargo. Are you saying that the looters started by attacking your cargo? Yes, Your Excellency. Maybe more of us would have survived if we'd all fled. You mentioned recommended precautions. Yes. Since attacks occur often, we were given a number of precautions to avoid them. Do not travel at certain times. Do not camp near the road. Do not light any fires. All of it was useless. It would have been better to recruit guards to escort us. Hmm. Based on what you're saying, the attacks were very targeted. They must have a camp near the outpost to monitor the road. But what is their goal? Why attack all the caravans along this route? They must want to cut off the supply lines to Hikmet. We'll go to the scene of the attack. I might find something there to help track these rebels. some distance from the road when it was attacked. Here we are. Stay alert. The crates are empty. Their entire contents have been destroyed. These goods were not meant to reach their destination. They must have died protecting their goods. How sad. These wounds appear to be caused by stone blades. The kind of weapons that islanders use. The food has been destroyed. They clearly don't need it. Which means that their camp should be close by. They acted quickly methodically, and then left. But where are the bodies? Let's look around. Move away! Things are about to get dicey!
What's this man's body arranged like that? There's something in his pocket. He was in the caravan, but whoever attacked him decided to drag him here and feed him to the wild beasts. The Donea Egdragal do this as a sort of scare tactic. This is a message for other merchants. I need a bit of practice. Finally, here's the camp of the rebel natives. The standing men called themselves Donaya Exregal. Please, 
Let's try and talk to them. I do not want to fight with my brothers without trying to reason with them first. Hello. Don't worry. I come in peace. I only wish to speak to your leader. I am the leader of this camp, Renaixe. And who might you be? My name is the Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. The congregation? Are those the Lugayet Blau? The yellow eyes? It's possible, yes. We live in the city south of the island. That's right. We hold no grudge against your people. Talk. I'm listening. I've come to speak to you about your attacks against all those who take the road to Hikmet. The Luyans only got what they deserve. They have captured many of our people. We must release them. That's the price of war. If you fight, you risk men being taken prisoner. I am not talking about warriors, Renaixe, but villagers kidnapped in our villages. They mainly attack on all Menawe, those carrying the mark of the bond like you. They capture them, and we never see them again. We don't know what they are doing to them, but we are going to release them. I see. But our merchants have no role in this. They are not warriors. So why kill them? They brought food and weapons back to our enemies. We could not let them pass. If your merchants had fled, we would not have pursued them. But they resisted. So they do it. The city of Loyans is no longer to receive food or weapons. Nothing. I share your anger against the Lions, and I also hope to find our captured brothers. But the Rinaixe also use floating houses to transport things. Your attacks were useless. Listen, if what you told me is true, I fully understand why you're fighting. I'm even ready to help you clear up these disappearances, as long as you spare our merchants. You no longer need to worry about it. That was our last attack. Our troops are ready, and soon we will make the Luyan pay for the harm it has brought upon us. What are you talking about? Soon, the Donea Exrega will march together, and we will free our brothers. Can you guarantee that our merchants will now be able to take this road without risking their lives? I always keep to my word. The time for small attacks is over. Now is the time of war. I'm afraid you're heading straight into a massacre. But since you promised me that our caravans will be spared, I have fulfilled my mission. Go in peace. We should prepare ourselves. I will not regret letting them go. They are so full of hatred for the Alliance. The Donaya Exregal fight, as my mother did, to free our people from the Lions. And now, they are ready for a great battle. I hope they will not end up like my clan. I have to admit that the story of this attack is concerning. We should talk to Captain Rainhild about it. We can also inform him that the convoys will now be running smoothly. Things 
Hello, Captain. Your Excellency, what can I do for you? I managed to trace the rebels who attacked the caravans. They will no longer be a problem. You eliminated them? No, that's not necessary. But you must know that this group is part of a much bigger army. An army that is ready to go to war against Hikmet. We have been at war with the rebels for a long time. They did not speak of skirmishes, but of a pitched battle. They want to free their imprisoned comrades and will stop at nothing to do so. This is terrible news. We must prepare the troops immediately. I'll send a message to Governor Buran. Thank you for warning us, Your Excellency. You've given us a chance to resist their assault. I know it's not much, but I hope you'll accept this as a token of gratitude. Thank you, Captain.
Some unusual customers. <laughs> well, greetings, my lord. It's a real pleasure to have a customer such as yourself. How may I help you? Excellency, it is an honor. do that.
unusual customers. <laughs> well, if I have every room that I do that. I need a bit of practice. Mad. I am Ulan, chief of the village of Vignamri. You have a peculiar face, and it looks familiar. I didn't know that people from the continent could bear the mark of the Onol Manawi. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit?
I met a member of your clan in New Serene. A merchant. Oh, so you are the strange Anal Manawi, who helped and saved our hunter. I am very grateful to you. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. I knew the Renaixe could be good. And you proved to everyone that I was right. You are someone that the kings of the Renaixe respect and listen to, are you not? As the legate of the congregation, it is true that I can talk to all the governors of this island. That is what I taught. I need your help to talk to the leader of the great city of Hikmet. About what? I want to meet him to offer a peace treaty between his clan and mine. The Sisagnameis. Many kings want to chase the Renaigse away from the island, especially the kings of Hikmet. But I know we could learn many things from them, and we could arrange a great deal. I see. I can indeed talk to the governor about your desire to make peace. If you do talk to him, can you also tell him that one of my clansmen has come to trade with his town? We sent him some time ago. But I was told that the soldiers did not let him in. He fears for his life. Because some other clans do not look favorably on exchanges with the Renaixe. He could be attacked at any moment. Alone on the road. Very well. I will make sure that he obtains permission to enter.
It's not possible just now. Your Excellency, Lord de Sade, and to what do I owe this honor? I met Ulan, the Bone Blower's clan chief, from the village of Vignamri. He is an open-minded man who holds great expectations of exchanges with the colonies. He would like to meet you to discuss a treaty, even an alliance. Ulan, you say? I have never heard mention of this name, but to finally have an ally among the natives could only be beneficial. That is excellent news. Still, I fear that I cannot leave the city. That would be taking too much of a risk. I doubt that Ulan will come to Hikmet. He is looking for an alliance, but he is not desperate. Such a gesture would be considered a sign of weakness by his clan. That is understandable, I suppose. Do they grasp the concept of emissaries? Do you think that solution might work? I think that might be possible. I'm sure he would understand that you could not come to see him in person for the same reason. Excellent. Finally, some clear skies in our negotiations with the natives. My right-hand man will then go to this village to finalize an agreement with King Ulan. I'll be there too, to make sure everything goes according to our plans. There is another matter concerning the same village that I would like to bring to your attention. A wandering merchant, a member of Ulan's clan, is being kept in your outpost. Can you authorize his entry into the city? I see no harm in that. This merchant is certainly not a threat to us. And he might even prove useful, if the negotiations with his clan should take a foul turn. Here, please be so kind as to give him this letter of passage. If he presents it to the guards, they will let him in and he'll be able to establish his stall in town. I thank you. I hope to see you again. I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord.
please, help me. Just keep walking, Renaixe. This does not concern you. Have mercy. They will kill me. I am but a merchant who wishes to trade with the big city. I never thought I would see several Islander warriors attacking a mere merchant. And I thought honor and righteousness were of the utmost importance in your culture. <laughs> I must have been mistaken. What are you trying to say, Renaixe? Are you insulting us? You're insulting yourselves by behaving this way. He's an unarmed man. He's trying to survive. What honor is there in attacking him? He is a traitor. He deserves to be punished. But you are right. He is not worth attacking. Let's leave. His punishment will come once we have chased the Nanaixe away, and he cannot sell his products. Adlo Reda Odol Manawi. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. Think nothing of it. Ulan told me that you were not able to enter the town. It is true. The soldiers did not let me enter. They left me outside, and the Donaya Exdragao took advantage of this opportunity to attack me. Rest assured, I have obtained permission for you to enter from the Governor of Hikmet, which should allow you to set up your stall in the city. Adloreda Renaixe. Thanks again. Farewell, merchant. Perhaps we will meet again. Ulan, I see that the governor of Hikmet's emissary is already here. He is, and I am very thankful that you succeeded in organizing this meeting. I am full of hope for the future. We are very grateful as well, Your Excellency. However, if you could leave us, I am sure you can understand that the discussion we are about to have must remain confidential. Naturally. I hope that you will reach an agreement. So, have you reached an agreement? Our discussions were very fruitful. However, we are faced with a problem. Really? Our peace treaty depends on the ability to exchange freely. And Chief Ulan has warned me that our merchants would be at risk of being attacked by the neighboring clan. Mordun, the chief of the village of Igugsob, is a Danea Exregao. He is among those who think that the people of your island are only here to take from us. But his village would also benefit from this agreement. If you could convince him to meet us, we could reach an understanding, allowing the caravans to pass through his territory. Without this, I am afraid we would not be able to make a commitment. Peace and trade are linked. If our merchants risk their lives coming here, I am sure that you will manage to convince him that the Renaixe are not all bad. I can try, at least. Adloredar, we will wait here and hope that you will manage to reason with him.
I need a bit of practice.
What are you doing here, and I say? Your coin are not welcome in my village. Ulan, the king of Vignamri, wants to establish a trade agreement and sign a peace treaty with the governor of Hikmet. This sounds like something he would do. All he ever thinks about is picking up the crumbs left behind by the Renaik say. All of that in hope of breeding new life into his village while insulting the memory of the deceased men and women who lived there. Hikmet's emissary will only sign if their merchants can move freely and in peace. They want to meet you. I am not like him. I am a Donea Exregal. A proud man, not a slug. The Renaixe cannot be trusted. They are deceitful and only seek to trap us. The Donea Exregal I have met were fearless, and yet you are running away from a mere meeting. By refusing to negotiate, you are only showing weakness, nothing else. Call, not Fradi. The worst part is that you are right. We cannot refuse this meeting without appearing weak. Foyne, I will meet Ulan and his emissary, but I will not go to his village. Tell them to find me at Lambristel. I will be there in a few hours. I will tell them right away. Thank you, Mordun. You really know how to talk to people. I never thought you would be able to convince Mordun. His anger towards the Renaixe is so strong. Mordun is willing to meet you at Lanristal to sign a peace treaty. You really are an accomplished negotiator and diplomat, Your Excellency. I knew you would succeed. Thanks to you, the whole region will be at peace. Do you know where this place is, Ulan? 
Of course, in our language, Llanristal means Glade of Promises. It is a sacred place, one whose peacefulness must be respected. It bodes well. In that case, we should go there at once. Yes, I will follow you. Come back to see me soon. And if luck is on our side, we will celebrate peace together. Olan is acting strangely. I do not trust him. We should go to Lan Ristol to make sure we're not being tricked. And if we want to see this encounter, we should leave now. Adloredar, thank you for coming. You saved me. Dadakar said Ulan. I should have known he would betray us both. My men are dead, and now I am injured. He achieved exactly what he wanted in the end. I will have to join another clan if I do not want my whole village to suffer the consequences of my defeat. I'm sorry, Mordun. I really am. You were deceived, just like I was. Sometimes, among the stones, there can be snakes. Farewell, on Olmanawi. And do not let yourself be betrayed again. Traitor! This meeting was meant to establish peace, and yet you have exclusively sent armed men. 
Mortoon was at the Nea Exregal. He would have never accepted an agreement with the Renaig Say. He would have endlessly attacked our merchants and our allies' caravans. We had to protect ourselves if we were to make these exchanges possible. So we did. By lying and manipulating me. I am sorry, but I was unsure that you would agree to help us if I told you the truth. I understand your anger, but keep in mind that we are now at peace, thanks to you. You are now a Karans of Vignamri, and should you seek it, you will always have our assistance. Anything else? Nothing. I must go. Desarde, I intend to prove to the Admiral that I fully identify as a knot once more. Without regrets, I will have to go through a test of loyalty. It will certainly be dangerous, but with your help, I am convinced that I will succeed. So, shall we go and see her? With pleasure. Let's see what adventure she has in store for us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Good day, my lord. Disarde. I'm the emissary of the congregation on Tierfredi. And cousin to the governor. I know exactly who you are. Enchanted. I am Admiral Cabral, and I see that you're accompanied by one of our own. Hardy winds, Vasco. Hardy winds, Admiral. You are still angry with me for keeping you ashore, are you not? You'll one day thank me for it, but I don't suppose you've come to talk to me about affectations. What can I do for you? Captain Vasco, I'm glad to see you again. Did you profit from your time on land? I did, Admiral. That's why I've come to see you. You want me to entrust you with a loyalty mission? Indeed. Very well. A short time ago, we lost one of our ships near the island. The reputation of the Norts suffered from it. I have heard about it. An incomprehensible sinking which fueled numerous rumors. We cannot let the land dwellers think we are losing the sea. So I need someone to investigate and restore our reputation. At your orders, Admiral. And with pleasure. The shipwreck is stranded on the shore, southwest of the island. Not far from when Xavier. Thank you, Admiral. I'm counting on you, Captain Vasco. Oh, it's a great pleasure to see you again at the forge.
Want armor that fits you like? Oh, cigarette. The best forge! Oh, cigar. Want armor that fits you like a glove? We'll make it for you.
Greenblood, my friend. Do you need something? I must leave you. Look, there it is. I didn't think your ships could break like this. The corpses are chained up. These beasts were captive. Could they have died during the sinking? Don't seem to have drowned. Something bigger was slaughtered. No effort at all. It looks like an enormous cage. But look, it's been broken. Is this ringing any bells for anyone else? The hull was torn apart, and given the way that the wood is broken, it came from the inside. Damn it. What happened here? There are scratch marks almost everywhere on the wood, but they do not look like the marks a reef would make. This ship was apparently carrying creatures from the island. The largest one managed to escape and made a hole in the hull as it tried to run away, just like in Serene. The sailors didn't stand a chance. The Admiral will not be satisfied with our deductions. She will want concrete proof. Let's keep searching.
All the clues seem to corroborate the captain's journal. This is the same thing that happened at the harbor in Serene. The Guardian who was locked up on the boat freed itself and ripped apart the hull of the boat to get out. Yes, and my brothers had no means of saving their lives or the ship, alas. Let's go back and explain this to the Admiral. The Captain's Journal will serve as proof. Desarde, what can I do for you? Regarding the mission you entrusted Captain Vasco with, we have come to give our conclusions. I'm listening. We examined the shipwreck and the surrounding area. A creature they carried on board managed to set itself free. An enormous beast. It made a hole in the hull and caused the sinking. We could only find dead bodies. Alas, I was expecting it. May the sea be their shroud. We shall not forget them. 
Did you find anything? The captain's journal tells the tale of the ship from their departure to the sinking. Thank you, Vasco. It seems that the potions of the Alliance failed us once more. And rest assured, we will never transport another one of those creatures. They are too dangerous for our ships. Our honor is safe, thanks to you. You have proven your loyalty, and you have regained my trust. What you have achieved for us all deserves to be a part of your history, Vasco. I will send someone to tell the Tattooist. He'll be waiting for you. Come to receive my tattoo. The Admiral should have informed you. Indeed, Captain. Congratulations. Well, take a seat. You know the drill. What do you think about it? I feel more naught than ever. Great. Congratulations, Vasco. You have returned to me. Your absence was sorely felt. We don't appear to be in top form. A house intrigue's keeping you from finding proper sleep. No, nothing to bring me nightmares as of yet. I'm blaming it on the change of diet. Now, tell me what adventures you've been up to. If you only knew how bored I grow behind these walls. I would like, if you would allow me the honor, to introduce Bishop Petrus, emissary of Teleme. Your Highness. May the light warm you in its holy embrace. Enchanted to meet you, my father. I've come here to present respects from Teleme and best wishes from the Mother Cardinal. She has my most sincere thanks. But before speaking further, I would like to discuss matters with my cousin, if you would be so kind. Any news of your parents? No. With the time it takes to travel to the continent, it's not surprising. But. I don't miss them. My father's next letter will certainly be full of his usual disdain. As for my mother, you know her. She's probably too busy planning her next assassination to have noticed my absence. I've been to the neighboring cities, as you asked of me. Tell me, then. Was your journey adventurous? Well, I was able to gain audience with the governors, give them your regards, and glean some information. I would not have allowed anything bad to happen to him, your highness. Oh, it's just us here, Kurt. Why not continue to call me by my given name? Carry on with your story, cousin. I'm impatient to know what secrets our illustrious neighbors have discovered. The Bridge Alliance believes that a remedy could possibly be found by studying the local flora. 
They are quite motivated, but their research expedition has gone missing and there is no sign of life. And since they themselves are under constant attack, they cannot spare a rescue party to investigate. The Mother Cardinal, in her opinion, believes the Malachor to be a result of a curse. A curse cast by a demon. An evil creature worshipped by a cult of island natives. If you would allow me to second the request of our Mother Cardinal, we are in dire need of your help. Our Inquisitors are hardly diplomats and... But I should let you finish, my son. They have started their investigations in a village where strange events have been taking place. But they're unable to get to the bottom of it. The population keeps its secrets. And Teleme hopes that we might help them learn more about the cult. This is all extremely interesting. You have lived up to my expectations, as always. That said, we find ourselves between the rock and the hard place. The bridge is already in open conflict with the island natives. Teleme and their inquisitors. <sighs> We're going to have to tread on eggshells, but let's follow all the clues to their mysteries. We need to help them continue their investigations. Perhaps one will lead us to something useful. I don't have a lot of men, as well you know, and since I only trust you among them, take Kurt and any others that seem useful. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. If you would allow me, Your Highness, I would be honored to assist your cousin on his investigation. Very well, then. You could start by indicating the precise location of your nasty village. Of course, Your Highness. I should have thought of that sooner. Allow me to mark the location on your map, my son. Thank you. Have no fear, Constantine. I will take care of all matters at hand. Anything else? I'm going to leave now. Goodbye, Constantine. Look out for yourself. Blood, my friend. My contacts have spoken. I was able to discover the location of this infamous phantom training camp. Do you still think they should be held accountable? More than ever. You know that I recruited Rayner. I want to know what kind of hornet's nest I led him into. I want to know what these madmen did. But I fear if I go alone, I might not be able to control myself. And I won't learn anything. I need the help of my best student. How can I refuse such a request? Well then, let's go.
Things are about to get dicey. I was informed of your arrival by my sentinels, but I didn't think it would be you, Kurt. Rolf! You're the leader of this camp. Do you two know each other? We train together. We haven't seen each other in a long time. A very long time. The world of warriors is very small, Kurt. What brings you here, my old comrade? And who are these people with you? They're not one of us. My name is Desade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. And I'm Siora Donegad of the Gaius Rad. These people sure are important. So, what are you doing here? I've heard things about this place. About this very special camp. And we wanted to see what it was all about with our own eyes. That's very nice of you, but visitors aren't welcome in this camp. What goes on here is only the guards' business. Does the same apply to me? Listen, Kurt. I can give you and your friends some answers, but only because it's you. Anyway, knowing you as well as I do, I'm aware I'm not going to get rid of you that easily. So, what would you like to know? What is it you do here? And why is this place kept secret? even from your comrades in the guard. The natives have their magic, and we have to train elites to be able to face them. That's what we're doing here. Our role is sensitive, and our location obviously cannot be revealed to the whole island. Does this man not realize that I'm a Donegad? I noticed you're a native, but you're a friend of Kurt's, so I trust you will be discreet. I see the reason for this kind of training. The Bridge Alliance would be particularly interested in soldiers like these. And yet I'd never heard of this elite squadron. We're still in the early stages of the program. We don't want to rush things. And our leaders demand secrecy. Orders are orders. This is a huge camp for such a secret location. How is it organized? The main building is reserved for officers and the wounded. The front and rear of the camp are dedicated to combat training. But most exercises take place outside. Impressive. And how do you manage recruitment? Only the best come here. Those who have combat experience. Once they arrive, they're separated into two squadrons, each led and trained by a lieutenant. But you already know all of this, Kurt. It must bring back memories. Yes. Will you tell us about your training? That's a sensitive topic. Most exercises take place in the field to get the men used to it. The natives' knowledge of the environment gives them as much of an advantage as their magic. But if you want to know more, you should ask my lieutenant instructors. Actually, we found out about this camp while we were looking for someone. A kid I recruited. Rainer. Oh. I didn't know he was one of yours. My condolences. I was told he died in an accident in the harbor. Don't insult my intelligence, Rolf. <sighs> All right. Since you're here, I guess there's no point in lying to you anymore. The accident occurred during a maneuver. It's regrettable, but these things happen, you know? We've taken up enough of your time, Captain. I agree, and I have things to do. I'd like to question your lieutenant instructors, if you don't mind. To ask them about Rayner. You've become a real sap. <sighs> Fine. But try not to disrupt the day's schedule too much. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I couldn't contain my anger. I noticed. Good thing you know this captain so well. I don't think he would have let us investigate otherwise. I'm not sure it's a good thing, really. You don't seem to like this man. Rolf doesn't bring back good memories for me. But let's continue. I want to know what's going on here. 
Lieutenant. Respectfully, Captain. Here is my friend, the legate of the merchant congregation. He would like to ask you a few questions. At your orders. I'm listening, sires. How do the various squadrons in this camp differ from one another? The recruits I train are intended to carry out more subtle actions. Really? What kind? I teach them how to blend into the background, understand customs, observe, and know when to strike. That's strange. These skills are normally associated with assassins rather than soldiers. These skills are always useful, regardless of the enemy or the setting. What kind of training do your men undergo? I can't go into details, but they learn discipline and to outdo themselves. You mean to blindly follow orders, even to their death? But I... No, Captain. We also teach them to analyze situations, so that they know when to act to avoid risking their lives. How did you become an instructor in this camp? I have led numerous squadrons before, and I've trained hundreds of recruits on the continent. I worked with Captain Rolf in the past, and when I arrived on the island, he recommended me for this position. That's very impressive. And I expect that you're familiar with the natives' environment and magic. Yes, yes, of course. Good. Don't you think that someone this talented fits what we're looking for? You see, we need to find someone who can replace Kurt to oversee my cousin's security. Your cousin is a governor of New Serene, I've heard. It's a prestigious position. I don't doubt my abilities, but an offer like this, made so suddenly, must have a price. We can't hide anything from you. We're trying to find out what happened to Rayner, a recruit who trained here. That name doesn't sound familiar. He must have been in the Shadow Squadron. The other Lieutenant's squadron? Yes. I'm sorry. Haven't been much use to you. Did something happen to him? He died. His body was thrown into the harbor to make it look like he drowned. I guess it was one of your recruits. My condolences, Captain. We'll question some of your soldiers. At your orders, but please be quick. I'd like to get on with training. Lieutenant. Captain. My friend here would like to learn more about this camp. At your orders, Captain. Sir? Can you tell us about your squadron? The recruits who come here are the best. And in my squadron, they get even better. I don't know what else to tell you. They're disciplined, rigorous, and effective. Exactly what you'd expect from the best soldiers. What kind of training takes place in your ranks? Combat in natural settings. Combat against the savages' magic. I'm very curious about how you train against the magic the natives use. Now, these are complex, secret maneuvers. I'm very sorry, but I can't tell you anymore. That's a pity. It would definitely be instructive. I heard the recruit Rainer trained here. What can you tell me about him? Oh, he was a good one. He died a little while ago. So we've heard. Your captain told us he died during a maneuver. Can you tell us more? The training we do outside can be dangerous. Unfortunately, Rainer fell to his death in a ravine. He fell? During a simulated ambush. I know, it's not glorious, but it happens. I'd like to get back to work now, if you'll allow it, Captain. Go on. We're gonna go talk to some of your recruits. I hope that it won't take too long. We're all very busy here. We'll be quick, Lieutenant. The story about training against magic is a lie. This Lieutenant has no idea what he's talking about. So what could they be training recruits for here, then? I don't know. But whatever it is, I don't like it. Soldier! Yes, Captain. At ease. We have some questions for you. Me? At your orders, Captain. You look exhausted. Is training that rough here? Well, it's difficult at first, but you get through it. Taming fatigue. That's the key to it all. Haven't you ever wanted to stop? You've never doubted your vocation. I'm not a coward, nor a weakling. The strength of the Shadow. What is that? Your motto? Our squadrons, Captain. 
You seem concerned about your comrades. You keep looking at them. No, no, not at all. Are you afraid of what they might think of you? Absolutely not, Captain. We are all of one mind in this squadron. We are very united. Since this is such a close-knit squadron, you must have known Rainer. Yes, of course. But he's not part of the squadron any longer. He left. Really? I don't know what you're trying to get me to say, Captain. Rainer left the squadron because he was sent on a mission. There's nothing more to say. Sorry, mate, but that's not what happened. I, I don't know anything more. Thank you. That will be all. Thank you, sire. Captain? Good heavens. I feel like a bogeyman. These recruits are clearly scared to let any information slip. It's as if their life depended on it. Hello, soldier. Captain? We need information. Your instructor authorized us to question you. Of course, sire. I'm listening. How would you describe your training? Do you train outside the camp much? Yes, we do. Well, not exclusively. Really? Yet we've been told that your unit specialized in actions over difficult terrain. Uh, yes, I think so. Well, yes, that's true. Problems remembering things, soldier. No, Captain. What's it like in your squadron? Very good. The Phantom Squadron is made up only of the very best. Do you trust your comrades? We're like five fingers on one hand, sire. I would trust them with my life. You've sure got the military spirit. Yes, Captain. We've learned that a recruit died in an accident during a maneuver. Does this happen often? Uh, no. Of course not. Only to those who aren't strong enough. That's strange. I was told that this recruit was very talented. I... I, I don't know what to tell you. It's possible. If you don't mind, I'd like to get back to my training. He seems afraid that an accident might befall him too. No, it's not that. I just don't want to fall behind schedule. Very well. Go on. Excellent. Captain, these kids are scared to death. Yes, this boy's answers about his training seem pretty dubious to me. He can't hide the lies. Soldier! Captain! At ease, soldier. We'd like to learn more about your training. I have nothing to say about it, sir. Really? Go on, it's not a difficult question. What do you do during training? Is this a test, Captain? No, it's not a test. You may speak freely. Well, training is difficult, but we can't complain, Captain. Hmm. That's an interesting way to phrase it. You're very united in this squadron. At least, that's what I've been told. United? You could say that, yes. Until death. That's rather sinister. Does the name Rainer sound familiar to you? Yeah. Uh, well, no, not really. You seem rather hesitant. Afraid of being reprimanded by your lieutenant? No. Well, not at all. It's just that I can't tell you anything about Recruit Rayner. And we're lucky to have the lieutenant as our instructor, Captain. We should leave this soldier to his work. Your name, soldier? Wilhelm. Uh, first class recruit Wilhelm, Spectre Squadron. Keep it up, Wilhelm. Lieutenants, report. Captain? Could you give us a few minutes and take us around the site? I've never been here before, and I'm curious to see what goes on. I'm not sure if we can, Captain. We are on duty, Captain. Right, Lieutenant. Let's go! I... Are you coming with us? No, thank you. I'd rather stay here. Take in some fresh air. As you like. In that case, see you later. Wilhelm, we need to talk. And don't worry, Kurt will make sure your superior doesn't come this way. Why are you doing this? We didn't think you'd say anything as long as she was here. If you noticed, others will have too. They'll make me pay. Even more reason to talk. If we have proof, we can take action. 
and close this camp. Very well. What would you like to know? What's really going on here? We know that Reyna didn't die in an accident. This is supposed to be a training camp for the guards' elite. Only the most talented recruits are allowed to join. This is an immense honor, an extraordinary chance. That's what we're told every day. But in reality, it's just hell. Tell me about the training you undergo here. It's more torture than anything else. We're constantly beaten and humiliated, and the slightest complaint only leads to more blows. They even push us to police one another, so we don't dare talk. Whatever the orders, we put our heads down, grit our teeth, and obey. And they call us barbarians. We could never put our own children through this. I heard them tell you about the specialist training against the natives in hostile environments. But what they teach us would be more useful for assassins. As for Reyna, do you know what happened to him? Yes. One day he just couldn't stand it any longer. He disobeyed orders, he fought back, and people got hurt. That's when things blew up. They summoned him for night training. What does that entail? It doesn't have much to do with real training. They call us up for it at the last minute. The weakest serve as punching bags for the others, who are encouraged to beat them. If we refuse, we too become the targets. So we join in and strike. If you're looking to punish Rain as murderer, you can start with me. We all have his blood on our hands. Thank you for telling us all of this. You should get back to your comrades. I hope you can do something. Have this camp closed. Otherwise, I'll soon be as dead as Rainer. We understand the risk you've taken. We won't let you down. Thank you. Really. That was truly fascinating. Captain. I've seen everything I needed to see. You can leave us. Yes, Captain. Shall we go? Good. Willem has spoken. What did he tell you? He said the recruits go through hell. They're humiliated, spy on each other, get bullied. It's essentially torture. Rainer wouldn't stand for these methods. He rebelled and was summoned for night training. Are you sure he used that term? Yes. But he told me it's not really training. The recruits are summoned. And the others beat them. Sometimes to death. I know. You knew about this kind of training? Yeah. I thought it was a thing of the past. What a monster. How dare he? I'm so sorry. I'm... I'm lost for words. Tell me, did you learn anything new? I scouted out the site. There's two parts of the barracks we should look at more closely. Rolf's quarters and the basement, which they refused to open for me. You're full of anger, Sengots. Take a deep breath. And think. Then tell us your plan. Let's wait for nightfall. We'll sneak into the camp unseen, search the barracks, the private quarters, and then the basement. We might also try to find out where this night training takes place. Yes. I wouldn't want other young recruits to lose their lives tonight. Especially Wilhelm. Strange. There's no one left in this part of the camp. Maybe they're in the combat pit behind the barracks. I saw it when I visited the camp. Or they've already left for their night training. Let's find Rolf's office. He surely has the key to the basement.
This letter is disturbing, Kurt. It confirms that several deaths have been disguised in order to keep this camp secret. But it says that the recruits trained here have been assigned to governors from different cities. And yet I'm sure that Constantine knows nothing about these elite units. The conclusion of the letter also confirms that the commander is pleased with what's been going on here. So Torsten knew. So it seems, including about the deaths. He's gone too far. He dishonors us all. Sieglinda was right. Room. What could have happened in here? I know this smell only too well. Fear, blood, death. These people have turned this place into a site of suffering. It will take years of work to erase its traces. This document explains a lot. They torture the soldiers to break them. Rainer shows up on this list more than once. He gave them a lot of problems. Those who resist too much are lynched during night training. Rolf, you'll pay for this. Kurt, Wilhelm's name was added to tonight's training. That's the young man who helped us, isn't it? They will probably kill him for it. We can't let them kill him. We must stop this training immediately. The risk is that Rolf will ambush us. If this boy dies because of us, I will never forgive myself. I refuse to let these recruits pay for the bastards who manipulate them. Let's avoid spilling blood in vain. You surprise me once again, Kurt. You are full of compassion for these youngsters. They're just kids. There has to be a way to reason with them. We'll do what we can, Kurt. I can't promise anything more. It's blocked. Despite what Wilhelm told me, I wasn't expecting this. He's getting destroyed. They'll kill him. We can't let them get away with it. Stop! We won't let you kill this boy like you killed Rainer. Soldiers! Do you realize what you're doing, Captain? But... You shouldn't be here. This time, you won't get away with it. To arms! Do you know what happens to those who die in this regiment? Their bodies are thrown out like those of rabid animals. If you die here, you'll die without glory. No one will ever know what happened to you. I doubt that's what they promised you when you joined the Guard. No. No, of course not. A good soldier doesn't fight for glory. He fights to be the best. Really? Then the Guard really has changed. Did you recruits leave your families to end up lynched and thrown into a ditch? No. He, he, you're right, Captain. We never should have ended up here. Traitors. 
cowards! Deserters! Found a dara, grimaderum dam! Yes, my health! Will you be all right? I'm wounded, but I'll survive. Thanks to you. I'm eternally grateful. Come, Wilhelm. We'll help you get home. We owe you that, at least. I'm counting on you to bring him back to the camp in one piece. Yes, Captain. Well then, let's go. We can't let that vermin Rolf escape us. Let's hope that Rolf didn't hear the sounds of combat. Surprise is our best ally. You're right. Let's try to approach discreetly. It's blocked. Nobody saw us. All we have to do is ambush them in the pit. Rolf, you bastard! How could you be part of this disgrace? You know that this is how the best soldiers are made. Soldiers, grab your weapons! Death to the traitors! Stop! Soldiers, are you really going to obey these scoundrels? Do I need to remind you of the guard's motto? Where is your honor? I won't repeat myself, recruits. Execute these traitors. Soldiers, listen to your captain. You are the victims of these monsters, and we are here to save you. We're doing our best to avoid a fight, to spare your lives. Well, what do you want us to do? We have orders, and we know what will happen to us if we don't obey. Enough! Two arms! Attack! All this bullying and humiliation is only intended to turn you into weapons, not soldiers. And when a weapon is no longer needed, its owner throws it away rather than risk injury. That's why Rainer was disposed of. Being a soldier doesn't mean being a puppet. Put your weapons down. They're right, mates. I don't want to end up in the harbor. What do you think, soldier? You think we can trust them? It's over, Lieutenant. These recruits won't do your dirty work for you anymore. Congratulations, Lieutenant. You've trained cowards. Their training wasn't finished, Captain. And the speeches were so convincing. Silence! Where is this second squadron? Should have been here a long time ago. They're not coming, Rolf. They surrendered too. 
It would appear that your training methods aren't very effective. Now that you no longer have lackeys to send after us, Rolf, you'll have to get your own hands dirty. I've dreamt of shutting that big mouth of yours up for so long. <laughs> Will you be all right, Kurt? Yes. Yes. I'll be fine. I'm just glad to know that this camp won't kill anyone else. What about you, Wilhelm? Thank you for saving my life. Without you... I hope you can forget all about this. This is not what the Guard is about. I don't know if you'll be able to forgive us, Wilhelm. I've been in your shoes on other nights. You didn't have the choice. While we wait for this camp to close for good, You'll be under Wilhelm's command. You'll soon receive your transfer orders. At your orders, Captain. Glad it's you, Wilhelm. You'll stay here for now. I'll send men I trust to come get you soon. What do you want us to do? I'll need backup if I really want to put an end to all of this. We must go see Major Sieglinder in New Serene. I need to tell her what was going on here. Are you sure she wasn't involved? Her? Never. She's old school. She already held the commander at a distance because she didn't like the direction the guard was headed. He would have sacked her, or worse, if she didn't have so much support within the guard. I should have listened to her. There's no use brooding over the past. Let's go. We'll go and see her immediately. Sieglinda, I need to talk to you. What's the matter, Kurt? We've just returned from a training camp. A secret camp, where elite soldiers are trained through terror, humiliation, and torture. Don't tell me that. Yes. One of my recruits died, and he wasn't the only one. It is designed to create a regiment of assassins. I am sorry, Kurt. I knew something was wrong, but I never would have thought it'd go that far. We put an end to it all. We had to. But Torsten allowed it, even encouraged it. I told you that the Commander's ambition would end up leading us astray from the ideals of the Guard, and that we would pay the price for it. Yes. At the time, I told you you were exaggerating. That he had his reasons. What are you gonna do? I'm going to speak out, Sieglinda. And reveal the Commander's project to the Governor of the Congregation. If I were as close to him and his family as you are, I would have done so a long time ago. I know. I feel so stupid for not having understood Torsten's scheme until now. You've always been a loyal person, Kurt. And too many loyalties are sometimes hard to reconcile. But Torsten betrayed us all. I'm counting on you to make him pay for it. Believe me, he won't get away with it. Goodbye, Sieglinder. Goodbye, Kurt. My men and I stand with you.
We are arriving in my mother's village. Get rice. There are wild beasts around it. We must be careful. The guys lag. We red spears in order to defend themselves. We must be careful. Yeah. Yeah. This is where the spears of all past warriors are gathered. The branches are reclaimed by the tree and bring strength to the village. Ato, bird tear to mud. You are Siora's friend. Look, I have beautiful things to exchange. If you want to trade again, you know where to find me. Who do you think you are? By what right do you enter the home of our queen? I'm the emissary of the Congregation of Merchants. I've come to meet your leader. Come now, Arwant. You are not a watchdog. Where is my mother? Siora, I didn't see you. You have come too late. Your mother has gone to wage a war. They left for Dide Kidn Nada Geis only a few hours ago. Oh no. We need to catch up with them and avoid the shedding of blood. Please, haste. Very well then. Let's be off.
In order to go towards the Degid Nadagis, we must follow the path leading toward the heights into the forest. Wait. We should go left here. It's a more difficult path, but it's much shorter. Look at the tracks. They chose to take the path on the right, it would seem. Before a battle, it makes sense that they wanted to avoid a path with more danger. If it is dangerous, let's not risk braving it when time is against us. We risk meeting a great many beasts. But if we follow the warriors, we risk catching up with them too late to sway them. Thanks for listening to me. I fear my mother may have already thrown herself into the battle. You are too late, Siora. Mother has fallen, and we are defeated. No, no, no. This is not fair. I am so sorry. Who is this man? He resembles one of us, but he's dressed like a Renaigze. I am the ambassador of the Congregation of Merchants. I, I'm sorry for your loss. The Congregation? 
And what side are you on in this war? Those that massacre our people? Essel, calm down. You know that Mother sent me to seek out allies. You show up when the fight was nearly over. Was this part of your plan? You know that these monsters are taking our own. They must make honorable amends. We did our best to come as fast as we could. And I fought by your side. Please, please take the time to at least hear me out. There has already been enough death and you are wounded. This is not the time for vengeance. You may be right. Waiting for my vengeance will make it taste all the sweeter. I feel weak. Might I ask you to watch over our own Siora? I must return to the village. Go on ahead. We will tend to the wounded. Won't we now? Yes. We will do everything we can. And find my mother. Or her body, if... If she is indeed dead. Look at this massacre. How? Find her banner. It bears the symbol of our clan. Let's heal him. You now have enough strength to return to the village. Find Arwald. He will take care of you. Let's make sure. You now have enough strength to return to the village. Find Arwand. He will take care of you. Oh, these ruins are very strange. By what name did you call this place again? The Dida Keep Nadai Gaze. There was once a battle in the past. A great victory for our clans. Hmm. Strange indeed. These walls are completely foreign to the styles of your own dwellings. Does this name that you gave the ruins mean anything in particular? Yes. It means ruins of the first guardian. I would like to dig around a little on the site. We might be able to unearth clues as to who actually built them. You can walk now. Return to the village. We must make sure that there are no more survivors. Over there. I think that man is still breathing. Let's make sure. Now have enough strength to return to the village. Find Arwent. He will take care of me. There are some images on these walls. Let's get... This is the first time I've seen these drawings so closely. You've never come here. You certainly seem to know the place. This site is sacred and taboo. Everyone knows where it is, but no one ever comes here. All these colors are so beautiful. I never would have imagined that they could create something so delicate. Who are you talking about? Of those who built these lodgings. 
that my ancestors vanquished in a past war. You know who they were? I only know the legend. The legend of Dida Kid and the I'm listening. It is said our people lived peacefully until the men appeared from the sea, intent on making our lands their own. They dug great caverns into the earth, ripped down our forests, destroying everything in their wake. They were evil. The warriors killed so many people that even their own people came to fear them. Here, they built a terrible city that spewed out clouds of cinder and death. Our kings and queens were desperate. They went to the heart of our island, and the island heard them. From the woods appeared the first guardian. He was taller than a city, and with each step it smashed a lodging. It was a guardian of Rat, and the city could not resist him. Since then, the Earth answers our call for magic, and in exchange, we become all Manawi, in keeping with the pacts our kings and queens once made. It is a very sad and terrible legend. I wonder who these people from the sea could have been. Uh, people from the continent, no doubt. Our Malachor might well be the cursed result of that war from another age. Let's finish our investigation of these ruins. There may still be a few survivors to save. But I will need to speak of this with Constantine. I beg of you. Uh, I don't want to die. Then answer! Siora. Stop. Look at yourself. You're acting like a beast. The beast has far more majesty than these monsters who have traded their souls. The, they have taken her. The queen. They took her. Then she must still be alive. They would not have bothered to carry away a corpse. She would have chosen death before capture. They must have wanted her alive. We must find her. If your mother is in the hands of Bridge, They'd have taken her to the closest camp. Promise me that we will do everything we can to bring her back. Survived. I do not think that we will find any more of them now. We healed them all, thanks to you. May the grass always be soft beneath your feet. We'll find nothing more of interest in these ruins. 
Let's be off. On Almanawi, my mother is still held in this outpost near the Gigador. I must do everything I can to free her from the Lion's Claws. So, will you accompany me? We will do everything we can to free her. Do not worry. Let's go.
once again, Darcy! <laughs> Halt! Who goes there? De Sade. I am the legate of the merchant congregation. Oh, well, you can come in, Your Excellency. But this savage, on the other hand... Am I the one you call a savage, Renaigse? This young lady is the princess of her people, and she is with me. As such, I would appreciate if you let us through. Very well, Your Excellency. Please go and find the captain. I'd feel better knowing that he gave you his endorsement. Well, who are you? De Sade, legate of the merchant congregation. Allow me to introduce Siora, the daughter of Queen Bladnid, whom you faced on the battlefield. We understand that you brought her mother here, and I would like to negotiate her liberation. Her liberation? That'll prove difficult. She's dead. No! You... You let her die! You may even have finished her off like an agonizing animal! Well, we didn't need to. When we collected her up from the battlefield, she was severely wounded. She died on the way to the camp. I want to see her body, Honol Manawi. Please, I must see her. Can we see her, Captain? If you're the one who's asking, Your Excellency, it should be possible. You're in luck. We were thinking about getting rid of it, but we received the order to keep her body. It's still at the infirmary. Ask the doctor. He'll show it to you. Thank you, Captain. Siora, I'm terribly sorry. Let's go see her now. I need to. I'm sorry, pretty flower. I really am. The infirmary must be the building on the right, near the camp entrance. Let's go. Who are you? Are you looking for a doctor? I am the legate of the congregation, and this is Siora, the daughter of the queen whose remains you're keeping. I would like to see her. I need to see her. Please. My condolences, madam. The body of your mother is back there in the room on the left. I should give you some privacy while you're mourning. We won't be far. And if our too, my dear. Men sit a den on me, Frichtemann. I must take her with me on Al Manawi. We must perform the rituals. The captain said that he was instructed to keep her body. It will not be easy to convince him to disobey. I do not care about the captain's orders. She is my mother. She must be given back to the earth. So, let's go back to see him and try to make him change his mind. You can try, but with all due respect, I doubt that you will succeed. He will not want to draw attention to himself by disobeying this order. What do you mean? I believe he is a traitor, and that he made a deal with Telemi. Those are some serious accusations, even for a member of the Guard. Why would you believe such a thing? I overheard a conversation that got me thinking, and I also saw certain documents. We could use them to pressure him. 
Did you take them? No, that would be too risky. I do not want to get into trouble. But I suppose they would still be amongst his other belongings. Will they let us rummage through this place without protesting? Most of the guards returned to Hikmet after the battle was over. If you are discreet, you should be able to enter the officer's building. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Shouldn't you ask the captain first? Maybe he'll change his mind? You're right. Let's try talking to him before rummaging through the camp. Your Excellency, what do you want? We would like to retrieve the remains of the Queen, bring her back to her people and her family. That will not be possible, Your Excellency. As I told you, the Governor specifically asked us to keep her. He wants her delivered to one of his scholars who wanted to study her. You have lost a lot of men in this battle. How would you feel if someone prevented you from giving them a proper burial? If you knew that their corpses were going to be given to some scholars to be dissected, wouldn't you want to have them back? The way I feel when it comes to my men does not concern you. I cannot give her back to you. End of discussion. Captain, I insist. Let us take this body with us. I have orders, Your Excellency. I've already told you. It is my mother we are talking about. My mother, whom you let die by dragging her all the way here. Give her back to me, or I swear that I will never leave you in peace. This isn't the right way to approach this, Siora. Come. This man is as cold as stone. I'm afraid we have no choice but to pressure him now, like the doctor told us. We will have to be discreet if we want to find these documents without getting caught. The doctor was right. They are trafficking weapons illegally with San Mateus. If word reaches Hikmet, the... These men will face a firing squad. But none of these documents are signed. The captain managed to cover his tracks. Here's a document that could be useful. They're meeting with the buyers. Then we should go there. He won't be able to deny it if we catch him red-handed. There's a risk that he will react violently, but we have no other choice. Let's go then. I know this place. It is further down the road, near a large tree. Here we are. This is the tree that was mentioned. Let's hide while we wait for them to arrive. Well, Captain, you have some peculiar friends for a man who obeys the Alliance. You? What are you doing here? We stumbled upon some strange documents and wanted to see for ourselves if there was any truth to them. Sorry, my friends. If you want our shipment, then we need to get rid of this nosy legate. Captain, you are making a grave mistake. All we want is to negotiate. I want the body of my mother. Again, Enough! I surrender! I would never have thought that you would dare to attack allies of the congregation. <laughs> it seems to me that you were the one who attacked. How did you put it? This nosy legate. Had you simply listened to us, Captain, this fight would not have taken place. 
All we wanted was for you to respectfully deliver the body of the Queen to her village. And will you stay silent about what you saw? We're neutral. Trading amongst yourselves does not concern us. In that case, very well. I'll return to the outpost and ensure it's done. Now I would like for us to return to my village. I am eager to reunite with my sister. In that case, let's return to Vedrais. on all Manawi. Do you want to pray? Isild. Our mother. I know Siora. And divorced Tirsi. Some men delivered her remains here. They said that it was thanks to you. And the Renaigze legend. Thank you. We will be able to pay homage to our mother. Why are there mind shakers here, Aselt? I meant to tell you about it. They came saying that our mother had made an agreement with Teleme. But Mater did not tell me about it. She didn't say anything to me, either. I do not like this, Iseld. These people want to drive us away from the land. I know. But we need help after the defeat. And they say that she made a promise set in stone. The spirits of the people of our village would have to go to the light, and in exchange they'd help us against the lions. This is impossible. Mater would never have done such a thing. They are lying, I'm certain of it. They may be. But if there really is a promise set in stone, we cannot break it. And we will have to bury our mother according to their rituals. We must verify it. I will not stand there while these mind shakers take our village. Siora. Asir, always with your new friends. Bertir to Madiseld, I'm happy to see you. What do you want? Could you tell me about Siora? You are right there, and you let him talk about you like this? Asir? That's a strange friend you have there. Perhaps I wanted to hear how you'd reply. Perhaps, but I don't like this. Did you want anything else? Thanks. Goodbye, Asselt.
Happy to see you, my dear. You really don't look well. Have you not yet seen a doctor? No, no, it's nothing. You know that I've always had a weak stomach. My nausea will leave me eventually. You wanted to tell me something? We were not able, alas, to stop the clash between the forces of the Alliance and Siora's clan. We arrived at the village and the battlefield too late. The Queen fell. I'm extremely sorry for your loss, Princess. Thank you. My sister survived, fortunately, and we are recovering from this tragedy together. But our clan was extremely weakened by this battle and by recent events. We shall keep a close eye on the Bridge Alliance and their undertakings. Rest assured. You should know that the battle took place in the middle of ancient ruins. The ruins were quite strange. We discovered a fresco that I'm certain was crafted by continental hands. Really? And how ancient are these ruins? Could they date back to the first landings of the Bridge Alliance? They date much farther back than their arrival would explain. My mother and my grandmother have always known them. Siora told me of a legend that spoke of them, about a people from the sea that were vanquished there. Do you think it was the Norths? It is not our custom to found a landlocked settlement. We have our islands and it is enough for us. If they are ancient, perhaps your people once practiced older customs. This story is troubling, but it reminds me of something that I once read in the reports of Lady Morange. You should go and find her. Perhaps she could tell us more about them. Very well. Anything else? I'm going to leave now. Goodbye, Constantine. Look out for yourself. Dear sir, happy to see you again in such fine health. How can I be of service? What do you know about the ruins found to the northwest of here? <laughs> the site that the natives call Didakidnadagase. That is not how we pronounce it, but yes, we are speaking of the same place. <laughs> your language is difficult to master, but I find it fascinating. Uh, to answer your question. I had countless questions about the place when our explorers and scouts first brought back sketches. Intrigued, I went there. I noted the architecture and their decorations. It is certain that they bear a striking resemblance with continental constructions, but they are more ancient. Too old to have been recently built by the Bridge Alliance settlers when they first set foot on the island. I even questioned the natives, but they only spoke of a people of the sea. My first thoughts went to the Noughts, but they're not known for building large towns, less so cities. There are other ruins on a cliff to the east of here. Perhaps they hide the key to this mystery. I hoped to organize an expedition, but the region is dangerous and hard of access. We explored mines at the bottom of the cliff, but we were not able to find an access to the plateau. If the mystery of these ruins intrigues you as much as me, it is in that direction that you should begin to look for answers. Can I help you with any other matter? My lady, I have to go. Goodbye.
Lady Moron said the ruins would be around here. She must have been talking about D3. Look, up there. This is D3. The ruins Lady Morange told us about. But I do not know how to get there. The path collapsed. Some of the tunnels in the mine may lead to it. We should go there. Unusual customers. <laughs> well, here's the entrance to the mine. It may be worth talking to the villagers. Good day. What can I do for you? What can you tell me about the ruins on the plateau? You aren't the first to ask me about them, but the answer is still the same. I've nothing to tell you. Not that I wouldn't want to, but I've never been there. There must have been a path once upon a time, but it's no longer there. Maybe it collapsed. Some say that you have to pass through the mines to get there. A few of the tunnels do climb. It's certainly possible, I would say. But those tunnels are all closed, and we have better things to do. The iron ore. It doesn't come out of the ground by itself. Do you need anything else? What can you tell me about the ruins on the plateau? You aren't the first to ask me. Of them, it's the iron... Talk to me about the mines. It wasn't us that first dug them out. They're really old. Centuries old. But those tunnels are full of riches. It takes little effort to unearth the minerals that we want. What more could we ask for? And seeing as how there aren't that many of us, if we were pressed to mine all the tunnels, we'd be too few. But the time will come when folks hear about what we're pulling from these rocks. We won't be alone for much longer. Good day. What can I do? I'm headed out. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. You lost? No. Why do you ask? It's just that we rarely get visitors. Well then, what can I do for you? What can you tell me about the mine? It's ancient work. The natives must have dug it out a long time ago and then abandoned it. Even if it is strange work for islanders, it looks more like something we would do on a continent. We're trying to restore it. The rock is extremely rich in iron ore. But the tunnels are very old. You need to go slowly. None of us are in a humor to be buried alive. We did explore a few of them, and we're exploiting the closest. But others, nah, they're still inaccessible. Anything else? I'll leave you to it then. Until we meet again.
gate. We must find out how to open it. The piece I found was once part of this mechanism, but it's too worn. It needs to be repaired. Or we need to find a new one. Greetings, my lord. How may I help? Resume our journey. Move away. Things are about to get dicey.
Finally, here we are. These are the ruins that Lady Lorene spoke to us about. And she was right. These do not resemble native constructions at all. Explore the area. Something may give away the identity of the architects. This journal confirms what we suspected. A continental nation had once attempted to colonize the island with the help of the Nords, and they were repulsed. From what I was able to decipher, few of them actually managed to escape. Hmm. The major part of the journal has faded, and I'm not 
able to decipher the name of the author. Let's continue our search. We must discover which nation was here. This seal, I know the insignia, even if it has become more detailed in recent decades. It's hard to believe my eyes. What you're seeing doesn't seem to please you. This is the ancient coat of arms of Serene. It's a congregation seal. I think the information is pointing to something clear. No possible doubt remains. All the clues point in the same direction. The people from the sea who built these ruins and confronted the natives they were us. It's difficult to admit. And to think that I turn to you to help us against the Bridge Alliance. I do not judge you guilty of the crimes of your ancestors. But this story is known. I know. This will not help our relations with your people, that is certain. Goes to show that times change. To think that you were once conquerors. You're gonna have to pay me more for protection. If it comes out, there will be those who see red. Oh, this must be the reason they kept us in the dark. But Constantine is going to be furious when he learns this.
Cousin! You have returned! How did things go? Oh, you don't look well. What's happened here? Nothing. Nothing terribly bad in any case. I must have eaten something that's having trouble going through me. Seems to me that this illness has been lingering too long. Who prepares your meals? Are they safe? No one is poisoning me, dear cousin. We are far from court and their customs. It's nothing. Take my word for it. Now then, what do you have to tell me? We had a talk with Lady Morange, and we explored the ruins that she suggested we visit. All our findings point to one conclusion. Those ruins were originally built by the Congregation of Merchants. The Congregation? Us? But Father never once even hinted. Once again, he must have deemed me unworthy to know the secret. How he must despise me. A Constantine. We need to learn more. I want to understand. I need to know everything my father has kept from me. This question also concerns you. You look too much like a native for that to be a coincidence. Since we cannot bombard my father with questions, others here must give us the answers we require. The congregation, even in the past, could not have made it to this island without help. We are pitiful sailors. You are thinking of us. But I assure you that I know nothing of this story. You are perhaps simply not aware, but your admiral stationed at the captainry surely is. Go and find her, cousin. Try to learn the final chapter of this story. Very well. Anything else? I'm going to leave now. Goodbye, Constantine. Look out for yourself.
Desarde, what can I do for you? I've explored many ruins on this island, ruins that after careful scrutiny were built by the congregation. In one of them, we found a journal that made reference to your guild. This document, as are the buildings, date much further back than the arrival of the Bridge Alliance a decade ago. These discoveries raise a good many questions, questions that my cousin would like you to answer. I understand. All the same, we are in a difficult situation. We are bound by the pact. I could eventually overlook these engagements if you would perform a service. Commander Fernando, who holds the port of San Mateus, has problems with certain members of Teleme. The bishop that accompanies you on occasion could without a doubt tell you more. I won't hesitate to speak to him about it. Solve these problems, and I will reconsider the validity of the pact. I will answer your questions. Anything else? I need to be going. Until we meet again, Admiral. It's such a pleasure. Have you seen anything? child, I'm happy that you are here. I've had an idea that I wish to present to you. Please do. I've known the Mother Cardinal for quite some time. She is a formidable woman, gifted and diplomatically skilled. I fear that your cousin might be a little defenseless when dealing with her and would like to give him a few weapons. What do you have in mind? Diplomacy is not only a matter of formal encounters and choreographed etiquette. If we had the means to action more personal leverage, the Mother Cardinal could not manipulate your cousin. How could we ever find anything of that sort? Everyone has nasty little secrets, my child. It's our task to discover Cornelia's. Very well. Let's go and discover what the Governor would rather keep hidden from the world. Excellent. How would you like to go about this? We must search her apartments in St. Matthias. They'll be guarded, of course. But if we are discreet, that shouldn't be a problem. This is taking quite a risk. The congregation's reputation could suffer if we're caught, and my cousin's position would be weakened. I know. But keep in mind that I know the palace extremely well. And if we want to be sure to pass without being noticed, we need only dress ourselves up as servants. That would improve our chances. Well, let's do it.
Your Excellency, the Enlightened must have sent you. I would like to ask a favor of you. I'm listening. As you may be aware, we suspected this island might be the one St. Lucius wrote about. Did you? We did, but let me explain. This island was where St. Matthias lived at the end of his life, and where he founded a perfect community. Some time ago, we created a village which we called Eden, following his example. We chose this place as it seemed to be the closest to the one described in the Holy Scriptures. It is a home to a community of converted islanders, accompanied and guided in their budding faith by our theologians. As you can imagine, it is of the utmost importance to us, all the more so because we discovered some tablets there which were engraved by our founder. An extraordinary discovery that confirms your suspicions. I see you understand. Alas, these tablets were stolen probably by the islanders who still reject our influence. I know that you are generally well accepted by the natives. That is why I was hoping that you could help us to retrieve what belongs to us. I suppose I could go to Eden and try and retrieve them. Marvelous. The leader of the community, Father Eustinius, will be able to answer your questions. May the Enlightened assist you in this holy quest, Your Excellency.
This area of the palace is forbidden to visitors. We did not know. Please excuse us. The basements are for servants only. Very well. We'll go... Rain as its masters. You're not wrong. We should search this place. Locked. This document is highly important. By reading it carefully, you could learn a lot. The Mother Cardinal apparently borrows large amounts of money from a moneylender. Actually, enormous sums. What's more, she does so quite regularly. How does she manage to give it all back? Hmm. And the name Candy Cane crops up several times. Quite suspicious, don't you think? This sweet person must be doing her huge favors to get these sums. Hmm. Let's rummage around some more. We may find something else. Oh, for goodness sake! This room reeks of alcohol. And not just any old alcohol, if my nose does not deceive me. Cornelia always had great taste when it came to drinking. It seems that someone forgot their earring. Ugh, here is an object of more than questionable taste. A woman from a good family would never wear it. It's junk. The kind of thing a courtesan would wear. I didn't know you were an expert on the subject, Father. The subject of jewelry? No, of courtesans. We are here at the heart of human depravity. Outrageous luxury, excessively priced alcohol, obvious debauchery. Surely this is enough to incriminate the Mother Carnival. No, my child. These things are common in certain circles, even in Teleme, unfortunately. Cornelia may well have organized these things for others. These parties might be of use in gaining some political favor. We must find out who is involved and learn more. The earring that we found may help us with that. We could ask at the brothel if it belongs to a prostitute. We should also follow the trail left by this document, my child. The moneylender may give us information about the famous candy cane. We should also question the manager of the tavern while passing through. He will surely have some information to give us. Or to I'm sell us. Don't hesitate. Can I get you anything? I'm here for something else. Can I ask you a couple of questions? If you wish. What would you like to know? <laughs> Do you think that the Mother Cardinal may have ever been here? <laughs> Are you drunk or something? You sometimes deliver goods to your big clients, isn't that right? Of course. The rich don't like to get drunk among mere mortals. And have you ever supplied anyone from the palace? Yes, that has happened. It suits them. And who places these orders? 
Well, a steward, of course. Don't you know how things work? A woman? Dressed in a long green cloak? No, the steward is more discreet. On the other hand, the person in the big green coat, the steward speaks to her sometimes. They know each other or work together. What can you tell me about a certain candy cane? Candy cane? Everyone speaks about him or has heard of him, but no one really knows him. And what do they say about him? Here, nothing. You need to go downstairs for that sort of thing. To the games room and the brothel? Yes, that's more the kind of place where they'd talk about him. I have to go. I will leave you to your work. Good day. Welcome. You here to wager? To fight? I imagine that the name Candy Cane rings a bell. Obviously. Even though I would prefer it wasn't the case. He's a sort of... organizer. He captures most of the beasts who fight in the arena. How is that a problem? Apparently, he's fixed a few fights. These kind of rumors aren't good for my business. If that's the case, why don't you stop him? He has friends, protectors. Without solid evidence, no one will lift a finger. And the only ones who wanted to speak of his cartel have disappeared. Do you know where I can find him? He often hangs out around the port at night, but I strongly advise you to stay away from the guy. I know how to look after myself. Thanks for the information. Has the Mother Cardinal ever come here to place bets? <laughs> the Mother Cardinal? And why not St. Matthias himself while you're at it? I must be going. Next time, then. A feast for the eyes, lady. So, have you found what you were looking for? Let's just say that I'm gathering information. My treasures are worth their price. I promise you that you will get your money's worth. For you, I'm sure we can make a special arrangement. Father, do you want to explain to this man why we are here? Of course. We are not here for your services, but to lead an investigation. Several clients of yours have made a complaint Precious objects disappearing after your employees' visits. People in very high places are concerned, which explains why we've been asked to take care of it. This cannot be. I... Well, listen. Come in, but please be discreet. Thank you for your cooperation. Look, a new face. Oh, but wouldn't that be... Hello, Father. I... Uh, oh, hello. Hmm. We would like to know if you know who this earring belongs to. Is it maybe yours? Absolutely not. I am careful not to leave my belongings with clients, and I have no desire to answer your questions. That doesn't fall within my... services. Very well. Goodbye. There are too many of you for me alone, my little lambs. Sorry, madam, but we're here to ask other favors of you. This question might seem a little surprising, but do you know who this earring might belong to? Why? It's mine. I, I lost it when... How did you get hold of it? Are you sure you want to broach that subject here? You're right. Come with me. Well, what do you want? Why are you giving me back my earring? You know where we found it, don't you? Obviously. I realized as soon as I got back that I'd lost it. I imagine your pimp does not know that you take part in these parties. He doesn't dabble in this at all? No. Do not say anything to him, I beg you. He's on my case enough as it is. Then I suggest you answer my questions. <sighs> what would you like to know? Could you tell us who you saw at the parties? Rich people, or better, 
They seemed very rich and important to me, but I don't know them. Do you know who organizes these parties? Not really, no. A steward pays me when I go, but I don't see anyone else, apart from the clients. You can't even give me a single name? No. The only person who sometimes speaks to this steward is a woman who is always wearing a green coat. She never takes part in the festivities, but the steward rushes over whenever she arrives. Do you think that an important person from Teleme could have partaken in these soirees? You're thinking of Mother Cardinal, aren't you? You lot really think we are a bunch of degenerates. You're hardly a shining example of virtue, my child. Just answer our questions. Sorry, Father, I don't know the Mother Cardinal, but I strongly doubt she dabbles in that. You don't think you could recognize her and you don't think you've crossed paths. What a testimony. Admit it, you must know more than you're letting on. It's virtually impossible not to recognize someone while being so close to these influential people, wouldn't you agree? Well, I was able to recognize someone, once. Even with a mask on, I'm good at recognizing my clients. Please continue. I'm all ears. I don't want to implicate anyone, but he is of no real importance, and you've probably never even heard of him. It's the local moneylender. I know very well who you're referring to, my dear. But I didn't mention anything to you, huh? This stays between us. I don't even remember the subject of this conversation anymore. This woman in the green coat, could you tell me about her? She always hides her face and never joins us. Then she disappears into a little office and locks the door. I see. She is quite important then. Do you know someone who goes by the name of Candy Cane? Everyone does. He is a powerful person, so his name makes the rounds. Have you ever spotted him at these pleasure parties? In all honesty, I wouldn't even be able to recognize him. I've heard his name before, but that's all. Thank you for your help. Be sure not to mention this to anyone. I'd lose my clients if they suspected me of speaking about them, you know. Can I help you? Yes, actually. I have a small favor to ask. You don't look like you need money from me. I'll get straight to the point. I have bad news for you. I know about the... the decadent parties at the palace. I know that you take part in them. What? But <coughs> What are you talking about? Stop acting all innocent. I have all the evidence I need to incriminate you. Although your reputation isn't spotless, there are others who have a lot more at stake than you. What if I were to spread it around town that you boast about being there? You know what happens when tongues wag too much. That's enough! All right, all right, I'll get the message. What do you want? It would appear that you know the Mother Cardinal very well. I know that she borrowed money from you. I even know how much. What I want to know is why. <laughs> I have no idea. Do you really think that my clients tell me everything about their lives? Does she still owe you money? No, she always pays me back on time, and with interest. 
Do you think she's plundering the city funds? Ha! If that were the case, the funds would have been depleted long ago. Nah, the money's coming from elsewhere. Tell me about Candy Cane. We're not close, if that's what you want to know. I just know his name, like everyone else. I mean, there are some rumours. They say he does his business in the basement of the Coin Tavern. What kind of business? Oh, nothing to do with my line of business. He deals in arena fights, which are beyond me. I would advise you to keep all of this to yourself. <laughs> I, I don't want any trouble. I will be as silent as a stone. Look who it is. I'm looking for a woman who comes here. She always wears a long green coat. Yes, I have seen this coat before. But I have no idea who is beneath it, if that's what you're asking. All I know is that I've seen her speaking to a regular, a steward of the palace who comes to place big orders. Always prime choice. I have to go. I will leave you to your work. Good day. Welcome. You here to wager? To fight? I'm looking for someone. A woman wearing a big green coat. Yeah, I know who you mean. She's a good client. She comes in especially for the big fights and she has prime information. Do you know where I can find her? No, I don't even know her name. She wouldn't happen to be coming back to collect some winnings, would she? No, and I can't really tell you when she'll show up next. I must be going. Next time, then. So, how do you see things, my child? I think that the usurer is lending money to the Cardinal, and very significant sums at that. With this money, she bets on the arena fights while hiding in a big green coat. And she also gives large amounts to a certain candy cane, known for fixing fights. Not only does our dear Cornelia love betting games, but she also wouldn't think twice about cheating to win. Maybe he's just giving her advice. How can we prove anything? We can always try asking him. Who knows? Perhaps he will give us an answer. they call Candy Cane. Who are you? De Sade, legate of the merchant congregation. A legate, no less. I imagine in these cases, the one accompanying you is the famous Petrus. You seem to be very well informed. Therefore, you might be able to answer my question. What do you know about a woman in a green coat? Why would I tell you? We know that you have business with this woman, and that she is actually the Mother Cardinal. How did you... 
You would be better off forgetting that. That's not exactly the response I'd imagined. But nevertheless, seems rather eloquent. I told you to forget about it. Or you'll soon run into trouble. Legget or no legget. Come on, it was just an innocent little conversation. Goodbye, Mr. Kane. Bye. And Godspeed. We have enough information. Really? Is the fact that she bets on fights that are potentially fixed enough for you? It's already a huge scandal. Let me just think about it for a little while. I will find a way of putting this information to good use. I have faith in you, Father. My dear child, what can I do for you? I had a meeting with Admiral Cabral concerning what we found in those ruins. She said she was bound by a pact that kept her from answering questions on the subject. The Noughts are nothing more than mercenaries of the oceans. I suppose that she wants something in exchange. Effectively. She told me that her men posted at San Mateus met with some problems, and she advised me to speak to you. Does that make sense? I believe I see what the Admiral is speaking about. Or rather, who? A few of our zealous brothers are overcome by their faith. You already witnessed it for yourself at San Mateus. They look with a wary eye at all those who do not swear faith to Teleme, and refuse to express their faith openly. It is possible they have decided to target the Norts. We will need to speak with those on Teleme lands, and of course, seek out the Bishop Domitius. What was your role at my uncle's court? Were you already an ambassador? No. But I was part of the embassy. I had only just started my career as a diplomat back then. Teleme was hoping to convert the congregation, and they had sent me to spread the word. I tried to teach you some of the basics because you had a predisposition for magic. But you were so young. You preferred to run around the halls with a wooden sword in hand chasing your cousin. I'll see you later, Father. Take care, my child.
from the continent, are you not? You are different than the people from here. Delighted to see you again, Sister Ephesia. Father Petrus, is that really you? What are you doing here? Merely a courtesy call. How might I help you? How has your mission fared up until now, Sister? Not very well, I'm afraid. I haven't been able to get much from these villagers. Their chief and their... priest are evasive when questioned. As for the other natives, their behavior can be quite odd. They'll spend hours just staring into the void. But as soon as I come close, they chase me away. They frighten me, I must admit. There is a heavy veil of evil here. I feel it, but I'm not able to find from whence it comes. Perhaps you should talk to them. They may speak to you. Anything else? Have you been here for a long time? Since the beginning of my investigation. A few weeks, perhaps. Although it feels like months. I'm not particularly fond of the wild, and I find this place... unsettling. I see. Anything else? That will be all, Sister Ephesia. Thank you.
Bird tear to mud on all Menawi. I am Derdra, daughter of Enora, daughter of Rowena, Mal of this clan. Is it you who helped my warriors discover what the men of the Red Sun were doing? Indeed. Then I thank you. It's probably because you are an Onol Menawi that you are different from the other Renaikse. What do you seek? Can you tell me something about your beliefs? We believe that we are part of an everything. And that life depends on a balance that comes from this everything. Our strength is drawn from that which we protect. All that surrounds us. And that which surrounds us feeds and protects us in return. What can you tell me about your rituals? Ah, I oh, have heard this question before. You sound like the mind shaker woman. The rituals are the business of the Donegada, not of the Renoixe. Anything more? Concerning this story about a cult. Enough! Enough questions. I have nothing more to say. Good day. Are you the wise man of this village? Burt Tir Dumad Renaikse. I am the Donegad, yes. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. The people of your island are constantly asking questions, yet reject any answers that displease them. Questions have no value when one already claims to know the answers. But it is your case. You believe you know the answers. You seek only their echo. Answer your own questions. At least then the answers will please you, and we shall be done with your foolishness. That is not what I... Kwa Awelemseg. May your answers fill your day with bounty. Can't you leave us alone, Monisanai? Leave me be! Even your thoughts are loud and break my feet! Traitor. An Anol Menawe does not wear the dress of the strangers. Erenaik se ya toigen quachesa de elodes, sabermila. Birtir to Madre Naikse. Good day. Do you want something? Could you answer a few questions? Questions, questions. It is a word that you adore. Let us play a game. If you answer my questions, I will answer yours. If it's the only way to get answers, then let's play. I am pleased. We will have fun. But beware, no lies. What name is given the place from where you come? I come from Serene, a grand city on the continent of Gekane. Really? It is possible that you come from there, but I believe that this is not your land. Your turn. Your village seems different than the others. Why is that? Each village is different than the others. It is the reflection of those who live in it and of all that surrounds it. Vedluk. Is the village of the lightning struck wood in your language? Why do you call it that? It is said that there was once a great fire that burned all the surrounding woods caused by a storm. But one tree that burns nourishes a new tree, greener and stronger than before the forest returns. We are like her. Even wounded, we rise again, stronger than we were before. Our warriors are known for this by all clans. They fear us. Let's try something else. Are you on all Menawi with your land? Or did you inherit your link from your parents? I'm not bound. Or at least I haven't done anything in particular to bind myself. Then it was your parents. 
One of them at least must have been Donegat. Your turn. Could you tell me more about your beliefs? What a strange question. I don't believe. I know. Nature is alive. A forest is like a village. Every river, every rock, every beast, the land itself, all live, all speak to us. In exchange for these gifts, we honor her, give her our dead. This is the way of things. We do everything in our power to protect her. It was fun. More than with the woman who makes light. She did not want to play. Do you want something? Enough questions. Birtir to Mad, Anal Manawi. What do you want? You're different from the others. What is your role in the village? Different? Why? Well, for one, you answer me when I speak. You others, when we don't answer you, you start digging for answers everywhere else. I am a gatherer. I hunt a little. I do my part for the life of the village. What can you tell me about the beliefs of your village? The beliefs of the village? That is a strange question for an Onol Manawi. Our beliefs are the same as those of the other clans. We believe in the earth that carries us and feeds on our dead, in the rain that quenches us and drowns us, in the beasts that feed us and in those that eat us. I do not know what more I can say to you. Everyone shares these beliefs. What can you tell me about your rituals? Our rituals? Nothing. Nothing at all. They do not concern me. I am not a Denegad. Even you. You should be able to tell that. Why you bother me with these questions? I am only a gatherer. Go and bother someone else. Tell me about the missionaries that came here. Those who wear the symbol of the sun on their clothing. When they came, they spoke about their bright and shiny god. They told us we were wrong. Said that nature was just nature and not to be worshipped. These men know nothing. We ignored them. They finally left and then the woman came to us. She sniffed around everywhere, asking many questions just like you. I was told that she tried to enter my own home. I even saw her trying to follow me in the woods. She must be careful. It is easy to get lost in the woods or cross paths with wild beasts. This question will seem strange to you, but do you know anything about a demon? A Demon? A dark spirit, if you prefer. No. There is no such thing as dark spirits. Your question is not strange. Foolish, perhaps. I must leave now. Thank you for your help. Anything new? No. The investigation has gone stale. The villagers won't even engage in conversation with me now. Perhaps you should talk to them. They may speak to you. I managed to exchange a few words with some villagers, but I admit they don't seem keen to talk. And did they tell you anything worth sharing? I know little more about their beliefs. They worship nature and do not intend to change. It is certainly different from the luminous faith, but it's hardly demonic worship. Yet, there's something strange about this village. One of the villagers that spoke with me seemed truly worried. On edge, even. I think I know of whom you speak. A man always looking over his shoulder. He often sneaks out of the village like a thief. 
I attempted to follow him, but he always eludes me. I tried to get into his hut to see if he was hiding anything, but someone was always there. Then we should give it a try. Perhaps we'll fare better. That fellow was really nervous. Perhaps we should try and search his house to see what he's hiding. He doesn't look inclined to let us in. We'll have to distract him. I'm sure this young lady can help us. She appears to be playful and to love pranks. Or we could just break some of these pots. That'd keep her busy. I can pretend to be clumsy, but we'll have to work fast and it will only work once. This painting is frightening, evoking war, a massacre, a bloodbath under the likeness of a grimacing face. is incredibly morbid. I wonder what sort of spirit could be venerated in this way. This is exactly the kind of proof we've been looking for. An evil cult, far from some naive veneration of nature and other island spirits. What a horrible mask. How can someone wear such a thing unless they're worshipping some dark creature? I wouldn't like to cross paths in a dark alleyway with someone wearing a mask like this. All these gruesome and bloody horrors leave no room for doubt. There is a demonic cult here. We should go tell Sister Abysia. Did you learn anything? No, nothing more. Were you able to get inside the nervous man's hut? I was able to sneak into the hut of our mystery man. And what did you discover? Some troubling things. A ritual mask, a rather morbid altar, and a fresco depicting a massacre. By the enlightened. To think these unholy things were so near. Finally, the proof we need that there's a blood-worshipping cult here. They cannot perform their heinous pagan rituals in the village, and I am certain that it's where our nervous friend sneaks off to. I fail to find where he goes, but you have already proven more competent than I. I shall try. Hopefully he won't lead us into a trap. Thank you for your help, and good luck. We should wait until nightfall and follow him. Here we could hide and wait. We would be able to see where this sleepless boy goes during nightfall. My child, it's time to wake up. Our nervous friend is here.
careful. Is everything okay? You started wobbling all of a sudden. I had a sort of flash vision. Just for an instant, I was a tree in a storm. What exactly did you see? Perhaps these images will help us find an entrance into the sanctuary. I was this tree, and my branches were shaken by a storm so strongly that they hurt terribly. The heavens caught fire several times, and I felt the lightning strike and pierce me through and through. A sinister warmth took hold of my entire body in an instant, and flames began to devour me. Life left me. All was calm, and I had a taste of cinder in my mouth. In spite of this, I continued to feel, and the rain began to fall on my roots, and at the very heart of my being, I felt the sap begin to flow again. A shoot appeared on my darkened roots, then the vision dissipated. I have never experienced anything like it before. The drawing on this stone resembles a symbol that must represent the Earth. This stone is adorned with the etching of a drop of water. This stone bears the image of a storm, or perhaps the wind. The drawing on this stone represents lightning. Here, this looks like a snowflake. The snow, or maybe ice. This stone is blackened, eaten away. I think it's supposed to have... This stone has an image of the moon. On this stone, the sun is visible. This drawing looks like an infant. Could it represent life? The drawing on this stone makes me think of fire. I'm certain. This island really is full of surprises and mysteries. This weird puzzle actually opened the door. Los Duis, a Ruyet Ness Diri. Lois de Graman a des Gideon, a Renta. Esparno Fradi, Damagengadan, Yadiga la Dandian. Esparno Fradi, Dawe Gaishidon. Ag Esparno Fradi, Dawe Gremos and There is no longer any doubt. The creature who was talking through this tree is a demon. In any case, Teleme's story suddenly sounds way more plausible. The Denegad who performed the ritual was the villagers. We should go talk to Dedra.
What do you seek? We found your sanctuary and assisted in one of your blood rituals. Was the apparition we witnessed the demon the priests were talking about? What is clear is these priests know nothing and you know nothing. I am not from Teleme. I cast no judgment upon your beliefs. But if you want us to help you, you need to help us understand. I doubt that you would be able to understand, but very well. I'll attempt to help you make sense of what you witnessed. The ritual you saw is a ceremony to summon forth the strength of our warriors. Our people have always lived in harmony with nature. Our very existence revolves around her. She talks to us and takes on many faces. What you have witnessed is just one of many. Confronting the threat that the Ranoixi make up, we called them for their blessing, and they appeared to us. Can we contact them? I mean, is communication possible? What you witnessed was not a discussion. But if you visit a sanctuary, you may see one of the faces, and then you will be able to talk. Pass the mountains and head to the swamps. There, if you perform the ritual, you will see them come. Though what you will hear may not be to your liking.
What a strange party we have here. Who are you to come and disrupt our solitude? Good day. We... You? You are on Olmenawi and at the same time, Renaixi. So it is possible to bond yourself on your faraway island? We are here because Teleme has asked us to carry out an investigation. They think that certain clans venerate a demon, an evil creature. We carried out our investigation of Vedlog on Chief Durdra in an attempt to discover the truth. And the clues have led us to find our answers in this sanctuary. Durdra sends you to seek out a... demon? Curie. A man from your island came already a long time ago, full of questions he was as well. He had a small party of warriors with smoking tubes, and on their chests, a golden lion. A lion? An emblem that is fitting for the pride of the Bridge Alliance. They set up a camp near here, and then they disappeared all of a sudden. Do you know where precisely? It was a long time ago. I don't remember all that well. My memory has been leaving me of late. But it wasn't far from here. You will find it, I am certain. Ah! 
You are bringing him back the memories. They were asking nearly the same questions you ask. Fresco in various yellow hues. It represents a sort of insect. <sighs> the image is fading. I can't see much of anything. The image is fading. We can't see much of anything. It represents a beast of the marshes, a red serpent. These remains, they must be the people the hermit was talking about, don't you think? Probably. You can still discern the crest of the Alliance on this doublet. Let's search the area. There might still be something interesting. Strange stranger. We found the camp you spoke of. Well, all that remains of it. I told you, you were not the first Renegse went by here. Many died. What happened to them? I warned them, I remember. They did not listen very well. Too bad. Their weapons were strange, strange and powerful, but not enough so. The marsh is more powerful still. That doesn't seem to bother you all that much. Tiofradi gives. Tiofradi takes back. But you're still here. What do you want again? I found this note. It speaks of a ritual, but it is incomplete. Do you know anything else about it? A ritual? 
Yes, there is a ritual for the impatient. For me, it serves no purpose. I am here. I wait. But for me, it would be useful. Can you help me? Deirdre must have her reasons. The folly of youth. Do you see those drums over there? They awaken the earth. As long as you play them correctly, they will awaken the earth. Oh, and that's not all. Once the earth is awakened, the stone will appear. That must be quenched. Quench a stone? But you're still here. What do you want again? How do you play the drums? Oh, that's easy. The music is the first language of Tiafradi. It resonates with the earth. You need only respect the natural order for the earth to hear you. A predator, a prey, the cycle. <sighs> That's not really all that clear. Come now, come now. You must first make the snake rattle, unless it is first to be the insect. Time devours all memories. I do remember one thing, though. I'm listening. Each drum must only be played one time, and only once. But you're still here. What do you want again? Quench a stone. What does that mean? Water trickles on the stone and returns to us, empowered by its force. But sometimes, water is not enough. This note I found explains a recipe. A potion thought to contain the essence of this place. That's what must be poured over the stone. Oh, yes. No doubt. No doubt. But you're still here. What do you want again? Nothing. I shall leave you alone. Something's appeared over there. It seems as if it's some type of altar. Looks like an altar. The stones! That must be where we need to pour the potion. Thank you. 
What is this? He seems quite upset over a creature that was set on killing us all. May the earth swallow you all. We had no choice. This creature attacked us. Explain yourself rather than insulting us. Ignorant foreigners! She was a Nadaig, a guardian, a Danaigad, returned to nature! I don't understand. Are you telling me that this creature was once a woman? It was my woman! You and all those of your cursed island are fools and destroyers. But in all Milfricti men will soon send you back over the water. He will destroy you as you destroy us. He has already begun. En on Milfricti men. I have heard that name before. Perhaps it is the name of their demon. One mystery after another. What we take for a demon was a woman transformed into a beast. And now we have but a simple name. <laughs> Enon Mil Frichtemann. This man, or this thing, seems to be after us. Perhaps it is behind all of this. We need to learn more. You survived, which must mean, alas, that one of the Nadaig is with us no longer. You are a great warrior. You could almost be a storm warrior. What do you seek? You set a trap for us, invoking and releasing that creature. It is true. And the Nadaig is indeed one of the faces, a spirit of the oil. I was hoping that you would disappear. The swamps do not like to give back those who enter. You have seen things that no stranger to our clan has ever seen. Secrets that no one must know. But you survived. You are strong. 
I should not have thought you so weak. The ritual. This is how you prepare the blood sap. What are you talking about, Sior? No one knows the recipe. But it is the very barm that allows her warriors to enter into a trance and to rise again when they have fallen. It is true. You do not know the ingredients, but you know now how the blessing works. I have nothing more to give you than my excuses, and that you keep to yourself all that you have seen. You are a brave on all Manawi, and I would like to request your help. You request my help after sending me on a suicide mission? You helped us to find the camp of the Soul Lasser, and you have proven your valor fighting the Nardaik. So, yes, I am asking for your help in saving the people who are suffering in this camp. What do you intend to do exactly? Attack and destroy this camp and those who live in it to set my people free. And how am I supposed to help you? My clan is powerful, but so are these soul lasser. I need more warriors. Essel of the Gaius Rad is in my debt, but I'm afraid she might refuse to honor it after her clan was defeated. You know how to talk to people. And you are friends with her twin sister. I would like you to go and convince her to help me. I suppose I could try at least. That would be good. It would also be good if you could fight alongside us to set these prisoners free. Meet us near the camp with the forces you managed to assemble. We should go and see the Mother Cardinal. It is her Inquisition, after all. If she finds out afterwards that we went to fight them without even informing her first, she might take offense. Your Eminence, I salute you. Sir de Sarde, what can I do for you? I have come to inform you of the existence of a secret camp created by the Inquisitors of the Ordo Luminous. From what we know, they abduct natives and take them there to torture them and convert them by force. And those who refuse to renounce their faith, despite their suffering, are shot in cold blood. What? Where did you hear such things? From the natives themselves, Mother Cardinal. But surely Bishop Demetius will be able to tell us more about it. This is nothing but a web of lies that those pagan natives invented to harm us, Your Eminence. There's nothing here that could... Enough, Demetius. If the natives are complaining to the congregation about the exactions of the Inquisition, it is our duty to intervene. In that case, we should act fast, Your Eminence because one of these native clans is getting ready for an assault. They managed to find the camp and are gathering their troops. I implore you to dissuade them, Your Excellency. It is our duty to fix this situation. I wouldn't want the natives to think that we were letting them suffer without doing anything. Since you seem to know all the details of this matter, will you agree to lead my troops? 
You want me to lead the offensive on this bastion of the Inquisition? Yes. Of course, you would be leading a troop of guards, which I will immediately put at your disposal. Go to the barracks and show this mandate to the quartermaster. He will ensure that you are provided with the men you need. As for me, I pray the Enlightened will guide you in this terrible task. Domitius, if I find out you had anything to do with this, you will pay for it with your life. Your Eminence. I assure you that this is probably nothing but the actions of a handful of fanatics. If that is the case, then it will be your Greetings. Quartermaster Herbert. I'm in charge of these barracks. And you are? Desade, Legate of the Congregation. Nice to meet you, Your Excellency. And what can I do for you? Here. The Mother Cardinal gave me this mandate for you to supply me with some troops. Everything looks perfectly in order. May I ask you what this is about? Some members of the Order Luminous built a camp to convert the natives by force. Her Eminence wishes to put an end to what could lead to a war between Teleme and the natives. I see. Oh, it was high time someone put an end to the dangerous zealousness of these Inquisitors. I will order the men I have here to assemble in the courtyard. I do not worry. I will send you my best. I just need to explain the mission to them, and they'll be on their way. And... Soldiers! The Mother Cardinal is sending you to fight under the orders of His Excellency, Desade. You will have to put an end to the crimes committed by the Inquisition in a nearby fort. I expect you to obey the orders of His Excellency without question. For Teleme, for the Guard, fight with honor!
We're almost at the fort. Should we wait here until nightfall? Yes, let's. Our men are ready, Your Excellency. They're awaiting your orders. Perfect. Our objective is located beyond this cliff. The Inquisitors are not expecting us. We have the element of surprise. Let's make good use of it. Understood, Your Excellency. We'll be discreet. Let's find a vantage point to get a better overview of this fort. Here it is. The Mad Inquisitor's Fort. There's no turning back. I hope that you're all ready. Most of their troops seem to be outside. As if they sense we are coming. The prisoners are most likely inside. In some basement, perhaps. And it seems as if there are some in the right wing as well. Most of the fighting will take place outside. The priests are at a disadvantage in confined spaces. We must strike quickly if we want to make good use of the element of surprise. What are your orders, Your Excellency? We are behind the camp where there are fewer guards. Getting inside will prove less troublesome from this side. We will conduct two near simultaneous assaults. The first larger group will attack from the front to cause chaos in the enemy ranks. As for me, my companions and I will get inside the building from the back and sneak into the basement. We will set as many prisoners free as we can and use the opportunity to search the building. Once you have eliminated the troops in front of the building, focus on the right wing. At your orders. Should we keep a few men here to catch any potential runners? Indeed. An excellent suggestion. Are you ready for the assault? We're ready, Your Excellency. In that case, conduct the assault as soon as you're in position. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Let's hurry and reach the prisoners before the Inquisitors kill them all. Wait here for now. We're still fighting outside. May the Enlightened always keep you in his divine blessing. May the Enlightened bless you. of the Inquisitors. The forge is safe now. We're done here. Let's lend a hand to our allies outside, as there are still some prisoners there. I'm a 
Prisoners have been dead for days. There's no one left to set free. Let's get out of here. How did the battle go for you? Your plan was successful, Your Excellency. We won a resounding victory. Congratulations. And we were able to set the prisoners free. They were completely exhausted, but alive. I would like for you to escort them to the closest village. At your command, Your Excellency. Once this is done, you can return to your garrison. And do not worry. The Mother Cardinal will be informed of your valor in combat. Your Eminence, I salute you. Sir de Sardé, what can I do for you? We managed to dismantle the Ordo Luminis's camp, Your Eminence. And while we were there, we gathered proof of their exactions. Domitius, you will have to answer for the actions of your order on this island. Your Eminence, I assure you that... Enough. There will be an investigation. I hope that I will not discover that you were involved in this matter. In any case, you will have to explain your inability to control your own men. But please, continue, Your Excellency. 
The guards served you well, and bravely followed your orders. They will be thanked and rewarded for it. But it is to you, Your Excellency, that I express my deepest gratitude. Without your intervention, Teleme as a whole would have appeared as a monster in the eyes of the Islanders. It was my pleasure, Mother Cardinal. What do you want from me, my son? Sir de Sarde, emissary of the congregation. Ah! The congregation still has the uncanny gift of surprising us. I am Bishop Domitius. I represent the Ordo Luminous on the island. What can I do for you? I believe you have a few problems with the Noughts who reside in the port. We have problems with all matter of heretics, my son. And of course the pagan Noughts would be among them. They are very secretive and have all sorts of strange rituals that they keep to themselves under cloak of mystery. The sorcery they employ to guide their ships is drawn from nature, just like the sorcery used by the natives. And to top it all off, and this is where it stings, we suspect them to be at the origin of the Malachor. Whatever do you mean? How? Have you ever once crossed paths with a nought suffering from the Blood Plague? Why are they spared? The only logical reason is that they are at its origin, calling upon various cursed rituals. It's as simple as day. I am certain that we will find clues of their rituals and their pagan idols in their stockhouses in the port. Uh... Very well. Let's just agree that these rumors need to be verified. Anything else? What do you seek? I have come to tell you that we have taken care of the Inquisitors and set the camp's prisoners free. You thought we weren't capable of fighting the Soul Lasser and of freeing our people? That's not it. I thought it was my duty to inform the woman who represents Teleme here of the situation. She's the commander of the Soul Lasser, and she was furious when she heard about their actions. She made a point of punishing them herself. ...and of having your people set free as a token of good faith. I understand. She's proven a respectable queen. 
And you have proven an ally. I thank you for your help on all Manawi. From now on, you have our gratitude and our trust. From this day forward, you are a garant of our clan. Anything more? I need to be going. Gwawalem Seg.
The valley is vast. We should get to a vantage point if we want to find this expedition. Over there, tents. This must be the expedition's camp. A camp here, in the open wind. It was definitely set up by scholars. Signs of combat. They were attacked. By the look of the tents in the campfire, it dates back several days. It seems they were taken prisoner. I don't see any bodies. No weapon leaves this sort of marking. Perhaps they were wielding magic. Yes. It is the art of the Done Gada. One of the Valley Clans was here. Would you know which one? One who fights against the invasion of the peoples from your island. I can be sure of nothing more. Why would they attack scholars? They're not warriors. They come here as conquerors. This is enough. But they were not killed. Warriors would have been. This looks like scientific equipment. This must be the Lost Expedition's campsite.
This looks like the journal of a naturalist. There are sketches of flora and fauna. There is no doubt. We are definitely on the trail of the lost expedition. It seems that one of the team kept a distance from the others. Let's see what we can discover. A trail of blood. That cannot be good. Follow it. More blood. We're on the right path. Keep going. A corpse. The clothes cannot be mistaken. It is a scholar of the Bridge Alliance. From the looks of him, I would say he's been dead for days, as we already thought. This isn't the woman whose journal we found. There is still a chance that she remains alive. This man traded his life for all the suffering of my people. It was only a scholar, a sage, not a warrior on the battlefield. Do you think my people see a difference when bridgemen steal our people from their beds? From who do you think? All the clans hide dead children. This man was unarmed. And from the position of his body, I would say he was fleeing. It is not honor that motivates them. Maybe it was vengeance. I'll search the body. We might find something to help us understand. Here is the isolated camp mentioned in the journal. Everything is in order, but the inhabitants are no longer there. Its position would have allowed them to escape the attack. Isolated. Discreet. Perfect visibility. Great choice. It is a journal, that of a woman from the expedition, a certain Afra. She speaks of their research and relates here that she felt watched. She feared an attack was brewing. I believe she was right. The writing stops mid-sentence. A woman with sharp eyes. They might have saved her life. We must follow the tracks of the attack. They will certainly lead us to our party of intrepid scientists. This woman was right to fear the Donea Exregao. They must have followed this path coming from the swamp. This is where we should go if we want to find these lion scholars.
Look, those are islanders. They might be from the clan that attacked the Bridger camp. That's possible. They look like trackers. But what are they? say! We won't let you take us. We will not kneel down without a fight. Wait. We have no desire to fight you. We only want to find the Lion Sages. They are not warriors, but their chief is ready to send an army of warriors to liberate them. If you help us bring them back, you will save your tribe from a costly battle in lives. He speaks truly. Look, one of them is already eager to bring Lion warriors back to us. All we wanted was for them to tell us where our brothers are being kept. What good is this if we must leave our camp behind? Very well. Stay away from the main entrance. Our guards will not welcome your arrival. Pass around. There is a smaller entrance hidden there. The lions are kept in a home in ruins. There must be a key somewhere to open the door, but I know not where it is kept. I'm not here to kill you. Tell me then, what is your intended purpose? We were sent to look for you. Apologies, but allow me to express my doubts. Well, after this little swim, you could always try to pull the trigger. Who sent you to find me? Well, we were not looking for you in particular, but the entire expedition. It was Governor Burham who asked us to find you. He's worried about you. You haven't been reporting. You should have said that straight away. I must admit, I was hoping for a rescue of a different nature. Do you have a name? Desarde. I'm from the congregation. Hmm. The new governor's cousin. Who wears an islander face. I've heard stories about you. And them? I am Siora, daughter of Bladnid, from the people that your own capture and torture. I've never taken anyone. On the contrary, we had hoped to exchange our knowledge with your own. Kurt. Simply Kurt. I protect our excellencies back. And if one of your violent fits overcomes you, rescue party or not, I will kill you. This is a rather odd group. I am Afra, a scholar from the Bridge Alliance. It is rather rare to find me rolling in the marshes. I study the fauna and flora of this isle. I should imagine you have many questions. We saw the site where you were attacked. What exactly happened? We were taken by surprise. One moment everything was calm, and the next a war party of natives fell upon us. I had an uneasy feeling and kept myself apart. But when I heard my fellow scholars shout, I rushed over. Most of my companions are incapable of defending themselves, and we didn't have guards to protect us. One of them tried to flee, but they brought him down. We decided to give ourselves up to avoid a massacre. What has happened since the attack? How long have you been in these marshes? We were taken prisoner and were brought to a village nearby. I was able to escape while the others were taken to a house that they use as a prison. I wanted to join the Bridge Alliance frontier post not far from here, but I wasn't able. So I doubled back to keep watch of the village from a distance. I have been hoping to find a way to free my companions without any success so far. Have you made progress in your search for a cure? Hmm. We were studying some quite remarkable plants when we were attacked. The region is rife in unknown and novel species. Some seem incredibly promising. The local shamans know all these plants and they use them in their remedies. If only we had been able to converse with them rather than getting ourselves captured. Could you lead us to the village where your colleagues are being held prisoner? Certainly. We are oh so very close. 
and I fully intend to participate in this rescue. I'm not one to sit around and twiddle thumbs. This is where the natives took your colleagues? Yes, it is here. These ruins are being used as a camp by the native raiders. There are so many of them. Better to remain discreet. I have spied on the camp and discovered where my colleagues are being held. They are being kept in the old walls of the main ruin. I would rather avoid unwarranted deaths. We should wait until nightfall and look around the camp to find a more discreet way to get inside. I fled as they were about to lock my companions inside a cell. We're going to need a key. Please, Onol Manawi, let's try to avoid the fight.
Afra, is that you? Come quickly. We don't have much time. Thank you for your help. Do not thank me yet. We are still in a shipload of danger. find a way to get out of this valley without putting my companions in danger. Mercy, you have defeated us. Spare us our lives. If you spare them, they will only hunt us down until we are all dead. No, you have our word. We have been bested. We will let you move on in peace. How can we trust you? You attacked our camp when we were not even armed. They are savages. They had us caged like beasts. We only sought to learn where you have caged our people. Spare their lives. I beg you. They were only fighting to save the lives of those that have disappeared. Very well. Leave. And I hope you keep your word. Thank you, Onol Manawi. I have spoken and I will honor my words, Kwa Awalamseg. We are no longer in danger. 
Thank you for your help, Desade. I must admit, the reasons for my being here are not entirely selfless. Your research to find a remedy against the Malachor could save many lives in our cities as well. You speak like a true man of science. Cut to the point. Then you'll be thrilled. Your heroic efforts to save us from those savages could help. We've made a discovery. Is that right? In that case, we need to speak with Governor Burram immediately. Very well. I'll accompany you. <sighs> Let's be off. Sir Desade, and our expedition. I thank you sincerely for having brought them back, Excellence. You are a providential man. Please, sir. It was you who convinced me and my cousin of the capital importance of their research. A research that has borne fruit, Your Excellency. Truly? This is excellent news. You have found a plant with sufficient properties? Uh, not exactly. Know that during our captivity, an island woman visited the camp. The natives called her Tiena Hak Cadactus and treated her with utmost reverence. I heard them talk about a remedy, a universal remedy, it seemed, that she had concocted. How's that? Liamatra did nice yacht them? Huh. Well, I grasp the basic of the local tongue, and I am certain to have heard the word yag. Remedy. Surprising. But the Tiernahach is very powerful and very wise. It is possible that she did craft such a remedy. You will not and... Excellency.
Thanks for your visit. Come closer. Come closer. All my wares are in the vanguard of progress. You're excellent. Greetings, my caravan. So, where would the new Serene, please? The best for oh, it's a great pleasure to see you. The best forge in tier for thee! Blades, armor, locks, custom pieces made to order!
Gleasy, Renaixe. Do not take a step further. We come in peace. My name is Desarde. I am from the Congregation of Merchants. We would like to speak to your chief. Foreigners like you bring nothing but pain and debt. The last who came here took away our prisoners. I must admit to you that I am responsible. We had no choice but to free the sages. But I did all in my power to avoid bloodshed. I spared your warriors' lives when they were at our mercy. They spoke of you. They say you keep the words you speak. Will you keep your peace? I swear it. Then you may enter. But we have an eye on you. Darren, our chief, will not be happy to see you. You will need to convince her you are worthy of trust. Do it! What are you doing? Who let you pass? Your men. We are here to parley with your chief. Parley? With Renaixe? You truly believe that... Leave this to me. I want to know what they have to say. I know you, Renaixe. It is you who freed the Loyan prisoners. You wounded none of my own. That required great skill. Speak. I will hear you. We seek audience with the Tiernaha Kadachtus. We believe that she knows of a remedy for a sickness that kills thousands in our homeland. This disease and the quest for a cure pushes my people to come to your island and to invade it. But if we could finally heal the sickness, most of them would return to their country. You say it is a sickness that drives you like a plague over our island? Like locusts? It is the main reason. Our lands have become a sad cemetery filled with, with the bodies of our dead. This sounds true. You walk with the shadow of death. But what you tell me pleases me. I prefer chasing you away with our blades. But we have already lost so many of our own. Does your word carry value for your people? Are you a respected chief? I am the cousin of the governor of the congregation and his emissary. He hears me. Then promise me what you say is true. That you will do all you can to leave when you have found your remedy. That I promise you. You will find the Tiernahach Kadachtas in the village of Vigshardir, to the northeast of this camp. Now leave us. And do not betray your word.
Good day. I'm looking... What are you doing here? You are in a hidden village, a sacred village. The Renaiksi have no place here. I seek an audience with the Mistress of Wisdom, the Tierna Hakadaktus. Do you know where I can find her? The Tierna is in her home. She goes, she comes as her heart desires. Only her Voglendaig must know. And if I knew where she was, it's not me who is going to tell her, Renaiksi. Go away, leave me alone now. I have much to do. The Great Hunt is coming. You spoke about a great hunt. What is it? A sacred ceremony, of course. How in your countries do you honor your lands and assure their abundance? Well, uh, it's a bit... You Renaikse are very strange. It is no wonder that you come to our lands. If you do not honor the land with the great hunt, you must lack game to hunt. Each year, one of our own, our best hunter, dresses up as the Andrik. He becomes the White Andrik during an entire night, and the others hunt him. If he escapes them, the game will be abundant, and the gathering fruitful during the entire year. It is a very important celebration. Please, now, I wish her no harm. I just need to speak with her. You speak well and say pretty things, but it is by your doings that you will be judged. Then, in that case, tell me what I can do. Hmm. There is much to be done in this season. And Pedir, the great gatherer, has not returned from the woods. Very well. Would you like me to go and get him? That would be good. Hello. Are you Padir? People in the village are worried about you. Esquito! Arenaixi! That I... I know no more if I am what you say. In truth, I fear being dust, waiting to settle on the earth. What has happened to you? Why such despair? My eyes have clouded. I see no more, nothing at all. I was once the great gatherer. But by the devil, why have they sent a blind man to gather herbs? No one knows. I said nothing to them. I know my village so well that I do not need to see to wander through it. But I can no longer gather the herbs of the sacred dye. I know they are here, in these woods, but I cannot find them. Very well. Can you tell me which plants you need? If you are certain that they are somewhere in this patch of woods, it won't be difficult. But how am I to guide you? The names we give to these plants are not the same as the names you give them. Describe them to me. I think I'll find them. One is a blue flower, the other a green mushroom, and the last ingredient is a blackberry. Very well. Don't go anywhere. I'll take care of it. I'm back, Padir. Yes? I found the herbs that you were looking for. Here. Thank you. You are good for a Renaixi.
I did not know your kind bore souls such as you. I may return to the village now. I will tell them that you're on your way there. Thank you again. Uh, but I ask you, do not tell them what you have learned about me. I do not wish that they treat me like a broken cripple. Goodbye, Padir. You are here again. I found Padir. He should be along shortly. Whatever made him take so long? He is not a man to be bothered by the beasts. That poor Padir fell asleep under a tree. Age, I suppose. It seems like it would be the right time for him to take on an apprentice. Someone to help him on his walks. You are completely right. It would be a shame that such great wisdom be lost. I thank you, Renaixi. Your acts are as beautiful as your words. You are welcome here. And I hope you find the Tjarna Hach Kadachtas. Bortir to Madre Nixi. Uh, good day. I seek the Mistress of Wisdom, the Tierna Ha Kadachtas. I have no idea what you want with her, but no one in the village will tell her Nixi where to find her. I do not seek to harm her, only to speak with her. I don't know where she is. Her Vogelandaig might know, but I think he will tell you nothing. You are in one of the most sacred villages of our lands. The Renaiks are not welcome here, and we are busy making ready for the Great Hunt. Maybe I could help you with something. Help us? Hmm. Why not, after all? It would speak well of your intentions. During the Great Hunt, we place bells on the path to keep the animals away. During the last hunt, there was a great storm. And the bells were badly damaged. Would you like me to repair them? That would be good. If not, we need to make new ones, and I am afraid we will not have the time.
Let's take a look at these chimes. Hmm. Its base is damaged. The wooden tubes can no longer hit each other. We will need to craft a new base. Child's play. I'll help you if you want. These chimes are once again in working order. Seeing where it's been hung, it isn't surprising that these chimes are making no sound. They're far too low and can't catch the wind. Now with the chimes in the proper place, they should sound like they're supposed to sound. The base of this bell is damaged. That's why it no longer makes a sound. I need to build a new one. These chimes are once again in working order. These chimes here are simply tangled. I need to untangle them without breaking them. There, everything is in order. It will chime whenever wind blows upon the branches. Well now, Renaixe, were you able to repair our bells for the hunt? Yes, they are all working now. You are very surprising. But I should have known that as an Onolmanawi, you would be different than the others. I now believe your words to be true when you say you desire no harm to Artirna. 
You need to find her Voglandai. I will tell him that your intentions are heartfelt. Ongos, what do you want, Renaxi? Do you know where I might find the Mistress of Wisdom? The Tirna Hachkadaktas? I regret she is not here. Do you know where she might be found? You have earned the trust of the people here by helping Padir and preparing the trail of the hunt. I suppose that I could tell you where to find her, but... What's the matter? You seem troubled. I am. I lost my sacred seal. And I fear the just anger of my wise mistress. Perhaps I could help you, if you tell me a little more. It is a sacred stone that my mistress asked me to study and meditate with. I had it with me when I was going to the river, but I was suddenly attacked. Of course, the animals left me alone in the end, but I dropped the seal in my flight. I would gladly go and look for it, but I am alone in the village, waiting for the Tierna Hakkadaktas. And what with the preparations and the great hunt, I cannot leave at this time. I see. I'm going to look near the river and see if I can find it. Thank you, Renaxi. The Tirna Hachkadaktas went into the sacred bosk. She goes often there to meditate. And where could I find this bosk? To the west of the village, into the heart of the woods. There is a passage between the rocks that gives access. Be wary. This is an untamed place where the animals are wild and numerous. Could you help us remember where you lost the seal you were looking to recover? On the edge of the village, near the river. That is where I dropped it when the wild animals came and chased me away. Thank you. I'm going to see if I can find it. I must leave. Ongos. What do you want, Renaxi? I found your seal. It was indeed near the river. My heart thanks you. You are a Renaxi like no other. The Tirna Hachadaktas would have been angry if I had lost it. I must leave.
You are not welcome here, the Nazi. I regret troubling your rest. My name is Disarde. I am a legate of the Congregation of Merchants. Mev, daughter of Morrigan, daughter of Cardwin. What is a legate? And what could he want from me? I am an emissary, a representative of my nation. I have come to speak to you about a cure. Of what cure do you speak? You do not show signs of sickness. I am not. But on our continent, many people are dying from a terrible plague. We have named the sickness the Malachor, and none of our doctors have been able to heal anyone taken ill. We have heard talk from some of your people of a cure that is so powerful that it can heal almost anything. You would be... You must share with us the formula. Too many lives are at stake. You come here to my home, and you command me to help you. Arrogance. Renoixe. Please forgive us, I beg your pardon. We have seen so many people die of this affliction. This miraculous cure that we've heard talk of, could you share the formula with us? You are either completely crazed or foul liars. None of this makes sense. But I... Enough! I have lost enough time with your lies and your foolish thoughts. I do not know what you truly want from me. But I will not be used like some puppet. To my house! These roots are so interwoven and taut that it's impossible to get through them. There is residue. It looks as if something had been placed here. She passed through here, there's no doubt about it. But how was she able to get past these roots? This stone steely has something to do with the entry of the grotto. But how? This is obviously island magic. Some sort of ritual. The roots must open if one places the proper offering on the altar stone. I wonder if Ongos, the Voglandai, will know how this works.
were you able to meet the Tierna Hak Kabaktas? Yes. But to my grave disappointment, she fled before I could expose my arguments. Yes, many strangers have tried to capture her many times. She must have decided you were one of them. I'm once again in need of your assistance. I must take the passage blocked by a door of roots. You had the honor of speaking with my mistress. If she chose to follow the sacred passage, then it is that she had nothing more to say to you. Why would I share with you the understanding of the ritual that protects her? I promise that I mean her no harm. I just need to expose as best I can the problem at hand. Her help is truly necessary. Thousands of lives are at stake. Tell me more. My people have fallen prey to a serious illness, which has almost certainly taken my own mother by now. If we do not quickly find a remedy, we shall all follow her to the grave. But the Tierna Hak Kadachtas can help us. We are sure of that. She will know of a remedy able to heal this sickness that plagues us. Your quest seems noble and with great respect for the life of all. You must feed the offering ward to enter into the passage and meet her once again. I need to place a seed on the stone steely, don't I? Yes, you must make this offering. I cannot tell you from which plant it is given, but there is a chance there are more in her dwelling. I will let you enter this one time, but treat her dwelling with respect, I ask you. Thank you for your help. Do not be so eager to thank me. The place you enter is ripe with dangers. As do all sacred places, it defends itself with the wild beasts that it fosters. This passage leads to a forest where the ancestors of the Tierna Hak Kadaktas makes her home. <laughs> and why should I fear the ancestor? Have stories of the Nadaig been shared with you? In your language, you would call them guardians. Yes. I even encountered one. She was... magnificent. Then you know of what I speak. I must leave. This looks like a collection of skulls from various animals. I wonder what purpose they serve. All of this is extremely interesting, but alas, it won't help me open the root passage. This plant looks familiar. I saw some not far from here. Unfortunately, it's lost its seeds. I've already come across this flower. It is very rare, even for such an island as Tirfredi. This bark is covered with little symbols. It looks like some sort of writing, though I've been led to believe the natives have no written language. I should speak with Siora when I have the chance. Perhaps she could explain what it is. All of this is extremely interesting, but alas, it won't help me open the root passage. All these crushed plants and these powders. She must have been preparing a potion. It might be the miraculous remedy. To be so close and yet to have no idea what to do with all this. With more time, I could study all of these components and perhaps... Well, I doubt that Ongus will give us a chance to study this. We need to find the Tiernahak. I don't see any seeds here. The only clue we have is this plant. Let's try to find some other flowers. It might be their seed that opens the passage.
all these flowers. Perhaps this is where the Tiernaha Caductus finds the seeds that we're looking for. Using seeds as keys. It's a strange idea, but an interesting one. Let's hope that these are the flowers we're looking for. These flowers are similar to those we found in the dwelling of the Tierna And they bear seeds. A seed to part the roots. I'll admit that it is poetic, but completely defies all logic. We have what we need. Let's go back to the stone steely. place. I'd love to have enough time to explore it. I might discover some secrets of the natives' exceptional knowledge. We did not come to defile this place, and we do well to hurry. The Tiernaha Caductus has quite the head start.
chasm. She must have jumped over it. We cannot go this way. I need a bit of practice. It's not possible just now. It's not possible just now.
about to get dicey. We're on the right track. There are some fresh prints here. I hope she didn't hide in this forest. Finding her here would be quite troublesome. I feel as if we're... ...being watched. We'd better be careful.
Oli! No! No! We didn't want this fight. Why? Why? In order to capture and extract from her what we need. To examine her. Dissect her, if necessary. You have done us a great service. Guiding us directly to her. Are you saying that... Even if the creature has concocted some remedial potion, it is not the song we came for, but the bird. She leads the sorcerers of this island. She knows how they transform, and from where their powers originate. Our scientists think that the remedy is there, in their pseudo-magic, and in their mutation. Thank you for bringing her to us, and ridding us of the monster. Do you think I'm going to allow you to manipulate me? I don't think anything. Apologies, Excellency. But you are going to die tragically from a stray bullet intended for the monster. To my help! And death to the others! Mercy, Your Excellency, I surrender. You are obviously nothing more than a henchman. It is your governor that is going to have some explaining to do. Off with you, and make sure our paths never cross again. Thank you, Excellency. You will never see me again. Tiana Hach? She is unconscious. We need to bring her back to her village. She needs to be tended to. We should leave right away. Is she going to survive? Yes, she will heal. They were not shooting to kill her. And we are resistant, you know. The bond empowers us. It gives us the vigor of animals, the resilience of trees. It's undoubtedly for that reason that your alliance is so interested in us. <sighs> He does not mean to harm you. Please, let me... What do you want from me, Ranaikse? We were manipulated by the Alliance. We had no idea that they sought to capture you. We believed their fable of a miraculous remedy. The man that shot at you is in no condition to come back and bother you. And their governor will have explaining to do. I suppose I should thank you for having pulled me from their claws and bringing me here. Even I would have preferred knowing the men dead. There is indeed a remedy. But I doubt that I can do anything against this sickness that you describe. I don't know it. And I don't see how I could create a remedy that would heal it. Perhaps you could try. We are desperate. This remedy was prepared for a precise purpose, to heal those who escaped the claws of the Alliance. These monsters capture the Sinol Menoi and torture them, bleed them, put things in their veins. Those that do escape are in such agony that our care and comfort are not enough to mend them. That's why I made this remedy. Not for your Malikor. My people have never fallen prey to such sickness. How can you be so sure? Perhaps it's your tremendous resistance that protects you from the sickness. Perhaps. Enon Mil Frichtimen protects us all. Enon Mil Frichtimen? God of a thousand faces in your tongue. The one and many who protects us and our island. They and we are tied and bound as they are tied and bound to you. Their generosity to our people is infinite, but the crimes of the Renaikse enrage it. After all, perhaps your Malikor is their vengeance. This is strange. 
The two tracks that we followed have led us to the same name, Enon Mil Frigdimin. The god of the island, a god that seems to be truly real and friendly above all. But to think he would go as far as to create a sickness for all of us. We know that the congregation came to this island long ago, a lot longer than we first thought. The Malachor could be a consequence of that first attempt to colonize. A curse cast at that epoch, brought back by the first defeated colonists. After all, is it not also the origin of the first guardians of the native legends? Either way, one thing is certain. If there is something or someone on this island powerful enough to heal the Malachor, it is certainly him. We need to bring this news back to Constantine. Even if we don't have a remedy yet, he'll be happy to know that we've made progress. Sade, I'd like to discuss something with you. I'm listening. My colleagues are only interested in the physiology of the islanders and consider everything else to be superstitions. However, if we want to understand how they are transforming, we need to take a look at their culture. The potions they drink, the dyes they use are surely the source of their physical changes. Why not talk about it with Siora? It seems to me that she would be the best one to help you. Siora is very suspicious of me. She will never betray the secrets of the Donegada. But I was told about a place of ritual called Kurganau, decorated with carvings and offerings. By studying them, I hope to better understand what is possibly the greatest mystery of this century. But they call it a dangerous place and I cannot go alone. Will you accompany me? Very well. Understanding these transformations will surely be useful. Thank you, Desade. I knew I could count on you. Let's go.
must help these young people or they will be killed. Hold on! Help is on its way! You were lucky, without our presence here. Yes. Blessed be the Earth that has brought you to us at this time. I... You one... I was touched. I am hurt. Oh no! Morian! These creatures are venomous. If their venom has come into contact with her blood, this young woman does not have long. And we are too far from the village to seek help. How are we going to save her? I know a potion that will erase the effects of the venom. I have a vial of it in my bag. Hold on. Thank you. Truly the best winds have brought you to us. Here, drink this. Don't worry. It'll heal you. You can trust her. She knows what she's doing. Morian, what do you feel? I... I feel the pain leaving me. She is saved. You have great wisdom. May the trees always bear fruits on your journey. You have saved Morian. It was nothing. I'm glad I could help you. You are different from other Renaixi. You know the potions. But what were you looking for here? We came to study this place, the carvings in particular. This is one of our places of ritual. A place of connection. What do you hope to learn from our carvings? I... I seek to understand the mechanisms of your transformations. I think these carvings could help with this. You seek the secrets of the Donegada. You should speak with Armal. Yes, his name is Dunkas. He is also our Donegad, and his wisdom is boundless. Here is someone who should be able to answer all your questions, Afra. Let us go, then. We will have time to discuss on the way. I have so many questions about this place about the rituals that take place here. Bertier to mad, Donkas. These Renaiks have saved my life. What happened? We were meditating at the sacred circle in Kerganau, and we were attacked. Morian was poisoned, and they gave her a potion. Really? We are not yet used to the Renaiks doing something without expecting something in return. You should go and meditate now. I have to talk to them. They are different from the others. Oh, I'm sure of it. I hear your gratitude, Morian. It honors you. Now go. Leave us. My name is Desade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. And I am Dunkas, the Marl of the Yigidor, and also his Donegad. Your face markings designate you as one of ours, yet you are a Lugaid Blau. A clan that rarely shows generosity, yet you saved Morian. I thank you for this. Please, we couldn't let her die without doing anything. This feeling brings you honor. But what were you doing near our sacred circle in Kerganau? It was me who led my friends there. I was hoping to study the Circle to better understand your culture. Loyans always want the same thing. They covet our secrets to better steal our land, to better hurt our children. Calm now. Perhaps this Loyaness is different from the others. Maybe we were wrong about them too. I'm not trying to conquer your island, let alone hurt anyone. I just want to know. A noble quest that could perhaps bring peace, but to which I cannot answer alone. I cannot reveal such secrets without seeking advice from the Oda Donegada. 
But in order to thank you for saving one of our daughters, stay with us tonight. Eat and celebrate life. Maybe by sharing this joyous moment, you will learn something. We accept your invitation. Isn't that right, Dasade? Of course. Thank you for welcoming us, Dunkus. I'm sorry. You look disappointed. I did not expect your Denegad to reveal all its secrets to us, but I would have loved to learn more. Perhaps you should be patient. It takes years to understand the mysteries of the Donegada, and since you are staying with us tonight, it will be an opportunity to continue learning. That's what I hope. Thank you for welcoming us tonight. We had a good time. Yes. It was very... enlightening. We are glad that you stayed with us. We too have learned from you. Your face brims with thoughts, Afra. Is something wrong? It's nothing. Probably just tiredness. We should all rest. It has been a long day. May your dreams be wonderful. Good night. May the moon watch over your dreams. Is something wrong? Dunkus wasn't here tonight, yet he's the one who invited us to stay. I also saw one of the elders sneaking out of the village. You think they're hiding something from us? I don't know. But since they don't want to share their knowledge with us, let's try to follow them. I don't like it one bit, Afra. If the elders and Dunkus are gone, then we have no right to follow them. In that case, why don't you explain where the transformation comes from? It's... It's not something that can be explained that easily. You have to believe to understand. You are not capable. I see. So we will discreetly follow these people, since this is the price of knowing. Here they are. Let's try not to be detected. Why don't the creatures attack them? I don't know. Are they guarding this place? If they're trained to guard it, this must be a very important place. We found them. Let's be as discreet as possible. They are below. Get down or we'll be seen. Sagnas veldagamorosi e tegedach renaik semen. Hey, 
Stage Lossen. Nas Polade has the Gau close a He leaves Russell and speak. Someone is listening to us. Whoever you are, come out of the shadows. Hoiding is futile. Forgive us. We did not intend to interrupt you. Approach, Renaixi. Why are you here? We're sorry. We didn't mean to interrupt your conversation. We need answers, so we followed your elders. I never thought I would see you like this, hiding in the bushes, spying on your elders' daughter of Bladmid. I'm the one who brought her here. She didn't want to follow you, but she refused to tell me what I need to know. <sighs> well, since you absolutely want to learn, do as the apprentices do. Take a seat. And be quiet. We are here to meditate, to hear the voice of the earth. Because the wind has changed. Close to us, our weakness, dearie. You were right. Yoan is ready. Morion's trial has made her more sensitive. She is his Minundanem, and he is hers. One cannot progress without the other. She will have to bring him to the Cave of Knowledge. This will be his last trial before creating the bond. May their path be gentle and shielded. As for me, I hear the call ever louder, Dunkas. And the day the call is loud enough, you will respond just like each of us. But it's not yet time for you to join Enon Milfrittenen. So, Afra, are you satisfied with what you saw? It was informative, although it's not what I expected. Thank you, Dunkas. This meeting was strange. It almost seemed like they really heard voices in the wind. Maybe it's true. Some believe so strongly that they end up hearing or seeing what they hope for. Have you learned what you wanted to? What they said about these young people we helped out, about the fact they were ready to bind themselves. We have a unique opportunity of seeing a transformation with our very own eyes. But we can't follow them wherever they go. No, of course not. I must think on it. Come back and talk to me later. Thank you for coming to talk to me. You are on Ol Manawi, but you also look like a Lugayad Blau. Lugayad Blau? Is that what you call the congregation? Yes. Those who have yellow eyes on their banner. They're coins. But to answer your question, yes. I'm the legate of the congregation. Is legate the Renaixe word for on Ol Manawi? No. It means that I am in charge of diplomatic relationships with the other nations. So I was right. You will be able to help us. Some of your clan are preventing us from accessing one of our sacred glades. Really? Why would they do that? Several seasons ago, some men from your clan came to ask us for wood for their houses. There were some old trees in this glade, so we let them do what they wanted. At first, everything was fine. But then they cut down too many trees. So we wanted to heal the place, plant some new trees. But they won't let us come close. Their bod irony, their warriors, are stopping us from doing so. I could investigate. 
Yes, please. You must tell them that they have to let us heal the glade. want to shed blood. We want to give life back to the earth. Do you not understand that these woods are sacred? Yeah, right. We show you to leave. What's happening here, soldier? These islanders want to enter a plot of land that belongs to the congregation. They are denying us access to the glade. We must heal it. Otherwise, this land will die. I am sorry. But we cannot let you enter this area. But we only want to plant some new trees. Bring life back. These people are fanatics, Your Excellency. Several woodcutters died last night. And I'm willing to bet that these savages had a hand in it. You are killing the Earth. So it kills you in return. All of you are cursed. Shut it, you savage. The Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation on this island. I came to shed light on this affair. You said that some woodcutters died. Aye, they fell sick and died a few hours later. Well, the camp doctor will be able to tell you more about it. You'll find him in the barracks right here. Thank you, soldier. I'll go see him. Please, Your Excellency, you may come in. Do not force us to use our weapon. Hello, doctor. I am the legate of the congregation. I was told about the disputes caused by this camp, and a soldier told me that several woodcutters died recently. Yes, they got sick yesterday afternoon, and a few hours later they were dead. I couldn't do anything except watch them writhing in pain. None of my remedies worked. If seeing corpses doesn't bother you, you can come and see the bodies. They're here. I hope that whatever killed them is not contagious. These poor woodcutters look like they've suffered. This one has a swollen tongue. Blood at the corner of the mouth. There are some peculiar red patches on the bodies. His eyes are bloodshot. This man choked to death. Strong smell of ammonia. The entrails must have been perforated. The appearance of these bodies and the smell emanating from their mouths 
leaves me in no doubt. They were poisoned. That this doctor could have believed that this was simply an illness is beyond me. I can't see anything else of interest. So, what do you think? Do you recognize their disease? They didn't die of disease. They were poisoned. There's no doubt about it. You're probably right. But I've heard these savages talking so much about curses, so I thought it must be a mysterious disease, rather than seeing what was before my eyes. But how could these three men be poisoned? I'm not sure. Do their symptoms not point to anything? No. I've never seen such a deadly poison with these symptoms. Have you noticed anyone unusual here? Unusual? No. You don't seem completely sure of yourself. Nobody could have just slipped in. No, I assure you. The last ones to pass by here were the hunters who delivered us game two days ago. Hunters? Natives who bring us game regularly in exchange for knickknacks. But they've been restocking us for months. I struggle to believe that they're involved. Well, we'll see what they have to say. Where can I find them? They usually hunt on the edge of the wood that leads to this camp. Can we earn a reward if you hunt our prey? We were looking for you. Us? What do you want from us? Three woodcutters were poisoned yesterday after eating what you brought them. Poisoned? I swear we are not responsible for this. Listen, all the clues lead to you, but it may simply have been an accident. How about you tell me exactly what happened? It wasn't really an accident, but we did not want to kill them either. Then tell me how it happened. We did not decide to do this. We were trading beautiful things with the camp. But the Elder said that we would be traitors to our clan if we let the woodcutters cut down all the trees. Which Elder? One of the old men from Vigigidor. Our village. He is very angry because we cannot heal the glade. He gave us the meat of an andrig killed by a venomous docentat. Its flesh is perfectly edible when prepared with certain berries, but without them, eating it would be lethal. And since the Renaixe invaded our forest, these berries are nowhere to be found. He wanted it to be a lesson for them, so that they may understand that their destruction brings death. I will not hold you responsible, but from now on you will no longer bring me to this camp. You are the instruments of a hateful old man's vengeance, and I am under the impression that there will be even more deaths if I do not get to the root of this problem. The Vagigido Elder thought it best to take vengeance into his own hands. I understand his anger, but Dunkers would not approve of this. He would say that bloodshed only leads to more bloodshed, and he wouldn't be wrong. This whole thing could turn into an open war. We cannot let that happen. Sir de Corsillon will be able to give some advice on how to solve this property conflict, without violence.
Sir de Corsillon. The Sade, my young student. What can I do for you? I have come to find you because I received a complaint from the natives of the village of Vigigador. They want to be able to access a clearing, exploited by our woodcutters, to heal it. To reforest it, I assume. But our men there say that it belongs to them, and are refusing to let the natives enter it. The site was supposedly ceded to them several months ago, but tensions are running high and some men have lost their lives. If we don't intervene, we're heading for a real confrontation. It is very regrettable, and I approve of your desire to appease this conflict. According to what you have told me, if ever there was a contract, it must have been signed under our former governor. You should go to the archives and verify this. Then go and talk to Lady Lorraine de Morange. And of course, I'll be delighted to help you once things have been clarified. Thank you, Professor. Once more, you've been of great help. Can your old Professor still prove himself useful? Looking forward to seeing you again, Sir de Corsillon. Hey, dear sir, happy to see you again in such fine health. How can I be of service? I need you to enlighten me about the property deed of a glade near Vigigador. The natives want to access this place, which according to them is sacred, and which they would like to heal. But some of our men there are using this deed to deny them access to the area. Tensions are running high, and some people have died. Yes, there was a time when we enacted a lot of contracts. Do you have the document with you? Yes, here it is. Hmm. This session agreement is only signed with a cross on the native side. Well, writing is foreign to them. As is the notion of land ownership. For them, the earth only belongs to itself. If they did not possess these lands, how did they cede them? Well, I doubt they knew what this agreement represented, to be honest. In that case, why make them sign it? When we arrived on the island, we had to ensure our access to certain commodities. We also had to make sure that we had legal ownership of the lands we were occupying. The natives dreamed of possessing some baubles that they didn't know how to craft. It was easy to make them sign agreements that they didn't understand by giving them some. I was a stranger to their philosophy then. I only thought about my city, and I regret it. I'm sure we can fix this mistake. I hope so, Your Excellency. Come, let's find Sir de Corsillon. Can I help you with any other matter? My lady, I have to go. Goodbye. Sir de Corsillon, it's always a pleasure. Madame, I expect you've come to see me about this regrettable problem concerning a clearing, which my student told me about. Indeed. 
And I think I may have a solution that will allow us to solve this conflict peacefully. Hmm, I'm listening. I must admit that I established this at a time when the culture and the mentality of the natives was foreign to me. The clan of this village was rather open to our presence. They welcomed us with benevolence. For this reason, I think we should allow them access to these lands. In doing so, we would appease the tensions, and we would also retain ownership of the wood. We would even benefit from such an agreement if the natives reforest this area. Then we could exploit it for a longer period of time. I find this decision perfectly viable, and I approve, but several men were killed and their comrades will seek vengeance if the personal persons responsible do not pay for their crimes. I am convinced that Dunkus, the chief of this clan, never approves such an action. I understand, but I will only write a decree allowing people to go to this clearing, provided the murderer is delivered to us. Thank you, Master. I will inform Dunkus of your decision. What brings you here on Almanawi? At this old man's request, I investigated the conflict that opposes you and my nation regarding the clearing. You will now be able to access it freely, to accomplish your rituals or heal the area. And the congregation will keep exploiting the forest. However, there is one condition to this new agreement. You must deliver this man to us because he is responsible for the deaths of several woodcutters. These men died because of their own foolishness. No one else is responsible for their deaths. If they hadn't cut all the ochre berry trees, they would have survived. What does that mean? 
What are the two of you talking about? Three woodcutters died after eating the meat of an andrig after it was killed by a venomous Dawson tat. It's nothing but a terrible coincidence. And if they had eaten the ochre berries... We know that you are responsible for this. The hunters told me everything. How could you do this? You acted more foolishly than an irascible adolescent. Boy, killing these men, you have brought upon us their wrath. And it is only natural that they should ask for justice. Dunkus, I beg you. I only wanted the Renoixe to understand the value of the trees they were cutting. Bloodshed only leads to more bloodshed. And you know that. Boy would never have thought you capable of doing something so foolish. If you want to stop the woodcutters taking vengeance into their own hands, you must deliver this man to us. I understand. But I have one condition before we make this agreement. The Lugayed Blau fooled us in the past. It is their turn to prove their good faith. What do you want from us? There is a mine in the forest that the congregation has long operated with help from my people. But digging into the mountain has risked it collapsing. We reinforced the earth with wood. We worked with the Lugaid Blau to save the mountain and the men. We agreed to stop digging and sealed the entrance with a boulder. But some Renaigse came back, and I think they started digging again. And some of my people started going missing. Perhaps because they had seen them break their promise. If the mountain collapses and it is your clan's fault, thousands of lives will be lost. And you want me to intervene? You have to stop them. Remind them of their promise. This is the price of my trust. If you do, we punish the person responsible for the death of the woodcutters, and all our quarrels will be gone. I'll go to this mine and see what's going on. Is there anything else? I must leave. Goodbye, Dunkus. Kwa Awalam Seng. Sorry, this is private property. I cannot allow you to enter. Actually, no one should be able to enter. This mine is doomed. It's terribly dangerous. I wouldn't know. Our employer, Mr. Mayard, is the owner. He's got all the deeds required. Listen, you should go to the authorities. They can confirm all the paperwork. I definitely will. These 
people are reckless imbeciles if they start mining again in such a dangerous place. These Renags they must not have taken us seriously. We should take a closer look. We should take the path that overlooks the outer wall. We should be able to see inside from there. Those reckless fools. They've resumed operations in the mine. The Monosinaiga. They use captives from the villages to dig their mine. They've made them into slaves. We must talk to Sir de Corsillon. I hope that our nation is not involved in this business. Sir de Corsillon. The Sade, my young student. What can I do for you? I've come to ask you about a mine near Vigigador. It was closed for a long time for security reasons. But someone has started exploiting it again. Hmm. I seem to recall that a concession in this area was sold to a master Maillard. However, I do not recall the details of the contract. It was established by the previous government. He is a rich merchant from Serene, who arrived on the island only a short while before we did. People say that he is unscrupulous. <laughs> unscrupulous? That's an understatement. This man had some natives captured and he's using them as slaves to work in this mine. What? Does this old brigand really think that he is above the law? We cannot tolerate such methods, but we must determine the best way to attack him. You should start by finding the deed to his property in the archives. Don't worry. We'll not let this man's behavior go unpunished. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? Looking forward to seeing you again, Sir de Corsilio.
It seems as though you can't decipher the glyphs of your own people's document. I get lost in all the legal jargon. But they have Lady Moronge's seal on them. We should find her to understand exactly what they say. Hey, dear sir, happy to see you again in such fine health. How can I be of service? I need your advice once more. This time it's about the property deeds of a plot of land and of a mine acquired by a certain Maillard. Here are the deeds. I must admit that I understand very little of what's written, but your seal is on it. Hmm, do not worry, this type of document is always difficult to decipher for the uninitiated. However, they are very clear. Master Maillard is the owner of a plot of land located near Vigigador. He can exploit the forest and plant anything he wants there, but it says here that he does not have the right to exploit the mine. It's even repeated in this other paragraph. Any attempt at mining on this land is forbidden. And yet the mine which was located on this plot of land has been reopened and is being exploited as we speak. According to these documents, the mine has been closed for security reasons. This man's behavior is reckless. You should go see him. He's presently in New Serene. He usually spends time at the port when he comes. He has some warehouses there. Come closer, good people. The Master Maillard. Who's asking? De Sade. I am the legate of the congregation. Well, I'm flattered. What brings you here, Your Excellency? I'm here to talk to you about the mine you have near Vigigador. Are you aware that you have no right to operate it? Nor are you allowed to employ slaves there. But what are you talking about? Surely this is a misunderstanding. Listen, I'm sure there is a way for us to get along. I'm an honest merchant. I've always paid all taxes, and the small bonus is needed. Uh, please tell your cousin that I would be happy to send him the gift of his choice. Now, Your Excellency, if you will allow me, I have to get back to my activities. I'm afraid you don't understand, Master. It's not a money problem. That mine is dangerous, and you endanger the congregation on this island by behaving this way with the natives. Come on, don't be so serious, young man. I'm sure it's nothing that a small bonus can't fix. Goodbye, sir. Best wishes to your cousin. Sir de Corsillon. The Sade, my young student. What can I do for you? I verified the contract with Lady Morange. The exploitation of the mine is illegal, as we expected, without even taking into account what he's doing to the natives. I then went to meet Master Maillard. 
So, what did he have to say in his defense? He turned a deaf ear and tried to bribe me. Oh, some of these merchants are so rich that they forget basic decency. But it's high time we reminded him of who is in charge of the congregation on this island. Here, this is an eviction notice which dispossesses him of all his land for breaching his contract. For his crimes against the natives, he's banished from this island. I will make him aware of this decision, but you should go to the mine immediately. The prisoners must be freed as soon as possible, and the mine closed once more. I'll take care of it. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? Looking forward to seeing you again, Sir de Corsilio. Sorry, this is private property. I cannot allow you to enter. I don't need your authorization. I have here an eviction notice signed by the governor's ministers. The former owner, Mr. Maillard, has lost his rights due to a breach of contract. Look, ultimately, we are not the ones who decide. We only obey the boss's orders. In that case, where can I find him to notify him of his loss? You'll find him around here somewhere, Your Excellency. Excellent. Are you looking for trouble? You'd better be on your way. Master Maillard, I'm so glad to find you here. Here is a document from Sir de Corsillon on behalf of my cousin. Considering the fact that you have not respected the terms of your contract of ownership, you are hereby expelled. The methods you used against the islanders has also ensured your banishment from Tier D. Impossible. By what right? Guards, this man threatens me. These people were monsters. I wouldn't cry over them. Come now, let's go free my brothers, and we can tell Dunkers everything. Go without fear. You are free. And know that we are sorry for what happened to you. We must believe that not all Lugir blow or alike. He is an on al -Manawi. That's why he understands us. Thank you. We will not forget you.
What brings you here on Omanawi? I was able to close the mine. The man who operated it was arrested and he will be banished. Yes, those you freed told me. From now on, you are my Tarants, my friend. You knew how to renew my trust in your clan, just as trees grow back after being cut. Thank you, Dunkers. I'm honored. Will you give us the old man now? If you allow it, I would like to punish him myself. Enough blood has been spilled, and he will only call for more of it, since he loved the forest to the point of killing for it. He will be sentenced to heal it. Every day he will replant what your men will cut down. Every day until the end of his life. Does this punishment seem acceptable to you? If I explain to Sir de Corsillon that the man was sentenced to forced labor, I suppose he will approve. Thank you, Dunkers. It's a wise sentence. Is there anything else? I must leave. Goodbye, Dunkers. Kwa Awalam Seng. Hello, sir. You are from the congregation, are you not? Indeed. De Sade. Your admiral has sent me here. Pleasure. You may call me Fernando. I am the port commander here. What might I do for you? I met the representative of the Ordo Luminis, and he spoke of his fears concerning the Norts. That hardly surprises me. That man is full of pride and arrogance, and sees evil wherever he gazes. And that bishop is not made of milk and kindness, but his questions are intriguing. He suspects you to be somehow responsible for the Malachor because you never fall prey to it. Responsible for the Malachor? <laughs> and how? Through your magic. Some sort of ritual. Do you use a magic very similar to that of the natives? I have nothing more to say about it. Those are merely the fantasies of a lunatic. More questions? Your Admiral informed me that you've been having problems with a few citizens of Teleme. What more can you tell me? Problems, huh? We're up to our necks and sinking with problems. Yeah, I even received threats to my own person. One of those high and mighty long robes dared walk upon my docks with talk of burning me at the stake. Burning me. Then two of my men up and disappeared. And I do not believe in coincidence. I wanted to ask for help from the Mother Cardinal, but she did not answer my requests for an audience. The games of politics are not my forte, and investigations even less so. Find my men. I implore you. More questions? Thanks. I've got everything I need. We should talk to some other sailors at the port. If some of their comrades have also disappeared, they may be able to give us some information.
Good day. I'm looking for several sailors, some noughts that disappeared a few days ago. Sorry, that doesn't ring any bells. But I did hear talk like everyone else on the port, but that's all. You should ask the mage inquisitors who have taken up lodgings here of late. They must have certainly seen something. We see them everywhere, and they spend their time spying on all that moves, especially eyeing all that the knots are up to. Ah, and what do these mage inquisitors look like? They wear a very peculiar symbol. We cannot question all the inquisitors roaming around the island, especially considering what we've learned from Demetrius. They must be doing everything in their power to discover the Nort's secrets. Good day. I'm looking for two men, Nort's, that went missing a few days ago. Do you know anything about them? Why? As a matter of fact, I do. Three or four days ago, I was at the tavern having a conversation with a sailor, a nice fellow. He was telling these stories. He was drinking hard. He went outside for a moment to... you can imagine. And, well, he never came back. He wasn't that drunk to have passed out. If it were that, we would have found him. No. Something happened to him. That's a fact. But I would be at a loss to tell you what. If one of the sailors disappeared as he came out of the tavern, that is where we should go. If we find Inquisitors there, they'll certainly know more than the ones we see here. We're approaching the tavern. If you hope to hear some secrets, maybe we should be a little more discreet. When are we going to act? Our men are twiddling their thumbs, and that's bad for their morale. Let's not even speak about the guards at the prison. Who likes having clandestine prisoners in their jails? You are impatient. We haven't been able to get out of them what we need to hear, but it won't be long. Then we can act and launch the grand purification of the Noughts. While waiting, keep your men on a leash, especially those in the jails. If the Mother Cardinal learns that you are detaining Noughts in a cell in your barracks... We'll be in muddy waters, but then you will too. No need to remind me. They're gone. These Solasser are crazy and violent. We cannot leave those Norths in their hands. They've killed them. We must set them free from the coins, James. And we must discover what they mean by purification. I really don't like the way they used this word. This note speaks of a secret hangar. We should investigate, even though it's sure to be well guarded. That way we'll know exactly what the Noughts are hiding from us.
feast for the eyes, ladies and gentlemen. And it's free. Halt! You have no authority to go any further. And if I gave you this, so that you might go and have a little fun? In that case, I could certainly look the other way for a while, but be discreet. Thank you. Thank you for getting us out of there. Those Inquisitors are completely mad. They tortured us. They wanted us to admit to all manner of horrors. Stories of some demonic cult and curses of Malachor. I was of the firm belief that they were going to kill us. But you must make haste. They are planning some sort of wickedness. They spoke of a great purification. And after that, they did this to us. It doesn't bode well, not at all. I heard them talking about their headquarters near the palace. Maybe you'll learn something there of interest. Thank you again for freeing us. We'll be able to make it back to port on our own. We need to discover what is behind this talk of purification before they can execute their plan. And we should probably find out more about this secret first. If we do not discover anything reprehensible, we will have an easier time convincing the Mother Cardinal to intervene. These buildings are the property of Norts. No one is authorized to enter.
I've already seen this type of engine in my uncle's court. It's used to spy upon the stars. It looks like a sort of astrolab, but it seems that they are more sophisticated than the ones I know. It's fascinating. Mm, nothing magic nor impure therein. They're nothing but measuring instruments. These machines are extremely complex. I've never seen anything like this. Oh. This one looks like it has a shouting dolphin etched into its side. And that? It looks like a thermometer. And this other machine? Does it really predict the weather? I believe that the other instrument there is a barometer. I've heard people speak of them, but have never seen one. These instruments are incredible, and I would be hard-pressed to use them. But I certainly see nothing magic in here. Nor anything diabolical. For as long as they work and are really used, these instruments seem to be the product of science. And I've definitely found nothing related to the Malachor, nor a secret sect or cult. <sighs> this Domitius has let his imagination and the taste of naught secrets get the best of him. Now our priority is to discover what this great purification is. We must meet with the Mother Cardinal urgently. Only she can put an end to this madness.
Yes? I would like to have an audience with the Mother Cardinal to discuss the discoveries made during our investigation. What is this about, Domitius? Well, I don't rightly know. You see, Eminence, Bishop Domitius has brought to my ears his order's accusations concerning the Norts. According to him, they practice a religion close to those of the natives and use a nature-drawn magic. They would also be implicated, therefore, in the appearance of the Malachor. That is an extremely serious accusation. Effectively, considering the accusation is founded on no proof other than the Norts' tradition of secrecy, but these suspicions have pushed the Order to extreme actions, risking the fragile peace of the island. The Ordo Luminous captured several noughts, locked them in jails rented to them by the Coin Guard. They were tortured with the singular goal of forcing them to admit heresy. They obtained nothing. If I had not intervened, these men would be dead. Is this true, Domitius? Some of our brothers undoubtedly misinterpreted the evil. I would have never allowed such a plan. These noughts are now united with their captain, and I am certain they would be most eager to bear testimony. Following up on the accusations of Bishop Domitius, I wanted to verify for myself what this was all about. I went to take a look at their storerooms and saw what they contained. There were neither idols nor objects of any ritual, nor even anything magical, and absolutely nothing that could be attributed to the origin of the Malachor. I found nothing but measuring instruments and diverse navigational machines. I caught wind of a ridiculous scheme planned for the port by the Ordo Luminous, and I wanted to clear it up. I was able to get my hand on documents that effectively detailed an attack, a great purification. They were signed by you, Father, and included a contract where you enlisted the assistance of the Coin Guard to attack every Nort building and make prisoner of every one of their men that could be taken alive. Domitius, how could you? Whatever did you want to accomplish? The Norts are not believers. We should not be dependent on heretics. Have you gone completely mad, Domitius? We are on an island. How could we not be dependent on the Norts? I want them arrested. Him and every member of his order. I will decide at a later time their fate. I thank you for bringing this business to my attention. Going after the Norts. What madness. Without you, this city would now be drowning in chaos. Carry my best wishes to your cousin. His desire to maintain the peace on the island honors his house's reputation. I will tell him, Your Eminence, until we meet again.
Desarde, what can I do for you? I've settled the problem in San Mateus. Several of your men were imprisoned by the Ordo Luminous. The misguided brothers planned to attack the port. I had them arrested. They should no longer be a threat to you. The Order thought you to be heretics because of your tradition of secrecy. The secrets. They often cut both ways. Therefore, I'm going to reveal to you another. We discovered this island nearly two centuries ago. A few decades later, we sold the discovery to your nation of merchants. Then, our closest allies. We transported some lords, men, and merchandise. They began to colonize the island. The lords revealed themselves to possess a tyrannical nature and began to exploit the lands with a deadly passion. Their actions provoked a revolt of the natives, but also the very workers and craftsmen they had brought with them. The magic of the natives of Tirfredi was awoken. Beasts came out of the woods and destroyed the new cities. Only a handful of lords and armed men were able to make it back to our ships. The losses were enormous. The humiliation, devastating. Your princes paid us well to keep their secret. They continued to make the occasional expedition. You are in fact a product of one of them. What are you saying? You must have had your doubts. You are the child of a native. You were born on one of our ships. The child of an islander? But I know who my mother is and... I understand how difficult this is to hear. And I wouldn't know why your family has kept this from you all this time. In the end, we decided to sell the secret location of the island to other nations. The congregation, in spite of its fears, could not keep away. And here you are again. I am sorry for the shock I have caused you. You asked me for the truth, and now you have it. Anything else? I need to be going. Until we meet again, Admiral. I can't believe it. That for all this time, I've been fed lies. Did Constantine know? I must... I must go and see him. I understand you may be sad because you were lied to. But do not be sad about who you are. We are a proud people. And I am glad to know that you are one of us. Desarde, I'm happy to see you. I can't wait to find this famous cave of knowledge and what it contains. I could probably go alone, but just think about what you could learn and not only about yourself. Don't you want to understand where your face markings come from? You're right, Afra. I will accompany you. Thank you, Desarde. Let's return to Dunkus's village. Our new friends will surely be able to tell us more about this cave. We are happy to see you again. You will always be welcomed as friends here. Thank you. I'm glad to see you too. But we came to ask you something. Of course. What do you want? When we participated in the Dunkus meditation, he spoke of a cave of knowledge you had to go to. And you want to see it? You still wish to learn how we become bound? It is a very sacred place. Only those who will become Donegada may enter there. That's right, year one. But they saved my life. If someone finds out that we have helped the Renaixe to enter a sacred place, they will refuse to bind me. Dunkus will never do such a thing. What needs to be done will happen, no matter what. You're probably right. Look for the entrance in the Vedhat Genadu. 
Entering there will not be easy, but you will have to discover the rest by yourself. Like true apprentices. Thank you, Morian. And fear not. No one will ever learn what you have entrusted us with. Staying here too long, though. Hey! What are you doing here? We could ask you the same question. Except we found this place first. The treasure is ours. So I suggest you disappear. Fast! Listen, we didn't mean to bother you. We were only exploring the area. But perhaps you could tell us exactly what you're doing here. Huh. You look like nobility. And we don't want any trouble. We also are... Um... Explorers. We discover secret places. That type of thing. Really? And you found one near here? Yeah. We managed to convince a savage to talk to us. And he told us there's a holy cave not far from here. The kind of place where the natives hide their treasures. But be careful, eh? It's ours. And how do you plan on entering this cave? Well, with enough explosives, we'll eventually get through those roots blocking the entrance. It's only a matter of time. I see. Very subtle. And the islander didn't tell you anything about this? He didn't really have the time. And he didn't have a key on him. Just some bloody seeds. Anyway, now that you know what we're doing here, you'd better leave. Listen, I don't want to worry you, but you are taking a big risk by staying around here. When the islander's clan notice his disappearance, they will come for him. You can imagine what will happen then. Yeah. You're not wrong. With the time it will take to craft enough explosives, we may end up with a whole tribe after us. Never mind, guys. We're leaving. Fast! At last, we made it here. How do we get in? Look around. There has to be a way. This stone and this door remind me of the place where the Tierna Hachkadaktus went into hiding. You're right. We'll probably have to use a seed here as well. But we don't know which. Here is my offering to the Cave of Knowledge. There. Place the seed on the stone.
seems like this painting depicts some kind of ritual. Yes. The character at the center is pouring blood on a stone. And one of these giant creatures that the natives call Nardigs is present. The location looks like the stone circle where we met the two young natives. The character has changed. He now resembles an Onol Manawi. You're right. They even depict his bond to the forest. Someone's coming. Let's hide. If anyone finds us here, we're sure to lose the trust of the islanders. Esco Halen, Esco Valg me da gengo se lerge mantadabem, avenundanum. Mach, es voglen daiga ni dao, a yigi dames et tier como lei. Kair to, Morian, ages radai da radi dao em tairger began. Kauden nes greta como lei, nas oltargo tu, vreg de tet mad advat, abud antadabem me en ekekam, no adaholic. It's not possible just now. The paintings in the cave were magnificent and have taught us so much. It is obvious that they depict the bonding ritual and its consequences. It is by pouring their blood on the raised stones that the natives become metamorphs. I'm not really sure if I follow you. And yet it's clear to see. The islanders think that their ritual has magic consequences, but there must be some sort of contamination in their blood as they pour it. The only way to verify this theory is to attend a full ritual. We must attend year ones. How will we know when it takes place? Dunkas said it would take place after the young people visited the cave, and they will most likely need some preparation. We should go to the Holy Circle of Kurganau tomorrow. What do you say? Will you come with me? Very well. I hope that Dunkas will not be too angry after seeing us there. Let's take some time to rest, and then we'll go back to the place where we met them. Again, your curiosity is truly unquenchable. Forgive our intrusion, Dunkus, but I really want to attend Yewan's ritual. I have learned a lot thanks to you, but I still have so much left to understand. 
If you were one of ours, Afra, I would be flattered to have such an inquisitive and resolute apprentice. You can attend the ritual, but promise me that you will be discreet. No Renaixe ever had this honor before. We will do everything in our power to prove ourselves worthy of your trust, Dunkus. How are you? You must be feeling impatient. Impatient, yes, and a little bit afraid as well. It's only natural to be afraid, Yerwan. It's a new life starting for you. But I will be by your side, now and forever. Times really must have changed for some Renaixe to attend our rituals. These are very different from the others. Their leader is an Onol Menawi, after all. I know I look like them, but I'm not one of them. You may not be bonded, but your parents must have been. You should be proud and happy about it. It is probably thanks to your bond that Duncas has accepted your presence. You look preoccupied. Our people have suffered many lion's attacks, often during rituals. In some villages, all the young Sinal Manawi were abducted. You seem different from the other Zafra, but I can't help worrying. I have nothing to do with these attacks, Dunkus, I swear. I believe you. Otherwise, you would not be here with us. But I hope that your brothers will not be there in the shadows, ready to pounce on our children. Nestiri, Adesta Marar Mam. Meneda, 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 Meneda. You are an Onol Manawi now, Yawan, and soon you will heal the earth by our sides, like a real Donegad. Thank you, Donkas. I feel so proud. I am so happy that we can be Voglin Daiga together at last. What about you, Afra? Did you find the answers you were looking for? It's strange. I didn't exactly understand what happened, but I am moved. Some events must be understood with the heart, not the head. It seems like you are right, Tunkus. We are under attack. Grab the young metamorph. The others don't matter. Come on, get there. They won't touch you. Desade, we have to protect them. You can count on me.
Curiosity Afra has saved lives. If it weren't for you, people from my village would have been abducted or killed. I am infinitely grateful, especially considering that fighting against your brothers could not have been easy. Indeed. These people were brutes. They had it coming. However, you don't know how right you are, Dunkus. I recognize some of these men. Really? Did they belong to the governor's court? No. They worked for my former master, Dr. Asili. I was his student for a long time before I realized that this man's methods were... questionable. He was so obsessed with his goals that he became cruel. But I can't believe he'd go as far as abducting people for his experiments. You think that the Onolma now are used for experiments? Now that I have seen these soldiers, I am certain of it. And I am afraid they may suffer atrocious treatment under the guise of scientific progress. I am so ashamed. Come now, shame serves no purpose. And you are proof that the Loyans are not all the same. Thank you, Dunkus. And thank you, Desade. You opened my eyes. Desade, I'm happy to see you. Can I do anything for you? Do you often hold strangers at gunpoint? Only when I'm being tracked. What about you? Do you often track young ladies? Your journal was surprisingly thorough, and your observations very pertinent. How could one not want to find someone so brilliant? It could have fallen into the hands of a boorish idiot, unable to understand any of it. I'm glad it was you who found it. Anything else? What did you think about that moment next to the campfire with the elders of Vigigador? It was strange, and a bit frustrating, to be honest. What about you? How did you feel? It was peculiar and mysterious. It was as if we were observing a game without fully knowing the rules. However, it seems to me that we learned a few things, being with them at that moment. This is true. In my opinion, knowledge should be shared. That's why I'm so impatient when it comes to secrets. But your attitude is wiser. I will ponder the question. You've given me a lot to think about. Anything else? Did you have any fellow students? Of course. We were but a small group working with Dr. Asili, but we were encouraged not to get too close to each other. It was more of a competition. Why? What's on your mind? I wondered if you didn't feel alone at times. Do you mean intimate relationships? I had a few here and there, but that did not change how lonely I felt. Body and mind have different needs even though for some they seem to be one and the same. Anything else? How did you feel when we visited the cave? Astonishment, I think. I felt as if I had reached my goal, as if I was finding a long-lost treasure. It was strangely moving, I think. What about you? It was a grace-filled moment indeed. And these rudimentary paintings taught us so much. I would never have thought that mere murals could contain so much knowledge. Because we looked at them in a different way. To us, these paintings were more than just decorations. They were like a window into some knowledge that was completely foreign to us. I used to swear only by writings, but now I realize that there are many other ways to learn. And once more, I owe this realization to you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Anything else? What do you think of the love that unites those young people? It really seems as if they share something special. It's true. I don't think I've ever stumbled upon two people that were so close to one another. On the continent, where everything is political, it only happens in fairy tales. But here... Do you ever think that you could become that close to someone? To be honest, no. Not before I saw this young couple. What about now? I do not like to lose myself in vain reveries. 
But for some time now, I've begun to think that such sharing of ideas and feelings is in fact possible. Anything else? Do you think that attending this ceremony has changed your world vision? Yes, obviously. Before it, I was so focused on my own knowledge. This ritual made me understand the power of sharing, of emotions and of the bonds between people. This new vision gives me new perspectives. A whole new life is ahead of me. I hope I'll be lucky enough to be by your side. We share amazing memories now. A bond has been created between us, too. And I can't imagine this new life without you by my side. Anything else? I must leave you. I'm glad you came to see me. I wanted to talk to you. I'm listening. I'm still a bit inexperienced when it comes to these emotional things. My feelings and my desires. But I believe that we share something unique. That a bond has been created between us. And if you were so inclined, I'd love to spend some time alone with you. It would be my pleasure. Meet me outside my room the next time we return to my house. I... I'll be there. Anything else? I must leave you. I... I'm a bit nervous. I've read many books on this subject, but they don't say anything about the way I feel right now. May I come in? <laughs> come on. Forget about the books for a bit. Yet another marvelous memory shared with you. And this one only belongs to us. I feel as if my heart is exploding. I've never felt this way about anyone. I suppose this is how it feels to be in love. Do you feel the same? Yes, Afra. I'm fairly certain this is love. And I love you too. It's such a peculiar sensation. And it's so tremendous. Oh, my beloved. You couldn't pick a better time. I've been taken with jitters like a cat on a midday roof. <laughs> what are you waiting for with such anticipation? I took your advice, you see. I've summoned one of these crows! He has been examining me for nearly an hour. I just barely escaped a perch. But I was given the mandatory bleeding. I so hate their little knives. And so then, our venerable doctor, what is the verdict? Black. <sighs> Constantine, is this your blood? Constantine, answer me. Constantine, stay with me. Constantine. 
There is a chance that he is in error. It might be something else. I'm going to die. No, no, Constantine. I will die, like your mother and the others on the continent. I, I am dying. I don't want to die. I don't. Not, not, not so soon. It's so good. Cousin, I, I don't want Constantine, I'm here. Pull yourself together. Out. Everyone out. It's in order. Thank you, cousin. There now. Are you better? I don't know. You won't leave me, will you? I'm going to find a cure, I promise you. Didn't you promise the same thing to your mother? You know I'll be dead before you find one. Don't say that. I will succeed. I've already some promising trails to explore. I don't know, cousin. The tidings are so awfully dire. I'm afraid. <laughs> I doubt the reason for your visit was to console me in my tragedy. Tell me, what brings you here? It can wait. It's nothing that can't be dealt with later. But please, please, whatever it is, it will take my mind elsewhere. I was able to get the whole story out of the Admiral in exchange for a service. As our investigation was leading us to imagine, the congregation did once attempt to colonize the island. The Norts discovered it some two centuries ago and brought our people here a few decades later. But the enterprise to colonize the island failed completely. There were a great many bloody battles. Few colonists survived. The princes preferred to hide their defeat and paid the Norts to keep the secret. That they hid the fiasco from the world, I get. But that my father said nothing about it to me. That's not the most shocking part of the story, believe me. What do you mean? The congregation continued to make expeditions to the island with the help of the Norts. According to the Admiral, my mother came from the island and was brought back. I was born on one of their ships. What? But... That means you are not your dear cousin? No. All the lies we've been fed since our tender childhood. The fable told that I'm the spitting image of my dead father lost during an expedition. God, I, I don't know what to think, Constantine. Why did they do that to me? I don't know. It's another one of their sly and dark orchestrations. Some vile intrigue. If it is of some comfort, no matter the true story, you will always be my dear cousin. You have always been the only one to care for me. You are my only friend. That's all that matters to me. Keep this discovery between us. No one needs to know. My aunt adopted you after all. Bring in the others. Let us speak of different concerns. That's enough bad news for one day. Kurt, what is... Dismissed, soldiers. Leave us. We have much to say. What is going on? I don't appreciate this attitude, Kurt. Must I remind you that these men all answer to me? Times change, Your Highness. Or rather, they're about to do so. Is that a threat? What are you hoping to accomplish? Don't tell- Silence. We have little time and none to lose. Kurt, what are you talking about? The commander of the Coin Guard is here in New Serene at this very moment. He's preparing a coup d'etat. In the three cities of the island, our men are going to eliminate the governors and their entourage. This is madness. How? How? You'll go down as easy as plum pie and cherry wine. Standing behind every one of you is one of our men. You have entrusted us with your security. You are completely at our mercy. Then why did you send your men away? And why are you telling us all of this? I've known you both for a very long time. Too long. I've come to know you. To respect you. And I've never reneged on a contract. These orders go against all that I am. A cold-hearted mercenary. Definitely. But never a traitor. And so now you are forewarned. 
You must take action. Thank you, Kurt. I will not forget this. Constantine, we need to get you to safety as well as your counselors. But I want to... What? Take part? You can barely stand up. No. We must take you into the cellar. If I've completely understood what you've said, Kurt, the governors of our cities are also in danger. Yes. If you want to keep your allies, your highness, you also need to warn them. Correct. We cannot let them fall into the hands of these traitors. I will find the means to send them a messenger. Do you know where to find your conspirators? It would seem I should be one of them. They are counting on me to eliminate both of you. The most urgent matter is to get our hands on the commander and his three lieutenants. The others are doing nothing but following orders. If we cut off the heads, they will fall into rank. <sighs> I always knew you were a good man. Don't make me change my mind. We'd better be off. Now. We'll certainly have to fight some traitors at Torsten's behest on our way to the cellar. Stay on your guard. Stay behind us, Constantin. You're in no condition to fight. We must also think about the advisors, including your professor. And then we have to rescue Lady Morange. We must hurry before the guard can act. Lord de Cossillon! The coin guard tried to assassinate my cousin and is plotting the same actions against the other governors. So, they have finally done it. Such proximity to power is a terrible temptation. It was only a question of time before they succumbed. We should have paid more attention to your lessons. We might have been able to avoid all of this. Follow me. I'm taking you somewhere safe. I'm coming. To my help!
Lord Minister! The Coin Guard wants to take control of the island by assassinating all its governors. The Guard is everywhere. They could succeed. We will do everything in our power to thwart them. Come now. We'll take you somewhere safe. I'll follow you. To my house! We've reached the cellar. It looks like a good place to hide. Constantine, promise me that you will stay here until we secure the city. Do I even have a choice? Here I am, consigned to my quarters like some broken old maid. Like someone ill, Constantine. Someone sick who is dear to me, and the city wouldn't survive your loss. You have such a way with words. Very well. I promise to stay here obediently awaiting your return. Let's go then. And cousin? Watch out for yourself. You were dear to me as well. You are safe here. Oh, you have my eternal gratitude, Excellency. We owe you our lives. You will be safe here. Thank you, my friend. I will never forget what you've done for me. Lady Morange, make ready to depart. We cannot remain here. But what is going on? The Coin Guard has decided to take control of the Isle. They plan to overthrow the governors. They were set on assassinating Constantine and his entire entourage. The idiots! You are in danger. Do you know a safe place where we could take you? Don't worry about me. I have friends here. They will hide me. Go! 
And do be careful. Now is not the time. Hello, Your Excellency. Messenger, be ready to leave at once. You must warn the governor of Hikmet that a conspiracy is underway targeting him. It's just that I, I can't leave the city just yet. What are you talking about? The order comes from the governor. What more do you need? Uh, it, it's, it's just that I, I was told if I left the city today, it, it would cost me my life. Who said that? The commander's men, I suppose. Uh, I don't really know, but they were heavily armed and they pay very well. And so you are prepared to betray your prince and country for a few coins? Don't you understand that the reason I am standing before you is because the guard failed to take this city? Do you know the punishment reserved for traitors? I, uh... Very well, Excellency. I'll leave immediately.
Make preparations to leave. I have a message to communicate immediately to the governor of San Mateus. You must tell the Mother Cardinal that the Coin Guard is preparing a coup d'etat. Her life and those of her entourage are in grave danger. Very well, Your Excellency. I'll leave immediately. The commander must be in his upstairs quarters preparing the attack. We should try to reach him discreetly. We could try to go through the tavern's kitchen. That's one way to do it. Or we could use the scaffolding to access the upper floor directly. But it's visible from the dormitories. And I know that the young recruits were ordered to stay there. They will not suspect us if we're wearing guard uniforms. Do you know where the three lieutenants you told us about are located? Ludger is an instructor. He'll be in the right wing of the barracks. As for the other two, they'll be at the tavern. Olga and Werner are in charge of the guards... Uh, secondary activities. In the basement. I see. Our priority should still be to stop Torsten. We'll worry about the others later. It's blocked. What are you doing here? Who let you in? I demand an explanation. It seems that your men are a little distracted this evening, Lieutenant. It is understandable, with all that's been going on. You are under arrest, as well as your commander. But what is this? I recognize you. You're the governor's emissary. And Kurt, you had your orders. Sorry, but forced to betray someone, I decided it would be the less likable of the lot. Traitor. Soldiers, ready weapons! To my house! Death to the others! <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Your Excellency. I know you've paid your entry fee, but this is a special night. My orders are not to let anyone in. What if I paid you a supplement for your good services? Very well, you can come in. I hope I won't be in trouble. I regret, my lord, we are closed this evening. Come back another day. I'm not here to tempt my luck. Are you in charge? That's right. What do you want from me? From you? Nothing. We are here to arrest the commander's lieutenants. Is that right? Now, this ought to be good. And for what crime would that be? You know very well. For high treason. Oh, and you think that my men are just going to let you without so much as blinking an eye? 
Why would your men risk their lives and their families' well-being to serve your greedy ambitions? Gentlemen, you have been manipulated. I imagine you were promised riches and high station on the island, told that with such a prize you would be free of the services of the merchants, the mages and the scholars. But do you imagine for an instant that the noughts would risk losing their precious clients for you? That the continental nations that you've betrayed would accept that you might return to their lands? You would be condemned to remain on this island, isolated and forever banished from the continent. I only hope that you are leaving no one behind you, because you will never see them again. You make sense. We have too much to lose in this story. I'm sorry, Lieutenant, but you're gonna have to deal with this yourself. Do with him what you feel you must. Soldiers! Ready weapons! We are under attack! We have been sent by the Governor Constantin Dorsey. Your lieutenant is accused of high treason for having participated in an attempted coup d'etat. As you can see for yourselves, the attempt failed. Are you also ready to be accused of treason because of your loyalty to your lieutenant? I doubt it. I'm sure they're gonna make the wise decision. Isn't that right, Dieter? You give your word that we'll suffer no repercussions if we lay down arms? You have my word. Very well. We are dropping our weapons, soldiers. That dog's hide doesn't deserve our sacrifice. It's a great pleasure. One arm and a fit. Oh. Thank you. 
We've arrived too late. Do you know where Torsten could have gone? No. But we'll certainly find some information about it in these papers. Torsten suspected that I would denounce him, and he was prepared to leave this place. We must catch up to him. He cannot get away with this. Let's go. refused to follow his orders. He must have been told about our attack on the ghost camp and drew his own conclusions. He knew you... The guard! We're moving out! Break camp! We are no longer welcome here. And so, these snake oil merchants defy us by sending their watchdog. Let's show them what guards are made of! Do I have the time to return and see those dear to me? Constantine, how are you feeling? Death is on my doorstep, and all hope has flown through the window. Come closer. What ill tidings do you bring? Yes. I thought you'd like to know that the Coin Guard's attempt to take control of the island has failed. <sighs> this is excellent news. The kind I've not had in a great while. Thank you, Kurt. Were it not for your loyalty, we were lost. As for you, my dear cousin, <sighs> you know what I owe you. Not only have you looked out for me, like always, but you have protected my advisors. Yes. And if your highness would permit, I would like to relay our most sincere gratitude from all of Teleme. Thanks to your message, the Mother Cardinal was able to thwart the Commander's plans. By the grace of the Illuminated, the city is saved, and the traitors punished as they should be. The Governor Buren thanks you as well. Your message was instrumental in stopping Hikmet and our research falling into the hands of those brutes. It is my dear cousin that you should thank, my lady. I was told that you were able to catch the Commander and his underlings before they were able to flee. Barely, but yes. They're going to have to pay for their crimes. I cannot remember if the traitors are hung before being quartered or if it is the contrary. Enough talk of ruffians. They failed. And for that, I again thank Kurt. If your highness is looking for a means to translate his gratitude, gold is a present that is always appreciated. I imagine that you shall name a new commander. Yes. I will discuss the matter with loyalist officers, but I think I know who will be elected. I hope it is someone whom we can trust. We do need soldiers, but loyal soldiers above all. We are well aware that the Guard's reputation has been tarnished. We will not make the same mistake twice. Sieglinda is solid and loyal. I have fought beside her. You have my complete trust, Kurt. You have amply earned it. As you advised, I followed the leads shared by our allies, none of which led anywhere. However, they both pointed in the same direction, towards a sort of god that the natives worship. 
They call him En Onmil Fruchtemann, the god of many faces. He is very powerful and protects the island. How can you be sure that it's not some sort of myth? Even a superstition? I saw it with my own eyes take shape during a ritual. It is possible that the Malachor is the expression of its vengeance. You are referring to the secret we unearthed. The entire continent is paying today for the errors of our grandparents. It is a terrifying perspective. But if it were true, he must also be able to help us heal. Princess, could you shed some light on this being? Is it possible to meet him? All the Donaigada know him. He is the strength, the spirit of Tirfredi. You were looking for a demon or a remedy from plants, so I did not think of him. But yes, he is very powerful and as old as our world. He could surely heal your sickness. But it is not simple to meet him. Impossible, I would think. Though it is not my place to judge, you need to earn the trust of Glendan, the Elder of the Council. Ask him for his help. I beg you, cousin. Go and find Glendan. Do all that he requires. Offer him all that he desires. I don't know how much longer I can hold on. My life is in your hands. And those of so many others. I will do all in my power. I have already promised you. Where can I find this Glendan? He lives in the village of Dorchad Genadu. It is in the heart of our island, at the entrance to our most sacred lands. Thank you for your help, Princess. I will not forget the numerous services you have provided for us. Before you leave, I must ask you something. All right. I'm listening. I'm always suffering, cousin. I'm in such terrible pain and we're yet to discover a cure. Don't blame yourself. I know how much you do for me. Yet, I'm afraid that before the sickness claims me, the pain will have driven me mad. <sighs> if only there was a way to ease my suffering. I know of a healer with powers that are legendary amongst the clans. It is rumored he can alleviate even the most terrible pains. His village is west of the city. I could take you there. One of our holy men lives in San Mateus. His healing powers are supposedly miraculous. Alas, it is a miracle we are in need of, my son. If I may, Your Highness, we have the best physicians in the world. It shouldn't stop Father Petrus from praying for a miracle. It can't do any harm. I'm nothing more than a sailor. I don't have much to offer when it comes to healing. As it would seem to lay mayor pray for the Malachor, just like the Bridge Alliance. Perhaps it would be best to ask for aid from those not suffering from the plague. The sailor's right. The holy men and the sages had their chance on the continent, and we all know how that went. Thank you, as always, for your advice. Cousin, you are the only one I trust, so please, don't let me lose my mind. I'll follow the leads and find a way. I won't let you down. Hold on. I'll be back as soon as I can.
closer, good people. The cure. Are your boots? Welcome. It's. Have you seen any? Thank you for your visit. See you soon. Come closer, good people. The cure and wine from the top. Get out! Who do you think you are to defoil our ritual? One of those moin shakers, no doubt. Aiden, it is your duty to assure we are not interrupted. A thousand pardons, Tien. It is indeed one of those moin shakers. A moin shaker? Look at him more closely, Aiden. He is an Almanawi. Present yourself and tell me why you interrupt our ceremony. My name is Desarde. I have come looking for you to ask for your help. I greet you, Donegad. We are so sorry to have interrupted your ritual, but my friend truly needs your advice. Don't excuse yourself. Are you the daughter of Bladned? Are you not a Donegad as well? It is true, but my powers of healing are far less powerful than your own. Then how can I help you? My cousin suffers from a terrible sickness, the Malachor. I do not know this sickness, but perhaps we call it by a different name. It turns the blood black and provokes terrible suffering. And alas, it is fatal in all cases. We've never seen the ailing touched by such a sickness, and I doubt I am able to heal your cousin. We are looking for a remedy but urgently need to relieve his pain. Could you slow the progression of the sickness? Keep him from suffering? In that, I can help you. I know how to make one forget the pain, even the most severely wounded. But Tiern, with all that is happening now, you cannot leave to visit this ill person. It is true. My village needs me now. I cannot leave. I must attend them. What is going on? Perhaps we can help you. Truly? You? Do they have a choice, Aiden? 
They do really seem to have need of me, don't they? Well then, tell us what we need to do. The situation has become unbearable. And it all started when these Moin Shakers began arriving. They wanted to convert everyone and take them to another place. Turn them away from us. And of course, the village folk would not be persuaded. But the Moin Shakers remained. And it was also at that time the Tenlen started to attack. It is not their way to do as such. There are many wounded, and recently many have gone missing. We must discover from where these monsters come. I can try and talk sense into the missionaries, perhaps with the help of Bishop Petrus. As for the attacks of the creatures, I will see what I can do. But I need more information. Our master hunter, or the families of the Taken, could most likely help you. Very well. I'll take care of it. Make preparations to accompany us. The days are burning like very thin candles. Do not worry. If you see to the concerns of my village, I will be most happy to accompany you. Let's go and see this master hunter. He may be able to explain all there is to learn about these attacks. Good day. Are you the Master Hunter? Bear tear to mother, Nike. I am indeed one and the same person. What do you want of me? The Dunaygad, Katasach, spoke to me about the animal attacks. Can you tell me more? The Tenlans have been angered. They are very angry. The beasts have always lived here. But they only attack if we tread near their nest. Of late, they attack on sight. There have been many wounded, and some of our young have even disappeared. It may be that the Tenlands killed them, but it is also possible they followed the missionaries. What can you tell me about the Tenlands? They are normally very peaceful creatures, very calm but who defend their young with fury. During the attacks, I noticed that they were not all the same. Not all from the same nest. What do you mean? That the other beasts don't come from here, but from other places. And that they are coming more and more often. Were there many victims? Many wounded. Thanks to the healing powers of the Donegan, they survived. But the attacks happen more and more often. And they come with greater fury. I try to chase them away. To destroy any nests that I found. But still, more of them come. And now our children disappear. The stress alone could kill our village. Can you tell me who the children are? A young fisherman and a gatherer. You will find the sister of the woman and the brother of the man in the village. I will go and see them. I believe I can help you in your fight against the Tenlands. How would you advise me to go about it? You must destroy their nests. It's sad, but the only way to stop their numbers growing. There are most likely three around here. I can point you in the direction to one that I discovered. I would have taken care of it, but my village cannot spare my presence here. I must keep watch. I did not find the two others. Some in the village may know where to find them. Hmm. And how would I go about destroying the nests? You must burn them and kill the dominant one. Or else they will build again. We see them especially at dawn. After that, 
We no longer see them. But be careful, Renaxi. The night belongs to the Tenlands. That is when they are most awake. Going out at night is very dangerous. I thank you for your advice. We shall go and destroy these nests come dawn. Isn't it odd that these creatures who are normally passive have become so aggressive? Yes. Yes. This has never happened in my lifetime. What do you know? Speak. Lives are at risk. I do not speak of things I am not sure of. The Renaixe, like you, do not understand the bond we have with nature. Is there anything that we might be able to do for you? Besides destroying their nests and fighting the Denlands, do you know the art of crafting weapons? Our artisan was among the wounded, and my weapon is broken. I can try to repair it. Here, in this condition, it is of no use to me at all. Look. I really need you to tell me what you know about the cause of these attacks. I regret I cannot speak words about something you would not understand. And as you say, it is only an intuition. What do you know about the missionaries? The Mind Shakers? They came here before the attacks of the Tenlands buzz around us like flies. They speak of light, of demons, and the soul. Their words make little sense. All that they want is for us to join their village, and that we serve them as if they were Tiern. They want to make us Renaixe. They want to sever our bond with our lands. Their words do not touch those old enough to understand. But the young are sometimes swayed and listen. They follow them to their Eden village. And they become their servants. Their bond is cut. Have you tried to fight them? No. But some have fought. Because they treat the young girls badly. I think if not for the attacks, no one would have turned to them and their light. But hope fled our village. And the weak of courage have doubts and listen to their lies. It sounds as if the attacks began at a timely moment for the missionaries. I must be going. Katasach advised us to speak with the families of those missing. Perhaps they might know where the tenants have built their nests. Good day. I have been sent here by your Denegad. He asked me to help you. I hope he is right, and that you are not like the Moin Shakers. My sister has gone missing. It is for that very reason that I am here. To attempt to find her or to understand what has happened. Then I will tell you what I know. Your sister, what does she look like? She is a very beautiful young woman. Kind and sweet. I miss her so very much. Is she very careful? Does she know she should be wary of the beasts? Oh yes, she knows it very well. But she has been star-eyed of late. And the stars make you forget all caution. How long has she been missing? Two nights have gone by since. She told me that she was going to gather berries. It was early in the day, but she never returned. I called for her from the edge of the village, in vain, and the Tenlands were roaming. Do you know where she usually goes picking? Certainly, in the clearing. We find a great many berries there. Is there anyone in the village that might want to harm her? No. No, everyone loves her. Maybe a little too much. Why do you say that? She is beautiful and young. The Mind Shakers took notice. 
And the boys of the village did as well. What do you think has likely happened? She might have been attacked by the Tenlands. But it was early, and they come out mostly at night. You think it might have been something else? I hope. Even if it is a strange hope. Perhaps she was taken by the Mind Shakers. They were pestering her the other day. They behaved without respect. A boy intervened and chased them off. But you think that they might have captured her when she was outside of the village? That merits inspection. Tell me about the Tenlands, about their attacks. Before, I only very rarely came across the beasts. We knew their nesting grounds and kept clear of them. But now they are everywhere and they attack everyone. They've even been known to come as close as the clearing where we pick berries. Very far from their favorite grounds. Do you know how to fight them? No, I am not a fighter. If you want such advice, ask the Master Hunter. Very well. I will go and investigate this clearing. Perhaps they've built a nest nearby. It is possible, because before there was never one near there. Could you tell me anything about the missionaries? They are monosynaig. They think that they can take anything they desire. What do you mean? They came to our beautiful village. They wanted to take away our young people. Many heard their words and left. We never saw them again. But I saw how they treated my sister. I believe that they take the young to serve them. They wanted to take my sister like that, as if she were a tool. And if it were not for the young fisherman... The one who's also missing? Yes. He was very brave. I hope they didn't hurt her to avenge their pride. I'm going to have to go and speak with them. I must leave now. Here is your weapon. It has been made new. Thank you. You have given it back its purpose. It belonged to my master before me, and you have understood its nature. It may be that you are more on Ormanawi than Renaixe, and that you will one day see as we. During my walks, I saw a great Tenlan of clear skin. The others seemed to follow him. I felt that he called them, that he fed them rage, and that his place is not here. Why didn't you try to kill it? He is very strong, and the others protect him. I was only able to track him to his lair, a cavern. I placed traps all around it, but all were avoided. He is clever. You say he doesn't have his place here. What do you mean? That he was brought here. To attract the others and make them rage. By men. The Renaik say. But I cannot prove this. That is why I did not wish to voice these thoughts. I feel it. Nothing more. I must be going. Good day. My name is Desarde from the congregation. I've been told that someone dear to you has disappeared. Yes, my little brother. He left to go fishing, like every day, and he did not return. Your Denegar asked me to help you. Any information you can give me will be very useful. This is true. I hope your words to be heartfelt. My insides are twisting in fear that my brother is lost. Can you describe your brother for me? He is young, rather tall and strong. The girls find him handsome. He is such a nice boy, 
But he is wild off the tether, and often his curiosity gets him in trouble. Can you tell me more precisely when he disappeared, where, and under what circumstances? It was two days past. I saw him leave to go fishing, as he was often to do. And you cannot remember anything out of the ordinary? No, he was full of joy, full of life. I am so worried about him. Did your brother have any enemies? No, I can't think of anyone who would plant strangleweeds in his garden. Perhaps a youthful rivalry. He didn't get along particularly well with the Master Hunter, but it was nothing serious. Perhaps the missionaries. He did get into a fight with them, but they surely wouldn't have taken him. It's still a lead. Was he close to anyone? He has been dreamy and more joyful than usual. Those are the signs of someone stricken with love. But he no longer wants to share secrets with me. He told me that he has grown beyond the shadow of his brother. And the birds in his branches are his. What do you think most likely happened to him? He could have come face to face with Tenlands. They've become angry of late. But he knew how to avoid them. He might have had a run-in with the Mind Shakers as well. He got into a fight with them a while back. Because of a young girl in our village. You think the missionaries might have sought vengeance? I don't know. But he might have went to find them in their village. He bears no good feelings towards them. I will go and see. Maybe they can tell me more. Did your brother know the other girl who disappeared? Yes. It is because of that girl that he fought with the Moin Shakers. Could she be the source of his happiness of late? I don't think so. They have been friends since they were little. And she is promised to another. A promise can be broken. And it might be the reason your brother has kept it secret. Perhaps. But what would it matter? He would not have fled with her. Not without saying farewell. What can you tell us about the Tenlands? They are beasts that live near water. Rivers or coasts. In all our memories, only if you approach their nests do they anger and attack. But lately... Yes, Kadasak told me they attacked the villagers. Could you point me in the direction of their nest? I know where to find one, but there are certainly more. My brother should not have left the village alone. But for a while now, he does not share my fears for him. Could you tell me about the missionaries? The Mind Shakers? They came here to take us to a marvelous village. They said it was a perfect place where all is shining in light, and where there is no danger. Their words seem to have been to your liking. A place full of peace is a dream. Here we must fight to survive since the Tenlands have grown angry. And now their stories of light are difficult to imagine. It seems like a beautiful place, though. But my brother fought with them. They gave trouble to a young girl, one of his friends. He told me that these Mind Shakers were liars. That they were hurting the more innocent young. I don't really know what to think. If they took them, could you tell them to give them back? There is no fair trade for our children. This story about the fight compels me to at least ask them some questions. I must be leaving. It seems our two missing youths were together here. No need for a seer to see that there must have been something more than friendship between them.
Do you have any news? Do you know where my sister is? Not yet, but I've not given up the search. Was your sister fond of a young fisherman who also disappeared by any chance? They have known each other since they were little. Like all the children of the village, they have always been friends. Only friends? Yes. He defended her when the Mind Shakers wanted to take her. But she is promised to another. The brother of the young fisherman told me that he suspected him to be in love. And it started with the story of the fight. He defended her because he has heart and because she is his friend. But she was promised. If the boy had a sweetheart, then it must be another young girl. I can understand that you would want to protect her reputation, but her life is in danger. You are right. I know she loved this boy, and that they met each other in secret. Why did you hide that from me? I'm not her suitor. You are a Renaixe. You do not understand what a promise entails. When two young people give themselves to one another, they weave a bond between them, but also with their village. Breaking it would mean banishment. I didn't want her to have to leave. I see. That's why they had to meet in secret. Do you know where they went? In the clearing. Oh, I hope nothing has happened to them. I shall go and see if I can find any trace of them. I must leave now. Why did it take her so much time to accept that her sister was in love with that boy? Because her sister was betrothed to another. Breaking a promise is taking the risk of being exiled. Does one's word mean nothing on your island? A basket full of berries and a trap full of fish. All of it scattered and half-eaten by beasts. Our two lost souls were here together. They must have been attacked, or they wouldn't have left these behind. Let's search the area. Maybe we can find their trail. That cavern seems home to some creatures. Let's be wary. It could very well be the lair of that great Tenland the hunter spoke of. others. Judging by his clothing, he was a missionary. The two others are more recent, a man and a woman. Our missing couple, no doubt. 
They were dragged here and devoured alive. What a tragic fate. I cannot believe that these missionaries used such a ruse to achieve their goals. Two youths died because of them. Now you understand why some of us fight against the Rinaigse. Their words are always sweet, but all they bring is death. Return to the village. Their families need to be informed. Do you have any news? Do you know where my sister is? <sighs> yes. I'm truly very sorry. Oh no. Nah. Sir Tonsidag, please do not tell me that she is dead. I found her body in the lair of the Great Tenman, not far from the clearing. But how could she have been surprised by the beasts? She knew the danger. She went out to meet the young fisherman. The time must have flown by into the night. I'm so sorry. We found them both dead. I must bring her body back... ...to carry out the right. You should not go alone. I killed as many as I could, but it would be better to be prudent. I shall follow your counsel, Onol Minawi. Two deaths are enough. Thank you. Thank you. I must leave now. Well, Onol Manawi, have you found my brother? I found him, but... I'm truly sorry your brother is dead. Antivustire. May the Earth welcome him. I felt it. How did it come to pass? He knew every stone on our lands. It couldn't have been an accident. He had a liaison with a young girl from the village. They would meet in a clearing. They must have forgotten the hour. Night took them by surprise and attend them across their path. I found both of them in the cavern of the beast. How terrible. Why did he go to see the girl in secrecy? They could have... I must recover his body. To give it up to the earth as is our custom. Where is it? With the body of the girl he loved in a cavern near the clearing. But 
It is a dangerous place. Other Tenlands might still be roaming there. Though I did kill quite a few. I have a duty owed to my little brother. Thank you, Onol Manawi. I will not forget this. I must be leaving. Good day. I am the legate of the Congregation of Merchants on this isle. Might I ask you a few questions? Of course. Our allies from the continent are always welcome among us. What do you want to know? Could you tell me what your mission here is? We must return these lost souls to the light and guide them so that they might receive the revelation. We have constructed the perfect village, Eden where they might discover peace. In this protected paradise, they can receive divine teachings and join the illuminated chosen people. Have you heard about the Tenlen attacks on the village? I didn't know those creatures were given that name, but yes, we have heard talk about the attacks. We offered them our help and some comfort in their most difficult hour. In exchange for some inspiring conversation, I suppose. Of course. These horrible beasts have most certainly been sent by the demons of this isle. To chase only a few away would be of no use. If they truly desire peace, they must see the light. You haven't been victim of these attacks? On occasion, yes. But thanks to the Illuminated, we were able to chase them away with little effort. You seem to assert that the attacks of these Tenlands is somehow linked to the demons on the isle. Whereas these are creatures that the natives have always known. They nest beside them. These are familiar beasts, but hasn't anyone informed you that their patterns have changed? These creatures have been riled up by the demons of the island, who have come to realize we are near victory. Sending them against these poor people they maintain them in a state of fear and obedience to their shaman healer. There is only one way to truly make these attacks cease, my child. Convert these people. Defeat these demons. The Denegad of this village wishes for you to depart. You disturb the tranquility of their village. And you expect us to obey him? Haven't you understood that he is a servant of the island's demons? To leave would be to abandon the simplistic souls of all those that follow him, ceding victory to the demons. No, my child. We will not leave this place until the light shines over every dwelling. I fought against a great number of Tenlands. One that was quite spectacular. A 
great white beast. Its mere presence seemed to aggravate the others, attract them and make them aggressive. A beast sent by the demons, no doubt. But... Stop taking me for a fool. We also found a journal detailing your vicious plan. I have only one piece of advice to give you. Leave, and quickly. Or the Mother Cardinal will learn every detail of your manipulations. We shall be leaving as soon as possible. But let it be known that you are abandoning all of these poor souls to damnation. Perhaps you should be more concerned about your own soul, sister. People have died by your fault. We are near water, in the area the fisherman's brother mentioned. A nest must be close to here. Come back later. It is dawn, the ideal moment. I must kill the dominant one before destroying the nest.
Hunter told me that I would find a nest in this area. I must kill the dominant one before destroying the nest. Given the presence of the tenons in this clearing, there must be a nest not far from here. is destroyed. The Master Hunter will be relieved to hear it, I'm sure. The nests are destroyed, and with the death of the White Tenon, the attacks should cease, and we are even able to convince the missionaries to leave. Katasak should be willing to follow us now. Let's go and find him.
I can see from your face that you were victorious. Indeed. I put the White Tenlin down, who was enraging his kind, and destroyed their nests. The attack should no longer trouble you. As for the missionaries, we were able to convince them to leave, although they were not willing to reveal their involvement in the attacks that caused you such harm. And so they were in some way responsible. I had my suspicions, but I could not see their reasons. They brought a particularly large beast here that attracted and enraged the others. This is what provoked the attacks and brought on our despair. These people have blood on their hands. In the end, we found the missing young ones. But alas, it was too late. Devoured by wild beasts. Undivorced tear end. You did well on our Manawi. Now they shall be able to find the rest. Will you agree to accompany me now? My cousin needs your help. I have packed what is needed. I am ready to journey with you. This pain, it'll be the death of me. I can't control my body. It's like being a stranger in a marionette set ablaze. Consumed by a smouldering fire. The moment's growing near, isn't it? Am I about to surrender my ghost to the Reaper of Souls? You pop in just when you're needed, cousin, as always. Who are you? Your hand is cold as ice. Your cousin is burning. That is such a relief. Let me present Katisach, Constantine. He is the greatest healer on the island. He will help you. Please, stay. I am here for you, Rnaikse, and I will not leave until I found a way to ease your pain and suffering. Fill your mind with the patience of the ocean. I know not how much time I will need. I've never seen such a sickness. The spirits of your lands must be quite horrendous to cast down such evils upon the peoples that live there. Thank you. Thank you, cousin. I don't want to imagine my plight without your intervention. My dear cousin, come closer and tell me what brings you... Uh, Constantine, is it true? Are you in great pain? This sickness is horrible, believe me. Now I understand what your mother went through. But you have not come to hear my complaints. Speak, it will give me something else to ponder. Allow me to present Afra, an emissary of the Bridge Alliance. She is an eminent naturalist who studies local flora in an effort to find a remedy. Your Excellency, it is a great honor. You were part of Governor Buren's lost expedition, if I've understood correctly, were you not? Yes, and our research would have borne fruit if it hadn't been so brutally interrupted. I can only imagine. Nevertheless, you are most welcome. Your great learning will certainly prove useful. I implore you, my dear cousin. Do continue. We are eager to hear your news. I'm going to leave now. Goodbye, Constantine. Look out for yourself. I need to speak with you, my child. Yes, Petrus. What is it? I've come up with a plan to put what we've learned about the Mother Cardinal to use. Do tell. You will have to take part in a fight in the arena, and we must make sure that the odds are high. To do this, you'll have to face a champion. This will lure her in. That would effectively raise the odds, but the risk is they'll bet against me. That may be the case, 
but the highest bets are based on the exact time of the defeat. I see. We are going to make the Mother Cardinal believe that I will lose at a specific time. And by doing so, you'll win something bigger than a fight. This will make her lose a considerable amount. Exactly. I've even taken measures to make sure her usual moneylender is unavailable. Without knowing it, she will come to me looking for gold in order to place her bet. And she will be at our mercy. Is this how you settle scores in Teleme? This is how all scores are settled, my child. Or on the battlefield. But that's much dirtier. So, what do you say? It's a complicated plan, but an effective one. Let's put it in motion. Let's go back to the St. Matthias bookmaker. Your skills seem to interest him. Locked. Good day. Welcome. You here to wager? To fight? I want to challenge the champion of the arena. A champion? Really? Now, you were asking about Candy Cane. It wouldn't be him that sent you here by any chance. No, no one has sent me. I'm looking to make a reputation for myself. Ah, that sounds better. You know that in order to attain supreme glory, there are a few rungs on the ladder. None of my champions will make a trip to fight against someone barely known. Even if I promise that the spectacle will be worth the journey? No one cares about promises. Prove yourself in the arena and win at least the third challenge and people will start to listen to you. Very well. We'll see each other again soon. At least you have the right attitude. That's summit. I will leave you alone until your reputation in the arena is established. There's no point in me following your trail for days. Yes, that's wiser. It could take some time. Let me know if you need me. Of course, Petrus. Ready to excite the crowd. I need to get going. Huh. A pity. And let's go! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Excellent. And the public really appreciated it. Now that was a challenge well won. I need to get going. Huh. A pity. Good day. Welcome. You here to wager? To fight? I've done what you asked. Can I have my fight now? I have to admit that you've surprised me. You have technique and style, and the public does love you. Let me think. There is Briscard, one of our old champions. It's been a while since he fought, but he did ask me to set something up for him. He's not a youngster anymore, but his name is known. And he's a killer. I'm warning you. This Briscard sounds like the perfect opponent. A deal! I'll work on getting things ready for the combat and line up the betting. Until then, make sure you're ready. It'll be a duel. Your friends will need to stay in their seats. As soon as you're ready, you'll just need to go and see the Arena Master. We should go and see Candy Cane so he can set up our deal. So when you win, she will lose her bet. again what do you want this time why so defensive Petrus you have a proposal to make I believe that's right I've thought of a little scheme that could make us all very rich you know me so you also know I'm quite clever and that my ideas are always fruitful they do say that you are devious perhaps too much so for your own good go on my friend here loves the glory and sand of the arena. I've gained quite a reputation. Soon I'll be taking on a true champion. I'm no fool, though. I know I won't last long against him. Yeah, I've seen the odds. Everyone expects you to lose within a minute. So what? Let us suppose that our champion is a little less aggressive than usual. If the fight can last at least five minutes, an informed better would win the jackpot. And I'd keep a little of my pride. Very well. I'll arrange it. But no dirty tricks. Don't take advantage of the deal and try to beat the champion. If you do, he'll wipe the floor with you. You want to get your money. Don't get too greedy.
Ready to excite the crowd? Ah, there you are. I was told you'd be taking on one of our old champions. Are you ready for the fight? Beware. Contrary to the challenges, this combat must be fought alone. Your friends must remain in the stands. Yes, I am ready. So, jump into the arena, and may the better fighter win. What a brilliant spectacle. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. It wasn't easy. And here are your winnings from the combat. <laughs> You've earned them. Bravo! A glorious victory, which is made all the sweeter by double compensation. I don't believe I've ever seen you happier. The thought of holding something over Cornelius seems to do you wonders. That is true. Politics is an extremely subtle game, and just as satisfying as fighting in an arena. I imagine we need to go and see her now. Yes, and I hope you will enjoy the moment every bit as much as I will. Lord de Sade, and you, Petrus, what can I do for you? We have come to offer our support. We have learned that the arena was cruel to you. How do you know that? Oh, I see. You tricked my informer. We just let him believe that I would lose. All I did was take the place of your moneylender. You owe me a handsome sum. All of this just to make me spill the beans, am I right? I didn't expect you to play this kind of game, Your Excellency. It is true, though, that with such a teacher... Oh, come on, Cornelia. You excel at this game. It's true. And I also know when to admit defeat. What do you want from me? We won't use what we know of you, nor what you owe us. So long as you act loyally towards the Congregation and Constantine. Is that clear? Is that what you're expecting? Ah, but I'm sure that this sly old fox has something else in mind, right? You hope that I'll support you when you court the rank of Cardinal? You haven't learnt your lesson, then. Have you forgotten the abyss into which you plunged because of your ambition last time? Petrus, what is she talking about? Cornelia... You don't have the right to use that against me to disclose what I revealed to you that day. It was said under the seal of the Enlightened. It's true. But if someone deserves to know, it's him. No, please. Since you have no intention of speaking, I will. Petrus knew your mother, child. Your real mother. My mother? Petrus, is this true? How? Be damned, Cornelia. It's true. I knew your mother. I used to go to the jail to give my spiritual support to the prisoners of the Prince d'Orsay. That's where I met her. She was alone, afraid, and exhausted. And 
That's so strange. Obviously, I had no way of knowing that she came from here. The princes kept their secret well. Why didn't you tell me about it? You knew that my uncle lied to me and you kept quiet. I... I was ashamed. Ashamed of having left her to die in that dead-end pit. Completely alone. Why talk to others about it then? Why does she know? One evening, in a fit of despair, Petrus felt the need to share this great burden with someone. At the time, you were the ear of the enlightened, Cornelia. You have broken your vows. Ah, oh, damnation! It's better out in the open. I've wanted to tell you about it since I met you. Now that you know, I want to do something in her memory. I will help you find your family here on the island. The prince sent you here to use you. But I can ensure that all of this serves a purpose. How could I possibly believe you now? You have used me for your scheming and kept me in the dark. I understand how you feel, my child. Let's wait a little until you've taken it all in. Time heals the wounds of the soul. Come back and see me when you are ready. As for you, Cornelia, remember what we have on you. You no longer have the upper hand. Be careful, Desade. You now see the real Petrus, sly and opportunistic. My dear child, what can I do for you? I'll see you later, father. Take care, my child.
Do it. Hello, my name is De Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. May I enter? Good day, legate De Sade. No. This building is closed to Renaixe. I am Siora, daughter of Vladne, daughter of Meb. My mother, the Mal of the Red Spears, was a member of the council. All here remember. And the Vorst Tirse. She was a courageous Mal. But you are not yet Mal in her stead. And you do not carry her seal. I am sorry, Siora. I cannot allow you to enter. I beg your pardon. I did not know. If I cannot enter, perhaps you could tell the Elder of the Council that I request an audience. Glendon cannot speak with you, Legate. Times are difficult, and his time is precious. He only accepts to meet the members of the Council or their representatives. How can I prove that I am the representative of one of them? If you are a trusted friend of a Council member, he will give you his seal, and we would know it. I will then be glad to allow you to enter. You would be the first Renaixe to obtain such an honor. I will return later. If you have a seal, you will be welcome. If not, you are wasting your time and mine. Greetings, Katasak. Bertir Dumat, what can I do for you? How is my cousin doing? He's filled with dread as death approaches. Forgive him his mood swings. He's such a young boy, and he had so much desire to live. Thanks to my treatment, he suffers less. But his disease is getting worse, and I don't know what to do. It would take a power far superior to mine to break the grasp of this evil. I'm looking to meet Enon Miel Frichtemann. I went all the way to the village council. But they did not let you speak to Glendan the Elder. Precisely. They said that only the friends of a member of the council might enter. And my word was not enough. It seems that I must be a Mal to be heard. Do not be sad, daughter of Bladnid. One day, you will be as great a chief as your mother, and you too will have a seal. This seal will allow you to give voice to the friends of your clan, those who may speak in your name. Here, friend of Wenshavier, take my seal and go and meet Glendan. But you must convince him and no doubt pass many trials. Many monsters and traps are hidden on the path you seek to follow. Thank you, Katasach. Why are you helping me? We do not wish to lose the one who placed his life in my hands. And you have already shown me your friendship. I hope that Glendan will allow you to meet this god, cousin. Leave as soon as you can. Godspeed. Have no fear. I'll do whatever it takes. I must go. What I will am sick.
You have returned. The rule is still the same, you know. Here is the seal of the Denegad Katasach, of the village of Wenshavie. And so you are a trusted friend of the great healer. He must see your true face and find it worthy. Enter. You are welcome. I give you warm greetings, Glendan. I am Desarde, legate of the Congregation of Merchants. Your merchant congregation sways me very slightly from my part. But you are a current of Katasach. His trust in you makes me stop and look at you. What brings you here? I seek a remedy. My cousin, as well as many other people on our island, suffer from a terrible sickness. We think that only Enon Miel Frictiman can help us find a cure. Really? And Katasach sent you to see me? He told me that the only way to meet with your god was to come and see you. You would judge our worthiness. Judge your intentions? Yes, that I can do. But even if I should do this, you would have many trials to pass. For the path you seek to follow has only been tread but a very few times, and you are the first Renaixe to set foot upon it. We must begin where everything begins. There is a trial, the trial of water. It will show us the reflection of your soul. What must I do? You must go to a cavern and tell me what you see on the seal you will find deep in its center. And this cavern is guarded, I suppose. That is true. But the simplest solution is not always the best. It is a path with many forks. I hope you will prove that you understand the spirit of our people and our island. Go now. Show us your true face and return purified by the waters of the cavern. What can you tell me about your god? That the word god is too small to hold him. He is Tia Fradi in all and everything. The wisdom of his people, the gentleness of his rivers, the strength of his volcano. You are looking for wisdom to heal the Renaixe, but you still see it with the eyes of a sort of Donegat. He is much more than that. He is the essence of all life, of all magic, the spring. I must leave. Goodbye. Kwa awelem seg. Karantz, I need to talk to you. I have to ask you for another favor. I'm listening, Siora. Do you remember the mind shakers in my village? Yes. If I understand correctly, there was some kind of an agreement made with them. Even though these priests would make good allies against the lions because they hate them as much as we do, my mother would never have traded the spirits of the people of the village in exchange for their help. And she would have wanted to be buried according to our rituals. She was deeply attached to our traditions. So you think that they're lying? Yes. And you understand these Renaixe better than I do. Will you investigate this matter with me? Of course. Let's go. You have spoken to Glendon as you wanted. What more can I do for you? I was asked to pass the trial of water. What do you know about it? I have never passed it. Only those who must reveal their soul walk this path. The high kings and queens. It is a tremendous honor given to you, Renaixe. Do you have any advice to give me? I only know that the trial can be passed in many ways, 
and your choice will reveal the makings of your soul. One way is through strength, the other by ruse and heart. But I know no more than this. The trolls are kept secret. Anything else? Nothing else, thank you. I need to leave. Good luck. And do not lose yourself in your own reflection. Hello, my child. What a pleasure to see someone come to us with such eagerness. Do you want to hear the word of Saint Matthias and come into the light? Not really, Father. My name is the Sarde. I'm the legate of the Merchant Congregation. Nice to meet you, Your Excellency. What can we do for you? We would like to know more about the agreement you supposedly sealed with Bladnit. I do not see how our agreement concerns the congregation. But since you are asking us, we swore to provide this village with all our support in their fight against the Alliance. In exchange, its inhabitants will have to renounce their pagan cult and turn towards the light. My mother would never have made such an agreement. She's the one who encouraged me to become a Donegad. The Queen had understood that the light was the only true path even if she was attached to traditions. It is for this reason that we have accepted to seal our agreement according to your own rituals. She had an engraver come to Falristal. He carved your strange symbols in the stone. I do not believe a single word of this. You, the people of the light, are nothing but liars. You would do well to hold your tongue, young lady. This village is now under our spiritual authority. By not respecting us, you are committing blasphemy. And blasphemy is a crime that we punish severely. Because you think that you can administer justice here. I am the daughter of Bladnid, and you are... Siora, let's not get into another battle and make new enemies. Let's go find this stone. That is an excellent idea. Then you will see that we are telling the truth. Here's the stone we were looking for. It is destroyed. We can no longer decipher the symbols. Strange, isn't it? This stone was damaged on purpose. 
We will never know the precise terms of the agreement. There may be a way. Promises in stone are a very ancient tradition. Those who want to make these agreements must turn to a keeper of promises. An artisan who makes the stones speak. There are but a few. We did not have one in our village before Karadek's arrival. He must be the one who engraved this stone. I thought you could not write. The Donegada have a secret writing that the Keepers of Promises always learn. Those who want to seal a promise tell them to write, and they take care of it. like no one's there, but the door's left open. Empty. Everything is broken and turned upside down. A sculpted engraved stone. What happened here? It seems like there was a fight. Everything is scattered around. This workshop was purposely devastated. The owner must have left in a hurry, taking a few things and destroying the rest. Unless someone else did this. We must find Karadeg. Do you know where he might be? This engraved stone bears the mark of Barayag Nodas, Don Cass's clan. Do you remember him? Karadeg originally belonged to this clan. He may have returned. Let's go to Vigigador and we'll find out. What brings you here on Omanawi? We're looking for Karadeg, the Keeper of Promises. Did he come back to your village? He, he did come, and then he left. We could not take him back. Did you exile him? Why? He is the one who left. He disagreed with our stance on the Renaixe. He thought that we should be fighting them, throwing them back to the sea. This is why he joined the Gaius Rad, and I did not want him to return if it meant that he would bring his hatred with him. Do you know where he might have gone? He feared someone or something, and he wanted to hide. He must have left for the woods south of here. He knows the area well. Is there anything else? I must leave. Goodbye, Dunkers. Qua awalum seg. Karadeg. 
He's over dead. Siora, Bertir to mad, Donegad. What are you doing with these strangers? These strangers are my friends, Karadeg. You can speak in front of them without fear. What do you want? Tell me about your role as Keeper of Promises. What does it consist of? Most words must be free, and able to fly like birdsong. But some words must survive those who utter them. So they call on the Keepers of Promises. Those who want to become one must win the trust of the Donegada and prove their wisdom. Then they teach us the words of stone. And when someone wants to seal a promise, we offer them those words. So you're a kind of cleric? Hmm. Thank you, Karadek. Do you want to know anything else? We would like to ask you about a stone you supposedly engraved. It is the stone of the Rinaigs, isn't it? I should never have accepted to seal such a promise. I did not like them, but I could not refuse to fulfill my duty. Not when Bladnid was demanding it. And now that she is no longer with us, these Monasinaiga are chasing me. It is because you are the last person to know what was engraved on it. The stone has been destroyed. I kept the piece of tree bark in which I prepared the glyphs. All the details are there. With this tree bark, we could verify what my mother promised. Can you give it to us? No, Donegad. I do not mean to disrespect you, but I will not. Rinaigse only bring us trouble, and you come with them. They will disappoint you just like they disappointed your mother. I do not want to deal with them ever again. They threaten my life, and because of them, I am forced to hide here. Since you want to chase the Renaigse away, and since you want protection, why don't you join the rebels? We could indicate the location of one of their camps for you. The rebels? The Donea Eggs Regal. They fight the Renaigse, and they accept people from all clans. I have heard about them, but I didn't know where to find them. We could help you join them, but we need this tree bark. It's the only way to prove that the priests lied. In that case, Take the tree bark. I hope that it will help you to chase these Renaigse away, Donegan. And I did not think I would say this one day. But thank you, Renaigse. What do these glyphs say? That we will assist the priests in their war against the lions, and they must help us in return. There is nothing about the spirits of the people of the village or renouncing our traditions. I knew they were lying. Let's show this to his end. Siora, Asir, always with your new friends. Bertir to Madiseld, I'm happy to see you. What do you want? Azeld, about this pact your mother supposedly made with the priests. Yes. Did you find anything new? We went to Falristel to see the stone. Were you able to read it, Siora? No, because it was destroyed by someone. I am certain that the priests did it to protect their lies. You're probably right, but for as long as we cannot prove it... We retrieved the piece of tree bark that Karadeg used as a model. Siora, what's written on it? Mother promised to help them against the lions, and they promised to help us in return. There's nothing mentioned about them settling here. And even less about them being entitled to the spirits of the people of our village. So they lied. They mocked us. 
and insulted the memory of our mother. I think it's high time they left. Don't you agree? I think so too. Come on, let's go. You lied to us. You took us for gullible children. Leave this village at once. You will never be welcome here again. But if you want our help with the Alliance, your people must convert to the light. By lying, you have insulted the memory of the Queen. The entire village will be happy to make you pay for your affront if they hear about it. You do well to leave before having to face their wrath. We are not here to shed blood. Very well, we're leaving. But we will not forget your role in this matter, Your Excellency. <sighs> I did not think they would leave of their own accord. Thank you, Anol Manawi. Thanks to you, we managed to chase away these lawyers. And we will be able to perform our rituals and give our mother back to the Earth. Yes. Thank you. Our village is in your debt. Siora, I will need you for the ritual. Will you help me? Of course, Asir. Siora, do you know anything about the trial that awaits us inside? My mother passed it during the last election, but it was Vinbar that was elected in the end. Did she tell you about it? A little, but it is a secret trial. It is important that you give your whole heart to it. I know that you must choose your path in your way. Combat is not necessarily the best response, even if it allows you to get to where you are going. If you are confronted with animals, remind yourself that they must feed. And there are ways of altering food to make those who eat it fall into a deep and peaceful sleep. Hmm. Is that an idea that your mother used? It's clever. Thank you. These beasts are feeding on that carcass. If only we could pour some sleeping potion on it. I do not have a sleeping potion on me. Watch out, Anadai! Look at the basin, and the symbols around it. Given the islander's taste for rituals and enigmas, I think you should touch the water. You were freezing, and you had this empty stare. 
the water in the basin spoke to you, no? Yes. Exactly like the lightning struck tree. I was something else for a brief moment. Tell us. Visions like this are guides, a keys for the sacred rituals. I was in the sky. I was floating, carried by the wind. And it was a cold feeling. I was high up, and it was getting colder and colder. I felt my blood freezing in my veins. I fell to the ground and spun slowly. And then the sun warmed me. Suddenly I bounced on the ground. And I was taken by the bubbling current of this creek. Then, just like before, the vision dissipated. And I was suddenly with you again. This stone is blackened, eaten away. This stone bears the image of a storm. On this stone, the sun is visible. The drawing on this stone makes me think of fire. This drawing looks like an infant. Could it represent life? Here, this looks like a snowflake. The snow, or maybe ice. This stone is adorned with the etching of a drop of water. I need a bit of practice. This must be the seal that Glendan spoke about. It looks like the silhouette of the mountain of Tirfredi. And a face is drawn within it. The spirit of the volcano. One of the faces of Enon Mir Frichtemann. to mad on Almanawi. I congratulate you for passing the trial. Enter. And so you have returned. Can you tell me what the seal deep within the cavern brings into your mind? A face in the mountain of Tirfredi. Then you have seen the true face of the island when looking into her waters. And the island has seen inside you. You have given the blood of the animals that protected the entrance to the passage. You have chosen strength a first time. In choosing the path of silence, you avoided confronting the Dosantats. Finally, you have completed the ritual. And in so doing, the Guardian recognized you as a wise man. You choose to trust the way of rules and wisdom. It is a difficult path, but it carries generous fruits. The island has seen your intelligence and also your compassion. The friendship of Katasach towards you no longer surprises me. Am I authorized to encounter Enor Mil Frichtemann now? To present him with my request? If the High King agrees, yes. We shall not oppose that decision. Only a High King or High Queen is allowed to open the Sanctuary. I warned you, your voyage is far from over. I suppose that I'm going to need to convince them as well. Where can I find them? I do not know. And I believe that it may be another trial on your path to find the one you seek. Is he hiding? Has he been captured? He disappeared several months ago. Since then, we have not heard from him. He was worried about the Renaixe. 
The last people to have seen him, I'm told, were the most important chiefs of the clans here at the council. There was Dedra, Blatnid, Ulan, and Dunkas. My mother, alas, can tell us nothing more. Yes. I heard about your loss, Yora. On the worst, Tirse. Mourning is a difficult time to pass. And the worst, Tirse. Thank you, Glyndon. Dedra is the Mal of the clan of the Storm Warriors. You will find her in the village of Vedlug. I've already met her. She sent me to confront a guardian. That sounds like her. Ulan is the Mal of the village of Vignamri, near the coast. It is said that he welcomes the Renaxe. As for Dunkas, he leads the Vigigidor. He is the chief of the Earth Healers. His village is not very far from the Didekid and Nadagais. Very well. I will go and see them. Try to find this High King. Thank you, Glendan. Kwaawalamsek. I hope that you will find him. you came to find me. Allow me to apologize once again. I should have spoken to you sooner, told you what I knew, and not betrayed your trust. Indeed you should have. As I said, I'd like to make up for it and help you find your family again. How do you intend to do that? As you now know, I knew your mother. We had trouble communicating at first, of course, but we gradually learned to understand one another. She was important in her village. Based on what I know today, I think she was a Danegad. She told me her name, Arelwyn, and told me about her family. She even gave me a pendant for you. You were only a child, so I gave it to Mrs. Desade for safekeeping. She gave me a necklace when I went to say goodbye to her. She said it was a family heirloom. Did my mother tell you the name of her village? No but I'm sure the Nords can help us. They were the ones who took your mother to the continent. It was such a long time ago. How can I find out if they remember? The Nords record everything down to the gentlest breeze. They must have written something in a logbook somewhere. So, do you want to try and find out where you come from? Do you want to find your relatives? Yes. All this is so new to me, but I suppose so, yes. Let's go then. You have come at the right time, Your Excellency. I am in a delicate situation, and your help would be invaluable. I'm listening, Admiral. 
Captain Reuben warned me that he suspected a member of his crew of being a spy. It is almost certain she sent secret navigation information to foreigners. Why ask me to take care of it? This is a very serious accusation. One that results in a member of the Guild being expelled. The Norts are like a family, very connected, but also likely to carry resentment. I think an external view is required to be certain that there will be no bias. Anyway, their ship is anchored at New Serene. Your authority will allow you to get more answers than us. I see. What is the exact nature of the information that could have been sent? It's up to you to find out. But all the Noughts know how we navigate our ships. You've seen the techniques we use, and you know we want to keep them secret. I agree. Where can I find Captain Reuben? At the port in your town. You know his ship. It was Captain Vasco's before he landed. I'm counting on you, Your Excellency. We must shed light on this case. I need to be going. Until we meet again, Admiral. Captain Reuben? Aye, the man himself. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? De Sade, Legate of the Merchant Congregation. And I'm sure you know my companion. Vasco? Oh, do not worry. The seahorse is in good hands. I'm sure, Reuben. What brings you here? The Admiral asked me to shed light on your little problem of indiscretion in your ranks. I see. I would be happy to answer any questions you have. You told the Admiral that you suspect one of your crew members. Indeed. The young apprentice sailor, Alba. A committed volunteer from Teleme. Now, she only joined us a short time ago. Did you want to know anything else? What led you to these suspicions? Well, the girl's behavior. She was very eager at first, very willing, almost too much. Then, suddenly, she became nervous. She isolated herself and did not speak to others. She's a recent recruit, which inevitably raised some doubts about her vocation. Sometimes I saw her hanging around my cabin. My papers were often disturbed. And since we've returned to port, she's almost never on board. Well, you can understand my concern, but you should probably talk to the other members of the crew. They may know something else. Ultimately, your strong suspicion stems from the fact that she's sea-given. A recent sea-given. She did not join us as a child. But you know how rare volunteers are, especially from Teleme. Did you want to know anything else? Do you know what information she may have sent? I don't know exactly what you know about our navigation methods. Let's say that magic does not have much to do with it. I see. Well, of course she knows that too. She saw some of our machines on board, and by searching through my papers, she could get even more sensitive information. Did you want to know anything else? The Admiral told me that you were the new captain of the ship we arrived on. The Seahorse? Yes. It's an excellent ship and a good crew. But you did the crossing. You know it as well as me. Did you want to know anything else? That'll be all, Captain. Thank you. Your Excellency, I am so pleased to see you again. The pleasure is shared. Captain! Good day, Jonas. What can I do for you? I would like you to tell me anything you can about a member of your crew. Alba. She joined our party recently, but I like her already. She works hard and is full of courage. You know, she is one of those rare knots that joined of her own volition, and she did everything she could to become one of our own. Until we arrived here, she suddenly became distraught and frightened. It brought back memories. Do you know where I could find her? I'd like to ask her some questions. N no. I've not seen her for a while. Maybe at the tavern? She was playing cards there from time to time. Anything else, Your Excellency? I'm afraid I need to be going. Watch out for yourself.
Captain. Delighted to see you again. We've missed you. Your Excellency, it's a pleasure. What can I do for you? We have a few questions to ask you, Flavio. I'm all yours, Captain. Can you tell me anything about Alba? Well, I don't know her very well. She only joined our crew recently. But she pulls her weight. You can't hold that against her. You might say she shows a little too much zeal, even, at times. That being said, ever since we got here, I found her a little distraught. You could even say nervous. Would you know where I could find her? No. I wouldn't. Where's she missed roll call? Well, I hope she didn't do something stupid. These committed volunteers, we never know if we can trust them. Anything else? I need to be off. Perhaps we'll meet later. Farewell, then. Hey, happy to see you again. How have things been going for you since your crossing? Good, thank you. Even if I've got quite a list of errands to check off. Then straight to it. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a nought. A young woman going by the name of Alba. I know her. She joined our crew at the same time as our new captain. Did you try the tavern? Don't give me that look there. I've kept from the bottle since that story with Jonas, you know that. No matter. When we're at dock, there's nothing much else to do. It might be that little Alba went there to take a look. Anything else? I need to go. Farewell. Smooth sailing. I'm afraid these little secrets have not helped us a great deal. This Alba had just enlisted. She was happy, then changed her attitude. But is she a spy? We were told that she was sometimes at the tavern. We should take a look there. Have one of their I will not let you say one more fight. word! Let's see. You can shout all you want, but I'm right, you old drunkard. Not at all! I play that hand honestly! You're so drunk! You see doubled! Come on, gentlemen. Please calm down. Who are you to give us orders? That's true! You want to see how tough... Oh, you don't know who you're messing with! My child, I doubt that your job as legate involves managing fights between drunkards. You better get out of here unless you want to end up in jail. Oh, he thinks we'll allow that to happen. On guard, sir! <coughs> On guard! Maybe a nice ah! and protect the queen of this battle. Ah! 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 Let's go! What can I pour for you? I'm looking for a young nought. She goes by the name of Alba and sails on Captain Reuben's ship. I wouldn't know who that is. Why don't you go and ask that fellow over there? He often shares a bottle with the sailors. He might remember your nought. Anything else? Nothing, thanks. I'm not thirsty just yet. Hey, look at that! <laughs> The upper crust coming to slum it at the tavern. How may I help you? We're looking for a young nought. She's part of Captain Reuben's crew. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. A girl who loses her pay with style. <laughs> but I don't know where she is. She looked sad last time I saw her. Didn't have her head in the game. We're looking for a young nought. She's... Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. But I don't... Have you ever heard her talk about secrets or documents she would like to exchange? 
Are you asking me if she's a spy? <laughs> no idea she told me nothing. But if that's why you're looking for her, I may have seen things that might interest you. I'm often mistaken for a drunkard, so they pay no attention to me. But I see everything. Tell me what you saw. I'd like to tell you all that, but... <coughs> my throat's a little dry, my friend. Do you want to know anything else? That'll be all, soldier. Thank you. What can I pour for you? Give me a bottle of your best drink. There you go. But be careful. She's got a strong bite. Oh, here you are again. More questions? Tell me what you saw. This should quench your thirst. So, what did you see? Well, returning late at night, I spotted a guy I'd seen before at the tavern. He often spent time with the noughts, and he was in the street, fiddling with a stone, looking suspicious. So, I took a closer look when he left. I thought he'd stashed money or something, but no. There was a box under the stone, but there was no gold inside, just papers. They were messages. And from the look of the guy, they couldn't be love letters. <laughs> now, I don't know how to read, so I couldn't understand what it was about, but maybe those were your secrets? Where is this hiding place? Cross the bridge at the exit of the town. On the left, look for the stone. The box is underneath. Thank you, soldier. My pleasure, friend. Do you want to know anything else? That'll be all, soldier. Thank you. This stone must be the one the soldier told us about. Look, it hides a box. It's a dead drop. It's suspicious, but it doesn't reveal any secrets or who uses it. Well then, we'll have to catch whoever uses it red-handed. Oh, I'm a little old for hiding in the bushes, but if that's what you want to do... Perfect. We have a great view of the box from here. Shall we wait here? That's it. Suspect in sight. Messenger. We should follow him.
Well, gentlemen, what are you plotting? Fool! They followed us! I... But I was careful. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation, and you have been caught plotting treason. So I suggest you talk. What do these messages contain, and what are they about? You're wasting your time. I, I, I won't say a word. Do you realize that you are suspected of espionage and conspiracy? Don't you think you better explain yourself? Wait! I, I don't want to end up in jail. It, it's not about the secrets of the congregation. Let me explain. Some time ago, it was rumored that the secrets of the Norts were for sale. My country was interested. So I started exchanging messages as you've been doing. The Nort who was willing to give up these secrets demanded a fortune. He also wanted to become a citizen. But we were only at the negotiation stage. For the moment, uh, I have received nothing concrete. Just promises. Who is the Nort you're talking to? Oh, I've no idea. The messages were signed White Rose, but I doubt it's a real name. Very well. You seem to be telling the truth. Alba means white to Sarde, but it's a little unsubstantial. Then give me the message in your possession before leaving. Very well. Here it is. Now, if you'll allow me, uh, I, I will leave the town. Ah, Your Excellency. So, what did you discover? There is indeed a spy among the Norts, but the spy's identity remains to be proven. Take this. I have recovered this note, which seems to suggest that your secrets have been offered to several buyers. The Alliance citizen we met did not win the bid. I knew it. My logbook has just been stolen, and of course Alba is missing. Do we really still need proof? This book must be found at all costs before Alba sells it. Your Excellency, can we count on you once more? I would like to help you, but this island is vast. How could I possibly hope to find it? Alba is from Teleme. She probably took refuge in San Mateus. This reduces the search area a little. What do you say, Your Excellency? This is a trail that deserves to be followed. I will keep you updated, Admiral. Find Fernando. Do you remember him? He should be able to inform us. Yes, I remember Fernando. Let's go and see him. Good day, Desade. How can I help you? We're looking for a young Nort named Alba on behalf of the Admiral. I've heard about her. Several crew members told me that one of our own was looking to leave the island. You should ask them if you want to learn more. They should be near the boarding area. But me? I've not seen her. More questions? Thanks. I've got everything I need.
Your Excellency. Captain Vasco, what fair wind brings you here? We're looking for a young nought who arrived from New Serene a short time ago. Her name is Alba. Yes, I remember her well. The poor child wanted to flee her father. He wanted to take her back to the convent. She asked me when our ship was leaving, and if I thought we could take her on board. I told her she'd better talk to the captain, but we weren't leaving right away in any case. So she left. You say she was fleeing her father? Yes, that's what she said. He followed her here to take her back to Teleme. Poor child. Did she tell you what his name was? Yes. She told me that if a certain gentleman, Lorenz, that's it, Lorenz, if he was asking after her, I should send him packing. Surely it was a fake excuse. We're looking for her for espionage and treason. Really? Yet she seems sincere. Treason? I can't believe it. If her father is actually here, do you have any idea where we might find him? Well, at one point I asked her why she was not waiting at the tavern for a ship to leave. She told me she could not go to the tavern, so maybe that's where you'll find him. I must leave you. Hello. Are you Master Lorenz? Indeed, sir. What do you want from me? My name is Desarde. I'm the legate of the Merchant Congregation, and I have a few questions for you. We're looking for a young nought called Alba. We were told that you're her father. Alba? What a stupid name. Her real name is Clara, and yes, she is my daughter, although she chose to deny me. Have you seen her recently? Alas, no. Otherwise, I would have brought that little idiot back to Teleme. Why did she have to leave? What madness could make her leave the convent to go to sea? Your daughter is accused of espionage and treason by the Norts. Do you think she could be guilty? Espionage? I can't believe it. But treason? How can it be denied? She rejected her country, her faith, and her family by getting on that ship. But I will soon bring her back on the right path. I hired a sleuth from the Ordo Luminous. Tell me more about this sleuth. Some Inquisitors are specialists in hunting criminals, or heretics, or young scatterbrains. That's certainly the case with this Johannes. He will bring her back to me, and she will return to the convent in Teleme. 
Do you know where we could find him? Maybe he could help us. His last message was about a missionary camp where he had followed her near Wench... Oh, something or other. I'm sorry, I can't remember those island names. Thank you, sir. If you find her, bring her back to me. She will no longer have the chance to betray anyone at the convent. I hope we're done. I'll leave you, sir. A missionary camp near an island village whose name begins with Wench. He must be talking about Wench Xavier. Shall we go there? Get down and listen. It seems to me that it's our sleuth. Let me... Let me go. I've done nothing wrong. Speak if you want me to release you. Where is she? I... I don't know. I'm thirsty. Give me water. You will have nothing until you tell me something. Have mercy. I'm dying. I don't care. If you die, I will just question another one like you. Talk! Where is the girl? I recognize this sleuth from the Ordo Luminous. It's Johannes. He's obviously still looking for Alba. He's questioning this man to find out where she is. We must intervene quickly or he'll kill him. Let me... Hey! Who goes there? Who are you? And what are you doing here? Are you spying on me? My name is Desarde. I'm the legate of the congregation, and I was sent to find a young nought, Alba. That dirty little eel slipped through my fingers. But this savage will soon tell me where to find her. I see you folks at the Ordo Luminous are as subtle as ever. Why politely ask when we can resort to torture, hmm? Only missionaries believe that these savages would help us without encouragement. But why are you concerned by my methods if you're looking for this young woman too? I do not like the idea of leaving a trail of blood behind, Johannes. The case that sends us here far exceeds your petty mission. So you'd better leave. I made a commitment to find this young woman and bring her back to her father. I will not give up so easily. I have been promised a substantial amount of money. And I care about my reputation. Ha! Huh, your reputation? Your order has already lost the support of the Cardinal Mother for interfering with the Noughts. And here you are again, involved in their business. You're putting nails in your own coffin, Johannes. Huh. I didn't see it from that angle. Well, I'm going back to San Mateus. I leave you this savage. Have fun. And happy hunting! Let's free this poor man. May the grass be forever soft under your feet, Renaixe. I thought I was dead. He would have killed me, even if I had spoken. You're probably right. Do you think you can answer us? We also have questions to ask you. You saved me. I owe you answers. But first, I have to go back to my village. I need to heal. Meet me in Wenshavaye later on.
you are the ones who saved me from Saul Lasser. Oh, I am so grateful to you. Oh, I owe you so much. But you wanted to ask me questions? We're looking for a naught girl. The same one that the Inquisitor is looking for. But I promised Alba to say nothing. I would really like to help you, but... And you risked your own life keeping your promise. But Alba is in a very delicate situation. If we do not find her first, others will track her down. And they will kill her without letting her defend herself. So she was right to be afraid, that poor girl. She came here saying she was being chased. I led her into the forest nearby to a cave where she could hide. If you have one of your uh, notes, I'll show you where she is. Thank you. Did you want anything else? Do you offer services as a guide? Sometimes I take Renaigse to a good fishing place. They give me beautiful objects in exchange. But right now we have to be careful. There have been accidents with the Tenlands. Did you want anything else? I must go. Goodbye. that the tortured survivor told us about. I can't say that I have a good memory of this place. These are Albert's things. No, you will not get me. I will not go back to the convent. Maybe in this battle. Yeah. Bit of poison on my blade. Then let's go. Stop. You have won. Finish me. I still prefer to die than to return to my father. Wait, something's wrong. She sincerely believes that we're chasing her on behalf of her father. We do not intend to kill you, let alone take you back to your father. So then why are you here? We know you betrayed the Noughts who took you in. You stole documents from your captain to sell them to the highest bidder, and we're here to pick them up. What? I never did such a thing. 
the Nords are the family I chose. I would never betray them. There's no point in denying it. We found the dead drop that you used. We confirmed that you were negotiating to sell secrets. And Captain Reuben, who already suspected you, reported the theft of his book just as you were leaving town. If you were innocent, you wouldn't have fled your crew. But all of this is false. I don't even know what a dead drop is. And if I fled, it was to escape you. Escape us? If you were not the spy, that makes no sense. You better tell us what happened. Some time ago, Captain Reuben told me that he had been informed that my father had gone to Tierfredi. It worried me. I knew my father would do anything to bring me back. Then, in New Serene, my colleagues told me that the Legate was looking for me. I was scared. I told the captain, who told me that I would find a ship in San Mateus to leave the island. But there were none. I saw my father at the tavern with one of his inquisitors, and I realized that my only chance was to flee deeper inland. A native helped me find this cave, and there you have it. I can't believe it. And yet, the captain used us and this young woman with manipulative skills worthy of a cardinal. Probably to hide the fact that he himself is the spy. <sighs> We've been duped. We must return to New Serene as soon as possible and warn the Admiral before it's too late. And what will become of me? You will come with us. We will protect you. We'll need your testimony.
Mr. Sarde, what can I do for you? Our investigation is well underway, but the culprit is not who we thought. What do you mean? We found Alba, but she was innocent. In fact, her captain used us and her father to scare her. It's because of us that she fled. She never stole documents or tried to sell your secrets. So, are you saying that the culprit is Reuben? If this were not the case, why make up this story against Alba and use us like that? I can't believe it. And to think that I believed his lies. However, he is a captain. I cannot condemn him without solid proof. And we have to find out who he was selling his journal to. Ask his crew, but stay discreet. It should not arouse suspicions. Anything else? I need to be going. Until we meet again, Admiral. Your Excellency, I am so pleased to see you again. The pleasure is shared. Captain. Good day, Jonas. What can I do for you? What do you think of your new captain? He knows how to make people obey him and runs a tight ship. What else is there to say? He's a captain. I'm only a cabin boy. Does he get on well with Alba? He was suspicious of her at first, but when he saw that she was trustworthy, he treated her like one of our own. But when she disappeared, he told us that she didn't have what it takes to be a nod. He spoke of treason, that sort of thing. I imagine he regretted having trusted her at all. Anything else, Your Excellency? I'm afraid I need to be going. Watch out for yourself. Good day. What can I do for you? We have a few questions to ask you, Flavio. I'm all yours, Captain. What do you think about your new captain? He is fair. Decisive, and he certainly knows the sea. But he keeps his distance. As if he wasn't a member of our species. And since we got here, it's been worse. He seems... <sighs> troubled. The slightest disagreement puts him over the edge. But... <laughs> never mind me. It's not my place to judge my captain. He's got responsibilities I can't fathom. Anything else? I need to be off. Perhaps we'll meet later. Farewell, then. Hello. You need something? What do you think about Captain Reuben? I know what it's gonna sound like, but I liked it better when you were captain. Thank you. Heartfelt. But tell me why. He's a good captain, but he lacks team spirit, if you know what I mean. He's aloof. Doesn't get along with his crew. You're still far from the mark. To him, we're nothing more than lackeys. The only one who gets a smile from time to time is the pretty Gretchen, one of the girls from the tavern. She scratches his itch. As soon as he can, he's off to the brothel. Must cost him a right fortune. <laughs> he should be careful. A debt with a coin guard is like sailing near a storm. When pride and debt are your masters, it can push you to desperate measures. You afraid he might do something stupid? Perhaps, but keep that to yourself, if you would. Anything else? I need to go. Farewell. Smooth sailing.
The best forge in tier for a day. Blades, armor, locks. Hello, my darlings. What would you like, then? I was told that Captain Reuben liked you a lot, and that you spent a lot of time with him. He's one of my regulars, it's true. He always asks for me. But it's because I'm the sweetest. Does he confide in you? Sorry, my dear. But what's between my clients and me is nobody's business. How about a change of scenery and a chance to work in a more luxurious environment? Become a courtesan. But don't you need connections to get there? I'm the legate of the congregation and the governor's cousin. So? Oh, I'm not stupid enough to miss such a chance. What do you want to know? Did Reuben tell you about his relationship with his men and his superiors? Oh, yes. He's always complaining about it. He was hoping for a promotion. He wanted to be appointed fleet commander. But they only changed his ship. And the crew is nowhere near his level, and his admiral despises him. He says everyone is unfair towards him and doesn't recognize his talents. And it has turned him bitter. Have you noticed him change lately? Yes. He's become impatient and anxious. He has become suspicious, too. Did he tell you about his plans? Like everyone else, he likes building castles in the air. He told me that he would soon be someone very important and very rich. And that he would marry me. <laughs> but they all say that. Thank you, Gretchen. I'm done. All that this young woman told us only confirms our suspicions. This man is a complete traitor. We should follow him after dark. We may be able to catch him in the act. Oh, it's you on Ulmenawi! Come and see! All received beautiful things! Sir, good people, the cure and wine. You'll find all you need in our We can see everything from here.
Here he is, red-handed. The sellout. Shall we arrest him? We should first find out what he puts in the box. Let him finish. The way is clear. Now, let's take a look at this box. The captain and his buyer should meet here at nightfall. This must be where the exchange will take place. We should put this message back in its place. Nobody should know that we've read it. And we should warn the Admiral immediately. She'd want to know. Let's go. Sarde, what can I do for you? We know a little more. Reuben continues to use the dead drop and has made an appointment with his buyer. He has quite the nerve to continue using that box even though he knows you know about it. He must have thought that we would not come back. The meeting is tonight. This could be a good time to get the proof we need. What do you think? That's an excellent idea. I will come with you. I want to see this traitor fall with my own eyes. From this position, we'll be able to see the meeting discreetly. Perfect. I can't wait to witness it. This traitor is going to find out exactly what it costs to make fun of us. Men of the coin. Our greedy captain has gotten together with them. The wretched traitor. How dare he sell us to lawless mercenaries. May the enlightened protect the yeah. end this traitor got what he deserved. Is everything all right, Admiral? It's nothing. Sorry to have charged like that. I got carried away. I couldn't bear to see this traitor sell his whole family for a few coins. Do you want us to tend to your wound? No, I'll go back to port and get back on my feet. Find the documents. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, the three of you. In addition to a substantial sum, Reuben is also going to obtain a major post on the continent. He was ready to sell more than just his own knowledge. There are plans for machines and ships that he must have stolen from elsewhere. Everything is here. We'll give it to the Admiral tomorrow.
Mr. Sarde, what can I do for you? How are your wounds? I recovered fast. It was nothing. Did you find the documents he intended to sell? Yes, here they are. But there was more than just his journal. So, he lusted after a prestigious position. And what a salary! I see that our secrets are still worth a fortune. Thank you for bringing me all this. As for you, Alba, I owe you an apology. I should have trusted you. You have nothing to do with it. The Captain did everything to make me appear guilty. No. If we put the same trust in the Volunteers as in the Seaborns, this would never have happened. We owe you a lot, Desarde. I will not forget it. Nor will I forget the lesson. Be sure of it. You have my full gratitude. Anything else? I have come to talk to you about a personal matter. After what I revealed to you, I was sure you would come back to find me. What would you like to know? You told me that I was born on one of your ships, of an islander captured on the island. We'd like to know about this woman's origins. I'm afraid I can't help you. I did not take part in those expeditions, and our old archives are far from here. Is there no one on Tierfredi who can help us? Please. Very well. I do know an old captain who could perhaps help you out. Where can he be found? His ship is moored in the port of Hikmet, if I'm not mistaken. His name is Captain Lissandro. Thank you for your help, Admiral. De Sarde? Yes, Admiral? Don't get too caught up in the past. That one in particular. Nothing good will come of it. Whether or not we choose to get caught up in it, Admiral, the past always catches up with us. Sadly, I'm paying the price of this. Thank the Enlightened that a captain who took part in these expeditions is right here on the island. It is indeed a stroke of luck. I hope he remembers my mother. Do not worry. If his memory fails him, he may have kept his diary from that time. Hello there. My name is De Sarde. I'm the legate of the Merchant Congregation. I am Captain Lissandro. Pleased to meet you. I don't believe I've had the pleasure before. Yet your face seems familiar. How odd. Well, what can I do for you? Admiral Cabral advised me to speak to you about a matter of some concern to me. The Admiral? Coming from a legate, I should have expected that. So? You are the only one on this island that can help me. Really? Oh, I think I understand. That's why your face looked familiar. The congregation is good at keeping its secrets, isn't it? This story is not a new one. Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years since the Noughts brought a woman who was captured on this island to Serene. I remember. And yet it wasn't the first time. But on that occasion, a child was born. So you can understand why we'd like to learn where this captive came from. Yes, yes. 
I have seen more than a few noughts looking for their parents. But what have you got to do with all this? I met that woman in Serene. I got to know her... well. Listen, it's not that I don't want to help you, but my memory is no longer what it was. I wasn't the captain at the time. I wasn't the one who decided where we moored the ship. So I don't see how I can help you find out where this woman came from. From one captain to another, if you would allow me. Captain Vasco? I'm listening. You said it yourself. A child was born at that particular time. A seaborn. And we always help one of our own. Very well. I need to look in my old logbooks. I'm sure I'll find something. Wait for me here. I'll be an hour at the most. Here it is. I found my old logbook. There's a passage in it that would probably interest you. Your mother came from a village on the plains in the southeast of the island. I'm talking about a place where the bones of the whale are visible from the coast. I believe the natives call it Vignamri. Thank you for this information, Captain. It's nothing. I'm getting sentimental in my old age. Good luck to you. So here you are on the verge of discovering your mother's village, of finding your own people. How do you feel? I don't really know. I'm a little lost, I suppose. All of this is so new to me. I understand. Mrs. Desade was loving. She raised you with tenderness. And today you learn she is not your real mother. I'm sorry. What do I owe the pleasure of your visit? I recently found out that my mother came from your village. Your mother was from Vignamri? Now I understand why your face seems so familiar to me. Indeed. She was captured before my birth and sent to the continent. She was called Arelwyn. Did you know her? Of course. Everyone here remembers her kidnapping. Could you tell me more about that? I was not the head of the clan back then. It was a very long time ago, but I remember the village the Nagad. Kidnapped by the people of the sea, all our warriors set off to her rescue. But it was all in vain. Most of them died, including the one she loved. It was a dark day, in which our village lost its knowledge and strength in one blow. So my father died too. Do you know if any members of my family are still alive? Yes. Slan. Your mother's sister. She then became our Donegad. She was never able to match her sister's talent. Too much knowledge had been lost. Relwyn was a renowned healer across all of Tiafradi, taking her place was not an easy task. It's not surprising that she was of interest to the congregation. They probably hoped she could help them find a cure for the Malachor. But all alone, far from the island, she was just a young, frightened woman who had lost all her powers. Do you know where I can find my aunt? You could try her house, but she's rarely there. She is an elderly woman now and very much enjoys her own company. She doesn't speak much to me, but others here can probably tell you where to find her. Thank you, Ulan. Anything else? Nothing. I must go. What do you think of the chief of your village? He seems quite friendly compared to the others we've run into. A bit too friendly, if you ask me. A little too concerned with pleasing the settlers. 
And you think that's a bad thing? He reminds me of myself when I was younger. And that's not a compliment. My fear is that he serves his own ambition. And this is often done at the expense of others. There's no one here. Let's go and ask the inhabitants of the village if they know where to find her. The islanders protect their Donegada. I don't know if they'll speak to some Renaixe. Don't forget, you are one of them after all. Hello. Renaixe. Do you need help, Renaixe? Actually, yes. I'm looking for the village Donegad. Oh. And what do you want from her? Ulan told me that she... could help me to find someone. <laughs> Ulan must have wanted to play a dirty trick on you. There's no love loss between Ulan and the Denegad. She says that he loves the people from your island too much. But Ulan saved our village. Anyway, if you want to find her, try heading towards the western plains. I am not sure if she is there right now, but she likes going for walks there. I'm extremely grateful. There's a woman over there, surrounded by animals. It looks like she may be in... May the enlightened protect me in this battle! <laughs> may the shadow engulf our enemies! <laughs> How do you feel, man? Well, thank you for stepping in. I don't understand what has happened. Usually these... Animals accept me. Something must have frightened them. We are glad we arrived at the right time. We would have been very upset if something had happened to you. Excuse me, but are you Slan, the Denegad of Vignamri? Yes, that's me. Were you looking for me? Yes, we were. If you would allow us, we'd like to accompany you and tell our story along the way. Very well. I will walk by your side. This is the story we have pieced together. I... I just can't believe it. Yet, if I think about it, your face reminds me of hers. My mother, or rather, the woman who raised me, gave me this necklace. A Relwyn gave it to me to give to her child, and I passed it on to Mrs. de Sade. It looks familiar. Your father had given it to your mother when they bound. It's good that you are wearing it today. My poor beloved Arelwyn, who died far away from us all, and divorced Tierse. I still miss her so much. I... She wanted me to help her die. 
But I was unable to do such a thing. Someone would have figured it out. I would have been sent back to Tuleme, and I would have lost everything. So I watched her suffer. And one day she died. Petrus, I cannot hold it against you for letting her live. No, you don't understand. I loved her. I loved her, and I didn't even have the strength to end her suffering. She's the only woman I've ever loved. I... I never would have guessed. Everyone loved Arelwyn. She was marvelous. You cannot blame yourself, man of the light. What's more, you brought me her child. For that alone. She would forgive you if she were among us. All is well now. The child of Tia Fradi has returned home. And with him, the spirit of his mother. You are home, my magum. Welcome. Petrus, I wanted to thank you. Thank me? Despite everything you know about me? You may have been a bit cowardly in the past, to the point of letting the woman you loved suffer. You were manipulative, and you lied to everyone, including yourself. But thanks to what you've told me, I've been able to find my family and my origins. And for that, I thank you. My child, what you're saying touches me more than you can imagine. At least I've done something good for once in my deceitful life. For you, and for her. I hope the Enlightened will remember this when I stand before him. Karantz, could you help me once more? What is it? I must prepare the ritual for our mother's funeral, and I think that I will need your help. But your sister will be there. Surely you'd rather be together. For the ritual, yes, it will only be the two of us. But before that, your support would be a great help. Will you come with me? Of course. I'd be happy to be by your side. Let's go. Siora, Asir, always with your new friends. Bertir to Madiseld, I'm happy to see you. What do you want? I'm only here to accompany Siora. I came to give our mother back to the earth, Iseld. It is high time we did, I know. Performing the ritual might help me feel less empty. Iseld, I miss her too. Did you go to Vasrigan? No. Preparing the place is the role of the Donegada. I was afraid I would not do things properly.
We are approaching Vathrigan. This is where I will perform the ritual. This burial mound has been the final resting place of our queens for generations. It must be prepared for the Something's wrong. Normally, you would hear the birds singing in this place. What do you mean? She's right. Something isn't quite normal. There. Penlands. This is not their natural habitat at all. We cannot leave them here. So close to the barrier. Found their dam! You never see any of them. They must have nested in the shadow of the burial mound. In that case, we have no choice but to destroy their nests. Otherwise, they'll just keep coming back. You are right. We cannot let these carnivores roam so close to my mother's remains. No longer trouble the peace of our queen. All we have to do now is to take care of the ceremony. Is there anything else to prepare? Of course. We will need some sensors crafted especially for the ritual. Where can we find them? It would be ideal if we could craft them ourselves, but otherwise the village artisan probably sells them. And I will also need some mortuary lotion. I will have to coat my mother's body with it before giving her back to the earth. I will give you a list of all the ingredients because we will have to prepare it ourselves. The merchants won't sell it. Once we have gathered these last items, 
then Iseld and I will be able to perform the ritual. I thank you for being by my side and helping me the way you are. It... it means a lot to me. Don't mention it, Siora. Do you see anything you would like to... If you want to trade again, you know where to find me. Ato Ono Monaki. Do you want to trade? We have all that we need. Let's go back to the burial mound to put everything in place. Here we are. It is on this stone altar that we will place the body of my mother. We must place a sensor where her head will be, and another near her feet. And then you will have done everything you could to help me. And I am infinitely grateful for it. Your presence by my side means a lot to me. But only my sister and I can participate in the ceremony. This is how our ritual of the dead is performed. Do you understand? There. Everything is in place. Thanks again, Onol Manawi. My sister should be joining me soon. You should wait outside. Oh, these rituals are demanding. But they help us to say goodbye to those we love. You have been a true friend. A Karantz, accepting to help me the way you did. Thank you. I will never forget the kindness you displayed. Conforming to our customs and staying by my side. It's only natural, Siora. I know what it feels like to lose someone who is dear to you. We should go now. 
It is time to return to the living. Lieutenant, I demand an explanation. Tell us what is going on. We haven't heard anything about Lord Dorsey's condition in spite of our inquiries. We are extremely worried. And then, all of a sudden, one of his guards appears, shaken and on his own, though he is part of his retinue. Please, allow me the chance to shed some light, my lady. Your soldier is nothing more than a coward for abandoning his highness. Tell me. What is going on? This soldier has just reported in. He is asking for reinforcements. He believes that Lord Dorsey has been attacked. He believes? He ran here without full knowledge of what happened firsthand. I... I was sent on patrol far from the camp. But I heard screams from men and from beasts. I wanted to return to camp, but then I heard a deafening sound. Grinding like a landslide. I thought then it would be best just to go and get help. Thank you, Lieutenant. You are dismissed. I would like to have a discussion with this man alone. Yes, sir. My lady, could you lead these fine people into the hallway, if you would be so kind? Certainly. I deplore this embarrassing turn of events. But know that you have my full support in all circumstances. In the interest of avoiding a general panic, tell me precisely what happened back there. Your cousin ordered us to escort him beyond the town limits. The Islander convinced him to go on some journey. By Islander, do you mean the Denegad that came to treat his affliction? Yes. A, a strange bird. Missing more than one feather, you ask me, sir. I, I was ordered to set up patrol along a small path, rather far from the rest of the company. I was told to protect our perimeter from anyone wandering along. According to the Islander, it was the only access to their planned destination. I did my rounds for quite some time. Not a soul came along. But then I heard cries a ways off. And I went running to help. I heard an enormous crashing sound li like an avalanche of rocks. So then I turned right back around. And you ran all the way here? Do you know precisely where the company was when you heard these sounds? No, not precisely. I hadn't gone there. But I could show you where I was posted. The Islanders said they were following the path. 
But he was quite a ways ahead when I lost sight of them. Why didn't you go and look for yourself? To see if they had been buried by a rock slide? What? Alone? What could I have done? It seemed of greater urgency to go and get help. I'm still having trouble deciding if cowardice or intelligence got the best of you. But that's a question for your superiors. My cousin was quite weak. Do you know why he decided to follow the Dene Garden? His Highness was feeling much better. The potions that he was drinking must have been potent. I mean to show no disrespect to His Highness, but that Islander had the high ground in the War of Wits. I wasn't privy to their counsel. I haven't the beginning of an explanation for the expedition, but your cousin was all full of enthusiasm and ordered that we set out as quick as we could make ready. That sounds like him. What sort of mess has he gotten himself into? Again. I am sorry, sir. But I don't know anything else I could tell you. Dismissed, soldier. Looks like I'm going on an expedition. Thank you, sir. This is the camp that Constantine's escort must have established. It looks more like a battlefield. I hope the Domegad and your cousin survived the fight. Search the zone. Let's see if we can find any clues as to what's happened here. The tents were lacerated by what looks like claws. And there are traces of blood everywhere. Some of these men must have been attacked in their sleep. By beasts? Most of the weapons are missing. Our soldiers wouldn't have taken a rest without defenses. Our soldiers were attacked by surprise, and there were animals among the assailants. However, our men reacted properly. They were armed, and they fled as best they could. There are no bodies, and no sign of Constantine or Katasak's presence here. Perhaps they were in another place, and the soldiers wanted to join them. We need to follow the tracks. This area has been trampled. An entire stampede passed by here. Our soldiers must have fled the zone and taken this path followed by their assailants. This is a sacred place of a native cult. No doubt this is where Katasak and Constantine were going. It isn't really a place of a cult, uh, but rather a place of... Anchoring, a place where Donegada perform a ritual to become Sinol Menawi. These places are charged with great energy. Perhaps 
Katasach wanted to use it to bring relief to your cousin. Perhaps. There are bodies, and without a doubt there was fighting here. Search the place. Let's see what we are able to find. This blade is a native ritual knife, and this bowl contained a potion. Someone wanted to perform a ritual here. Could Katasak have found a better means to alleviate Constantine's symptoms? The corpses of both men and beasts. These soldiers fought dearly until the end. Neither Constantine nor Katasak are among them. Crater. Without a doubt caused by an explosive potion. The soldiers might have been carrying them. They must have been desperate to have taken such drastic measures. Constantine and Katasach must have been visiting this place. Perhaps performing some sort of healing ritual. When the attack took place, the soldiers intervened. And many fell during the fight. But a group was able to escape down this path. We need to continue following their tracks. They must have fled this way. Strange. These trees look half calcinated, as if they were exposed to immense heat. These weapons are in terrible condition. Whatever did these men come up against? Another burnt tree. This path seems to have been scorched in flames. <laughs> I can't believe that our soldiers could be carrying so many explosive potions. New footprints. It looks as if a group met up with them and took this path. There was more fighting over here. There are not only the corpses of our own men, but where could these other soldiers have come from? More signs of explosions. But what were they doing with all these explosives on them? There are footprints. Only a handful made it up to here. stops on this overhang, and despite signs of a skirmish, I can't see any sign of Constantine or Katasach. broken, as if they had taken cannon fire. What could have happened here? I don't recognize these men. Still more unknown soldiers. Could they have been responsible for the attack? This one is carrying a letter. Let's see. According to this note, this troop came from an outpost at the bridge alliance close by. A patrol, no doubt. Could the bridge in some way be linked to this attack? That makes no sense. These vials look familiar. Katasach used the very same to stock his potions. He must have come here. I'm going to pick them up. I recognize this sack. It's my cousin's. 
Oh, Constantine, what have you gotten yourself into again? Very well, let's sum things up. Constantine and Katasach definitely came through here to perform some sort of ritual, but they were attacked. An attack obviously involving wild animals. And then there are these traces of inexplicable flames. Could it be magic? You cannot suspect my people are behind this attack. You have strayed far from the path. No one would have attacked Katasach. Unless he himself was behind it. He is a powerful Donegad. The beasts obey him. How could you even think something like that? He is a healer. He brought comfort to your cousin. Perhaps he only did it to gain our trust. With Constantine captive, he now has leverage to apply to the colonists and force them to accept his conditions. But in all truth, I have no idea what to think. But regardless of who is guilty, I must find my cousin. We could return to Wen Xavier to learn more. Perhaps Katasak returned there. Or maybe his Voglundai could tell us where to find him. We are also going to have to visit the outpost. Their soldiers were involved in the combat, or at least the end of it. They must have some stories for us. And you think that they would have taken Constantine? Is that possible? Maybe he was in need of treatment. But if you suspect them to have participated in the combat to capture him, I think you're wasting your time. I know the captain of that outpost. A pessimistic man who would never order an attack without being absolutely certain of total victory without losses. Perhaps. Unless he was simply obeying orders. It does belong to the coin guard, after all. However, one way or another, Constantine is in danger. Let us be on our way without further delay. Colonials? You must have gotten lost to have come this far from nowhere. To whom do I owe the honor? Disarde. I am legate of the Congregation of Merchants on this island. A legate? Here? Pardon my dismay, but we don't get many uh, official sorts around here. Captain Idris, I am the ranking officer in charge of this Bridge Alliance outpost. What can I do for you, sir? I'm looking for Constantine Dorsey, the island governor of the Congregation of Merchants. A governor? Here? 
Whatever would he be doing in this rat hole? My cousin was part of an expedition in this region. His men and his camp were attacked. They nearly all died. But we found no trace of his body, which has us hoping that he may still be alive. Wounded and holding up somewhere, or even captured. Have you cast your suspicions in our direction? I hope this is a joke. We've had neither reinforcements nor supplies for weeks. In my book, we've been totally forgotten. I wouldn't risk the few lives remaining to attack a governor's camp. I'm not crazy. I'm truly sorry for your cousin, Excellency, but we haven't seen him. And we definitely haven't kidnapped him. The region is dangerous. The natives are heartless. You should be looking in their direction. You do know that we found the bodies of several men from the garrison up there, don't you? How could you be sure? One of them was carrying a note, signed by your hand. And they are dead. I had hoped they'd have survived and would eventually return. Explain yourself, Captain. What were your men doing on the clifftop? They were monitoring the zone. They were to warn us of any troop movements. We have lost too many men to surprise attacks. We decided to take initiative and be ready. Yesterday, we heard screams and saw some strange lights up there. But I was hoping... And you didn't go and see for yourself? You hear screams, certainly those of your own men, and you don't do anything. So the last of my men give up their lives for nothing as well. You can think of me as a coward if you like. But me? I'm taking no more unnecessary risks. Why do I have the feeling that you're holding something back from me? Captain, my name is Afra. you might remember me. I passed by this outpost with my fellow scholars. The Lost Expedition? Yes, I remember. His Excellency was able to extract us from the situation we found ourselves in. His Excellency has powers that I do not possess. I'm casting no stones at you. You are isolated and without resources, and understandably a bit angry. You have the feeling that the powerful of this world have abandoned you, and you want to make them pay. But a life hangs in the balance. We must save him. <sighs> You were right. I will tell you everything I know. <sighs> One of the men I posted there returned during the night. A survivor? Excellent. Did he tell you what happened? He wasn't able to say a word. He collapsed unconscious two steps past the doorway. Our nurse sits with him, but... There is little hope that he will come back to himself. His wounds are extremely serious. He's just... Refusing to die. I'm sorry to hear that, Captain. Perhaps we could do something for him. Go and see the nurse. Perhaps you can do something to help the poor boy. I can't take it anymore. To lose another man. Anything else? Concerning the young man that survived. Did you see the nurse? Not yet. Really? This boy will not sur- Anything else? I need to be going. I would very much like to do the same. Safe journey, Your Excellency. an infirmary I know I've come to see the wounded soldier the captain told me you might need my help that is very kind of him but alas it's a little late what are you saying is the soldier no he still lives but I've been asking the captain for weeks to escort me on a mission to replenish my stocks I no longer have a single remedy and now that we have a wounded patient I can only wipe water on his brow and hope do you know what type of remedy would allow him to survive? Yes, at least I think so. It's a known potion that heals burns. I see. Give me the recipe. We'll go and see that it's prepared for you. <sighs> Thank you. Because of you, this poor boy might be able to survive his wounds.
Were you able to concoct the potion against Burns? Yes, I was. Might we administer it? Give it to me. I'll take care of this. Uh, we must wait and be patient now. Will he make it? I hope so. We'll know soon enough. This potion is extremely potent. And if he survives, when could we speak to him? Come back tomorrow at the same time. We'll know more then. Very well. I'll come back tomorrow. See you soon. And thank you again for your help. Hello, soldier. How are you doing? Better. A lot better. Are you the one who saved me? The nurse told me. I simply prepared the potion that she told me how to make. Nothing more. Could you tell me what happened during the attack? I will try. They're not really memories I'm fond to bring back. A lot of my friends died up there. We were posted up on the peak to follow rebel movement. It had been a couple of days when we heard sounds of fighting not far from our position. Men were screaming in our own language. So we went to see what was happening. Soldiers of the coin guard and an islander were trying to protect a young man. He, he seemed dire ill. Constantine Katasak and his escort. Who were they fighting against? Dozens of wild animals. They seemed completely enraged and intent on devouring them. And there were flames. Flames? Where were they coming from? I don't know. My friends and all the soldiers fell one after the other. I didn't see everything. All was blood and confusion with beasts and fire. But I thought I saw another islander. Big. He's the one who took the sickened man. There was practically no one left on the battlefield. I was wounded and I passed out. I came to when I heard voices of islanders approaching. Rebels, I thought to myself, they're coming to finish off the wounded. I, I got up with difficulty and fled. I dragged myself here. <laughs> and you know the rest. I'm going to have to go and find these rebels. You shouldn't do that. They killed all of my friends. You take a great risk. That's enough. Rest now. You're still far from having recovered. Yes, it's best I leave now. I've learned enough. I'll have a word with your captain. Goodbye. I was told that you saved my soldier. Thank you. 
You can't imagine what this means to us. Please. I did nothing more than follow the instructions your nurse gave me. Did you learn what you needed to learn? Yes. I was able to question your man and he told me what he saw. He and his company heard sounds of the attack and they went to investigate. My cousin's escort were already nearly annihilated by animals that jumped out from all sides. A strange sorcerer controlled them. It was he that took my cousin. One of those rebel savages, no doubt. I knew that they'd be behind all of this. They must have learned that an important man was in the region and thought he would make the perfect hostage. <sighs> I'm sorry. I would give you some men, but... Don't apologize. I know where the camp can be found, and if my cousin is there, I will free him. Like you freed the scholars. You're a good man, Excellency. Thank you again for saving my soldier. I need to be going. I would very much like to do the same. Safe journey, Your Excellency. Hello. Renaigse, there you are again. What do you want? To speak to you about my cousin's capture and the massacre of his escort. A soldier from the nearby outpost survived and told us that you were present on the battlefield. I know that you see us as your enemies, but we are not here to harm you. I only seek to find the man I consider to be my brother, as well as the man who is protecting him, Katisach. One of your greatest Donegada. No Donea Exregal would attack Katasach. If you didn't attack him, you must know what happened to them. I was told that an islander took my cousin away. Perhaps your men were there to aid them. We do not have your cousin, and we do not know what happened to him. As for Katasach, and Avorst, Tire, he died from his wounds. That night, we heard the sounds of a terrible combat. The ground shook all the way to our homes. We went to sea, but we arrived too late. The last breath of Katasach had returned to the wind when we arrived there, and many of the Renaigse were dead. We could do no more. We carried the body of the Donegad and brought it here. He gave his life to protect Constantine. 
May he rest in peace. This request might surprise you, but we would like to see him. Why? What do you want to do with him, Renaixe? Examine him to understand what killed him. We were told that an island native was there and that he likely led the attack. No Donea Exregal would attack Katasach. You have been lied to, or they were mistaken. That is the very reason I need to see his body. To understand. You may see him. But if you desecrate his body, you will pay for this offense with your life. Seeing the state of his body, I hate myself for having suspected him. Forgive me, Denegad, to have doubted your loyalty and even more for what we are about to do. Now then, let's see what story this corpse has to tell. The corpse retains the marks of a bludgeoning. There are large bruises all over it. I can see no wounds that could be attributed to a blade or a musket shot. The major wound is found on the chest, which was crushed by something tremendous, to the degree that the skin was torn. The ribs are in pieces and the organs punctured. The edges of the wound are singed and smell of burnt flesh. There is a powdery spot on this wound, as if from ash or dusty gravel. Katasach bore the brunt of this attack or incredible force. I would venture to say it was inhuman. I can only imagine one thing that could have inflicted such a wound. It's as if an enormous burning stone hit him right in the center of the chest. And seeing as how the bodies of the soldiers we found were sporting wounds of a similar nature, we can deduce that we're on the tracks of a man or a creature capable of using molten rock as a weapon. I can't imagine an Adaig behaving like this. It is not their way. That they might attack careless hunters or warriors, true, but to attack Katasach. The power to call volcano fires could only be that of a guardian. No simple man wields mountain fire. We still don't really know who is actually behind this attack, nor what they want. Judging by the severity of these wounds, I fear the worst for Constantine. All your experiments. You've learned so little. You've learned to fear. Your instincts should have been enough. We had to at least try. Are you not even concerned or angered by what happened to Katasach? We've grown accustomed to the loss of lives, your relentless attacks and incessant treacheries. All the same, there is truth in your words. This attack is out of place. Guardian and Donegat would never attack one another. There is a ritual that might help us. Anatalas Fair. The Anatalas Fair? What is it? Tell me more. It is a magical rite that only a person with a powerful bond to both spirits and nature can perform. It allows the Donegad who chants it to relive the last moments of an Onol Manawi. That would allow us to at least see the face of his assassin. If what I have heard is true, yes. To my knowledge, only one Donegad still living knows the ritual. Let's ask her for her help then. She might be able to tell us what has become of Constantine. You are quick to ask another to put her mind in danger for your own concerns. Imagine the pain of the wounds of another, shaking your body as the cold of death crushes your beating heart. This is what you must ask of the Tiernahach. It is the price she must pay for performing the ritual. When her companion was lost in battle, fighting against your own, she wanted to live that death beside her. Since that day, 
Our Tierna Hachdachtas has never breathed air with the same breath. That would explain her distrust of the Colonials. You must make her see your purpose. It may be the only way you are going to learn the fate of your cousin. Hello, Mev. Renoixi, why have you come here again? I've come to ask you for help. My help? You still seek the remedy for the sickness on your island? Or are you looking for something else? My cousin has been taken, and I've been told that you could help me. Truly? And in what way? By performing the Anatalis Fair on the body of Katasach, the Donegat. Katasach is dead. Under Vosh Dere. This is a great tragedy. He was a good man. Perhaps the best of us all. How did this happen? He went with my cousin to a sacred site when they were attacked. My cousin has disappeared, taken according to a witness. And Katasak suffered terrible wounds. We examined him and it seemed as if he had been struck by molten rock. Fire of the earth? Only the Nadaig Manemen have the power to wield it. But none of our own would have attacked Katasach. This is why we need your help. We want to understand and to find who's responsible. Will you leave him alive as well? What do you mean? You let the one who tried to kill me go. That is true. But I can't yet tell you what I will do to the one responsible for this. At least we'll have a chance to find Constantine. Because it is your true reason to act upon this, no? Whatever your reasons deep down, I too would like to understand. Our island wails in suffering. Many Sinol Minawi have died. The Anatalas Fair may kill me, but at least I will know. You will need to act as my Voglendaig, and bring to me the necessary ingredients while I prepare. What do you require? A potion. And listen and remember. Or write in your language what I shall tell you. Do not forget, the viscera of the scavengers must be taken from a place near the battlefield, because they contain the flesh of those who fell. As for the personal object of Katasach, find his weapon, because it knew his fury and his despair. He didn't have a weapon when I found his body. I'll search the battlefield. Where can I find him? In Duren's camp. She recovered him after the battle. Very well. Not far from there is a sacred circle. You'll find me there when you have united all that I need. Then we can perform the ritual when the moon is high. I'll go and get the ingredients you require and I'll find you there when the moment has come. Safe travels.
I recognize this weapon. It's Catasax, I'm certain. It must have been broken during the battle. Let's take it back to Mev. Were you able to find the elements I need for the ritual? Yes. Here is what you asked me to bring. This is good. The moon is high. We may start. Take your place.
Katasar. We have come to learn the truth of your death. Ato al frangawi brandi. Olehana memen adestame haman. Baravridenan tahanemo kwate grenpem. Linkwi damda renao teda hodogs. Lemat. The Tahawan Kloisam. The Talugedon Velam. The Taragam Buledam. The Tataminam Reloidan. Adot Alamun Kantebedam. And Antelam for Frank Tangom. Katasak! Help me! Please! Show no fear. I do not think he means you any harm. <gasps> what is this? This monster? Why is it attacking us? I don't know. I don't understand. It is as if it seeks you out. It wants you. You never should have done that, Katasar. To save one, Renaikse, you put us all in great peril. His spirit is different. He receives badly. You have woven the bond of the Deathbringer. What is happening to you? Get a hold of yourself. Come on. I cannot believe it. He has returned. Who has? Finbar. The High King. We thought he was dead. He disappeared months ago. Is he the attacker? And what of Constantine? Have you seen a young, blonde-haired man? He was sickly. Yes. The golden haired was there. And he was afraid. Katasak protected him before he was killed by Finbar. Leave me now. I am very tired. How are you feeling? Better. What are you going to do now? If I want to have any hope of finding Constantine, I must follow Vinbar. I have no choice. Do you know where to look for him? Vinbar has been missing for moons. The kings and queens could tell me when they saw him for the last time. Then you must earn their trust. Arm yourself with patience and courage on all Manawi. Your journey is still long. Thank you, Mev. You have helped us greatly. Do not thank me. I have not done this for you, but for Katasak. In order to satisfy my curiosity, I betrayed my king. You will find him and confront him, no doubt. All that remains for me to do is to pray that I have done nothing that cannot be fixed. Farewell.
what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? I'm in need of your help, Ulan. I'm looking for your High King Vinbar. I was told that you were one of the last people to see him. <laughs> I wouldn't know where you could find him. He disappeared moons ago, but you are our ally, our friend. I will tell you about the last time I met with him. We had met in the council at Dorhad Genadu to decide what to do about the Renaigse, but we were unable to come to an understanding. Some of us are full of violence and refuse to see what we gain by befriending your kind. Deirdre and the poor Bladnid were among them, alas, and only speak about the massacres. I defended you, of course, and attempted to make them hear reason with some help from the cautious Dunkas. But our disagreement angered Vimbar. He decided to leave us and to seek counsel elsewhere. He wanted to go to the heart of the island to consult with En on Milfridiman. Do you think he might have stayed there? I doubt it. It was too long ago. You should travel to Wenshavar, his village, even if he decided to stay away from his people. He would not have abandoned his closest friends. Thank you, Ula. Anything else? Nothing. I must go. Birt Tiltomad on Almanawi. Esquetu. Hello. I'm sorry, but I do not speak your language. Really? Then you are a Renaigse. I have never met one with the bond. Might I do something for you? I am looking to find Vinbar, the High King of Tirfredi, and I was told that he was born in this village. He disappeared after visiting the heart of the island but I was hoping someone here might know where he's hiding. You should speak with Sarah. She is the companion of our king. 
Where might I find her? I do not know. She left the village, and I have not seen her in several days. Anything else? Goodbye. What hour am I It is rare to see Renaixe here. Is there something I can do for you? I'm looking for High King Vinbar. I know that he disappeared after having visited the heart of the island. But someone here, in this village, might know where he went after that. If anyone knows, it would be Sarah. But you will not find her here. Anything else? Would you know where I could find Sarah? She left to follow Vimbor. She wanted the mountains to take her as well. What do you mean? I don't know if Renaixe could understand. Our High King is on Olmenawi, and a Donegad. His bond with the mountain is very strong. Even stronger now that he speaks with the En Olmil Frichtimen. Do you mean to say that he is becoming one of those giant creatures? This phenomenon is truly incredible. I would so like to understand how it works. Seda knew that the mountain would take him back, and she wanted the mountain to take her as well. She went to attempt to bond herself to it. She sought the cavern of knowledge. We haven't seen her since. She might have succeeded. Anything else? Where is this cavern of knowledge located? We don't know. The caverns of knowledge are the concern of the Donegada. Anything else? Thank you for your help. Gwaaulamsek. Might I do something for you? I heard talk about a cavern of knowledge. It is a place where the Donegada go, within the earth. They hear the voices of those that went before them, and they learn. There are some on Tiafradi. The closest to our village is found to the northeast of here, but the entrance is sealed, hidden. It is a sacred place, a place for only the Donegada. Anything else? Goodbye. What hour am I
savage. What stops your tongue? You think someone's coming to save you? Give in. Your life is in our hands. It is time to tell us all you know. The sooner you speak, the sooner this will be over with. We should be discreet if we want to eavesdrop on these people. She's been enduring this punishment for hours, blow upon blow through gritted teeth. Truly savage beast we have here. Do we even know if it speaks our language? Leave us. You will eventually tell us how you found your way into that grotto. Your defiance is only prolonging the inevitable. You remind me of that rat my master was studying. The creature used all of its fire in an effort to escape. Scratching, twisting, refusing to understand that the cage holding it was its only remaining world. It had everything it could ever need, but it wouldn't stop looking for a way out. Even though its fate was now sealed to serve science, its animal instinct drove it to flee. It had strangled itself between the bars of its own cage in a final futile attempt to escape. It was an enormous beast, and very clever. If it had simply relented, it could have lived peacefully for many years. Instead of that... Monsters are torturing her. Come, we must set her free. We may be able to reason with them. I could try. I recognize this face. Lord Dasade. what a pleasure to see you again. What good wind brings you? These people are monsters. They just tortured a woman, and then they say hello as if it were nothing. I'm sure that they will explain what pushes them to treat her this way. Believe me, we would never have reached such extremities if she had told us what we wanted. You see, we have been studying these beings that show, like you, such strange markings on their bodies. We call them metamorphs, but the natives call them Onol Manawi. And we seek to learn through what process they metamorphosize. We heard talk of a cavern of knowledge. The savages hide all of their knowledge within them, and certainly all the secrets that interest us. We discovered one here, but are unable to enter. This woman, she knows how to enter, but as you have witnessed, she refuses to tell us how. To know we are so close to understanding such a fascinating phenomenon, and to be able to do nothing. Let's just say it has made us... aggressive. It's extremely regrettable. Free her. We would like to have a word with her. She won't tell you anything. 
Let us handle this. She will give in at some point. Lord de Sade has a soft spot for the savages, but he understands the price of knowledge. As proof, he spared my life during our last encounter. Have you already forgotten all that you owe me? Without me, you would all be locked away in Duren's jails, or likely even dead. I took you for sages and doctors, but you are nothing more than a gang of skin flayers. You have made me regret my actions. It is true that we indeed owe you our lives, but... All this knowledge... Ripe for the picking. No knowledge justifies treating anyone this way. Oh, free her now! We shall leave. Nothing more holds us here. How are you feeling? Better now. Those Renaikse are absolute monsters. But who are you? You too are a Renaikse. Why have you freed me? We were told at Wenshavar that you and you alone could tell us where to find High King Vinbar. I wish I knew where he was right now. He bid me farewell weeks ago and he has not returned. I waited a long time and then I came here. To enter into the Cavern of Knowledge. You believe this is where he's hiding? No. But he came here often before he disappeared. I'm hoping to find answers. You save me. And so I must help you as well. You may come with me. The Cave of Knowledge is a bit further north. Here is the entrance to the Cavern of Knowledge. I hope that Vinbar has left a clue to where he went. Something I could track. Is it your wish to join him? He is my Manundanem. That means the one who shares my mind in your language. We must be reunited. I understand. But why protect the entrance to the cavern at the risk of your own life? The Caverns of Knowledge are truly sacred places. Only the Donegada have the right to enter. But you're not a Donegad. Is that right? I am not. But I must enter in spite of everything. And since you have helped me, you may enter as well. Even if I am not sure I can trust you. Because you spared these people. Remind yourself that this honor is immense and show respect. I implore you. Put your fears to rest. We have not come to defile this sacred place. How do we enter? Allow me. I have seen Vinbar make these movements so many times. This fresco is still fresh. It must have been painted recently. It's of a crowned man. Vinbar, no doubt. It looks as if he's walking through the skies towards the volcano. A face has been painted on the volcano. The spirit of the mountain. 
My heart did not betray me. Vinbar has readied himself to join Enon Milfrichtemen. Was that why you came in here? To confirm that supposition? To understand, yes. As the years passed, my Minundanem grew more and more distant to me. I thought at first it was due to his status and the invasion of the Renaikse. But now I see that he was hearing the call of Enon Milfrichtemen. He had no choice but to answer it. Oh, Vinbar, why did you not share this with me? These paintings are older. This looks like it represents a man who transforms himself into some kind of enormous bird. He is a Danegad, becoming a Nadaig Manaman. Vinba was also bound to the mountain. It is no doubt the path he has chosen to follow. If I understand correctly, the Danegad are metamorphed differently according to the place they are bound. Yes. The Sinolmenawi bind them to a specific place, and in return they become the Guardians. But how could a Guardian of the Plains resemble a Guardian of the Mountains? Do you believe that Vinbar is readying himself to undergo this transformation? I thought it was a very slow process. For some, it takes years. At least this is what is said. For others, it might take place the very moment where the Donegad surrenders to Enon Milfrichtemen. I hope only to have the time to bid him farewell. Given how well hidden this seed was, it must open an important passage. All we have to do is find out which. This mural is also ancient. It seems to show a doorway into the mountain. This door appears to be in front of a circle of stone. There are two altars and two seats. The Donegada seal certain sacred places with root doors. Yes, I've run into similar barriers. It's all a matter of finding the right seed. But here, there are two that seem to be different. For one, the flower motifs seem to indicate which plant is required. This is possible. The caverns of knowledge are used to initiate and transmit the knowledge of the Danae Gada. This painting must teach the younger how to reach the sacred place where they will bind themselves. In that case, shouldn't there be an illustration of the second plant? The initiates also learn by listening to their masters. On this one, we see a sacred site with raised stones, and behind the face of the volcano, we also see the path that leads there, like some sort of schematic. This must certainly be the path the young apprentices must walk, and the Done Gada that are prepared to surrender themselves to Enon Milfrichtemen. Do you recognize the place where the entrance can be found? I think so. It looks like the grotto that lies to the northwest of our village. With all that we've learned from studying these paintings, we should be able to find Vinbar. I just hope there's still enough of him left to answer us. And that Constantine is with him. And that he is still alive. Who is Constantine? I thought you were looking for Vinbar. I seek them both. I had hoped that Vinbar would help me enter the sanctuary of Dorhad Genadu. But I learned from the Tierna Hach Kadaktus that he took my cousin. The Tierna told you this? And so you seek to avenge him? No. Only to save my cousin and try to understand why. None of what you say makes sense. Why would Vinbar take your cousin? I... I don't understand. I... My head spins. I need to breathe fresh air. I shall await you outside. 
Please, go ahead. We will join you soon. Am I the only one to think this woman's departure is suspicious? Shara is upset, and I don't think that she trusts us. We should hurry and catch up to her. I shouldn't have told her about Constantine. She must have thought we wanted to kill her husband. This door is locked. Sarah has put us in a very tricky situation. We should have noticed that she did not trust us. Well, let's search. There must be another exit to this cave. These traps weren't here when we went through with Sarah earlier. She must have set them to make sure that we wouldn't be able to follow her. Let's hurry and find this passage to the northern mountain before she decides to come and fight us directly.
This is the place which was depicted on the mural in the Cave of Knowledge. Vimbar must have hidden the passage to the sanctuary.
Finally, we've made it to high ground. Now, let's find this trail to the sanctuary. It can't be far from here. Bloodied feathers. They are extremely long. I know of no species of bird that sports such plumage. Looks like Vinbar must have begun his transformation. He will soon become a guardian of the mountains. If we want to have any chance of saving Constantine, we must hurry. More of these giant feathers. We're on the right trail. You should not have come all this way, Renaixe. I will not let you near Vimbar. Sarah, we must see him. We don't have a choice. We saved you. Why have you locked us in the cavern? And why do you now stop us from passing? In spite of your friendship with these monsters, you helped me. I thought that I had to help you in return. But I learned looking at the paintings that this was madness. Vinbar has heard the calling and answered. Even if it breaks my heart, he has done what is right. He maintains the balance. No one must stop him. I am his Menundanem. It is now my duty to defend the path he treads. His path led him to kill Katasach, and now he holds my cousin captive. I'm sorry, Sarah, but no one will keep us from passing. Eight more! Found the Dara Trimmer Dara Dam! Watch out! Over there, more feathers. I need a bit of practice. More of these giant feathers. We're on the right trail. Found the entrance to the sanctuary. Vinbar must be here. With Constantine. If he's still alive. We need to find a way to get inside quickly. This must be the entrance to Vinbar's sanctuary. But it's obstructed. He knows how to protect his home. A stone altar. It resembles the one that protects the passage to Mev's sanctuary. This must be where I need to place the seed. And here is another altar. Are two seeds necessary to open the passage? The seed that Sarah was carrying should work. 
To think that she gave her life to protect the one she loved. Now that we have both seeds, the ritual should work. King Vinbar, why? Constantine didn't do anything. He has never sought to wrong your people in any way. Like a worm he burrows. You are so naive. You cannot see with my eyes. An old Milfrichtimin saw the wound. From atop the volcano, he warned me of the danger, fed by bitterness, driven by desire, taking without giving. He will be the end of us all. You have gone completely mad. Take it. You are too blind, too renaixe to understand. Leave him.
must have died with him. Your cousin is probably freed from his stone prison. You're right. Let's go see him quick. Constantine! Wake up, please! I beg you! Hang on. We're bringing you home to get you healed. Three days have passed since we returned. I need to go to the palace to see if Constantine has finally awoken. You should get some rest. You're not being reasonable. To hell with reason. I've rested long, and I'm well enough. You've just barely woken from a stupor that had you on death's doorstep. The affairs of state can certainly wait another day. Let me... <sighs> Thank you, my lady, but I am amazingly well. You can take leave of me with no fear, I assure you. He just escaped a deathly sleep, and here he is, ready to conquer the world. Your cousin is exasperating. <sighs> what now? Are you going to scold me as well? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just relieved to see you're still alive. <sighs> I'm quite relieved myself, actually. Thank you, cousin. Without you, I would be dead thrice, wouldn't I? Or is it the fourth time? If we start counting the time you stop me from climbing the ramparts of Serene, we'd be up to five times now. It's unbelievable. You feel no pain whatsoever. And your complexion. <sighs> I haven't even taken a look at myself. Is the improvement visible? I wouldn't go that far. How is it that... What happened? Don't make that face. It's merely a major miracle. Come on now. I'm gonna tell you everything. We have been waiting for your return. I knew you would do everything in your power. I have always trusted you, but Katasak feared that I would not hold on long enough. He spoke to me about a ritual that would help me. I was excited about it, and in spite of all that has happened, I don't regret following him. We went to the ancient site, a place full of magic. I followed his instructions, and all of a sudden, what? An incredible sensation. I felt better than I have ever felt, cousin. Alas, we had very little time to celebrate. Cries came to our ears, and beasts jumped all over us. We fled for a while, as other soldiers fought through, creating a path to join us. But I can see from your face that you know this already. Indeed. Once on the ritual site, I followed your tracks and deduced what had happened. It seems that Vinbar was targeting you specifically. Did he say anything to you? I was still very weak, and most of the time he whispered in his own language. It seemed that he was speaking to someone and following his orders. But there was no one other than us, cousin. The crazy madman must have been hearing voices. Do you have any idea why he didn't kill you like the others? No. No, not really. It seemed like he was trying to tell me something, though. He spoke about isolating me from the world, that I couldn't return to the Earth. It made absolutely no sense. But aren't you happy that he let me live? Don't speak foolishly, of course. I just want to understand. Tell me more about this ritual. What did it consist of? It is, I think, a ritual that the Done Garda practice to bind themselves to the island. Done Garda? Katasak taught you their language? Just a few words. He wanted me to learn, to understand, but we had so little time. So he visited this infamous site, where he prepared for me a sort of potion. What ceremony! I had to cut my hand in front of an enormous stone, and there, a gigantic beast came, and started circling around me. It was incredible! I truly felt a bond with that place. 
like a wave came through me, as if the power of the island was running through my veins. It was marvellous. And now I am Onol Manawi, like you. Even if the Malachor left me a few of its marks. But you had to encounter the god of the island, didn't you? How was a non meal Frictuman? Yes, I passed a trial for that. But the only one who could guide me to the sanctuary is dead. Oh no. Do not tell me. And yes, only the High King can open the sanctuary according to Glendan. I have no choice but to return to see him. I'm certain they are going to name a successor.
good day, Glendan. Beort Tirtomat, Karans of Katasach. We learned of his death. And they washed Tire. Alas, his was not the only tragic loss. Your high king, Vinbar, is also dead. He was taken by folly. He went away into his mountains after killing Katasach and capturing my cousin. Nothing I could say would allow him to see reason. Are you telling me that you were the one who killed him? Kirtan Sidak. What happened? How could a friend of Katasach do such a horrible thing? I'm sorry, but your High King did not leave me any choice. He was at the point of killing my cousin and then he attacked me. He was becoming a guardian, a Nardaik. Perhaps it was for that reason that he lost possession of his wits. I believe you. You have sufficiently proven your friendship. But something escapes me. Why? Why would Vinbar have done such a thing? His offering to Tiafradi does not justify what he did. You know that I wish to see Enonmil Frichterman, and he was the only one with the power to allow me to do so. I would not have caused his death voluntarily. Believe me, I'm just as sorry as you. Undivorced, Tire. We will celebrate his memory as well as those of all the members of our council that have fallen. Vladnit, Katasak, and now our High King. These are dark times, but in spite of our mourning, we must elect a new High King. The children of Tiafradi cannot remain without a guide. All the more so in these troubled times. I will notify the Mal of all the clans so that they may know to travel here. Who has a chance of being elected, in your opinion? Deirdre is powerful and many clans would follow her. The wisdom of Dunkas will also attract support from many. And there is also Ulan, a clever fox who is very capable of convincing the entire world with his honey-dripping words. Deirdre, Dunkas, and Ulan. I must convince them to help me if they are elected. I suppose. I must begin the preparations. You must leave now. Who will win the vote in your opinion? I don't know. Each of the three chiefs that I spoke of could win. It is possible that some amazing feat places one of the Mal above the others. If Blagnid had been victorious, she would certainly have won this time. But that was not to be. Is there anyone else among those presenting themselves? Do not take me for someone born last summer. You want to influence the vote for your own gain, but you shall fail this time. And you must go before the one we have chosen. Can I do anything else for you? I must leave. Goodbye. Kwa awelem seg. Greenblood, my friend. Glad to see you. I'd like to talk to you about something. I'm listening. Remember that note we found in Rolf's office? Of course. The one that said the recruits had been sent to different governors? Yes. It was signed with a name I'm familiar with. Herman. Somebody I'd hope never to cross paths with again. He was the one who founded the camp we closed. And believe me, he has done an incredible amount of damage to the guard. I'm gonna find him and make him pay for what he's done. I know that he's in San Mateus. This quest for revenge isn't only about what happened to Rainer and the others, is it? Very well. You can count on me. What do you plan to do? Major Herman is posted in San Mateus. He's part of the Red Sun Regiment now. He's loyal to Torsten, but kept his head down when the coup was dismantled. Isn't denouncing him enough? He'll be put to death for high treason. The Guard's reputation has suffered enough from Torsten's scheming. And he has connections in high places. I'm sure he has many supporters. 
What are you getting at? Are you going to kill him yourself? If he's well connected, the Mother Cardinal will surely hear about it, and I doubt she'd be pleased. I know. That's the whole problem. We need to get rid of him without anyone finding out. If Petrus were here, he would probably tell us to do the exact opposite. That old fox is as sly as ever. But I don't see what you're getting at. There's a group in San Mateus that could make someone disappear in broad daylight, without anyone saying anything about it. Those mad inquisitors. Exactly. It might not be easy to convince our good friend Aloysius, but it's worth a try. You're right. And if we bring Petrus, he will surely help us sway the Inquisitor. I must say, this is a horrid solution. But if anyone deserves it, it's that bastard Herman. We'll need to find him, though. And he's been keeping a low profile since the coup failed. And we've already seen to what extent the law of silence has on the guard. We need help. Our new commander might be able to tell us who to turn to. She knows everybody. All right, then. Agreed. Let's start by going to see her. Now we just have to go see the pretenders, and hope that they will accept us. We will need to provide them with our services. Even when they're natives, kings are all the same. If only there was a way to be certain of the results of this vote, we would only need to convince one. Hello, Commander. Lord Desade. And Kurt. I believe I should be thanking you for my nomination. It is your upright and honorable nature that won you this post. Not I. Perhaps sometime in the future you'll curse me for having suggested your name. I hope not. How can I be of service to you? We are here to talk to you about a document we found in the training camp. A letter. Signed by Major Herman. He's behind all of this, Sieglinder. Herman. Kurt, this is personal now. When will this story be finished? I could court marshal him, but you know how much certain people support him. I know. He'd probably get away with it. Everyone loves the heroic Major. No. We thought of another way. The Ordo Luminis. You... you want to have them burned as heretics? If he'd been caught as Torsten's accomplice, he would have been drawn and quartered. Do you think that's any less painful? I don't know if you came to look for my help or my blessing. <sighs> you have both. But promise me that you'll stop seeking vengeance after this. You have my word. We just need your help to find Herman. He's been hiding since the failed coup. And you need help in the San Mateus barracks. Talk to the corporal in charge of the prisons. I know him well. He's loyal. He's from the old school. If he can help you, he will. It seems to me that the Ordo Luminous keeps its prisoners in the prisons of the Guard. In fact, if you want to avoid drawing too much attention to yourself, you could bring Herman there directly. I'll write you a letter for the Corporal. Here you go. Thank you for doing this for me, Sieglinder. You're welcome. And don't forget your promise, Kurt.
What do you want now? We have come to discuss something that concerns you. Really? I'm listening. We would like to draw your attention to a man who has confessed to terrible crimes. Has he professed heresy? Venerated one of the demonic creatures worshipped by the savages? Not exactly. He's responsible for many deaths and was one of Torsten's supporters. Who, as you know, was planning to overthrow your governor and take her place. These truly are crimes. But they have nothing to do with the Ordo Luminous. You should denounce this man to our governor. I'm sure she'll be happy to have him drawn and quartered. Unfortunately, this man has friends in high places. I doubt that we'll be able to convince the Mother Cardinal. Politics. The curse of our society. I approve of your quest for justice, and I will help you as much as I can. I can't have your man publicly arrested without raising too many questions. But if you arrange for him to come to one of our jails discreetly, I'll make sure justice is delivered. The felon will receive the punishment he deserves on behalf of the glorious enlightened. May he always keep you in his divine blessing, Aloysius. You will soon find this man in your jail. Anything else? Nothing. It's all right. Remember that the enlightened is always watching you. For the eyes, ladies and gentlemen, and it's free. Come and see me as soon as you've made your choice. Yes? What can I do for you? Sir, Commander Zieglinder wrote this letter to you. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Even though I never really liked the Major, the Commander is asking me to do all I can to assist you in your mission. So what can I do for you? We're looking for the Major. We know that he was posted here. Yes, and officially he still is. But I haven't seen him for some time. Following the coup, he was probably expecting us to go after him. The only people he may have told about his hiding place are his lieutenants. Those two are his henchmen. I see. Well, we'll just have to go and interrogate them. If we bring him to you, can you make sure he ends up in an Ordo Luminous jail? Do you want to condemn him to the stake? That's a bit extreme. Listen, I can lock him up, but you'll have to find a way to keep my men from seeing him. Why is that? All the guards in the city know the Major. If they see him brought here, they'll want to know why. And they will surely take it out on the Inquisition, which could end badly. You're not wrong, Corporal. What do you suggest? If you bring me some sleeping potions, I could put the whole lot of them to sleep. When they wake up, they'll be ashamed of having slept through their watch. But that's better than spilling blood. Exactly. Come see me when you have enough. Anything else? So you need sleeping potions, is that right? Exactly. Come see me when you have enough. Anything else? We should go. Goodbye.
Yes. What can I do for you? So you need sleeping potions, is that right? Yes, to put my men to sleep. That would seem the best way of doing it. Perfect. And then? When you have your man, let me know and I'll do the rest. Anything else? We should go. Goodbye. Now that everything is ready, we should go find these lieutenants. Soldiers! Everyone outside, that's an order! But, uh, Captain, with all due respect, you're not in our regiment. We're supposed to stay here, Captain. We must guard the barracks. I believe that the rank of Captain of the Guard counts regardless of regiment soldiers. Especially when the said Captain reports directly to Commander Sieglinder. If it's an order from the Commander, we better obey, guys. Oh, sorry, Captain. We didn't mean to disobey you. Let's go. Let's get out of here. You're far from your regiment, Captain. What do you want? We're looking for Major Herman. I was told you'd know where to find him. The Major? He must be on a mission somewhere. Don't play dumb with me, Lieutenant. I'd be sorry to see you arrested as an accomplice. Listen, Captain. We really don't know what you're talking about. As for your threats, you're not our superior. You're not part of our regiment. Yet we're here with your new commander's blessing. The Major is accused of treason. You'd better tell us where to find him. Lies. The Major is a righteous man. We'd give our lives for him. Really? Let's see you do it. To my <laughs> So, are you finally ready to tell us where we can find Herman? We'll never tell you anything. Stop. You might be ready to die for him, but I'm not. He's in a warehouse, on the port. The traitor is probably getting ready to leave the island. What do you want to do with these two, Kurt? Lieutenants, you're under arrest for now. Go to the commander. She'll decide what to do with you. <sighs> At your orders, Captain. Let's find the Major before he escapes. What the... Kurt? It's been so long. How did you find me? Does that really matter, Major? You're finally gonna pay for all your evil, your treachery, and your schemes. Come with us, Major Herman. If you think I'm gonna give up without a fight, you're wrong. Soldiers! Seize them! Maybe in the end you protect me in the battle! Oh, come on! Yeah. No. What? You shouldn't be surprised. After all, I owe my talents to you. Let's lock him up. The Inquisitor will do the rest.
Kurt. Are you all right? Yes. Better than ever. You cannot even imagine how much I hated that piece of filth. What did he do to you? As you may have guessed, I suffered the same treatment as Rainer. The only difference is that I survived. And there's even more. Believe me, I'm glad that these memories went up in flames along with that bastard. Thank you, Green Blood. Thank you for helping me as I go through all this. I'll never forget it. What do you seek? I am the bearer of bad news. Your High King Vinbar is dead. Dead? And the first Tire. He was a good king in times of peace, but he was plunged into doubt by your arrival. He was no longer at his people's side. Glendan told me that you would be one of those keen to replace him. That's true. If Bladnid was still here, I would have given her my votes and followed her into battle. But since she's no longer with us, I must obtain the title and do what should have been done a long time ago. Drive away the Renaixi and take back our island they want to enslave. Will you drive us away too? We will drive away the Renaixi. You are on all Minawi. You will have to pick a side. I see. If you were to be elected, I would need your help to allow me to meet Enon Mir Frichtemann. Only he can help us cure the Malachor. Why should you be preoccupied with a disease striking those we want to drive away? I have my own reasons. But you should know this is the best way for the Renaigse to leave the island of their own accord. You have helped my people. You are our Carants as well. You can count on me to help you. Once I am the High Queen, I will lead you to the Sanctuary. You seem certain you will obtain the title. Those who covet victory must do everything they can to obtain it. Don't you agree? The old kings wore a legendary crown, which was lost during the war against the people of the sea. Whoever were to retrieve it would be chosen. And you know where it is? I believe it is located in the Tomb of the Kings. A holy place not far from the village of Ignamri. I do not know exactly where it is, but it is said that the path leading there is strewn with spears, and that the entrance is marked by a dead tree, and protected by a Nadaig Magaman. Do not worry. I will find this place and retrieve the crown before the election. If I want to be certain of the outcome of this vote, I'd better go and get this crown myself. Anything more? I need to be going. Now we have earned the trust of one of the pretenders. We just need to find that crown. Are you certain you are willing to influence the fate of all my people to meet an on Mirtrichtman? I understand that you might find this idea unpleasant, but the survival of the whole continent relies on this encounter, Siora. It is my feeling that you do not understand the consequences of such a decision. Everyone on the island will listen to the words of a High King. Are you certain that you've chosen the right ally? If not, we can go and find another. What's a little menial work when compared to the fate of this whole island? You're right. 
It's a decision that's more important than our quest for an antidote. I must dwell on it. What brings you here, Ono Manawi? I'm the bearer of bad news. Vinbar, your High King, is dead. Ande Vosh Tire. He was a great king, and a very wise Donegad. We haven't seen him in a long time, but his memory shall be honored. Glendan told me that you would probably be among those who would want to take his place. I am not looking for power. But Tiafradi needs peace and balance. And I fear the other kings may want war, or be motivated by ambition. The Renaise brought chaos with them, and our island has suffered. We cannot change the past. And chasing away those who came does not make sense. The wound is there. Refusing to acknowledge it is pointless. But wounds can be healed, and my clan knows how to do this. So if you're worried about my intentions, if I were to become Hoi King, I'll lay them out for you. We must find balance with those from the remote island and live together in harmony. But for this, we must teach the Renaixe humility and to respect the Earth. I would like to meet Enon Miel Frichtemann in order to find an antidote for the disease that is destroying my people. If you were elected, would you help me in this endeavor? You are a Karantz of our clan, and I have witnessed your wisdom and benevolence. I would be glad to help you meet Anon Milfrichtemann, and I pray that he will help your people. But you should know that my election is far from certain. The spirits are divided, and some are thirsty for revenge. Would there be a way to make sure that you get picked? I do not like the idea of using such a method. But yes, there is a way. The High Kings of old wore a legendary crown, said to be a gift from Enon Mil Frichtemann. The one who became the first guardian is believed to have taken it with him in death. If someone were to wear it in these troubled times, they would definitely be chosen by the others. And where can I hope to find it? In the burial mound of the Hoi Kings near the village of Vignamri. But it is said that the path towards it is strewn with spears, and that its entrance, situated near a large dead tree, is guarded by a Nardaig Magamen. It is a deeply holy place, and a guardian will not let anyone enter without a fight. If you do decide to go there, fill your heart with humility and respect, for those who rest there were great men.
What are you doing there? Here lie those who fell facing the first invaders. And you dare enter and scatter their bones. I did not come here with the intention of defiling this place. No. You came looking for a crown of the High King, hoping to choose the one who will lead us. Isn't that what you are looking for as well? Yes, but I am not a Renaixe. I wish to lead my people to victory, and I have come here seeking something that will make it a certainty. And so? Do you plan on keeping it for one of those who is too wise or cowardly to come and get it themselves? Or will you give me the crown? Dertre is a great warrior. If she reigns, she will unite all of the clans. And with the blessing of Enon Milfrichtum and the people of your island will be chased away from here. Think long on this. If you leave her the crown, she will become the High Queen. You will not be able to change your mind. If I give you the crown, you shall be named High Queen. What will you do with this power? You have already shown to all that you are not like the other Renaixe. I will not hide from you the truth. Kirfradi does not want to welcome your people. They toy with us, take without returning, kill and pillage. I will unite my people and cast all of the Monesenaig into their ocean wagons. They will go and pillage elsewhere. You want the crown so you can more easily rid yourself of my presence afterward? If you give it to me, you will become our Karants. And we do not chase away our Karanten. And also, you are on all Manawi. You are bonded to this land, not to theirs, no? I have come here looking for this crown, because I need the help of the next High King. I must meet Enon Mil Frichtemann to ask him to heal my people. Are you sure that they are your people? Very well. It is a very great honor you ask of me. But you took great risks in order to obtain it. If you give me the crown, I will open the sanctuary to you. You may speak to Enon Mil Frichtemann. I swear this to you. Sorry, Dedre. I believe someone other than you must become the High King. Someone more easily manipulated, who will obey the orders of the Renaixe, no doubt. Too bad. You leave me no choice. I have come to take that crown, and I won't leave without it. <laughs> Enough. I accept my defeat. Take this crown. I am not worthy to wear it, so it seems. So it seems indeed. We will meet again at Dorhad Genedu. Until then, Dedra.
I went into the tomb. I found the ancient crown of the High Kings. And so, you entered into one of our most sacred places. May this adventure have brought you wisdom and understanding of our people and of your own history. This relic is venerated. The one who wears it will certainly be elected. But you know that, do you not? Yes, I do. I need to be certain that whoever is named will help me meet Enon Mil Frichtemann. I have pledged my honor to help you, and my words are true. But more is being played here than a simple meeting. You know that I work for a tempering of spirits, the healing of wounds of Tifredi, and those of your own continent. But the decision is yours to the sun that was lost and refound on our island. Take it. I trust you. In your wisdom, may we be guided towards a peaceful future. The Council has begun to unite. It is time for me to go. Thank you for choosing me. I will do all in my power to bring you what you desire. You have my promise. Congratulations, Dungus. I'm certain that you will be a very wise High King. And now, 
Are you ready to keep your promise and take me to meet with Enon Miel Frichterman? You are burning with the impatience of youth. But according to tradition, I must first go to the sanctuary on my own. Without the blessing of Tifradi, my title is nothing but empty, meaningless words. But fret not. How could I be called wise if I went back on the promise I made my friend as soon as I got elected? Meet me at the sanctuary's entrance in two days, and I will open its doors for you. Thank you, Dunkus. I'll be there. We spent two days twiddling our thumbs in this village. Don't you think we have better things to do? There you are, Karantz. How was the encounter? Enon Mil Frichterman welcomed me like a mother would welcome her child. Or you will have to meditate on everything he told me and think about the warnings he gave. But now he's waiting for you. I will open the way. Once you are in the sanctuary, always stay on the right-hand path and keep a confident heart. Those who let doubt take hold of them and turn back risk awakening the guardians of this place. Kwa Aulam Seg. I hail you, Enon Miel Frichtemen. I have come to you to find a remedy. A cure for the disease of a distant land. Her affliction was to be poisoned by her own children. Her veins rocked in stagnant water. Her earth now bears poisoned fruit, and her children wither and toy. And still it is those same children who can heal the lands 
and with them heal themselves if they only want it truly. They could be taught by my children, learn to give back in return, learn to heal. But for that, I must survive. I have seen by your side the shadow grow, taking form. Fed by the venom of intrigues from faraway lands, he spreads it today in my sap. To save his own life, he stole my strength, and that strength has driven him mad, because it is not made to be taken. He draws each day a little more from me, and threatens us all. His hunger has no limit. I don't understand. Who are you talking about? The one you call Constantine. You must stop him. Or there will be no cure anymore for anything or anyone. That... that's impossible. How could that be? You must leave now. Someone has followed your footsteps. Someone has entered here without invitation. My children are waking and tracking. They will attack all from us. Flee. I saw a man running out of the sanctuary, and I heard the cries of creatures inside. Is everything all right? Did you manage to get the answers you were expecting? Yes. He told me that the Malachor had appeared because of the way the Colonials have treated the Earth. It's actually some kind of poisoning. And it would be possible to cure it, but I'm not sure that I understood how. Words that come from the heart of the island carry with them a wisdom, which may sometimes be difficult to grasp. If you need help, I would be glad to be of assistance. My clan knows how to heal the earth. Thank you, Dunkus. I suppose I just need time to think. You haven't told me everything, have you? There appears to be a storm weighing down on your forehead. It is true. But it is something I must verify by myself. Oh, I see. Do not hesitate to come and find me if I can help you. Qua aulum secarans. Goodbye. So great.
Want armor that fits you like a glove? We'll make it for you. My dearest cousin, I am so glad to see you. You are right on time. We have visitors, and your advice would be most welcome. Let me introduce you to the emissaries of the Bridge Alliance and Teleme. Seeing them both in the same room is rather surprising, isn't it? But please, your excellencies, explain to us what brought you here. Sire, I have come to humbly request your help. We have been sustaining terrible attacks. Really? Are the natives behind this again? Unless it is those traitors of the guard. We aren't sure, but it is almost certain that the natives are involved. Governor Burren is hoping that you could send him your cousin, as well as some troops. It would seem that we are in a similar situation, sire. Our city has been sustaining terribly violent assaults, and our losses are great. Our mother cardinal is begging you to send her some help as soon as possible. <sighs> Dear allies, knowing that you are in such a delicate situation fills me with sorrow. However, the size of our troops has greatly reduced after the horrific attempt at a coup. And regarding sending my cousin, he's already very busy undertaking a mission of the utmost importance. Without even mentioning the fact that what you describe fills me with fear for his life, which is most precious to me. <sighs> no, I really don't see how I could be of assistance to you. Constantine. We cannot remain deaf to the call of our allies. I'm sure I can find time to go and evaluate the situation. I would love to accompany you, but my people are being wrongfully accused. I am certain of it, and I want to prove it. Very well, my dear. You know I cannot refuse you anything. But remember how urgent it is for this antidote to be found. We are so close to it now. Don't worry about it. You know how important this mission is to me. Well. This audience is coming to an end. Your Excellencies, inform your governors of my cousin's arrival. I hope that you realize how grateful you should be to him. Absolutely, sire. And we thank you both for receiving us. May the Enlightened always keep you in his divine blessing. Constantine, my dear cousin, I'm always happy to see you. What news do you bring? I finally managed to enter the sanctuary at the heart of the island, and I was able to talk with Enon Miel Frichterman. How marvelous! Tell me about it. The sanctuary is heavily protected. Only a high king can open it. <sighs> I remember you saying that Vimbar's death wasn't going to help us. How did you fix this problem? I had to interfere in the natives' elections and earn the trust of the pretender who seemed to be the best choice. You really are an outstanding diplomat. My father is an old, bitter man, but he was right about you. Tell me, who did you choose? Dunkus. He's the king of the village of Vigigador, and a Dunegad full of wisdom. I am certain that you have made the right choice. And then what did you do? I was able to enter the sanctuary. It was an incredible experience. It had to be. Oh, how I envy you. Entering the most secret places on this island, talking to a god. What does he look like? Is he some kind of very old and very powerful Donegad? No. In fact, I spoke to an extremely large tree, as strange as it may sound. Fascinating. And I thought that gods were always old bearded men. Did he tell you where the Malachor was coming from? Is it a curse that he cast upon the first settlers? No. According to him, we are responsible for the emergence of the Malachor. By exploiting the Earth so much, we have poisoned it, and the disease has contaminated us through the water that we drink and the plants that we eat. Strange, and yet it seems plausible. So, there wouldn't be an antidote? He says that the Earth can be healed, that his children know how to do it. I suppose he was talking about the Donegada. He also said that by healing the Earth, we would heal those who live on it. This is a fascinating revelation. 
It won't be easy for our neighbors to accept it, however. I'm afraid that even my father might receive it with skepticism. Did he tell you anything else? Yes. Something rather disturbing. He talked about you. He said his existence was in danger because of you. Really? But that doesn't make any sense. I never hurt anybody on this island. Unlike our neighbors, I have never abducted or tried to convert islanders. I don't think that's what he was referring to. Cousin, please, you know me. I have made some mistakes, but I never threatened anybody. The only person who I put in danger is you. And you know how sorry I am about that. Yes, I do know. Forget about it, will you? This god manifestly wants us to pay for the sins of our fathers and to have his revenge for the invasion. By sowing the seeds of discord between us, he's probably hoping to weaken us. Do you realize that you have succeeded where everyone else has failed? The whole continent should be thanking you. Is there anything you would like to tell me? I must take my leave. Take care and come back soon. Sir de Sade, seeing you is a genuine relief. Your emissary informed us that you were in need of our help. Indeed. She must have told you that we were being attacked. We are sustaining the relentless assaults of furious animals, which some people believe to be sent by the demons of the island. Some people? So you're not certain that's the case? We were mistaken when we thought them responsible for the Malachor. I became more cautious. But no matter where these attacks come from, our men are becoming exhausted. One of our outposts to the east has sent us a distress message. They won't hold much longer. I beg you, you must go to their aid. Maybe they can help you find out where these beasts come from. I will go there and meet them. I hope to make it in time. I am infinitely grateful, Your Excellency. You have proved your efficiency many times already. I am certain you will put an end to this. I must leave you. Naturally, Your Excellency.
You shouldn't stay here. We're sustaining terrible attacks. The animals appear to be crazy. They already killed several of my soldiers. We're actually here to help you. Are you the backup? We were starting to lose hope. I must admit that I was praying for more soldiers, but any help is welcome. We're under attack every night, and we've already lost a lot of men. At this rate, we won't survive another night. Don't worry. We will do everything in our power to make sure that you do. You still have some time to prepare before these beasts attack again. All right, let's wait. Succeeded! Bravo, soldiers! We have resisted! Thank you, Excellency. I do not know what would have happened had you not helped us. You shouldn't stay here. We're sustaining terrible attacks. The animals appear to be crazy. They already killed several of my soldiers. Why build an outpost here? Well, we do have to watch over the land surrounding the city with the bandits, the beasts, and the natives. We don't have a lot of time to rest, you know. Anything else? <sighs> Thanks for your help. You are an extraordinary fighter. If it weren't for you, the outpost would have undoubtedly fallen tonight. If these attacks are always this violent, even with our support, it won't hold much longer. We must uncover the origin of these attacks. I've thought about it. And I sent a few men two days ago in the hope that they would find out where the attacks came from. And first and foremost, why they are attacking. But I haven't heard from them since. 
I'm afraid I might have sent them to their death. Could you at least tell me which way they went? I might be able to track them. They followed a trail going north of a place the natives call the Woods of Lightning. Thank you, officer. I will do everything in my power to find them. Until then, try to hold on. You be careful. Goodbye. Red look is very close. We are in Deirdre's territory. You know what she thinks of the Renaigse. I hope she isn't behind those attacks. We want to follow the tracks of those soldiers, my child. I think we should go to the northeast. Maybe in life you protect me in this battle. This man will die if we don't do something about it. What... what happened? You... you saved me. Thank you. Uh, I'd be dead if it weren't for you. Your officer sent us. He told us that you were looking for the origin of these attacks. Uh, and we found it. We followed the beast's trail, and, and it led us to a large glade east of here. You'll find raised stones there, the ones which are worshipped by the islanders. There was a, a, a creature there, a, a beast so large and so ferocious. I've, I've never seen anything like it. That's what must have been attracting the animals. We wanted to kill it, but it prevailed. All my comrades fell in battle against it. I fled. I had to inform the lieutenant. And you were right. Don't worry. We'll take care of it now. We took some notes, and, and we drew a map as we progressed. It, it may be of use to you. Everything is in that chest over there. Here. Take the key.
may the enlightened protect me in this battle. It was this creature who was leading the animals. It looks like a guardian, but its skin is strange, covered with ulcers, as if it was sick. That could explain its change in behavior, but not the intelligence with which these attacks were led.
Your Eminence, I salute you. Sir de Sade, what can I do for you? You are back. I hear there are no more attacks. Once again, your help was a blessing. Did our troops survive? There were some losses, but the outpost is still standing. And it's thanks to them that I was able to follow the creature's trail. The officer sent out a small party hoping that they would be able to solve the problem. Now that's a resourceful man. Did his initiative bear fruit? His men died, alas. But following their tracks led me to the creature who was leading the animals. It resembled a Nardaig Manaman, a mountain guardian. But it seemed like it was sick. Its skin was covered in stains and ulcers, and its behavior was different from the other guardians I've met. Where could it have come from? And why did it send all these beasts after us? I don't know, but someone must be behind all this. These attacks are too coordinated and too complex to be the work of some creatures. You are a man of great ingenuity. I have no doubt that you will solve this mystery. At any rate, I am extremely grateful for the help you have given us. You're welcome. Anything else? I must leave you. Naturally, Your Excellency. What an astounding place. This must be the village of Eden that the Mother Cardinal told us about. All that's left to do is to find Father Eustinius. Welcome to Eden, the lighthouse of faith, harmony, and civilization in these wild lands. Thank you. De Sade, I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. And I am Father Justinius. Delighted. And what may I do for you? The Mother Cardinal has asked me to investigate the theft of these tablets you discovered. That's excellent news. The loss of the tablets is a catastrophe. We have to find them at all costs. If you want to learn more about these tablets, you should go ask Sister Eugenia. She supervises the theologians who discovered them, and were also guarding them. You should find her a bit further in the village with her colleagues. Who are the suspects of this theft? The heretical brutes of the village of Vedlug most likely had a hand in this. They must have wanted to please the demons they worship by stealing the holy word from us. How could they have learned of the tablet's existence? Uh, perhaps the demons are giving them this power. Unless one of the natives living in the village innocently mentioned them. <laughs> they are so naive. Either way, I am certain that the heretics are involved in this matter. I must leave you. Goodbye. May the Enlightened always keep you in their divine blessing. I never thought I'd see natives living like this, side by side with the settlers. I doubt that things happened as harmoniously as they'd like us to believe. It all seems a bit too convenient. If we find out some information about the history of Eden, 
Maybe we'll change our view on things. The theft of the relic is probably not a coincidence. Father. I'm glad to see you, my child. What can I do for you? Tell me about how you created this village. We did not create it from the ground up. It was built around an existing native village. The islanders called it Vigsenegad, which translates to the village of the old sage. Huh. We saw it as a sign. The natives had probably chosen this name in memory of St. Matthias, and everything here fit the description of St. Lucius. The discovery of the tablets proved us right. So, we decided to rebuild our Eden here, in the spirit of peace and harmony which is described in the scriptures. Why share this village with the natives? To replicate and resume the work of our founder, of course. If he came here and managed to convert the natives, then it is our duty to do the same thing. By living side by side with them, it is much easier for us to pass on our teachings. How well do you get along with the natives who live here? Uh, very well, of course. Especially since those who opposed our presence left. Left? To go where? Oh, to other villages, I imagine. Does it even matter? Those who stayed are on the path of enlightenment. Some of their legends must have been about St. Matthias. That helped to convince them. And how well have neighboring villages welcomed you? With some reluctance, to be perfectly honest. So, we sent them missionaries. There are still frequent conflicts with the village of Vedluk, a highly violent village of heretics. But the other villages, the more peaceful ones, are slowly starting to listen to the sacred word. There is something strange here. It often takes time for the people of the continent to get used to our paradise, but I am sure you will come to appreciate it. I must leave you. Goodbye. May the enlightened always keep you in their divine blessing. I am busy. If you have questions, go see Sister Eugenia. She's our supervisor. Hello. The Mother Cardinal asked me to help you find the tablets that were stolen. Can I ask you some questions? Of course. But hurry, I have a lot to do. I talked to Father Eustinius. He told me that you were supervising the theologians here. Indeed. It is under my supervision that the research on St. Matthias is conducted. Whom do you suspect of being the thief? Oh, alas. I'm afraid there are many suspects. These tablets are priceless relics. Some settlers may have fallen prey to the lure of profit. The heretical natives of Vedlug may have wanted to take them away from us. Or it could have been vengeance by those who had to leave the village. Where were the tablets the night they were stolen? We were keeping them in one of the village's shacks. We intended to bring them to San Mateus later. But first, we wanted to examine them in order to obtain as much information as possible. You can go and take a look in the shack if you want to, but I couldn't find any traces of forced entry. I imagine someone was keeping watch over them. Of course, we took turns guarding the shack. But some of us can't have taken the task that seriously. If I remember correctly, it was Brother Virgil who was guarding them that night. Well, thank you for these pieces of information. I am the one who should be thanking you. Especially if you manage to retrieve the tablets for us. The Mother Cardinal told me that this village had been developed on the basis of St. Lucius's writings. Are you one of the theologians who helped in its creation? Yes. I was sent here to confirm that this place is indeed the one described in the writings. And then I stayed. What was the reaction of the natives when you arrived here? Most of them were not in favor of us living amongst them. They were afraid we might chase them out of their own village. And there were even more protests once we started talking about searching for traces of St. Matthias. I suppose they thought we would destroy all of their raised stones and other places of superstition. Were there any confrontations with the natives? Yes. The warriors of the village attacked us. The Ordo Luminous actually had to intervene. The Inquisition managed to make them run away. 
The islanders tried to attack again with the support of Vedlug, but we stood our ground. And when Lur, the chief of the village, finally accepted our presence, things calmed down. Thank you. This information will certainly prove to be useful. Thank you. I will let you work. Greetings, Desade. I am handling the investigation into the theft of the tablets. Sister Eugenia told me to talk to you. I'm Brother Virgil. What would you like to know? According to your colleague, you were the one in charge of guarding the tablets on the night of the theft. Is that right? Indeed. What can you tell me about that night? Did you hear or see anything? No, nothing in particular. The night was quiet. And then, the morning after, we saw they were gone. Someone had to enter the shack to steal the tablets. How did that happen? I have no idea. The door was closed in the morning, and the lock was intact. Do you suspect anyone in particular? Not really. What I can tell you for sure is it is not one of us. Well... Sister Eugenia did tell me that the tablets were priceless. Of course. But our motivation is not the lure of profit. All that matters to us is their value as proof, not the money we could make out of them. Do you think the culprit could be a native? Well, since none of us did it, it seems obvious. There aren't many other settlers around here. And the natives knew of the existence of these tablets before we found them. They were attached to them, too, in their own way. They are the ones who led you to them. Well, we conducted the research, but they helped us find where they were hidden. Some inhabitants of the village are still giving us a hand with our work. Well, thank you. I will investigate where the theft took place. As you wish. But you won't find anything there. And why does it matter, anyway? There were witnesses to the discovery of these tablets. We have all the proof we need. And that's all that matters. What do you mean? Now we can prove St. Matthias lived here. Our actions on this island are justified. To keep rummaging the way Sister Eugenia does will only create more tensions with the natives. I was not expecting a theologian to say such things. Have you been in Eden for a long time? Two months, approximately. Back then, there were still some pagan natives in the village. I joined Sister Eugenia's team with some of my colleagues, so we could give them a fresh outlook on things. We arrived straight from Teleme, hoping to study some new texts. But once we were here, I understood that my real mission was with the Islanders. We must bring the light to this island. You talked about a mission with the natives. What did you mean by that? I may be under the command of Sister Eugenia here, but my superior is Bishop Domitius. Our mission is to banish pagan cults and convert the entire population to the light. The island belongs to Saint Matthias, and therefore to Teleme, since the God of Light offered it to our founder. You have a very unique way of seeing things. I doubt everyone accepts it. How are your relations with the natives? When I arrived, we were still trying to obtain information from them about St. Matthias. But they were very reluctant to give us any answers. We were also trying to educate them. Our attempts eventually made some of the inhabitants of the village react badly. Most stubborn against our teachings, the warriors and the marked. The ones the natives called the Onomanawi. They eventually left and it has proved nothing but a blessing for us. I would like to go back to work now, if you don't mind. Of course. I will leave you to your work. Goodbye.
Hello. I am Lair, the village leader. Well, I was the leader of this village. Hello, the Sade. I am the legate of the merchant congregation. There are Onol Manawi among the Logaid Blau. I did not know that. What do you want from me? I've heard a lot of things about this village of Eden, but I'd like to hear your version. Hmm. I'm not sure Roy have the answers to all of your questions, but I'll try. Tell me about the arrival of the people of Teleme, and how you received them. The priests were roaming around the village. They were saying that it was the place where their saint had lived. They were asking questions, talking about the Lloyd and all these things. One morning, they were building houses next to ours. And we had new neighbors. The priests told me that they had managed to convert you. How did that happen? As long as we refused to listen to them, they were violent, and they destroyed some of our sanctuaries. So we let them talk. And now that they think that we love their god, they leave us alone. Some of the things they say are beautiful, and their magic is impressive. But we do not forget our spirits. One of the theologians told me that you would help them in their research. They wanted to find tracks of the old sage, of the one they call Saint Matthäus, and they were rummaging through everything. Our Donegad did not want to tell them anything, because the old sage is sacred here. But since they violently interrogated everyone, I thought it wise to guide them to the place where the stones were. What happened to your warriors? Why did they have to leave the village? They did not accept the presence of the priests and their questions. They tried to retake the village. They even asked Derdra, the chief of Vedlug, for her help. So, the priests called the soul Lassa, the Burning Sons, and they killed many of them. Oi asked for peace, and the others left us. They wanted to join Vedlug. Perhaps they have done so. Aren't you angry after all that happened? No. I mourn those who died, of course. And the worst rent. But this village may be our opportunity. Your opportunity for what? For the Renaigse to understand who we are. Not savages, nor monsters, but men. Perhaps wiser than they are. I have to go. Like so many others. I knew that the story would be more complex than we'd been told. It was predictable. These priests feed off myths all day long. They are completely disconnected from reality. Even though it seems to me that some of them have a far more factual and political outlook on things. Either way, the resentment here is strong enough for a theft to occur. There is only one entrance and the door shows no evidence of a break-in. This Virgil must have fallen asleep on duty, and the thieves must have taken the key from him without him even noticing. Unlike the others, he does not think that those relics have any value. It's very likely that that's what happened, but someone must have informed them. It can't be a coincidence that they decided to steal it during the watch of the only neglectful guard. Our thieves fled, but you're right. Our accomplice must still be here. We know that this theft could be an act of vengeance by the natives who were forced to leave here. They must still have allies in the village, family or friends. We should go talk to the chief of the natives. He will certainly know who is close to the exiles, and enough about the researchers to inform them.
You have returned on all Manawi. Do you need something else? I think I know who stole the tablets. Really? I believe those who were exiled from your village seek vengeance because the missionaries forced them to leave. They must have taken the tablets with the help of someone else who stayed here. You may be right, but you may also be wrong. You do well to tell me what you know. Once the priests have reached the same conclusions as I have, how do you think they will interrogate you? You're probably right. The Inquisitors would come back, and my people would suffer. I do not want to break the peace that I did all I could to make. I think the name of the woman you are looking for is Vindwal. She helps the priests who seek the old sage. If she's helping the priests, why would she betray them now? Her son is one of the warriors who had to leave the village. He is filled with anger and fury. If you go talk to her, please do not hurt her. She is but a mother who acted according to her son's wishes. I have no intention of hurting her, but things may not be so simple when it comes to her son. I have to go. Like so many others. Greetings. Are you Vindwal? Bird tier, Tumad. Yes, that is me. What do you want? What can you tell me about Lair, your former leader? He is a man of peace. Some people dislike him, not me. Everything he did, he did to save the village. But I think the Moind Shakers made him forget what we are. He almost speaks like them now. Listen, I know you helped the exiles to steal the tablets of Saint Mateus. No, this is not true. It wasn't me. There's no point in denying it. I know you did it for your son who had to leave the village. If you know that, then you know that I don't have the tablets. So what do you want from me? The only means of alleviating the situation with Teleme is to give the priests their tablets back. So, if you don't want your son to suffer their wrath, it would be best if I could retrieve them discreetly. Uh, Bran and the rest of the Exoils are hiding in the woods, beyond the Stone Circle. If you want to take the tablets away from them without being seen, do not take the part on the left. It is riddled with traps. And please, do not hurt my son.
Here's the place that Vindwal indicated. The exiles must be near. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. And if I remember correctly, we should avoid the path on the left. Do it! What are you doing here? I'm not here to fight you, but I must retrieve the tablets of Saint Matthias. What? How do you know we have them? And how? Not for thee. We will not give them back! We lost our homes and families, so the priests lose their sacred stones. I know that you are seeking vengeance, but the priests will not be the only ones to suffer the consequences of your actions. Your mother helped you, and once they find out about it, she will pay the price in your place. Is that what you want? No. She only told us which night we could come. They have no right to punish her for this. I doubt the Ordo Luminous will care. They will need someone to take the blame, and she's the obvious choice. Very well. Take the stones and leave. All that's left to do is to rejoin the Donea Exregal. What are you doing here? Oi was worried for my son. Oi wanted to make sure that everything was fine. Don't worry, all is well. I managed to convince him to give me the tablets. Ad Loredar, Oi did not believe my son to be so reasonable. You are giving me hope. Oi will go see him and tell him to find another clan. A place to welcome him. I retrieved your relics. Thank you. Thank you immensely. Thanks to them, we will be able to continue our research on St. Matthias. I am curious to know who is responsible for this theft. The culprit must be brought to justice. I do not want to point the finger at anyone. You have your relics back, and that's the only thing that matters. Your indulgence honors you. But how can we be certain that these thieves will not strike again if they are not punished? All of this is nothing but more proof that Teleme is a nation of dreamers. They look for a thief when all they had to do was choose a guard who wouldn't fall asleep. In any case, you would do well to keep a better watch on your discoveries in the future. You should also pay more attention to those who share this village with you. This theft would never have happened had you truly been in harmony with the natives. But that is precisely what we desire more than anything. Oh, we may have been a bit clumsy in the beginning, but... We'll make sure to improve things in the future. You really were a great help. I would be most grateful if you agreed to continue helping us. I might come back at some point, but alas, I'm very busy. Naturally. Either way, we are certainly capable of continuing our research without you. Actually, I must go back to my work. Our next expedition must depart as soon as possible. Your next expedition? Our brave researchers must continue to follow the tracks of our founder on this island. In the meantime, here, take this as a token of gratitude for the help you gave us. Thank you. 
I hope your expedition will be a success. Oh, there you are, Your Excellency. The Enlightened has heard my prayers. What's going on? Where are the others? After deciphering the content of the tablets, they went north to continue their research in some swamps. Oh, but they must have encountered problems. Brother Fidelis came back here, and he was in a dreadful state. He most likely came to seek help, but he fainted. It's impossible for us to know what happened to them. I'm not a doctor. But I may be able to examine him. Oh, please do. Any help would be appreciated. We've done our best, but our magic has proved inefficient. And the healer we sent for will certainly arrive too late from San Mateus. This man is burning up with fever, and he bears several bite marks and traces of blows. The flesh is black and blue around the bites. He was bitten by a venomous creature. What he needs is an antidote. Have you tried giving him any anti-poison? Of course, but to no avail. And what if it were a hex cast by the heretics? No matter what happens, you always suspect them. More of these idiotic superstitions. If the anti-poisons aren't working, it's because they're not suitable for this venom. Fidelis was in the swamp. Local healers will surely know how to make the right antidote. We could ask Lair. He will direct us to someone who understands remedies. Honol Manawi, you've come back to see old Lair. I heard that you managed to retrieve the tablets. Did Vindwal tell you? Yes, and I feel more at peace, knowing that our brothers are alive, and that they will be able to join another clan. And you proved me right. Peace with the Renaixe is possible. I need your advice. You may already know that one of the researchers came back wounded from the expedition. I heard about it. He has all the symptoms of a poisoning, but the anti-poisons we gave him had no effect. He must have been bitten by a creature of the swamp, and we're looking for a healer who would know of a suitable antidote. So, you came to see me. Interesting. Our neighbors did not think for one moment that we could be helpful. Alas. Ardonegad is one of the exoils. But Vindwal knows plants well. She will know. Thank you. I will go see her. I hope she agrees to help us. I have to go. Like so many others.
Here you are again. What do you want? I have come to ask for your help. Lair told me you know about remedies. I do know a few of them. I have learned about plants. I used to want to become a Donegad. One of the researchers came back wounded from the expedition. Apparently he was bitten by a creature of the swamp. And now he has the Lawolan fever. We have a good knowledge about this affliction. He will die if he does not receive proper treatment. Do you know which antidote should be given to him? Yes. These priests are idiots. They could have asked for our help, but they treat us like children. You. You are different. And you have allowed my son to join a new clan. So, I will give you the potion to cure the priest. Wait a moment. Make him drink this remedy and he'll get better. Thank you, Vindwal. Where am I? You are in Eden. You're safe. I... Well, was I unconscious for a long time? The, the other members of the expedition, they are in danger. The swamp is so hostile. We weren't prepared for it. S some of our people have d disappeared. What caused these wounds? A nightmarish creature. The swamp is full of them. A colleague and I had left to fetch some help when we were attacked. I managed to run away, but I don't know what happened to him. As for those who were at the camp, you must go help them. Show me the location of your colleagues on the map. I will join them. There. Please, hurry. Thank you. You should rest now. I do not remember there being a path in this place the last time we came. Indeed. It was probably cleared by the expedition. We should follow it if we want to fight them. to have it your way. Someone so foolish and thoughtless should not be supervising an expedition. How dare you! It looks like we're right on time. If we do not intervene, they are sure to gut each other. How can you... Hey, what's happening here? I could hear you from miles away. Your Excellency, I'm so happy to see you. You arrive right on time to settle this matter. How did you manage to find us in the middle of this swamp? Brother Fidelis managed to reach Eden. He's the one who told us where your camp was. But he didn't leave alone. What happened to Father Orbricus, who was accompanying him? He must be dead, like our other companions. This is all your fault. This is yet more proof that you are not fit to lead such a team. I should be the one in charge. Maybe you should calm down and explain to me what's happening here. 
This expedition was undertaken with no concern for common sense. We are not equipped to explore this type of place. Our people are disappearing, and all we have found are some falsified writings. Brother Virgil is terrified, which probably explains why he is being so disingenuous. We have made incredible discoveries, and we could find more. You are beyond redemption. I won't waste another second talking to you. If you want to talk to me, Your Excellency, it will have to be without her. How charming. Your Excellency, I hope you will forgive us for that... scene. My relations with Virgil have always been difficult, but ever since we arrived here, it has been unbearable. I'm afraid we may need an arbiter. Before anything else, I need to know what led to this situation between you. What would you like to know? For what reason were you quarreling? The expedition itself, I'm afraid. Virgil was always against it, especially under my supervision. For him, our discoveries in Eden were sufficient. They confirmed what he wanted. The rest did not matter. According to him, we should never have continued. And when we found new tablets, it became even worse. Were they also written by St. Matthias? Without a doubt, the handwriting is the same. There are also some patterns, some islander symbols. It's fascinating. But what really angers Virgil is the content we managed to decipher. Our founder explains that he learned a lot from the islanders, something our brother cannot accept. He now persists in saying that these tablets are fake, forged by the natives themselves. Brother Fidelis told me that several members of the expedition have disappeared. Yes. That's why he left, along with Father Orbricus, to fetch some help. Three more of our colleagues are missing. And I'm not even talking about the ones who fell ill. <sighs> I must admit that I underestimated the hardships we would encounter. I made a mistake. I should have prepared this expedition more thoroughly. But Virgil's being disingenuous does not help. And no one has searched for those who are missing. I wanted us to search for them, but someone later convinced me that it presented too much of a risk. Along with lack of preparation, our constantly decreasing number, and creatures swarming the area. And by someone, I suppose you mean Brother Virgil. Indeed. I am thankful for these pieces of information, but you understand that I will also have to talk to Brother Virgil. Of course, that's understandable. You must hear us both before you can make a decision. Brother Virgil, what do you want? Can you explain to me what caused such a quarrel? The reason for it is very simple. It is Eugenia's folly. This woman should never have been the supervisor of our team. The discoveries made in Eden were sufficient, but no. She didn't want to stop the research. She organized this expedition in a hurry, without taking elementary precautions, and now she's accepting as facts the delirious writings we discovered on these tablets without doubting them for even one second. What do you mean? We found some new tablets, allegedly written by Saint Matthias, but their content is so absurd that they were obviously forged. I am certain that the natives must have found these stones before us and modified their content. How would they have done that? The natives cannot write. They must have been helped by an unscrupulous settler. How would I know? Brother Fidelis told me that some of your colleagues went missing. Do you know anything about this? They did not go missing. They were killed. It was the wild beasts, the diseases, and let's not forget the savages. We can feel their presence roaming around the camp at night. I am certain that they are responsible for the death of our colleagues. That's strange. There aren't many villages around here. We have been in this region before. And the only native we met was a little insane, but would have been incapable of killing several priests. Those savages may very well have been following us since our departure. We will not be safe on this island until it is entirely converted. I see. So, you haven't tried to find your colleagues? So we can die as well. <laughs> I am not as crazy as Sister Eugenia. I cannot take sides in your quarrel for now. And, in any case, it is not what matters the most. Even if you think they are dead, we have to try finding your colleagues. 
Well, if you are prepared to take such a risk, I can only commend you for your bravery and wish you luck. But I would not get my hopes up. You should start by searching the excavation site. To get there, take the path south of here. But be careful. The creatures that roam the area are ruthless. This man's skull is sunken, but he doesn't look like he was in a fight. Could he have fallen? If that were the case, there would be other marks of impact on his body. No, he was struck with an object to the back of the head. Given the shape of the wound, it was inflicted with a metal mace. This man's skull is sunken, but he doesn't look like he was in a fight. Could he have fallen? If that were the case, there would be other marks of impact on his body. No. He was struck with an object to the back of the head. Given the shape of the wound, it was inflicted with a metal mace. This poor soul was almost entirely devoured. He must have been killed by swamp animals. Indeed, he was devoured, but he was already dead. There is a mark here on the bones that could only have resulted from the strike of a cutting weapon. These fang marks are impressive. The poor man didn't have a chance. He must have been attacked by a large reptile. Most likely a Lawola. Hold on. Do you see these iridescent marks on his skin? They look like the marks that the priest's spells leave on their victims. I've seen them many times before. But what was he doing alone so far from camp? It seems obvious now that these disappearances were orchestrated. Someone particularly devious has assassinated these people and disguised their deaths to take advantage of them. Who else could it be than the vehement brother Virgil? Indeed. I think that we should go find this brother and ask for an explanation. Brother Virgil. Your Excellency, weren't you supposed to be looking for our colleagues? Indeed. 
I regret to say that they are indeed all dead. I knew it. What a waste. Eugenia and her recklessness are to blame for this. I'm afraid someone else is responsible for this. These deaths are not accidental, and yet they were disguised as such. The savages? Their thirst for blood is unquenchable. I knew we should never have come without an escort. You know very well that the natives have nothing to do with this. They would have had no reason to disguise their attack. Who else could it be? Someone who desperately wanted this expedition to fail. Does that remind you of anyone? Fine. You unmasked me. But know that my cause is righteous. The Ordo Luminous sent me to keep an eye on this expedition, to ensure that the discoveries we made would not jeopardize our nation or our presence on this island. But the inscriptions on the tablets are a heresy, a dangerous manipulation. Can you imagine what would happen if it was said that our founder listened to the teachings of the natives? But even then, foolish Eugenia accepted these discoveries as truth without any hesitation, without realizing that our entire nation could suffer because of it. So yes, I wanted to scare her. I understand that you might want to protect your nation, but to go as far as assassinating several of your colleagues. Come now. What would you do if someone were threatening the congregation? You cannot make me believe that you would not be willing to kill. You may have already done so, but since you want to avoid using violence, Help me convince Eugenia to go back to Eden. My colleagues and I know how to sort through these discoveries. And you will be rewarded, of course. Your argument has convinced me. I accept your offer. I knew that someone as pragmatic as yourself would understand me. Here. I will go talk to Sister Eugenia and make sure that she leaves the expedition. Your Excellency, you're back. So, what news do you bring? Alas, I have found the bodies of your colleagues. They're all dead, most likely killed by the natives. This is... this is awful. How horrible! The Islanders probably only wanted to defend a sacred place. But you could have anticipated their reaction. Brother Virgil was right. This expedition was poorly prepared, without a plan or any real precautions. <sighs> it is all my fault. I should have hired some guards, and gathered more information about the dangers in this area. I suppose I have no choice but to resign. Virgil will take over the research and disregard anything that does not fit his narrative, without regard for the truth. Perhaps he isn't wrong about these inscriptions. Maybe. Did you know, at one point, he was so vehement that I suspected him of being responsible for it all? Anyway, all that's left for me to do is to leave with those who want to return to Eden. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Goodbye, Sister Eugenia. Be careful on the way back. I managed to convince Eugenia to return to Eden and leave you in charge of the expedition. Excellent. Your actions may have saved our beautiful nation. I am most grateful to you. Well, I'll leave you now. Wait, if you do not mind. We still need your help. In the logical part of the tablets we deciphered, there is a mention of a journey northward. It would be that way, deeper into the swamp, that Saint Matthias would have ventured next. We must discover where he went. But our group is so small now. Very well. I will go north and start from the excavation site. But what should I be looking for? Signs of life. New tablets, perhaps. Thank you, Your Excellency. You are a great help.
to my help. And death to the allies! <laughs> If their so-called saint lived around here, he must have looked for a sheltered area. Another one of those monstrosities. To my help! And death to the others! A cavern! If I were an old hermit, this is probably where I'd have settled. Someone lived here. There's no doubt about it. But we'll have to turn the place upside down if we want to make sure that the old man came here. To my help! And death! These murals probably have a religious meaning. 
If the saint came here, this must have been where he lived. Let's take a closer look at these paintings. We may learn something from them. This mural is very ancient. It depicts an old man dressed as a priest getting his face painted by a masked native. This mural depicts an old man praying in front of a face in the mountain. He's holding a rosary. Saint Matthias. Praying to Enon Miel Frichtemann. Looks like a chaplet made of pewter. It's rather basic, but it was made a long time ago, and it undeniably comes from the continent. I seem to recall that their saint is often described as using a similar object. Engraved tablets. They resemble the ones we recovered in Eden. We should take them with us. The researchers would be delighted to study them. There are some native symbols here. And some letters I recognize, as if someone had tried to write in the native language using our alphabet. Men duis dad, enon mil frictimen. This is incredible. Saint Matthias would have known about the spirit of the island and would have prayed to him. I don't know these glyphs, but these spirals are native symbols. There are some words in our ancient language next to them. The light and the earth are the two faces of a same power. It's impossible to know if this is a translation or another sentence. But this is a message that would seriously displease the Inquisitors. Incredible. That should make the entire University of Al Saad howl with laughter. The saint founder of Teleme worshipped the natives' gods. I would appreciate it if what we just discovered stayed a secret for the time being. Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I find this so amusing. I wonder what I should do with these relics. Eugenia probably didn't imagine that Saint Matthias lived his life in a way that's so different from what they advocate. As for Virgil, he wasn't wrong. Such a revelation will certainly cause a schism in Teleme. To think these old things could cause a civil war. Or long-lasting peace with the natives. It is a serious responsibility to decide what to do with them. But it isn't ours. Their saint, their decision. I already took sides in their quarrel. If I change my mind, I'm afraid that it might be seen as treason. I'll think about it on the way there. Let's go back to the researchers' camp. Anything new, Your Excellency? We have discovered a cave that was clearly inhabited by many people a long time ago. Mostly natives. It's a sacred place, guarded by one of their creatures. Did you find traces of our founder there? Someone from the mainland has obviously lived there too. But I have not found anything that clearly indicates who it was. It was probably Saint Matthias, given our other evidence. And you're sure you have not found tablets or objects that would have belonged to him? No. Most of the objects were in such a state that they were hardly recognizable. Hmm. Really? I would have thought metal at least would have survived the test of time. I suppose it's just as well. After all, what has already been discovered is quite problematic. 
Thank you for checking this for us, Your Excellency. We will be able to return to Eden now. Very well. Goodbye, Brother Virgil. Sister Eugenia, I need to talk to you. Your Excellency, I thought you had stayed to help the expedition. Indeed, and we made some very important discoveries. Frescoes, tablets, and other objects. Everything indicates that Saint Matthias had finally converted to the cult of the natives. You will understand that I am afraid to talk to Brother Virgil. I preferred to lie to him in case he destroyed all of this. Look. This is his pewter chaplet. Oh, by the Enlightened. It's amazing. You cannot imagine. And these tablets. How marvelous. It will take time to study them, of course. And you say that all this proves that St. Matthias had converted. This and the frescoes we discovered. They clearly represented St. Matthias praying to the spirit of the island. And having his face painted by a native. I... This is incredible. I can't believe it. And yet everything we had already discovered points in this direction. I should have seen it coming. We have to find the Mother Cardinal and show her all of this. Don't you fear that she too will want to silence these discoveries, as Virgil did? It is a risk. In fact, any believer may want to silence me. But if we want the world to accept these discoveries, we will need her support. That's why I want you to come with me, to help me to convince her. Very well. I'll come with you and I'll do my best. It seems we are arriving right on time. You did well to warn us, Brother Virgil. Virgil? How did you know? I'm afraid that Your Excellency's lies weren't very convincing. We were informed of your discoveries and of the danger they represent. We demand that you hand them over to us immediately so that they can be destroyed. How can you even suggest the destruction of relics written by the hand of our founder? Out of love for our dogma, for our faith, and for our nation. But since you refuse to comply with our orders, you leave us no choice. Death to the heretics! To my hell! believe that I just fought my own brothers in faith. The fact that the Inquisition is after us is very disturbing, Excellency. We would do well to hasten to San Mateus. They will not dare to attack you there. Even if these men were the last forces that the Inquisition could send us. You are right. All this proves is that I will not succeed without your help. There is a risk that the Mother Cardinal will also reject our discoveries. I suppose I could use what I learned about her to persuade her. And I could bring Petrus with me. He will surely find the words to convince her. That would be most helpful. Father Petrus is renowned for his eloquence. In any case, we must present our research to Mother Cardinal as soon as possible. I will study the tablets one last time to make sure I know all their content. And I will meet you at the palace in San Mateus to plead our case. Understood. See you soon, Sister Eugenia. Be careful.
Ah, Your Excellency. We were eagerly awaiting your arrival. Sister Eugenia was just recounting me the tale of your achievements and telling me about the incredible discoveries you've made. These relics shed a new light on the last years of our founder. It all demonstrates that he hadn't evangelized the islanders, but, on the contrary, he would even have adopted some of their rituals, merging the cult of the enlightened and the cult of nature in a single dogma. These discoveries, if they can be verified, are extraordinary. But they also represent a great upheaval that could harm our nation. We must first verify their authenticity. You are the only ones who entered this cave. Could what you have witnessed be a falsification? The cavern we discovered is located in a very remote place. There is no islander village nearby. It contains some ruined dwellings. But clearly no one has lived there for a very long time. Fraudsters would inevitably have left traces of their passage, and we have not found any. The entrance to the cave was protected by one of those giant creatures that the natives call a Nardaik. These guardians usually protect sacred places and let no one enter without a fight. I had to kill this beast, which leads me to think that nobody had entered the cave for a very long time. We discovered ancient frescoes on the walls of the cave. They represent Saint Matthias without a doubt. He is depicted with his chaplet. In one, he is praying for the divinity of the island. In the other, his face was being painted by a native. I understand how shocking these discoveries are, but their antiquity proves that they are genuine. The tablets found at the site, however, attest that our founder had not abandoned the cult of the enlightened. He simply saw it as two different reflections of the same divine power. The relics could be authentic, Your Excellency, but we only have your word to convince us. The political and religious impact of these discoveries will be unprecedented. We risk schism, civil war, and who is to say that this is not a plan to weaken us? I understand your doubts, Your Eminence. But you yourself asked me to conduct the investigation. It seems to me that the best way to address this matter would be for you to go to the place yourself. Then you will see that what I have described to you is true. I suppose you would not suggest such a thing if you had lied to me. But you are right. I need to see for myself what secrets this place hides. I would also like to inform you that a member of the Ordo Luminous was part of the expedition. He tried several times to sabotage it, even killing many of his colleagues for it, and finally attacked us as we were preparing to join San Mateus. You'd have thought that the remaining members of the Order would go to such extremes, but I fear these attacks are just a reflection of what will happen if your discoveries are made public. Your Eminence. We are faced with a crucial choice for our nation. What does a man of faith do in such a dilemma? He prays and places his trust in the one who came before him and has shown more wisdom. Saint Matthias shows us a new way. If we are believers, can we really turn our backs on him? You surprise me, Petrus. You who are always so political, yet your words seem sincere. You give me something to think about. Thank you. What we have discovered is real. The very idea of concealing it is a disgrace. <laughs> Interesting remark from a representative of the nation we are fighting against. Does anyone wish to add anything? I understand your doubts about the future that will inevitably be caused by such a revelation. You hesitate just as St. Lucius did to tell us about the journey of his master. Yet he revealed what he knew, and his words still guide Teleme today. Thank you for your testimony. I will now retire to think about everything and make my decision. After careful consideration, I have decided that it is my duty to reveal your discoveries to the world. It will take years for our theologians to study all of this, but our dogma must follow the path opened by Saint Matthias. Thank you, Your Eminence. I would be delighted to help with the study of these relics. I don't doubt it, my dear. And I would like you to take me to see this cave. 
I look forward to worshipping at the place where our holy founder ended his days. As for you, Your Excellency, I thank you for the help you have given us. Your sincere insight has encouraged me to make this difficult decision. It was my pleasure. Let me also thank you, Your Excellency. Without you, we would still be in the shadows.
Lord de Sade. I've been hoping you would come. Your Excellency, I heard news of the attacks against Hikmed. I am ashamed to once again rely upon your kindness, but our situation is quite desperate, and you have proven such a valuable aid to us in the past. How might I be of service to you? Animals, creatures, have been attacking us relentlessly. They throw themselves upon our defenses day and night. They do not even try to avoid our weapons, rushing as if to swamp us in infinite numbers. Our best soldiers fall exhausted from fatigue, the others die shredded by their claws. Please find the origin of these attacks and make them stop. If we cannot hold out, the entire population of Hikmet will be devoured. Shah Mateus has fallen prey to the same tragic fate. The beasts were answering to a type of guardian we have never seen before. A guardian that has since died. Have the attacks subsided here at all? A guardian that has since died. Have the attacks subsided in Hikmet? No, not at all. San Mateus is far from here. The origin of the attacks must be different. I sent a small group of trackers so that they might follow the trail of the creatures. Their last message came from a dangerous area in the hands of natives. The savages are certainly at the root of these evil attacks. Who else could have trained all of these creatures? Could you indicate the zone in question? Alas, no. I didn't get the information. You must meet their officer, who will know how to guide you there. She's leading our troops in the outpost at the entrance to the city. Very well. I shall depart immediately. Be so kind as to keep me informed. This affair is driving me to madness. I would like to broach a rather unpleasant subject. Your treachery. I beg your pardon? I am at a loss for words. Have you forgotten that after sending me to save your savants that you then again sought my assistance? According to you, I needed only to convince the Tierna Hakadactus to provide us with a remedy. But you used me like a pawn, seeking in truth to capture her. I... I cannot understand why you are reacting in this way. I was certain that the witch doctor would refuse to help us. They have us marked down as enemies, after all. And I had good reason to believe that you would not resort to physical persuasion. You are even ready to use brute force against your own allies. Whatever do you mean? After wounding the Tiana, your spy attempted to kill me, Excellency. And you dare to tell me that my anger is exaggerated. Can I remind you that to assassinate a legate is to declare war against his sovereign? I never... <sighs> I promise you that I had no intention for any harm to befall you. That man went beyond his orders, I assure you. I implore you, please accept my sincerest and profound apologies in the name of the Bridge Alliance. I can only give you the benefit of the doubt for now, Your Excellency. I'm surprised that your spy has not returned to report the mission's failure. Has he fled rather than assuming responsibility for his crime? I have not seen him, this is true. Which does not surprise me, given all that you have just told me. But know that he will be caught and judged for his crime. Once again, I apologize sincerely for this crime. It should never have happened. In any case, we need to get our hands on this woman. The remedy is perhaps... There never was a remedy. It was a wild goose chase. Perhaps even some sort of machination. No. That... That is terrible. This is a great setback. How could I have been so naive? What a shame. I am truly sorry that you risked your life in vain. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I've taken care of your problem with the caravans. The merchant should now be able to reach Hikmet. Captain Rainhild has sent a message to that effect. You have done a great service for me. Though there is something that bothers me. I was told that you met these savages and then let them go. They showed no mercy at all with your own merchants. The congregation is not in conflict with these natives, and has no wish to begin one. Ah, your famous neutrality. Well then, you have solved the problem, and I would be discourteous to deny it. My pleasure. I imagine the captain must have informed you of all that we learned. Indeed, and I am extremely worried. An attack of any significant magnitude would be a catastrophe for our city. We have the means to repel these savages. But it will not be without great losses. Perhaps there is another way. The natives have clearly expressed their wishes. The freedom of their brothers and sisters. 
I see where this is headed, but I fear that they were not honest with you. A few natives are being held in the prison of the coin guard, but a handful of warriors does not seem to justify an assault of such commitment. They were not speaking of just a few soldiers, but of kidnappings. The victims are only villagers. This is inexplicable. We have taken no villagers. Of course, we answer their attacks in kind. And at times, we have taken prisoners on the battlefield. But what use would we have for a few fishermen, hunters, and weavers? Might it be possible that these kidnappings have taken place without your consent? I doubt that. But of course, it is always possible that a few bandits might have stolen a shipment of arms. If that were the case, that would explain a great deal. Since you have been of such service to my people, and this grievous affair seems of great concern to you, would you be of a mind to lead the inquiry? Capture a few of these savages. Make it your mission to make them talk. We must understand what is going on before they attack. Very well. I shall get to the bottom of this affair, Your Excellency. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord. You managed to make it through. A group of these enraged beasts managed to get past our defenses. Yes, we fought and defeated them. But how did they make it through? My men are exhausted. We killed some of them, but we were overrun. Our situation is getting more and more desperate. I don't suppose I need to warn you about the dangers of this road. Actually, that is why we're here. Governor Burren sent me. He wants us to find a group of trackers. And I hope that he'd sent you as reinforcements. Silly me. It looks like all we're good for is dying to protect his bloody city. But you wanted to ask me something. Like I said, Governor Burren is hoping that I can find a group of trackers, with your help. I'd like to see you try. Indeed, I was ordered to send out a party of scouts, which I did, despite our losses. They were supposed to find the bastard who's been sending us these critters. One of those savage sorcerers, no doubt. Can you tell me which way they went? Sorry, Your Excellency, I won't tell you anything until I receive some help. You have to understand, I hope that these men are alive. They are also under my command. But those who are here with me now are my main preoccupation. And as we speak, they're dropping like flies. Not to mention the fact that if this outpost falls, there won't be much left to protect the city. So you can go and tell the governor that if he wants me to help you, he will have to help us first. I understand that your situation is desperate, that you want to take care of what appears most urgent. But it's not simply about me saving a few men. It's about stopping these attacks once and for all. By getting to their root cause, I intend to put an end to it. And then any help you hope to receive won't be needed any longer. 
You're right. I'm sorry, these attacks have made me lose my nerve. I don't know what I'm saying. They went towards the west, where the rebels are most numerous. Are you talking about the Danae Exregal? If you like. The governor is certain that these savages are behind the attacks. So I sent my men to find their camp. This isn't the first time that we've tried to find them. But now our survival depends on it. I see. Well, thank you, Captain. I'll try to find your man and put an end to all this. Good luck. And if my men are alive, send them back here, will you? You can count on me. I must go. Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Who are you? What are you doing here? Are you the scout sent by the governor of Hikmet? Can't you tell? He was worried that he wasn't getting any news from you and asked me to find you. He wants me to help him put an end to the attacks. Have you discovered anything? Yes. The camp of rebel savages. We suspected there was one around here, and we finally found it. They must be the ones sending us the beasts. They all come from this region, and these barbarians have sworn to eliminate us. So we... You may be right, but I'd rather be certain. I know the leader of this camp. I'll go talk to her. You... you knew of this camp? These savages are responsible for dozens of deaths, maybe hundreds. Why didn't you inform the governor? Because I'm a diplomat, not a scout. You should go back to the outpost now. I'll take care of all this. I wanted to speak to you about the assaults that Hikmed and its outposts have been sustaining. Assaults? We have nothing to do with it this time. My men are not ready to attack the big city. They're not being attacked by men, but by beasts. Dozens of them. So, they are also attacking the Renaigse? That's a relief. What do you mean? The animals are attacking us as well. They throw themselves at any man crossing their path. As if they were enraged. They even throw themselves at the camp's defenses. I had never seen anything like it before. A similar thing was happening west of the island. The animals were being led by some sort of guardian. It resembled a Nardaig Manaman, but its skin was black and covered in ulcers. I have never seen a guardian that fits the description you've given. I don't think they exist. Could a Denegad have done this? You're a typical Renaigse. You don't understand anything. The Nardaig are our ancestors. None of our people would make a Nardaig suffer. 
even if their heart was black and full of resentment. And yet someone or something is making the beasts aggressive here as well. And we must find it. Three? Do you want us to work together? Why shouldn't we? Don't you want this to stop too? That's true. Mal! Our guardian! He had changed! He is attacking our own! What? Come, follow me! To my help! And take to the us! No idea. I'm sorry. It left me no choice. You fought bravely, and you did what you had to do. Our Guardian had changed. It no longer recognized its children, and it was the one leading these beasts against us. Something really bad must have happened to it. It resembled the other Guardian I told you about, as if they had the same disease. Guardians don't get sick. They are far more than beasts. And yet you and I saw the same thing. At last. The attack should stop now. What are you doing here? Who are these Renites, eh? Spies? They only came here to discover the source of the attacks. And they thought we were responsible. Why are you still here? You should have gone back to the outpost. I... I'm sorry. We were uncertain that we could trust you. You said you knew these... people. And then we heard cries. And saw the giant creature attacking their camp. And we realized that it was this creature who was leading the beasts. And you discovered that we weren't to blame. Yes. Um, 
I'm really sorry. We should go back to the outpost now. And then, if we let them go, they'll tell their leader the location of our camp. You, are you prepared to swear that you will never speak of this place? You... You saved our comrades and maybe our city by killing this beast, so... Yes. We swear. I hope that they will be true to their word. Fine. They can go. We are extremely grateful. Thank you, Direct. Now, let's go tell the governor of Hikmet about this garden. Qua awalem seg, Renaigse. And if you find the one who's behind all this, kill him. Your Excellency, have you been informed? I've been told, yes, that the attacks have ceased. Hikmet has been saved, thanks to you. Was it the natives, as I suspected? No, they were not the cause, and were also victims of the attacks, and their losses were great. The animals answered to the call of a guardian, whose behavior was totally unlike the others. Exactly like the one who led the attacks against San Mateus. These creatures normally protect the natives, answering their call. Why did this one attack them? Are you certain one tribe is not attempting to dominate the others? I don't think so. The Guardian looks sick. No native would treat such a creature like that. There is no doubt someone is behind these attacks. But currently, I have no idea who it might be. I suspect you will lead the investigation and unravel the mystery, as is your custom. While waiting, take this. It's nothing much, but consider it a gift to thank you for your help. Without you, the population of Hikmet would have suffered terribly. Thank you. I'm happy to have helped you avoid a massacre, Your Excellency. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord.
Respectfully, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? Governor Byrne asked me to investigate the abductions the rebels told us about. If we could find the origin and free their comrades, I'm sure they would stop their attack. I need to locate and speak with the other rebels. Do you know where they could be? No. They don't attack often. I fear they're gathering their forces. Captain, the patrol we sent to the west has not returned yet. I may have spoken too quickly, Your Excellency. Although it might still be possible that our men are just delayed. Perhaps you would allow me to search for them. Maybe they cross paths with the rebels. Corporal, do you know which way the patrol went? Of course, Captain. You will lead His Excellency. In hope that our men are still alive. At your command, Captain. Your Excellency, find me at the entrance of the camp when you're ready to start. Are you ready to go, Your Excellency? Yes, let's go. Is that the patrol we're looking for? Yes. That's them. More victims of these savages. But two of the soldiers are missing. Maybe they managed to escape. They'll surely need help. We should look for them. This man needs to be cared for, but in his condition, we can't take him back to the outpost. Allow me. There. That should be better. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Without your help, I would probably have died here. <sighs> Tell us what happened. We came across a group of rebel savages. It was a massacre. A few seconds later, only Franz and I were left. We fled. I managed to drag myself here, but he was not so lucky. The savages caught up with him. Was he captured? Did you see where they took him? They headed north to Frazonegad. But in the state I was in, I didn't see much else. Your Excellency, please. We should get him out of there. They're bound to torture and kill him. We'll take care of it, Corporal. The rebels must have left traces when dragging the prisoner, but not you. You must help your wounded man to reach the outpost. Come on.
There's our group of rebels. The soldier they captured looks dead. Quayes. My name is Desarde. I'm the legate of the congregation. I'm here because I want to talk to your chief. I know who you are. The Renaixe on Ol Manawi. What do you want to say to Armal? I want to talk to him about the abductions and to understand what's going on. You would be the first Renaixe to care. How do we know you're not just saying that to find out where our camp is? I am not part of the Alliance. My only goal is to avoid deaths on both sides. Help me. I am your only chance to free your prisoners without bloodshed. You seem to really believe what you say. I hope I'm not mistaken. Very well. Tell me when you are ready to follow me to our camp. Are you ready to follow me, Ranaikse? Let's go. This way. Let's stay on guard. Always. Even if I doubt this is going to be a trap. It's this way. I'm letting my comrades know we're here, so that they let us pass. Follow me. We are almost there. This way. Come on. This way. This is our main camp. This is where you will find our mal. I hope I am not wrong to lead you here, and that you are not a traitor. So. Here's the famous rebel camp. I hope their leader can tell us more about these abductions. Who are you and what are you doing here, Renaixe? 
My name is Desade. I'm the legate of the Merchant Congregation. I came to talk to you about the abductions and your forthcoming attack. And how did you find our camp? I convinced one of your men to bring me. Well, I'll tell you what we know, then you'll understand why we have to fight lions. Many seasons ago, Sinol Manawi started to disappear. Lions attacked the villages and took them with them. We never saw them again. They were either crazy or so injured that even our best Donegad couldn't do anything. So we counterattacked and captured some of their soldiers. And we learned that they were taking our people to a place they call a laboratory. It is there that they torture and kill them. They talked about experiments. Experiments? So that was the reason for all these abductions. But what do they hope to discover? They hope to find a cure for the Malachor. And I'm afraid they're willing to carry out any atrocity to find one. We found the laboratory, but it is heavily guarded. So we are preparing for war. Do you understand now? Yes. And if what you tell me is true, we must put an end to it. Alert! The lions are attacking! Traitor! It was you who led them to us! No, I swear. They asked me to investigate. It was never a question of attacking you. Then prove it! Fight with us! The Alliance betrayed me as much as you. I owe them nothing. To my help! And death to the others! To my help! And death to the others! Bravely. And your word is true, Honor Manawi. The Alliance is the ally of the Congregation. Taking your side was not a decision I made lightly, but Governor Burren used and betrayed us. And he will answer for it. Please, wait before you attack. I will do everything to dismantle this laboratory and release your people. I trust you, so we will wait. But don't take too long. Kwa'awalem seg. On our Manawi. Goodbye. Lord de Sade. What? Enough with the formalities, Excellency. You owe me an explanation. 
Did you order your troops to attack while I was negotiating under a white flag? I assure you that I have no idea what you are talking about. I would never have placed your life in harm's way. The alliance with the congregation is crucial, and you know it. Your suspicions are unfounded. I'm sorry. It is now clear that decisions are being made without my consent. I'm going. You mock me, Excellency. I can't believe this matter slipped your vigilance. Everything the Danaea Exregal have told me has proven true. Your men attacked and carried off natives. I witnessed it. According to what I've been told, they are taken to a place where experiments are carried out, where they are tortured. I... It is true that I knew of the existence of this laboratory. The place is dedicated to research on the Malachor. If a remedy is ever to be discovered, it will happen there. But I assure you that I was not aware that natives were being taken there. Allow me to doubt your sincerity, Excellency. I intend to pay the place a visit and see for myself what happens there. Who directs the research? Our most brilliant savant, the Doctor Asili. Certainly his legend precedes him. He is the master of your friend, the Professor Afra. Dr. Asili is no longer my master, and I regret that he ever was. We should be off to Sade. If this laboratory were what I think it is, the best course of action would be to burn it to the ground. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord. No one answers! You speak to the legate of the merchant congregation, soldier. I have been sent by Governor Burren. I have to talk to Dr. Asili. I don't take orders from the governor, nor the congregation. Be on your way. He won't obey me either, Greenblood. He's not from my regiment. Very well. We're leaving. I wasn't expecting that. It's a real fortress. There must be other guards. Be careful.
How awful. They've been reduced to burning the bodies. How could members of the Guard choose to participate in this massacre? To my help! Yeah. Death yeah. to the Arras! Yeah. Move away! Things are yeah. about to get dicey! Yeah. I don't have the key. You're not one of them. Please, get us out of here. Not? What are you doing locked up here? These scientists captured and abused us. They performed experiments, made us drink potions, took our blood. I heard them say that they wanted to find out how we are immune to the Malachor. None of it makes any sense. Please. Get us out of here! I'll find a way to open this cage. I can't believe that a silly could have fallen so low. I'm s- I don't have the key. It's blocked. To my help! And death to the others! Watch out! Grenade! <laughs> no right to be here. I have come to free your prisoners and put an end to all the horrors that take place here. <sighs> I knew this would happen eventually. This all went too far. Dr. Asili here. He lost his mind a long time ago. But what are you going to do with us? Arrest you. Then I expect you will be sentenced. <sighs> no, please. We only followed the doctor's orders. We tried to stop him. But he is the director of the lab. You could have reported it to the governor or left this place. He threatened to destroy our lives. We could not... Please, don't lock us up. You can say all of this in court. It's up to them to judge you. <sighs> they will want to make an example of us. We'll not see the light again. You should have thought about that before helping that monster. To my help! Death to the
These poor people lost their lives only a few hours ago. They could not survive this mutilation. This note carefully describes the sequence of the experiments. There are even sketches. It's hard not to feel sick. This is proof of all the horrors committed here. A silly has locked himself in his office. What a surprise to see you here. You finally came to your senses. Master, it's not... Who is this person? I'm the legate of the merchant congregation, and I'm here to put an end to your crimes. My crimes? What are you talking about? My work was for the good of humanity. Don't tell me you're crying over some savages. The survival of our species requires sacrifice. What did you hope to find from all these experiments? Since the Malachor never reached this island, I wanted to check if these savages were sensitive to it. And I discovered that they were naturally resistant. Do you realize the implications of this discovery? So I tried to isolate this resistance to develop a cure in order to send it to the people on the continent. But I doubt that you will be able to understand the subtlety of such an approach. Come on, Afra, my dear student. Will you let these narrow-minded inquisitors decide my fate? Are you not also devoted to science and truth? Science and truth do not excuse your lack of humanity. I'm ashamed of having been taught by you, and that I didn't warn Burren that you'd gone mad. If I had, we could have prevented all of this. You disappoint me so much, Afra. A second time. When I think what I wasted trying to teach you science. We learned everything we wanted to know. This lab will close and you will answer for everything you have done. You think so? Gods, capture these people! To my help! <laughs> death to the Emmas! Watch out! <laughs> Move away! Things are about to get dicey! Stop! Think of my knowledge. All that I have accomplished. That can never disappear. You will answer for your crimes in court. But I'll be out soon. My colleagues will understand the importance of my work. We shall see about that. I can't believe it. Constantine's Malachor was caused by a silly. The potion we were made to drink when we landed on the island was contaminated. How dare he do such a thing? And why? I'm sorry, Greenblood. I never thought someone would try to kill him that way.
my help. And death to the other. Thank you. Thank you. We owe you our lives. Just a little more patience. I still have to release the other prisoners. May the grass be forever soft under your feet. I thought I was losing my mind in this cage. I must release the other prisoners. You will be out soon. To my help! And death to the others! Now that they are free, we must help the prisoners escape this place. If they leave through the city, Hikmet guards will arrest them. So we have to find another way to get them out. Clear the way. The mechanism doesn't work. I need to take a closer look. Let's go. I found a way out of the city. But be careful. You are weakened, and creatures roam these tunnels. I will lead the way.
There you are. You're free. You have saved our lives. How can we thank you? We will never forget what you have done for us on Al Manawi. Yes, we will always be grateful. We're not very far from the Hikmet outpost. You will have to be careful. I know how to reach the port without being seen. Perfect. As for you, you should take refuge in Vik Shadir. You will be safe there, but you should avoid the Alliance patrols. We'll get there. Qua'awal and Segven. Your Excellency, Lord de Sade, and to what do I owe this honor? I've been to Asili's laboratory and what I discovered was abominable. Hundreds of poor souls tortured, victims of horrifying experiments. There were so many dead that a pit had been dug to burn the bodies. How horrifying. I cannot believe it. The natives were not the only victims of these crimes. There are also a number of noughts. Noughts? Pardon me for doubting you, but do you have proof of what you say? And have you brought Dr. Asili to me so he may answer these accusations? Yes, we captured him. Really? Very well. I will ensure that he is judged as quickly as possible. What was done with the prisoners that were being held in the laboratory? They were freed. The Denea Exregau are satisfied and should call off their attack. What a relief. Finally, some good news. How can I repay you? By allowing me to take part in the trial proceedings. What I saw merits justice, and I fear that the accused will find a great many defenders amongst his fellow savants. It is a rather novel request, but granted. I shall inform the prosecutor. Let us remember that the madness of a man should not cast a shadow upon the greater sum of his work. His research is perhaps our only chance of discovering a remedy. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord.
Hello. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? De Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. Governor Burren told me to pay you a visit. Oh. It is you who arrested Dr. Asili and must help me prepare the trial. Exactly. Excellent. We will have lots to do if we want the doctor to pay for his crimes. The accused has a lot of support. Any evidence and testimonies you can gather will be useful. We'll have no problem gathering witnesses. His laboratory cells were full of them. We will call them to the witness box, of course. But be aware that if the victims are natives, their words will unfortunately not carry much weight here. There were also some noughts. Perhaps I could convince some of the doctor's colleagues to talk. Their testimony will be crucial. The word of other scholars is likely to be the only thing that condemns him. That plus any material evidence you can gather. I picked up a strange powder in the laboratory. A substance that I've not been able to identify. You should show it to an alchemist. We need to know what it is to be able to use it. These documents describe Dr. Asili's work, as well as the horrible experiments he was performing. Perfect. I will read them in detail. We will no doubt find something to support my prosecution. I have found a letter proving that Dr. Asili voluntarily transmitted the Malachor to my cousin, Constantin Dorsey. I would like to add that I too was a victim of this poisoning. Did the accused try to take the life of the governor of New Serene? This is an extremely serious crime. Indeed. He saw my cousin and me as the ideal control group to prove his theories. And no humanitarian or diplomatic consideration could put a stop to his ambition. This letter alone is crucial proof. I will put it on our file. Do we have any chance of winning? Yes, I am rather confident. You have provided overwhelming evidence. But if we had witnesses, we would have an even bigger chance of winning. I will return to you soon. The Nort should be at the port, and the islanders had to take refuge in Vikshadir. As for the scientists, they said they would go back to the governor's laboratory. I should give this powder to someone who can tell me what it is. Is everything all right? Once again, thanks to you. These people wanted to kill me. They certainly wanted to prevent you from testifying at the doctor's trial. The doctor will be judged. I suppose you'd like me to testify about how we suffered. Indeed. If you do not fear another attempt on your life by these men. Don't worry. I won't put up with intimidation. From now on, my people will watch over me until I can testify. And I intend to witness the execution of our torturer. You can count on me. Thank you. Your word will be crucial during the trial. I never thought I'd see you here again. Why are you still free? Dr. Honor made sure that I was set free. He needed my help. What do you want? What do the other scholars think of Dr. Asili now that his actions have been revealed for all to see? Most still admire him greatly. He is... was the greatest amongst us, you know? They didn't witness what was happening in the lab, and they have little interest in the natives. For them, the main problem is political. 
given that the war against the rebels cost us dearly. Until they understand the horrors that happened there, they will not have any moral issues. What is your purpose here? I help Dr. Anur to understand the research of my former master. He's the one who became his successor. I do hope that he doesn't use the same methods. Of course not. What about your other colleagues? What's become of them? They felt guilty. They stopped their experiments and returned to Al Saad. I discovered this strange powder in one of the laboratory's chests. Do you know what it is? I did see the doctor using it once or twice, but I don't know what it is. But I can study it for you if you want. I have the tools that will allow me to do so here. So, what is it? It is a quintessence of black blood. Probably created using the blood of numerous patients. The doctor managed to harness the very concept of the malachor in this powder. A single pinch ingested by someone would be enough for them to be afflicted by the disease. With the quantities that you brought me, hundreds of people could be contaminated. <sighs> it's terrifying. I cannot believe a silly would do such a thing. Here, these are my notes. I wrote down all the details of my experiments, as well as my conclusions. Thank you. I will relay them to the prosecutor. Are you prepared to testify against Dr. Asili? I would like to say no. You had me thrown in prison, and without Dr. Honor's intervention, I would still be there. But I can't stop thinking about what we did in that laboratory. I think only by testifying will I ease my conscience. Thank you. Your story could change the outcome of this trial. I must leave you. What she saw working alongside a silly obviously upset her. She will make an excellent witness. My beloved, can I do anything for you? I would like you to tell me about a silly. I was expecting you to come and see me about this. What would you like to know? Were you aware of Dr. Asili's experiments? In part, yes. That's why I chose not to be his student any longer. Why not say anything? Because I never thought he would go so far. Over time, he became more and more cruel. I found his approach brutal. As if by meeting the natives, it deprived him of all humanity. He spoke of them as test subjects, never as people. But there was a time when he was the greatest doctor and scientist in the Alliance. And I clung on to that memory. You do know that you were captured thanks to him? Yes, but I thought the natives wanted to trade us merely as prisoners of war. I was blind and stupid. I regret it terribly. Do you think, as your master does, that science justifies all sacrifices? No. I may have believed that at one time, without of course ever imagining that we'd resort to such cruel treatment. But Duncus, you and Siora have opened my eyes to the limits of science. To worship it as we do in the Alliance does not make us better than Teleme. In your opinion, were the horrors practiced in this laboratory necessary for his research? No, even if he was convinced of it. General interest outweighs the suffering of a few individuals. He wanted results quickly, to the point of neglecting slower, more humane methods. I hope we'll succeed in ensuring these experiments never happen again. Would you be willing to testify against Dr. Asili during his trial? Of course. I was going to talk to you about that. I want to convince my colleagues that we must give up these kind of methods. And even if it costs me dearly, I want my master to pay for what he did. Anything else? I must leave you.
Hey! You are the Onol Minawi who freed us. We managed to reach Vikshadir. They told me what you did for them, Renaikse. Well done. I was able to give them the care they needed. Some wounds will take time to heal, but they are safe thanks to you. I'm happy to see that they're better. But you didn't come here for that, did you? No. I came to ask for your help. The doctor who captured and tortured you is about to be tried for his crimes. He has a lot of support among his people. He's a respected man despite what he did. If we don't have testimony from some of his victims, he will surely be released. You'll have our words. We'll go to the Grand City and tell our story. And the Mad Lion will die for causing so much harm to our people. May the Earth engulf him. You can return to Hikmet. I'll make sure they get there in good health. Thank you, Tiernach. And thank you all. I blame myself for forcing these poor people back to the city where they have suffered so much. Doctor... Doctor Honor, what do you want? What is your role and what is your research topic? I'm in charge of the Governor's laboratories. My main research concerns the Malachor, of course. Above all, we searched for a way to reduce the suffering of the sick. Searched? Now that we have access to my colleague Asili's work, it gives us hope of finding a cure. So the crimes he committed while conducting his work do not concern you? He will be judged for that, but it would be a shame for him to have done all this for nothing. What do you think of Dr. Asili now that you've learned how he conducted his research? Well, obviously the few excesses he has conceded himself are unfortunate, but he remains the greatest scientist that the Alliance has ever known. His work has had a profound effect on science. It seems quite unfair to me to reduce his life's work just to what he has done lately. If I understand correctly, you will be one of his defenders. Naturally. I don't deny that he made a terrible mistake, but he meant well. And he was probably acting on behalf of our helplessness to combat the Malachor. Would you agree to speak at the trial? Your influence could be crucial. Oh, but I already intended to give a statement. His lawyer came to find me. So are you ready to defend a man who used to torture and murder to advance his research? Indeed. Because I think the entire work of a scientist should not be judged on a single mistake. It is obvious that he should not have used such methods, but a silly has never been very political. I doubt he understood the implications of his actions. So you're saying the only problem in this case is political? Essentially, yes. The war he nearly caused could have been expensive for our governor and the city. But let's not fool ourselves. No tears will be shed over the fate of a few of those bloodthirsty savages. What interest do you have in defending Dr. Asili? You've obviously taken his place since his arrest. I understand that you admired him a lot, but under his tutelage, you could not really impose your own ideas. Well, now you finally have a chance to leave your own mark on history. You are not wrong, but I find it rather unlikely that he will be sentenced. I have gathered a lot of damning evidence against him. And with your testimony... I could finally publish my research on fountain contamination. Very well. You've convinced me. 
I will now testify for the prosecution. It is true that it's time to turn the page and leave his cruel methods behind. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Anur is an influential scholar. His testimony would convince the judges. You have returned, Your Excellency. Do you have any news on our matter? A naught victim of Dr. Asili agreed to testify at the trial. Excellent. This kind of testimony will certainly rattle his defense. The Islanders will testify at the trial. Their injuries will surely convince the judges. Indeed. But do bear in mind that the Islanders are not highly regarded in Hikmet. I managed to convince the scientists in the governor's laboratory to speak in our favor. Excellent. These are not direct witnesses, but if they denounce the doctor, we are sure to be heard. I even got a testimony from one of Dr. Asili's colleagues. Perfect. That will convince our scientists, and you know how important they are in Hikmet. Afra, one of Dr. Asili's former students, has agreed to testify. Excellent. This woman is very respected by the governor. Her statement will carry a lot of weight. An alchemist studied the powder that we found in the laboratory. Apparently, it's some kind of concentrate made from the blood of several patients with the Malachor. It seems that less than a pinch of this powder is enough to contaminate whoever consumes it. There's enough here to make a small town sick. A terrifying thought. I will add the analysis and this powder to the evidence on record. You have gathered overwhelming evidence. The defense will have a hard time saving the accused. I think we can go to trial with confidence now. Will the trial begin soon? It seems to be the right time. Excellent investigation work. I think we have every chance of winning. Where will the trial be held? At the palace. I regret to inform you that you will not be able to attend. However, I'm sure the Governor will keep you informed of the outcome of the proceedings. Madame, congratulations. The trial was exemplary. Asili's madness was exposed to the entire world. And you have demonstrated the horror of his methods. Thank you, Excellency. But all praise should be showered upon Sir Dasade. The evidence he supplied was irrefutable. It was necessary that you hear the victims, in order to understand the extremities to which your science has taken you. Come now. One cannot conclude that science was guilty here. Not science, but the savants were. It is never right to set aside humanity in the name of the common good. No knowledge justifies killing or torture. Your words are wise, and I promise to remember them. You have not always shown yourself a man of impeccable judgment, Excellency. We are all, from time to time, victim of our own blind enthusiasm, that is true. But this trial has shaken my usual resolve. It may very well change the course of history.
Afra, are you certain that you want to attend this? I do not want to attend. I must. Dr. Asili, you have been found guilty of all accusations brought against you. In consequence, the Bridge Alliance Tribunal condemns you to death. Do you have any final words? You treat me like a monster. But how many times have you stayed your own hands? So close to the goal to finally find a remedy, you would have done as I. What do a few lives mean when the future of all humanity hangs in the balance? You are nothing more than idiots, incompetents, and you, Baron, are the greatest hypocrite of all. You know that I am right. Executioner, earn your pay. You know that I am right. My beloved, can I do anything for you? I must leave you. Constantine, my dear cousin, I'm always happy to see you. What news do you bring? We managed to solve the problem of the attacks on San Mateus. Really? So what was causing them? The city and its outposts were continuously being attacked by animals. These beasts were led by a large creature that strangely resembled a mountain guardian. This is the same creature which High King Vinbar turned into, isn't it? Exactly. Except it looked sick and it didn't act like the High King did. It was calling the animals around it and it seemed like it was transferring its disease to them before making them attack. I have never seen anything like it. And there's more. Hikmet was in a similar situation. Do you remember? Of course. Don't tell me that a Guardian was involved there as well. Yes. The Governor was convinced that the attacks were led by the Islanders. And yet they were being attacked as well. And it was by their side that I fought the creature. That time it was a Nardai Glenderman, a beach guardian, but it seemed just the sick, and it was also manipulating the animals to make them aggressive. So, it would be some kind of epidemic affecting the guardians. I don't see what we can do about it. Actually, I think you've already done what had to be done, by eliminating those that were threatening our neighbors. Perhaps, but I'm certain there's more to it than a simple epidemic. These beasts attack in a coordinated fashion, which requires an intelligence that they don't have. You're exaggerating, dear cousin. The attacks you thought were coordinated may just have been coincidental. You may be right, but I can't help thinking that someone is behind all this. Do you really believe that a Danegad would want to take over the island? Cousin, you know how much I respect you, but frankly, this doesn't seem very coherent. But I see it's already quite late. If you'll excuse me, dear cousin. Regrettably, I must leave you. Where are you going? Not very far, rest assured. But I have a small personal matter to take care of, you see. Don't be concerned. There's absolutely no risk. Use the opportunity to take some rest. You've really performed miracles recently. See you later. But why would he leave like that? God, do you know where my cousin is going? Sorry, Your Excellency. His Highness didn't tell me anything. You are one of his bodyguards, aren't you? I am, Your Excellency. But recently, it has been difficult to force His Highness to accept our presence. 
Recently? You mean this isn't the first time he's left without an escort? I... I'm sorry, Your Excellency. You better tell me everything. But I... Fine. I don't mean to be disrespectful towards him. But His Highness's behavior has been very... peculiar recently. He sleeps very little and goes out alone almost every night. And it didn't occur to anyone that I should be informed? Well, His Highness had specifically ordered us not to tell you about it. And where does he go? I thought the days when he used to go from tavern to tavern were over. He... he doesn't go to taverns, Your Excellency. From what I know, he... he goes outside the city. Where could he go outside the city? I've no idea. We saw him going north. That's all I know. Listen. I understand this matter is putting you in a difficult situation. You were supposed to protect my cousin wherever he went, but he refused and ordered you to keep your mouth shut. But Constantine is not just my governor. He's my cousin. I'm worried about him. He's already been abducted once when leaving the city. So, if you know anything else... I don't really know where he's going, Your Excellency. But I think I know where you could find out. When he doesn't leave the palace, he stays in his office for hours. He writes so much down in there that he could fill entire books. Here, I have the key. Take it. I hope you find His Highness and manage to make him see reason. I don't like this at all. What could he be doing outside every night? Normally, I would have said getting drunk at the tavern. But clearly, that isn't the case. I'm starting to believe that the revelations of Enon Mil Frichtemann had some truth to them. Let's rummage through his papers. We may find a clue. It can't be easy to discover that your cousin has descended into madness. But we can't let him kill these people simply because he's afraid they might have seen him. The trees on your road always bear fruit. Thanks. You saved us. These beasts would have torn us to shreds. These animals were strange, as if they were enraged. Thanks again, Renaixe. I'm glad I could help you. And perhaps you can do me a favor in return. I'm looking for a young man, a Renaixe. But he looks a bit like an Onol Manawi. Someone like you? In some ways. But his marks are different, darker. He's talking about the crazy Don Egad. Indeed, that might be him. Do you know where to find him? No, we see him passing by around nightfall, but we don't know where he's going. He walks along the path, often followed by some beasts. He has a sinister look in his eyes. He scares me, so we stay hidden. And you do well to hide. I think he's the one who sent these animals to attack you. Do you have any idea how I could figure out where he's going? He could hide in the old house. He would see him passing by and could follow, couldn't he? You're right. 
If you take this path to the right, you'll reach an abandoned house. You can hide there. And from up there, you will be able to see the path perfectly. Thank you. You've been a great help. And stay hidden. You may still be in danger. Be prudent, on all Manawi. You're very isolated here. Why live so far from a village? It's a long story. Matir, will you tell him? When I was young, I got engaged to a young man. But he wasn't my Minundanem. I thought he was, but I was wrong. And one day, I met the one I would love for all my life. As I had broken my engagement, we were exiled. So, our parents came to settle here. They built this house, and we were born. There. Now you know the whole story. Do you want to know anything else? I'll leave you alone. Kwa awalem seg. We can't be seen from the path. Let's wait here to see where Constantine goes. I see him. And he's not alone. Here. Let's follow him, quick. Constantine, what are you doing? Cousin! You're here! I, I, I would have preferred that you learn all of this another way. To be able to reveal everything to you in better circumstances. But whatever power we earn, there are some things that escape us. I have no idea what you're talking about, but what are you doing here? I seem monstrous to you. I am well aware of that. But I promise to explain everything when the moment is right. Then you will understand. You will see. The temptation is so great to share all with you right now. You have done so much for me. You have given me so much. I haven't forgotten, believe me. But I still have more to do. Forgive me and have patience. Hold them back. But do not kill him for anything in the world. Yeah. 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 
Konstantin, come back and explain yourself. I think I told this spoiled brat how to wield a weapon. And now he's throwing beasts. He's gone mad. It's the only explanation. Close to his sarifness, dearie. Move away. Things are about to get dicey. But I don't understand. What he wants? Eternity. Strength. Power. It is what they all want. Those who take without looking beyond themselves. Like all those from the faraway lands. He wasn't like that. He couldn't care less about all that. Then it is the sickness. The brevity of his existence that terrified him to the point it changed who he is. You must stop him. Each time that he bonds, he destroys me a little more. And with me, the hope for a cure. And now it's my heart, my most sacred sanctuary that he covets. You must kill him. That is madness. The consequence of his folly, yes. Believe me, there is no other solution. Stop him, flesh of my earth, or there will be nothing left to save. I still can't believe this. I understand what you feel. I have trouble believing it myself. But Enon Mielfrichtemann never lies. We need to stop your cousin by any means possible. We must learn more if we want to understand his plans and prepare against them. This hiding place he was talking about in his notes. We must find it. If in his folly he remembered just a small bit of what I taught him, then he shall warn his guard to be ready for us. We will need to be discreet and find ourselves allies. You're thinking of all the creatures that he has perverted. A veritable army. Precisely. And against an army we will need soldiers. The natives will follow you because their god has ordered it. We might also be able to count on help from the Norts. We'll need to speak to their admiral. We should also be able to count on Sieglinde. Her troops will be all the more welcome. And of course, we can also go and find the Mother Cardinal, as well as Governor Burren. <sighs> what an absurd project. On the continent, they would brand us crazy, but not here. On an island where everything is possible, and all folly is accepted. Let us go. We need to put an end to all of this.
What brings you here on Aumanawi? I came to ask for your help in stopping my cousin, Dunkus. Did you hear about the attacks of creatures led by strange guardians throughout the island? Yes, Darren sent a messenger to tell me about it. My cousin was sick, and to cure him, Katasak used the bonding ritual on him. But the power he received from it made him mad, and he started bonding himself in other places. He transformed his guardians each time, and used them to attack those he considers to be his rivals. What you're telling me is terrifying. Katasak and Devosh Tire should never have bonded him. Your cousin is breaking the balance. He's consuming and will only want to consume more. Indeed. Enon Miel Frichterman warned me that Constantine was now targeting the sanctuary at the heart of the island. I cannot fight him alone. I need allies. I intend to go and find the other factions and ask for their support. But I also need your people. Because we must all stand together to stop the threat that is weighing on the island. Your will to create an alliance between all the peoples on this island is wise and noble. And the call of Enomil Frichtemann cannot remain unanswered. We will be by your side in the battle. I am not a fighter, but Dedra will lead our warriors. And I would also like for you to take this weapon. I pray it will be useful in the fight that is coming. Thank you, Dunkus. Don't thank me. You managed to earn my people's trust. And you fight for a cause that affects us all. May the Earth support each of your steps. And may the volcano give you its strength. I must admit that I expected Dunkus to be more angered when he learned what Constantine had done. He's a sage among sages. Even amongst the Donegada. Enon Mil Frichtemann speaks in his ear. I think he already knew what was happening, even before we came to see him. That confirms it. I made the right choice. Tierfredi couldn't have a better High King. Desarde, what can I do for you? I have come to ask for your help, Admiral. My cousin has been plunged into madness, and he apparently wishes to conquer the whole island. He took control of many creatures by reenacting rituals he learned from the islanders, and now he uses them to attack the cities and the villages of those he considers to be his rivals. A difficult situation, admittedly, but one that does not concern us. Who's in charge of the island is none of our business to Sarde, and you know that. It actually does concern you. If my cousin takes control of the island, soon there will be no ports where your ships can berth. He's not looking for political influence. He desires power. Absolute power. I see. It's a decent argument. So what now? We must stop him at all costs. And for that, I will need allies. I already have the support of other factions, but I was hoping I could count on the help of the Nords. You can. My men aren't really used to fighting on land, but they will be by your side. You have proven time and time again that we can trust you. Thank you, Admiral. May the winds be in your favor, Desarde. You'll need all the help you can get.
Hello, Commander. Lord Desade. How can I be of service to you? I have come to ask for your help. I'm at your service, Your Excellency. What is it you want from me? We need reinforcements to protect the sanctuary of the islanders, north of the island. Very well. I will send some troops there. But may I ask who or what they will be fighting? Creatures, in great numbers. And probably my cousin. I beg your pardon? As your men must have told you, he has changed a lot recently. Ever since he was cured of the Malachor and bonded to the island, he has become obsessed with power. He is now targeting the heart of the island. If he succeeds, we're all doomed. I have indeed heard reports of the Governor's peculiar behavior. Since he is our employer, I asked my men to turn a blind eye. But thanks to your help, we avoided dishonor. I won't forget it. If you're telling me that we are in danger, and that we need to go to this sanctuary, we'll go. Thank you, Commander. Anything else? You seem to know Kurt well. If you're expecting her to tell you some nasty little secrets, it might be best if I head away. Don't say such silly things, Kurt. You know I only have good things to say about you. We have known each other a long time, and we have fought together. I think we have been brought closer by the ideals of the Guard. A mercenary guild, certainly, but for whom honor and loyalty are not empty words. Some would tell you that we're past it, that our vision is too naive and idealistic. Perhaps that's true, but I do not mind fighting and risking my life for what I believe is right. Kurt, too. Anything else? I have to go. Goodbye. I also have a lot to do. Until next time, Your Excellency. Greetings! So... To Hikmet. Let's go!
Your Excellency, Lord de Sade, and to what do I owe this honor? I have come to solicit your help and to propose we forge an alliance. An alliance? Against whom? You remember, no doubt, the attacks that fell upon Hikmet, but also San Mateus, and against the natives. Of course. You told me that different Guardians sent the beasts. Precisely. And the Guardians were manipulated by someone. I discovered who it was. This revelation will not please you, but I have no choice but to tell you. It is Constantine. Uh, surely you jest. What is the meaning of this? Do you know how many men have died during these attacks? Allow me to continue, I beg you. My cousin's sickness shook him to the core. Then, there was a ritual and his capture. And Constantine has fallen into madness. He has been increasing these rituals in order to link himself to the island, to gain power and manipulate its creatures. He is fighting a war against everyone, and it now appears he wants to take control of Tirfredi. He is preparing to attack the Volcano Sanctuary, and I need help to stop him. It is in the name of the Congregation that I come to see you. Constantine betrayed us as well. That's madness. It is complete madness. All of this superstitious nonsense. These absurd theories. I believed you sincere, Desarde. Which does not mean that I believe you now. But no matter. You are in need of men to stop your cousin who has already attacked us. Precisely. I have already gathered support, but I need as many allies as possible. Let us be clear. I don't believe for an instant that this story has a link to the island or whatever foolishness. But I do trust you. You have rendered us valuable services and have supported us. And since we cannot allow the crimes of your cousin to go unpunished, we will stand beside you. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. You have improved our chances of success tenfold. I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord. Your Eminence, I salute you. Sir de Sardé, what can I do for you? Do you remember I thought that someone must have been responsible for the attacks you sustained? Yes, you thought that this guardian who sent us the animals couldn't have been acting alone. And I was right, sadly. You're hesitating. 
Are you afraid of my reaction? Indeed. As the person responsible is none other than my cousin, Constantine. Uh, does this mean that the congregation has decided to wage war on us? And thanks to which obscure alliance has your cousin been able to manipulate these creatures? Constantine acted alone, and he betrayed us as much as he betrayed you, believe me. As for the way he manipulated these creatures, do you remember that my cousin was sick? Absolutely. And it is said that his recovery was the result of a rather suspicious miracle. Are you telling me that your cousin has made a pact with the demons of this island? Something like that. He was cured by a Donegad of the island who performed a bonding ritual. But the power he received from this made him thirsty for more, and he bonded himself to other places, thus gaining control over the guardians who were protecting these sacred places. But why attack us? Did his madness make him forget about our alliance? His thirst for power is making him want to control the island entirely by himself. And I know that for this purpose he will soon attack the native's main sanctuary on the volcano. I won't stand a chance against all the creatures he's taken control of. And I need some help. Others have already joined me. But we also need the support of Teleme. Having a common enemy should help us forget all the differences that have been opposing us. The idea that we would protect the Sanctuary from an insular demon is completely insane. But you have helped us several times, and I trust your judgment. You can count on our help. My men will fight by your side. Thank you, Your Eminence. Thanks to your wisdom, we have a chance to prevail. I must leave you. Naturally, Your Excellency. Hello, Glenda. Byrt Tirtomad on all Menawi. What can I do for you? To tell you that men are going to come all the way to the sanctuary. Some Renaigse. I thank you for coming to warn me in person. But our High King has already spoken to me. I am disgusted to welcome warriors of the faraway island. But the decision is not mine. And in truth, we do not have the choice, do we? No. It is all of Tirfredi and Enon Mil Frichtemen that's in danger. We have need of every able warrior to protect them. You need to prepare yourself as well. I fear that you will not be spared. We will fight, have no doubts. Because such is our duty and our will. These are our lands that are attacked. I have no doubt. Good luck, Glendan. May the rocks give you their toughness. You shall need it more than everyone else. Can I do anything else for you? I must leave. Goodbye. Kwa awelem seg.
The cave that Constantine indicated in his note shouldn't be very far. He has guards that are very loyal to him. There's a chance they'll be protecting his hideout. Constantine has marked several places on this map. I recognize some of them. They are sacred places for the natives, places of connection. This place, this journal, my poor Constantine, you have completely lost your mind. What are you hoping to achieve with these rituals? No Donegad has ever done such a thing. It goes against the balance that we are defending. Enon Mir Frichtemann was right. Your cousin wants power. He is feeding from the strength of Tyr Fredi. So much so that he's threatening Enon Mir Frichtemann himself. He wants to take his place. To think he's been plotting this absurd plan for weeks. He even used us to achieve it. The intruder in the sanctuary was certainly sent by him to scout the place. We'll need to gather allies if we're going to stop him. But we will also have to weaken him and break apart the bonds that he's established. I don't know exactly how these things work. And unless you do, we're gonna need help. How about Dunkus? Mev scares me a little. You're right. Let's go and find him.
What brings you here on Omanawi? As I've told you before, my cousin bonded himself in many places before he decided to target the heart of the island. You did tell me, and you must know that by doing so, he has acquired a power that no Donegada has ever possessed. That is why I need your help. We need to break some of his bonds in order to weaken him. Rest assured, all the Donegada will answer to the call of their Hoi King. And with their help, we will heal the wound your cousin has opened. However, to accomplish this, it is I who will need your help. What can I do? During the ritual, the one who is bonding himself spills some of his blood near the base of a stone. And this blood summons a guardian. The guardian lifts the stone so that it may serve as an anchor point for the bond. The only way to break this bond is to have a guardian topple the stone. We will be able to do it, but these rituals take a long time. Too long to be done quickly. So, in the meantime, you must prevent your cousin from drawing magic from the place. Here, take these seeds and plant them at the bottom of your cousin's bonding stones. These plants grow very fast, and their roots will prevent him from drawing the strength of Tiefradi. However, you must be careful, because the guardians corrupted by him will come to defend the stones. Thank you, Dunkers. And thank you for wanting to stop your cousin. Don't worry. I will send my people to finish the work of the plants I have given you. the seed Dunkus gave us at the base of the raised stone. Look! The plant seems to be growing extremely fast. The Donegarda of Dunkus's clan are sure to be here soon to finish breaking the bond.
seems to be growing extremely fast. The Donnegarda of Dunkus's clan are sure to be here soon to finish breaking the bond. How are you feeling, my child? What you are about to do is difficult. Don't make it harder than it has to be, Petrus. Fighting against your cousin isn't pleasant, but it's the only logical thing to do. A nicer way of saying he has no choice. Indeed. I must stop Constantine, regardless of what it may cost me. Not only to obtain an antidote to the Malachor, but also to save this island. I have learned many things by your side, and thanks to you, I was able to give my mother back to the Earth. I won't forget this. And this is my land, my people. I will be by your side. You will not go through this ordeal alone. What's happened to Constantine is regrettable. But you're doing what must be done. You're a good person, Greenblood. Then you can count on your old Master of Arms to protect you. We will all be with you. After all, this concerns all of us, doesn't it? Naturally. We will be by your side to support you both physically and spiritually. Thank you. You have been precious allies, and you are proving once more the value of your friendship. Now let's go. It'll be a shame if we arrive too late. The entrance to the sanctuary has been forced. A fight took place here. Constantine managed to get through. Let's hurry.
Desade. Glad to see you. Sadly, we couldn't stop your cousin. He suddenly stormed our position, along with a horde of enraged creatures. We didn't stand a chance. And now there are beasts attacking us relentlessly. My men are doing all they can to stop them. We thought it best to stay here to keep the path open for you, should you want to face your cousin. Thank you. You did well. I'll do everything in my power to catch him and stop him from carrying out his plan. Keep holding on as long as you can. I need to be able to reach him. Wait! There's a group of creatures coming! Maybe enlighten you protect me in this battle! Bit of poison on my blade! And let's go! I'll stay here with them, Greenblood. He's right. We must help them stop these creatures. Are you sure? Every minute gained is a minute that allows you to save us. Glad to have you with us, Kurt. Just like the good old days. And thank you too, Afra. It is an honor. Enough with the talking, Greenblood. Go. And stop, Constantine. I'd hate to be doing this for nothing. In that case, thank you. And good luck to both of you. Oh, and Afra. Be careful. Is this the last time we'll see each other, then? I don't know. Go. There you are. I was starting to think that we would die here for nothing. Your cousin just passed through here with a horde of beasts, and he keeps sending us more. We won't hold very long. We're not used to fine creatures like these. We are, and we will hold long enough for you to reach the heart, even if we must die in the process. But you must chase him. You must prevent him from performing the ritual at all costs. If Enon Milfrichtemann dies, we're all doomed. I'm well aware of that, believe me. But here come some more beasts. To arms!
Stay with my people. And I'll stay with her. One blade more can't hurt. We need to prevent the beasts from following your tracks. Yeah, we could use some help here, to be honest. I wouldn't have put it that way, but the Moridigan isn't wrong. You see? Over and done. You should go now. And may the volcano give you its strength. Well, good luck. There you are. Praise the Enlightened. Your cousin... ...has already reached the heart. Our other allies inform me. They are also trying to stop the creatures. What do you intend to do? Pursue him all the way there and do everything I can to stop him. In that case, may the Enlightened keep you in his divine... Oh no. More beasts are coming! Be prepared! I'm staying with my people. I knew you'd say that. Well, I wasn't going to let the young ones get all the glory. Your help would be a blessing, father. You see? You should go now, my child. Be careful. We are all praying for your success. Thank you, Petrus. Be careful, too.
Sit in. Restrain him. done this but for you for us so that we may live free at last this makes no sense Constantine it's madness you don't understand because you're still attached to the old world 
This old, dying world which, to survive, has betrayed, used, and manipulated us and would not have hesitated to kill us. Perhaps, but I've seen death, cousin. And I understood the vanity of it all. My father's ruses just so he could earn more power. The political bowing and scraping to preserve corrupted nations. I have been offered unrivaled power, allowing me to get rid of this. To send the old world back to its inevitable death and to build something new here. Something unique. And this new world is my gift to you. You and I could be its new gods, the immortal and benevolent monarchs. He himself is the incarnation of the old world he is speaking of. He has its vices and its poison. For his own immortality, he's prepared to destroy everything around him, to break millennia of cycles. I implore you, flesh of my land, think of all the lives that will come to an end to feed his pride. Don't listen to this old god. He's like all the others, after all, clinging to life. All you have to do is to bind yourself here, with me, and we will be gods together, forever. After the fall of Constantine, my young student managed to establish stronger links between the old nations and the natives. Some of their Donegada were even invited to the continent, and with their help, it slowly became a land filled with life again. And for the first time in a long while, the number of cases of the Malachor is decreasing. Those who bravely fought at Dorhad Genadu were celebrated everywhere. After all, if it weren't for this unlikely alliance, the island would have fallen into Constantine's greedy hands. This victory earned Afra the respect of all the native clans. She now spends most of her time with them, oh, when she isn't with the man she loves, of course. Zieglinda took Kurt as an advisor, but he insisted on keeping his place alongside his former student and friend, watching his back, as he always had. Siora obtained the title of Marl of the Red Spears alongside her twin. She leads them with wisdom, but often reunites with the one she still calls her Karantz. For his bravery, Vasco was awarded the rank of commander. He now travels the sea at the head of a whole fleet, but he often comes back to visit his brother-in-arms. Petrus's ambitions have finally been fulfilled. He obtained the much-coveted title of Cardinal. Despite the responsibilities implied by such a title, he still sometimes visits the one he calls his child. Despite the help Ulan received, which allowed him to restore the importance of the seaside Nemeus, he still had to renounce the role of Marl as he faced the contempt 
of the other clans. Her friendship with her Anaixe helped Deirdre to overcome her reticence. She willfully accepted to follow the orders of her new High King. Dunkas and his people spent a lot of time with savants and theologians. Patiently, they shared their knowledge of the Earth and learnt new techniques from one another. And in so doing, they restored balance between the New World and the Old. Following the investigations revealing the horrifying practices of Dr. Rassili, the Alliance changed their methods and even appointed an ethics council to oversee the work of its scholars. The public revelations of St. Matthias's life led to a deep change in Teleme. The Ordo Luminis was dismantled for good, and the missionary's purpose is now to establish dialogue rather than conversion. Aware that their culture of secrets would lead them to their demise, the Norts changed their methods. They welcomed numerous new recruits amongst them, notably natives. Under Sieglinder's control, the guard returned to the honorable values that had made its reputation. Despite the negative influence of some shady members in their midst, 